going live, going live, going live, going live, and we are live. All right, we are live. How is it going, everyone? Hope you guys are doing well. And uh, this is it. This is it. This is the uh, final stream. Um, oh, what's going on here? Oh, interesting. And uh, yeah, this is uh, going to be it. So the plan is I've um, in the description. Let me just double check the description here for a second. Yep, I have a little order of events. And so we're going to kind of just go as so. Um, yeah, I just want to take a couple of minutes here. Just say hi to the chat. One Incarnation is here. Alex, Sonic Rules is here. Shazane Rain, 2448. How's it going, everyone? Jordan Burns, hello, hello, hello. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna be here for about, I'm shooting for like eight hours because I'm gonna kinda like dump everything out. I'm just gonna throw it out there. I'm gonna let you guys know exactly uh, everything. So um, yeah, hope you guys are doing well. Doritos and Mountain Dew, hey Griff, let's get this party started. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to like, you guys don't have to be here the entire time. I mean, if you guys can, great. But as I said, we're gonna we're gonna be here until like midnight or so our time. NASCAR UT fan is here. Yoshi fan nine six one. RB Garner Cactus King is all here. And uh, wow, we got thirty people so far. Awesome. Shane Greenaway and is here. How's it going? How's it going? All right. Before we begin, I just want to just. Thank you guys so much. Wait, hold on one second. Chosen Rain 248. Will I still upload after this? I don't know. And I'm going to talk about this quite a bit throughout the stream. Um, so I am stepping away from NASCAR content after this. I really have kind of lost myself in trying to like keep up with the other NASCAR YouTubers and kind of like mentally really just lost my way and every time now i like make any form of nascar content i get like totally burned out uh let's see hobbs b has joined i is a little i i'm sorry i i t z e e v oh cool caleb rose is here doritos mountain dew jj jordan burns um so yeah that is what we're gonna do here on this lovely saturday um yeah, I'm going to focus more on animation. I still want to create stories, like the What If Dale Hart Was Still Alive series and whatnot. I still want to create stories and create different stuff, but I want to do it through animation. And there's just something about animation as a medium that can create something, like, amazing. So, Shazane Rain 2448, will this stream be uploaded? Yeah, so what I plan to do is um, I'm, we're going to do this stream, and this stream will stay. But what I'm going to do, and I, if any of you guys are willing to help, I have a couple people already, but if you guys want to help in any way whatsoever, um, I, ooh, Rusty's here, cool. Um, so what I am going to do is have highlight clips of specific things. So like the first thing we're going to do is watch my old stop motion videos. That'll be its own separate video later. And then, um, yeah, I think we'll, uh, we'll just go from there. So... Um, I will check the chat every so often, but otherwise, until then, we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump right into the videos. So, unless there's anything else, we got 40 viewers so far. That's amazing. Thank you guys so much. I just, this ride has been <laughs> incredible. So, let's do this. So, by the way, you see me right now? I, uh, I've evolved. I can now uh, jump to different things. So there's this, and then this, and then I have a little Be Right Back screen with music. And so I'll play some music here. Some chill music like that. And so that'll probably happen a little later when I will be right back, but um, we'll worry about that later. So uh, Noah Sweet with 20 bucks. What? Oh, wow. Noah, $20 super chat. It's good to see your face again, Griff. We all love you. Oh. I'm not going to cry. I'm going to wait until later. But thank you so much, Noah. I greatly, greatly appreciate you, man. All right. Let's go ahead and let's start uh, Let's start doing a little reacting, shall we? Let's see here. Make sure this is up. Okay. So as you guys know, if you guys are OG, I think that's what it's called, stop motion, or, not, or Griff 88 fan people, you guys know that 11 years ago, I made stop motions. 
And uh, here, let's see. I'm gonna go back to me for one second. I wanna see if I could pop up the uh, the camera that I had. <laughs> the camera that I that I got from 2008, mind you, with a 16 megabyte, um, good gravy, 16 megabyte um, memory card. You know, let's see if I could find the camera here. Um, I, I posted it on Twitter and on, uh, here we go, on Instagram. So let's see here, I'll throw this up. Okay, so yeah, so this is my little camera. Fuji, Fuji, Fuji non zoom lens. Let's see, fine pics, digital camera A205. Yeah, very tiny camera. And so, okay, it's a little fun fact. So you see the screen here, see all the cars here? So I made a stop motion tutorial way back in the day. It was the first video that I like filmed and put together, but never published. And when I went back to check out the camera, the um, the last of the files are still here. Not everything, so I couldn't like try to make it now. But um, I was showing like how to make a big one. And so like this was like the end of the big one. And so here's the side of the camera. And then that's the card, 16 megabytes. So yeah, I mean like a 16, excuse me, gigabyte card is now like this size. So we've uh, we've come a long way. So, okay, let's go ahead and let's start with the first stop motion here. So this was June 15th, 2008. And one fair warning, one thing that I am, I am or am not, I'm not gonna do is have the audio on because a song is playing. And again, if you guys are OGs and know, it is uh, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air theme song. So I'm not going to uh, get myself copyright claimed right on the get-go. So let's see here. Very small boy. So all right, let's get this. Let's get this thing started here. So do 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 do. Oh yeah, Windows Movie Maker, by the way. So the computer I did this on was a Windows XP computer. Again, back in 2008, and I used the Windows Movie Maker that was on that game. So. Two laps at Crayola Speedway. Bobby Labonte is on the front row. I have a rain. Rusty Wallace. Dale Earnhardt Jr. starts third. Mark Martin is fourth. Jimmy Johnson is fifth. Bill Elliott, sixth. These are all 2003 cars, by the way. Jeff Gordon, seventh. Ryan Newman, eighth. Dale Labonte, ninth. I'm going to bring up the mic a little bit. Dale Labonte and then Tony Stewart. And then Kevin Harvick. See the typo right there? Just eyeball that. I did not spell Kevin Hart's name right. Shun me, just absolutely shun me for uh, not spelling Kevin Hart's name right. And then Kurt Busch is 12. And this is when I lived in uh, central Minnesota. Boogity, 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 boys. Let's go racing, boys. So uh, if you guys are curious, sorry to pause, eight frames per second. So if you count one second, there's eight pictures each. And then I use Crayola Crayons as my racetrack because, again, I'm not like uh, M&M's Cup Series or MMSES. 3 wide through turn number two. Bill Elliott takes the lead, and he goes underneath. Kurt Busch, four wide above. And, oh, is my cat back there? Hold on. Is my cat back Yeah! See that back there? That is my cat. <laughs> the same cat that you guys have seen for a long time. Like, my cats are 13, almost 13 years old. So... Yeah, they have uh, been around for a long time. Anyway, so they come down turn number three. Bill Elliott, and he gets loose as Bobby Labonte, Rusty Wallace, and Ryan Newman are three wide behind as they come to the line here. The last lap, who is going to win? So one thing I okay. So one thing I wanted to say is uh, if it seems janky, I did not have a tripod at the time. I think it's the third stop motion was when I uh, finally got a tripod. So, by the way, if you guys are sending Super Chats, I'm probably not going to receive it because for whatever reason, the labels are not on. So, I'm going to keep an eye on that. Anyway, so down... Oh, so, so yeah, 8 frames per second, no tripod. And then as you guys saw, here if we back up briefly for one second, let's go ahead here. Okay. So, as you saw for a frame, yeah. See, I didn't know anything about continuity at all. So, that's a thing. Okay, 
So Bill Elliott in turnover one, Jimmy Johnson down low, four wide, and Bobalani gets high into Rusty Wallace, and Ryan Newman spins out, and they wreck, taking out Jeff Gordon and Tony Stewart, Mark Martin, Kevin Harvick, and we have four drivers coming in at turn number three. Johnson and Elliott are side by side as they go through turn number three, and Johnson gets loose, and he spins out Bill Elliott. And around he goes, and they're battling side by side. They touch once, twice. Junior wins at, uh, what is it, Crayola Speedway. Woo-hoo. And then he does a horrible donut. And I think I just bailed <laughs> mid-filming. Uh, yep. And then, okay. Oh, is it there? Oh, uh, yeah. Special thanks. NASCAR, Fuji Film, YouTube. Oh, that's awkward. Okay. Crayola, my brothers, my parents, and, of course, you. Now, here's a replay of the big one. Okay, one thing I wanted to just point at, and again, I don't know who's all watching. I don't know if anybody from back in the day is watching or what, but I, it's one of those things where it's like, it's on my mind, and it's like, I want to like, just mention it right now. So, I, I call these like my friends, and again, this is how much of a loser I was back in the day. Um, so, some of the people on here, um, like, I wouldn't necessarily, like, they were friendly to me, but I wouldn't necessarily call them like, friends and they're like people i was trying to like make like like me but uh i was cringy like if i'm cringy now like again back in the day i was ooh. so it was my way of trying to show my appreciation and um i don't think they ever saw this so uh yeah anyway i just wanted to bring that up it's one of those things that's been kind of like nagging me and i just wanted to bring it up Jordan Burns, how far back in the day? Um, this is like middle school we're talking like, so 7th, 8th grade, and this is like 2008, 2009. So I've been around, around a long time. Okay, so another little fun fact too. I'm sorry, I, I know I keep sidetracking. When I made the big one, right, what I did to get the different views, and so here I'll play the big one here, is that I would take a picture from both sides. So like you saw, okay. That's bad. So you know how I like had the big one here, right? So you notice how janky it is, right? How it keeps bouncing everywhere. It's because when I was doing the wreck here, and like every picture I took, I took a picture here, and then you go back to the replay, and I took the same picture here. And so I like bounced back and forth, and that's why it was so uh, janky. It was very experimental for sure, but hey. And then finally, yeah, I literally played out the rest of the song. And so that is the reason why this uh, video got uh, copyright claimed. So, and I, I didn't monetize it e anyway, but um, I don't know if you guys see it or not. And uh, All right, so let's move on to the second stop motion here. So as you look, if you go back to my old video, stop motion two is not here. The reason why? The video actually got banned worldwide. Like, so nobody in the world can see the video. And so the reason why is because um, it was an ACDC song. And ACDC was like, no, you cannot do this. And so they literally blocked this, the video. Fortunately for me, I still have it here. It has 20 likes and four dislikes. And I got three comments from Christian Angel, LSU NASCAR 88, and Austin Bennett. Do you hate Tony Stewart? I don't know. Now, I swear I had more comments here. I thought I did. But uh, I, I guess not. All right, so here we go. The Lincoln 5 presented by Lincoln Logs. Let's jump right into it here. And so these are all 2001 cars, as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, KCUK, oh, uh, Ricky Rudd, that's a 2000 car. Rusty Wallace, that's 2001. Pablo Pony, that's 2000. Walter, 2001. Junior, 2000. John Andretti, this was, I think, 2007? But it was one of those, like, cereal box cars that I got in, uh, freaking, um, like, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. And then Dale Earnhardt, that's, that's of course, 2001. Uh, then Jeff Gordon, 2001, Dale Jarrett, 2001, and then Ward Burton, that is, oh, I think, I want to say 2001, but that might be 2000. I need to double check that. And then Marlon is 2001. And then Johnny Benson is 2001, Tony Stewart, I believe that's 2001, Martin, 2001, and then Kansas, 2001. Five laps aside the winner, and green flag is out. And so I had Lincoln Logs back in the day, and it's like, hey, let's do this. By the way, so fun fact, this was in my room. This was actually entirely like in my room. So you just got like the little stool that would sit on, garbage bin, and uh, it was downstairs in the basement. There's my sheets, and then there are four wide behind, down the back straightaway here into turn number three. And then I'd see, 
Yeah, that's gonna be interesting. And then immediately in the f <laughs> that's right in the first lap, I'm like, nah, we cannot do 16 cars all the time, so we gotta get them wrecked. Let's see here, uh, Jordan Burns. I can answer your question. Where did you get those cars at the time? Um, Walmart and Target. Yeah, every week or so, uh, my mom would would take me out to uh, take me and my brothers out to either Target or Walmart, and if there were some cars available. Uh, we would do so. Except for Casey Atwood. I got him in, again, like 2008. And actually him, Labani, and Rudd, I actually bought those off of eBay. And so they all wrecked, and uh, yeah. And so it was a red flag. Cars involved. Atwood, Wallace, Waltrip, Gordon, Stewart, Andretti, Jarrett, and Kenseth. Base cars in, and a two-lap shootout. It's so funny because it's like five laps, and I only did like three, even two and a half. So you got Rudd, Labonte, Earnhardt, and Earnhardt Jr. So a little fun fact about Jr. So I actually like re-bought re this car back in 2008. I did have this bad cast like back in like 2000. But somewhere around the way, along the way, I, I lost those that um, Jr. So this is relatively new. So like if you see it and it's actually relatively in good condition, that's why. Get some love for the start for the duct tape, yes. So Rudd leads Earnhardt and Junior. Earnhardt Senior goes to the high side of Ricky Rudd, and Rudd slips high. Junior down low as the Dale and Dale show are going to the front here. The last lap will it be Dale, Dale, Dale. This was okay. <laughs> so me back in the day, right? <laughs> me back in the day, Dale, Dale, and Dale. Like I, if there's anything where there's like alliteration or continuity or something like that, that's kind of a joke. I would do that because if I remember correctly, I need to I need to back up. Was Jarrett out of the race? Yeah, he was out of the race, so Dale Jarrett couldn't even be in it. So all right, anyway, I'll keep going. And then uh, so they race fast by. I love that shot. And then Junior gets loose and he saves it. And then so coming down to turn number three, they're bumping, they're beating, they're banging, and they're all slipping up high. Junior spins, and Ward Burton flips Mark Martin over, and Dale Sr. wins the Lincoln Five. Yeah, that's it. His last win ever. So if you see in the record books that he has 76 wins, they're wrong. <laughs> it's 77. So, uh, yep. Oh, yeah, and then I cut it off because I did the awkward credits thing again. So yeah, there's uh, Stop Motion 2. That was fun, and that was July 5th of 2008. So I wonder if how many of you guys were even born at that time. So let's see here. Well, <laughs> it appears that Griff was biased in 2008. Yep, Doritos and Mountain Dew. Yep, I was completely biased back in the day. Okay, so Stop Motion 3, Railroad 250. 19 likes, 3, at Thomas Speedway. I liked um, Thomas back in the day. So these were all uh, 97. I think 97 and 98 Bush Series cars. So you got Ricky Craven Jr., Kevin Grubb, Glenn Allen Jr., Jimmy Foster. Hold up. Dale Jr. is there. Who did I say was? Oh, Dale Sr. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Michael Waltrip, Mark Green. I don't believe it was Mark Green in that car. I believe... No, no, no. It was. Yeah, never mind. So you got Joe Nemechek, Phil Parsons, Jeff Burton, Kyle Petty. This was on my dining room table, by the way. So you had Dennis Setzer, Jeff Fuller, and then Kenny Irwin Jr., which was a cup car, but I decided, eh, it's a Bush car now. So we rejoined the race with four laps to go, where the cars are coming to a double file restart. This is Windows Movie Maker magic right here. Okay. Okay, so this was the first stop motion where I actually picked up on the uh, frames. And so I went from 8 frames per second to 16 frames. So here we go into turn number two here, and oh, where's the cat? Did I, hold on, did the cat pass? There was one frame where the cat randomly was showing, oh, uh, I don't know, but they showed someone else there, green and Parsons wrecked. There's one I swear there was a cat. I think, I don't know, I hopefully I'm right. Mark Green and Jeff Burton spin, and then into turn number one, into turn number two. And then Craven spins, and Earnhardt and Irwin and Fuller and Petty all crash. Red screen. Come on. Oh, this is so bad. Jimmy Foster, Michael Walter, and Joe Nemechek survive the wreck. Earnhardt in first, second, and third place. And it's the last lap of a bunch of exclamation marks. Who will win? 
and then come on all right oh please tell me this is the one with the maybe not oh three wide line oh who's so close who won i don't know calculating results Jimmy mm. johnson yeah i know it's kind of like a what do you call it not an innuendo it's a inception because i could go into the stream and it could just go forever anyway jimmy foster wins there it is yeah there's the cat yep my cat was staring down foster if you guys want to take a screen grab of that and make a meme out of that more than welcome to ah that's right i forgot about that i completely forgot about that yep and then i had the lego guy and i believe yeah <laughs> that's right star wars people okay that's cool anyway results foster and wall trip yeah and then you had all the results here speed up the footage junior was fifth sets are craven petty yeah I, I like that table it was nice but since it was the dining room table like family members were walking around all the time and i could not do that so okay so let's see here <sighs> yeah it kind of was like a restricted plate race for sure all right so stop motion four my first stop motion quote unquote here let's uh bring this down i called it domino super speedway right yeah the cars are coming to turn four let's see so this was in my room again so in a way this was my first uh analyzing the big one video that's right okay so you remember how i mentioned in the previous um videos how i did the thing where i with like the rex right here so i would do like with the replace i would again i would take a picture from here and i would do it from like four different points of view so ugh, it's a little a little awkward but eh, it is what it is so cowboy spins oh no big one strikes and so many cars wreck the results of the wreck and then you got all the wreck there. You got random dominoes up there. You got all the, oh yeah, these were all uh, 2007 and 2006 cars, I believe. So Johnson was 06, Stewart was 06. Those others were 07. That was an awful picture, Griff, jeez. <laughs> Gotta get that lighting. Anyway, Mark Martin, JJ Yaley, McMurray, Labonte, Hamlin, and John Wood. You guys remember John Wood? You guys remember him? Now let's look at some replays. So yeah, okay. So this was my room. And so we I actually had a door that would actually go like outside and there's like a staircase that goes like up, like so. So anyway, you have that. Then on the back straight away here. Then you had all the wrecking. And again, the reason it's shaky is because again, I was moving the camera like everywhere. Yep. I don't know. It was a bit, it was a, it was a nice little experimentation. Now did Kyle Busch get loose or did someone else hit him? Let's see. And again, horrible shot there. And Dale Jr. made the. Hey, see, I wasn't biased. It's because I I made Dale Jr. make the big wreck. And then twenty minutes later, Mark Martin wins the race in the Christmas car. Woo-wee. So you have Mark Martin spinning now, doing his donuts. And then the credits, and then I don't need to go through that again. Okay, so let's go to stop motion five then. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna chug right along here. What is this? Oh, nice. Okay, this one, this one I probably enjoyed the most. Lego at the Sartell. So I'll alright. So Sartell was actually the town I uh, used to live in. So that's why it's called Sartell. So these are 2005 cars. So you got Jeff Gordon, Scott Riggs, Casey Kane, Jeremy Mayfield, spelled that wrong, Craig Biffle, Tony Stewart, Dale Jr., Bobby Labonte, Dale Jarrett, and Jimmy Johnson. Let's see, I think they're all 2005. Yeah. Kurt Busch, Elliot Sadler, Ken Schrader, Mark Martin, and is that it? Oh, and then Joe Niemicek, this 15. Aha. We were drawing with a race with four to go and a double file restarts. That's right, double file resource. Okay. Oh yeah, I enjoyed this. It was so fluid. And then Labonte and Johnson spun out. Less cars for me to do stop motion with. 
And then Case of Kane and Jeremy Mayfield spin out. Less for me to do. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, fun fact. On the TV, Drake and Josh. So Drake and Josh was on TV when uh, I was airing the stop motion. So I was watching that while I was doing this. So you have them doing the thing. Last lap. Gordon's hard to beat, but can Riggs beat him? Oh, yeah. We got him a cat sleeping right there. Thanks for stopping by, Denny Delivers. Hopefully, you do come back. So I had the wreck there. Brand new camera view. Hope you like this new view. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yep, that's Dragon Josh. That's Dragon Josh. Oh, that's so great. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, it was one of the newer episodes. Yeah, that's Drake right there on the left. So there's that. And then Gordon hopping up in the air. And it's got Rick spins. And Jeff Gordon steals the win and wins the Lego at the Sartel. And then Gordon wins watching him do some donuts. And so Gordon wins and... <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's so dumb. That's so dumb. What is... Really? Oh my gosh. Really special thanks, Dale Earnhardt Jr. So, uh, yeah, back in the day, I did not like Jeff Gordon. Yeah, I did not like Jeff Gordon at all back in the day. But to show that I wasn't biased, I made Jeff Gordon win that race. So, meh. Okay, um, I did a Monster Jam video, but I'm going to skip that for now just because I kind of want to keep pushing here. And I want to jump right into the uh, Kringle 500, which was my most, uh, what do you call it, popular video. Yeah, that's what you call it. So pre-race show brought to you by, by the way, so again, the reason this is quiet is because I had the, uh, what's it called? Here. 12 Days of Christmas song on here. I know you don't want to be copyright. So Pepsi Cola. Oh yeah, where's Word Incarnation? Yeah, this race was brought to you by uh, Pepsi Cola. So yeah, make sure you guys make sure uh, Word Incarnation knows that the Kringle 500 was brought to you by Pepsi Cola. <clears throat> so we begin the show with some highlights. See here, Kringle Speedway. Yeah, I enjoyed. Uh, I enjoyed these lights. I loved uh, setting this all up. It was a pain in the butt, but in the end, I think it was totally worth it. So qualifying here. Oh yeah, that's right. I did a. Uh, I actually did, did a stop motion of Carl Edwards qualifying. I think I, uh, I need to double check, but I'm pretty sure this was like an all-day thing. And then Matt Kenseth. No offense to Eric, but I was not really a fan of Matt Kenseth back in the day either, as I had him spinning out and uh, qualifying. Another look. Yeah, and so to slow it down, I slowed, or I um, extended the frame rate. And then he will start 11th. And then Jimmy Johnson. Another guy, as you guys all know, I'm not entirely a big fan of. He's okay, but he will start 12. And then it rained. And I just threw in, yeah, so once again, this was Windows Movie Maker. Just wanted to throw that out there. But, um, what was I going to say? I, yeah, so I added a little filter on there to show that. Kringle 250, this was cool. I'm glad I did this like little bush race. And uh, majority of these cars, I need to double check. I think they're all 1998. Let's see, Junior was 99. Sorry, I have a mouse for a reason. And then that car was 97. And then this car was 2000. And then hopefully we can get another shot here. All right, let's see. Uh, let's see, Bessie, that was 97. I do not have a 98 version of that car, and I wish I did. The Joy was 99. Okay. And Kenza spins, and there's another big one. And Phil Parsons flips up and over, and Blaze Alexander wins the Kringle 250. So yeah, Blaze Alexander wins. And now, oh, hold on, doesn't it like music? Uh, no, I'm not going to do that. I swear, I hold on. No, awful. <laughs> Twelve heroes will go at it for twenty laps. That's horrible. Okay. I, I thought that I had a part where I had him say, start the images. Starting lineup. No. Okay. I can't do that. One carnation. Yeah. This race has been <laughs> brought to you by Pepsi Cola. <laughs> Hold up. Did I see Shazane Reina again? 
Oh, that was a minute ago. <laughs> uh, wow, that's cool. That's funny. Uh, is also sponsored by. No. Okay. Sponsored by Pokemon. Gotta catch them all. I yeah, I was a big Pokemon fan back in the day. And now, oh, here we go. Which I never did. Cool. Okay. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna jump right into the famous video. Nope. Oh wait, oh this is part two. Haha, <laughs> nope, I'm not gonna do that. We wanna do part one. Which I I have no idea how this video got fifteen thousand views. Like I'm gonna be brutally honest. I have no idea. By the way, you see how I have all these comments here? So back in the day, instead of doing the like dislike ratio, we had like a five star rating. And the way how the comments went, like I was trying to reply to everyone. And for the reason YouTube decided to uh, F it up and be like, oh, Griff has all these comments. And it's like, he's talking to nobody. Ah, it's awkward. Anyway, I just wonder if uh, APG95, big inspiration. I'm just wondering. If any of you like you guys were here, one carnation, ten years old, still a gem, absolutely. Um, uh, man, I just don't think any of these guys are around. I think that's hilarious. All right, here we go. Ha 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 ha! Look at the duration. Look at the time duration. Or twenty, weed. Okay, let's go. Rainbow Five Hundred presented by Pepsi. No surprise to cut up to fifteen laps to do a storm. It's uh. More or less just, I just didn't want to do uh, much uh, stop motion work. So you have that. So you have Edward, Skybush. These were, okay. So these were all technically 2008, except for Jimmy Johnson, which is a raced wind car from 2007. And green flag, and we are racing. And at turn number one, Carl Edwards and Kyle Busch are side by side. Kyle Busch is having a very strong run, and Carl Edwards goes up, and he's going to block, and now Junior goes underneath three wide. So the reason why there was, like, gray tape on turn three is where the lights go um, into the racetrack, because you see how there's lights on the infield and on the outfield, or out outside the wall. The gray tape is, like, the cords, if you will. So that's why there's gray tape there. Anyway, Dale Jr. takes the lead, and oh, Edwards bumps Jr., and Jr. falls all the way back, and I love this shot of following him, and it's like you get like the entire view of the entire uh, room. Down, down the front straightaway here, and the caution is out as Truex leads Mark Martin. Mm -hmm. Debris cautions for sure. Base guard picks up the field. Got Truex, Martin. <laughs> Martin Truex. That's funny. Anyway, replay. So you got Dale Jr. And then Carl Edwards bumps Dale Jr. And almost around he goes. But he saves it. Then I have a heart sound effect because why not? The is gone. And oh yeah, the lights. Okay. I I love this. I, now the thing I wish was that I had pure white lights. Because I think that would make things more realistic. But what I wish, or but I mean, I, I still love this though, because it still makes everything bright. Anyway, so Truex and Mark Martin, one, two, Kyle Bush third. I love this shot a lot, because then it pans. Ah, I love that. I love that. I love that. Anyway, and then turn number four, and so you got Truex and Martin still one, two. And farther in the back, Dale Jr. and Jimmy Johnson have hooked up, and the Hendrick Trio are moving all the way up to the front. And in one turn, they go from last to first, and now Jeff Gordon is up with Martin Truex and Jimmy Johnson. Oh, yeah, I did that thing where I, like, panned it around. If I were to redo that, I would move the camera every single time. Which, by the way, at this time, I did have a tripod, so that's why it's a lot more uh, steady now. Oh yeah, and then this flyby shot, which is like old Daytona. Then in the turn number three here. And around goes Matt Kenseth. As he spins and hits the outside wall. And the caution is out again. Matt Kenseth crashes in turn four. Yes, sir. So then the little replay right here, here. 
and then Carl Edwards, Matt Kenseth, DL14, it's Fan Man. Thank you for asking. Anyway, <laughs> so you got Matt Kenseth there, and then I had some like a little fire truck and ambulance. Matt Kenseth walked in the ambulance and is okay. Okay, so I now with the field, and we're going to take a quick commercial break. I did not make a commercial break, but yes. And so the Kringle 500 presented by Pepsi. And then there's the top five. I think, oh, what else did I do? Oh, that's right. Be sure to watch part two of the Kringle 500 coming soon. I forgot about that. And then get ready for season one of, what was this? A-A-R-L. Get ready for season one of AAR. I actually have no idea what that is. Season one of AARL. Remember those 25 1999 cards I got? What the frick am I... Am I on drugs? Here they are. What? I got 25 cards? Oh, that's right! All of the um, five packs. Oh, that's right! Oh, that's right. I completely forgot about that. Okay. Yeah, you guys will see all these cars uh, later. Oh, that's right. Oh, my gosh. I completely forgot about that. Beautiful, aren't they? Yeah, they're all right. I'm kidding. I love them. Oh, I totally forgot about that. Okay. Criminal 500 Part 2. I'm not wasting any time. I'm just jumping right into it. So, we got highlights from Part 1. So we got the we got the highlights here. Let's see, Sonic Rules. When I was a kid, I used to make my own series for Tiger Cars called the NASCAR Meyer series. Lol. I even have my own storylines. That's awesome. DL14? Yeah, I was a big Dale Jr. fan back in the day. <laughs> That's funny. Caution one is for debris. And then the restart here. And so again, I just want to remind you the reason why there's no like audio coming from the video is because it is copyright music. Oh, hello. I heard that. Hey, Ray Ray Craze subscribed. Thank you, Ray Ray Craze, for the subscription, man. Greatly appreciate it. Okay, so now we return to the race. So Carl Edwards has been warned. <laughs> Carl Edwards has been warned for rough driving. If he does it again, he will be pulled over. Ah, that's funny. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, yeah, it's the random cars from 2001. Also, a winter storm is coming all the way. Are they backing up? Oh, that's weird. All right, anyway. Ah, uh, that's funny. Good times. Anyway, shift in focus, and now it's completely dark except for the lights there. And is that an amp can? Hold up. I'm sorry. H has that always been there? Excuse me. Oh, uh, yeah, that's an amp can. Cool. Forgot about that. Okay, green flag is out. Oh, Johnson pumps, bumps Gordon. Here comes Martin Truex down to the inside. Gordon almost spins, yes. Truex and Gordon are side by side, and you got DEI to the inside, Hendrick to the outside, and Casey Kane and Kyle Busch are coming with. And then in turn number four, Truex and Gordon are still side by side. And as they go down the front straightaway here, two laps to go, Kevin Harvick is moving up to the high side, making it three wide. Carl Edwards is pushing Harvick up there, and they are now three by three as Harvick comes out of nowhere and might win this race. And I heard the ching again. Give me one second here. Jackstall LP, thank you so much, man, for the subscription, man. Greatly appreciate it. As they come down the front straightaway here, white flag is out. Truex and Harvick are side by side. And as they come into turn number two here, I'm going to do one quick thing here. Noah, just for you. There you go. And Truex up and over, and lots of cars have wrecked here. And Mark Martin and Casey Kane were the only ones that made it through. And here they come. Mark Martin off of turn number four. Casey Kane down low. And they're bumping and banging. They're side by side of the line. Oh, man. Who is going to win it? Matt Kenseth or... On Angie, thank you for the subscription, man. Anyway, calculating results, and Casey Kane has won the Kringle 500. And so you got the unofficial results, and cotton balls. Gotta love them cotton balls. Casey Kane wins, and then the big one was in turn two. Yeah, and then I had that little like haze filter to show that it's uh, the winter storm was there. 
That's right. Wait, did I spell Kevin Hart's name wrong again? That's silly. Nice. Everyone's okay, but Carl Edwards is being called to the holler as we speak. Nice. And then every play of the big one. So here we go. And then Harvick and Truex into the wall. And yeah, and then Kyle Busch flipped over there as well. But oh, okay, one little thing that I completely missed, I think. Let me double check. Oh, where was it? Yeah, okay. You see, okay. You see these five right here? Mir, Sadler, McMurray, Burton, and um, what's his face? Rudiman. So I actually bought these cars while I was making uh, the stop motion. And low key, I wanted to add these cars into the stop motion, but I, it just wouldn't work. So I had them there on the side. So <laughs> what is this? Give me one second here. Okay. So the wizard has moved in. Kringle Speedway wants to thank the following sponsors. Pepsi, there you go. This is before, by the way, this was before Pepsi had their new logo. You know, the one, the fat boy logo, if you will. Spring Cup Series for coming. YouTube for ho for having this here. And then it wants to thank these people and we don't need to worry about that anymore. And uh, let's see here. And don't forget season two of Griffey 8 Fan Stop. Ah, which never happened. Oop, let's get out of that. Are coming. Ah. So sad. That's another what if, right? What if I did make more uh, <laughs> stop motions, right? Ah. That's so silly here. Okay. Um, so yeah, that would be that is stop motion seven. Let's go ahead and let's bounce out of here for a second here. Uh Pepsi Gang. Pepsi Gang, Pepsi Gang, Pepsi Gang, Pepsi Gang. Okay. So then we got stop motion. Okay, so this is weird. So actually, I kind of stopped doing stop motions for a little while. I never understood this. Okay. So this is called the 2009 shootout, right? Right here. This was made in July 4th of 2012. So this was about the, uh, oh, is it four year anniversary? 2009, 10, 11, yeah, four year anniversary of uh, my first and second stop motions. But get this, <laughs> it's 2003 cars. So you got, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I can turn this on. Yeah, I can turn that on. Alan, start your engine. Right. So these are all possible. Okay, this car is 2002, by the way. I'll just mention that and throw that out there right now. This is Mark Ryan's 2002 car. Yeah, Martin Clift. Yeah, the 2010, the Ice Bucket 500. Yeah, this was a big uh, inspiration for me as well. Not like the 2010 one, but like, yeah, APG 95 was a big um, inspiration for my uh, stop motions. So I have to push. Okay, so I mean, it's not that big of a story, but so this Terry Labonte car, right? This this uh, this sucker. So in uh, Sartell St. Cloud, there was actually a store in the mall that was like a straight up like 100% like Christian store that had like Bibles and like Jesus pictures and it had like anything Christian related, like it has it. But for whatever reason, in one like corner of the store, they had a bunch of old die casts. And so one day I went shopping there and this car was there. And so I bought it and I'm so happy I did. So, how much of a story. <laughs> this is Johnson's 2002 car, by the way. I'll just say uh, Can the volume, uh, well here, uh, that's a good call. Sure, I can take, I could do that. Bring this down just a little bit. Okay. Hopefully that helps a little bit. Fast pace car here. I can also do that too. Yeah, I will agree. It's a little loud. And then turn off because I am not. 
<laughs> because I am not going to get copyright claimed. That is not going to happen today. Anyway, so down into turn number two here. So, mind you, so this was, again, 2012. So this was four years later, and <laughs> not much has changed. So, let's see. Hold on. Isn't that normal? It is. That's weird. It definitely feels like it's going a lot faster. Anyway, down the front straightaway. Let's see, you got Bill Elliott, the close shot there. Then you have Newman signing up. Jeff Gordon to the lead. And then my bias showed. Oh, no, not yet. As Sadler gets into Newman, and they battle side by side. Down into turn number four, and Jeff Gordon leads with two laps to go here. So Jeff Gordon leads, Dale Jr. goes to the high side, and Jeff Gordon gets into the outside wall, and then Gordon blows up, and my bias is showing. <laughs> so Gordon blows up, and Gordon is car, but he's not happy. And then Elliot Sadler leads, and there's my tripod. Last lap, as they swing into turn number one here, Elliot Sadler and Michael Waltrip are side by side. As they go into turn number three for the final time. Sadler swings high. Stewart down low. Michael Waltrip. He's in again the Sadler. And around they go. Huge wreck here as Bill Elliott spins. Labonte wrecks. A lot, oh yeah, a lot of others. So Ryan Newman wins the 2009 shootout. Which I do not understand because... Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. 2003 cars. 2009 shootout. And 2012. Do you get it? Meh. <laughs> the duct tape has been replaced by painter's tape. Yep. And then Gordon is not happy with Dale Jr. after the race. I don't blame him. And so there they are. Oh, uh, yeah. And this is like my first like Photoshop work. And so I took like the sides of all the cars, right? Yeah. This was like my first time doing real like Photoshop work. Uh, Jordan Burns, what am I going to do to Q&A? It's going to be later tonight. It's going to be, I'm probably shooting for like 10 or so. If you look at the uh, description of the stream, I have the Q&A at the far bottom. So, yeah, thanks for watching my videos, and look out for more coming soon. That is a lie. All right, so look at 119. NASCAR know-it-all. Let's see if I get a SM of full laps. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you're back, just for once. This SM is underrated. Man. You guys are so, like, kind. Like, I just feel like something's, like, something's up. Something's up. Like, you guys are being nice. It's like, you guys are probably, I don't know, talking smack behind my back or something like that. Um. Okay. So this one, the St. Peter Grand Prix. This one I want to talk about a little bit. And I actually do want to throw up. Okay. So, <clears throat> so as you can see, 11 likes, 5 dislikes. The quality wasn't the best i don't rocket man has four that's funny so a little context behind this stop motion so this stop motion right here let's see here i'm gonna fix one thing here okay so this stop motion right here um in january of 2013 i actually did a um, animation class and so we did like flip books and then we did like animation like in a tomb boom like essentials program if you will um and one of the the uh, what do you call it topics or whatever was stop motion animation and so i thought it'd be fun to go back to doing like the nascar stop motion and so we had to do partners and so uh, the person that i was with her name is uh sophia and so she actually is from uh, i don't want to butcher this but she is from like central america and so again i don't remember which country it was it was like either mexico honduras I need to double check, but um, she is not from here, so her English isn't necessarily the best. Anyway, so we were in this together, and so that um, we did this little fun stop motion together. I am Samantha. And Morpheus. Morpheus. That's so dumb. The 400, that's so dumb. 426th annual St. Peter Grand Prix because uh, America hasn't even been around for 426 years. Griff, sorry, I'm being a little uh, meh. So, oh, by the way, okay, so another thing, St. Peter. So I learned recently that there's St. Petersburg. St. Peter is, uh, what the frick is it called? St. Peter is the town that um, my college is in, actually. So St. Peter, Minnesota. Yeah. Number five. He has not won a race in over 20 years. 
That's. She is the only female in this race, surprisingly. Okay, so by the way, I'm just gonna throw this out. Um, these are all of the 2012 cars that I have, so that's why this is that. He's been a fan favorite for over 10 years. Can you guys hear that well? Number three, four. He's looking for win number 100 in hmm. his career. Number 39, Ryan Newman. Just random stats. He's been for over five years, and I am glad he is back to compete. That's weird. Clint Boyer was number 15. This is Clint Boyer's first race. Number 20, Joey Logano. Wait, hold up. Rocket Man? Hey, it's the same guy. What's up, Rocket Man? Wow. Hey. Yeah, no one's been gone for five years. Yeah, you gotta uh, explain for yourself. What up with all the question marks? That's funny. If Joey wins this race today, he would be the youngest driver ever to win the St. Peter Grand Prix. <laughs> and finally, number forty-eight, Jimmy Johnson. He is the defending champion Raise it up. of all the right. St. Peter Grand Prix. Yeah, I'll bring it up. And now it's time for the Oh yeah, Mr. Cool I dude. And ladies. Oh gosh. Start your engine. I don't know what that was. And it is that. Yeah. Jacob, the race. Oh, that's so quiet. Yeah, I don't blame you guys. The flat <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so dumb. Uh, <laughs> Flying Red denied to be seen in this movie, so we skipped to the action. That's right, because we didn't have time to uh, animate a dude with the green flag. Ah, oh, that's funny. I completely forgot about that. Okay. And we are underway. Oh, that is so quiet. Yeah. Is there and anyone... Jeff Gordon takes Yeah, it's not, it's not the highest you can go. I don't even remember where I got the... And Jeff Gordon gets loose, and he loses the lead. Let's take a replay of how Gordon lost the lead. What is that? Is that oh, apple what a juice? Shame. What a shame. Oh no, they're heading to the danger zone. <laughs> Last year, only 32 people died in the danger zone. That's a record low. I forgot how stupid that is. <laughs> oh, okay, let's go. Mm, that's so dumb. Oh no, we lost Kane and Johnson. Well, it's Johnson's birthday tomorrow. It's Johnson's birthday tomorrow. What the frick does that oh, mean? No. Also, okay, wait. Why? Mm. Okay, couple of things. <laughs> Hold up. So you got, you got the bars here on the side. You got another person working on another computer on the other side. You got Logano with the tire out, and you got Plato. Uh, out of context, like you have no idea what the heck's going on. Plato man is walking <laughs> across the track. <laughs> Plato man, no! You stepped on my foot. <laughs> It's so stupid. It's so oh, stupid. He had such a nice foot. He had such a nice We're foot. We're done with this race. Oh, it's Let's so dumb. Don't go anywhere. Did I really do a commercial break? Oh yeah, Once Upon a Candy. I completely forgot about this. <laughs> Bag of popcorn. So this was another animation that I uh, I did. Uh, Love. I forgot about this. Betrayal. I literally did the entire movie there. Uh, Once Upon a Candy. Coming soon. <laughs> Alright, let's go back to the race. Did I hold up? Did I just see hands? Hold on. Yeah! Oh, that's... I think, yeah, that's Sophia's hands. No, because I don't paint my fingernails, so... Oh, that's funny. Live coverage of the 426th uh, annual St. Peter Grand Prix. Edward and Patrick are now in the lead. Really? Patrick's in the lead? Oh, that's funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did he just drift around the corner? I haven't seen that since 1869. What? What? 1869. 
Griff, what the flip were you thinking, buddy? Oh, Newman, no! Two cars have crashed in the second to last corner. They had such a nice run going, Newman and Boyer did. Yeah. Gordon, Earnhardt, and Lenica are side by side taking the last corner. Oh, boy. <laughs> He just came out of nowhere and just bombarded the rest of them. He's gonna win the race. Casey came out of nowhere. Casey came out of nowhere. Unbelievable. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Thank you for watching such an unbelievable race. I miss that so much. Thank you for everything that you've done for us. Now. Stay classy, my friends. Did I really say that? Stay classy, my friends. Nice. Did I have any music here or not? Nah? I don't think I did. Let's see here. Let's see. Here. Yeah. I. Uh, that's odd that the music wasn't there. Ah, I forgot about that. Man, five people disliked it. Man, what's wrong with y'all? All right. That's funny as heck. All right. So a couple more stop motions here. Huh, old am I? Um, okay. So a little context. So the re okay. So when I made Enter Tales of the Short Seven, and we'll get into the Enter Tales and Three stuff later, um, I did wanted to do a little thing where the the sh this uh, short is the same as the stop motion. And so I'm a little uh, nope. I'm a little proud of this. So here, quick question. That's right, I used uh, Dropkick Murphy's Boston. I completely forgot about that. Also, I'm a big fan of this, of like this little like edit that I did, where I put together the, um, like the CBS intro. I love that. That's right, 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 that's right. I uh, took all the like cars and I like screenshotted them and I put them here for the uh, starting lineup. I probably should have done like a fade there, but uh, meh. Um, so this was when I moved to uh, South Dakota, and so this was in my room in South Dakota, so that's why everything looks a little uh, meh, different. Man, it's been so long since I've seen this. 16 cars, 5 laps. So this is when I had a Sony Vegas Pro, by the way. Hey, Kamikaze Games. Alright, so green flag is out, and then the turn number 1 here. I believe it. Didn't I use a GoPro for this? Yeah, I did. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. So I switched over from that camera that you saw over to a GoPro Hero 3 Plus. And so that's why it kind of has that fisheye lens. That's why that's there. Oh, yeah. That's right. I did that. Eh, some of the lighting is meh because it was automatic, but eh, it is what it is. And then turn number four. Oh, yeah, I forgot about how uh, wide the racing was. Let's see, four to go. You see the shadow of the camera. We got Benson there. We got Bobby Labonte there. Oh, I love this shot so much. Ah, I love that shot. I love this shot. I love this shot. Okay. Hey, guys, we've evolved up the start finish line. Because we actually now have a slip of paper <laughs> with black and white lines. Hey, we're upgrading, guys. So you have the wooden blocks there. Oh, I love this shot so much. Oh, Elliot around in the hay rack. No. Jack Sprague, the goat. And then you have Jarrett, Wallace, and Benson. Oh yeah, I had the lap down cars. I completely forgot about that. Oh man, yeah, you got Wallace and Jarrett, then you have the white flag. Oh man, Wallace and Sprague, they're one, two. As we go into turn number three for the final time, Jack Sprague down the inside. Will it be Sprague? Will it be Wallace? Here they come, side by side. Jack Sprague wins it. <laughs> ah, that's funny. Oh yeah, that's right, and the donut was on a loop. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, that's so funny. Mm. Oh, that's hilarious. Yep, 
and then there's my stuff. Yeah, and I upgraded the Griffey Fan Production logo. That's funny. Okay, uh, so one more stop motion then, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, man, that stinks. I wish I could have done more, but I. Uh, but you guys also know that is very um, time consuming. So the Jeff Gordon 24, that's right. Oh, what's the... Nope. 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 <laughs> nope. Yep. Nope. I am not going to use that audio. Anyway. I, again, I love, like, these montages, for sure. Showing, like, Gordon's legacy. And I know. I I wish I could have done this more, like, with, like, Dale Jr. and uh, Matt Kenseth and others. But, uh, okay. Look. Pepsi! Pepsi! Where's one incarnation? Pepsi is right here. But anyway, this is probably the most... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, like, uh, the most effort I put into a racetrack was this. I had a huge white board, and with it, I actually like created some a little thing out of this. Oh yeah, that's right, and I used the font... Oh! <laughs> I forgot! <laughs> the fighter jet that's right I totally snagged a uh, green screen of a fighter jet and it flew by oh boy that's funny as heck um, anyway yeah so that's uh, the font that they use I think it's called like aardvark something I need to double check but anyway oh that's right I did like an aerial shot and then I like went all the way down and then I sat it right there. Oh, that's cool. I'm glad I did that. Starting order: Jeff Gordon, 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 and Jeff Gordon. And the 15th is Jeff Gordon, and he can't get his car started. That is a shame. All right, so the face car is off, and then the green flag is out. And so again, just fair warning reason why I have the audio off on this one is because I had Running Wild by Airborne on this and I can't I, you know, copyright anyway, green flag oh, I love this shot oh yeah, if I remember correctly, I did like plenty of, oh hold up, did I see my hand right, where is it, right nope hold up, give me that hand, where's that hand Ah, that's my knee. There's my knee. Griff dog exposed right here. Okay. Oh, the fisheye lens. I love it. I remember this took a lot of days to complete. Oh, I love this shot. Okay. When you, like, really coordinate stuff together, it's phenomenal. But anyway, oh, three wide. Oh, car in the wall. And that is the Gordon car tomorrow. So you got, then you have Gordon Pepsi in the lead. Oh, that's funny. Oh, he blew a tire. That's all right. Jeff Gordon started blew out and destroyed the rear axis. I think it's rear axle. I think it is. And then we got a double five restart. Oh, are you kidding me? Did I just see another cat sighting? Hold up. Yep, there you go. Another cat sighting right here. She likes me. I don't know why. Anyway, let's keep going here. And there we go. Oh, Gordon gets loose. I think, I believe he got loose, right? Jeff Gordon slips sideways, but does not bring out the caution. Yee. Uh, then you see the shadow of the camera. Is that a wooden train track? That one? Yeah, I used to have that. Me too. Oh man, Gordon Pepsi car is out. Oh, I love that shot. I'm sorry, I say that a lot. I just, mm, I wish I could have done more of this stuff. Oh yeah, and then I had like the camera like on the train track. That's right. Go, yeah, go. Hey, Brendan Mattel, how's it going, bud? Oh, did I, ooh, did I see another cat sighting? Right, hold up. Yep. Caught in the act, Potter, right there. All right, this was in my basement, by the way. And oh, a couple cars around, three in a round. Jeff Gordon gets in Jeff Gordon, and they both sit out. Jeff Gordon gets collected too. They all continue the race. 
Oh, there's there it is. The furnace race fifteen laps down. I don't remember why he wasn't there. Hmm. Anyway, another another double file restart, and so you got Gordon, 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 somebody Gordon's in the turn number one, and down the back straight away they go, and oh three wide, and oh Gordon slips. Oh, are we going to get to the the, the, the crash? Spoiler alert. Let's see, Gordon tells in three leads, and look at all Jeff Gordon's pass. Oh, is this it? Please tell me this is it. <laughs> Shush. Yeah, that's it. And then you got, the cat made the crash, folks. The cat was there, and he messed everything up. Hold on. So is this the... Yeah, the music cuts out, and then just almost everyone just... Mm, terrible crash. Oh, yeah, and it got so dark here, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I had the fire green screen. That's right. I forgot about that. Hold on. Where's the... Yeah! <laughs> it was out immediately. <laughs> uh, it's horrible. Oh, after an early late, Jeff Gordon's awake and alert at a local hospital. Good. The debris has cleaned up and resumed racing with three laps to go. And then the music. Yeah, we're not going to do that. <laughs> Alright, four laps to go, and we got. <sighs> I did a tape. I love that I used a tape. That's that's funny as heck. <clears throat> Alright, here we go. Three laps to go here. Superman is in the lead. Then we got Bugs Bunny in second, followed by 2014, and I believe that is 2002. It is side by side. Superman leads with two laps to go. Does anyone have anything for Superman? Here comes Bugs Bunny down to the inside. As 2002 is now in third. I need to double check that. It is 2002. Final lap is out. <laughs> side by side. Can they get around the lap down car? Oh, they wreck. And three cars up the track. And the 2014 Jeff Gordon wins. The Jeff Gordon 24. Ah, that's funny. And then I had the cotton ball burnouts. And ah, that's it. And then I made a video also specifically about my cats. That's right. I forgot about that. Okay. Cool. So that is my stop motions. So could I have done more? Probably. But you know what? I'm also okay with what I've made so far. So. Alright. So here is what is next. I need to just double check something here for one second. Okay. So before we move on to the next thing, I'm actually going to be right back. I'm going to use the restroom. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the uh, unboxing videos. So we're going to do that here. Give me like five minutes. Put on some music here and there we go. Be right back.
go ahead here, I'll pause this, and I'll show just me for one second. Hello, 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 where my bubble shirt. So, as you guys know, I, I've collected quite a few die casts in my day, and in a little bit, uh, over here, I got a couple of boxes. And so in a little bit here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to unbox those die casts. And we'll talk about those and all that in a minute. But first, the first thing I want to dive into is, um, as you guys know, around 2017, I kind of not, like I started making videos, but I like get burned out really quick and I uh, don't get around to finishing those videos. So I'm going to get into that a little bit here first. And so first thing that I want to show you guys is this. So I made an unboxing video about here. Let me just double check and make sure that you guys are seeing this all. Cool. All right. So now that I have this, okay. <clears throat> this was the, I need to double check. I think this was the third here. I'm going to go back to me for just a second. I want to make sure I get this right. I think this was the third unboxing video. Let me see here. Because I know that I made, I made a few. Oh yeah, so I made the, uh, let's see, where the flip. So yeah, that these diecasts exist video, which had 21,000 views. Um, I know I made another unboxing video somewhere. Uh, I'm more or less just talking to myself now. I swear I thought I... Anyway, so here's another unboxing video. I'll go back to this. Okay, so you're going to find out here in about a minute why this video was scrapped. All right, it is... Come on, play, buddy. Recording. Okay. And three, two, one. How is it going, everybody? It is a Thursday night. I hope you enjoy my little hat here. It's a GoPro. And uh, I want to do something a little special tonight. Okay, so if you have not caught on yet, um, my phone here, let's go full screen. So my phone is down here. What my hope was when making this video was that my camera would pick up the phone and they would show me with the GoPro hat on. The problem was I could not see what the GoPro was seeing, and so the GoPro was way too high up. And so that's going to be a common theme throughout this entire uh, video. As we have our first, or no, it's not our first, it's our third diecast unboxing. So it is the from unboxing. the same people that I've gotten for the first two, Steve and I believe it's Linda Clark. Same and um, you know what? I know you guys in the second right, episode said, like, oh, you guys need a knife, you need something a little sharper. Well, I got that. That is really uh, dangerous, Griff. I don't even remember when I made this uh, video. Here, let's just go back to you guys here. Okay. I got the knife. I yeah. got the knife right here. Yeah. It is sharp, and it is to the point, and hopefully this diecast unboxing video should go a little faster just because I got this box. What are you talking so, about, Griff? how are you guys? <laughs> Hope you guys are having a great day. And I think I mentioned it before, this is replacing the diecast of the week episode, so you, you guys should be seeing this. On really? Oh, well that shows the date right there. It was, oh. Okay, hold on. This, uh, I, hold on, I need to, sorry, this is, this is actually kind of important. Hold on, I need to see this. So, Apparently I said it was the third one, and that's in 2017, because you guys remember the diecast of the week. Did I? More diecasts. Hold on. Let's see. I need to check something. Did I make... Do you guys remember? Did I make unboxing videos when I made Griff Talks? I... Mm, I don't remember. Because I said that was the third one. I'm trying to remember the, uh, the diecast unboxings that I did, because I know I did the... Here, I'll go back to this. So we got a special video here today. I did get another box. I'm trying to remember. Uh, I bought a few jackets online. What I'm trying to remember, because I know this is more me. Like I, I know this is very entertaining for you guys. I, hmm, I'm trying to think. 
because I, I said, okay, so there's a U. Apparently I made a second here. Maybe you guys can help. This is a knife. Yes. Um, did I, let's see, first rant, 2,000 subscribers. I'm trying, hmm. Where did I make a second Dagfest unboxing video? If any of you guys do remember, like, let me know. But I can't find it. Huh. All right, I'm not gonna worry about it now. On Wednesday. Come on, me. Day, I All believe. Right. I don't remember. It's been a long day, but um, yeah, it is great to get some more diecasts online. And so, my so my hope was with this shot was like I wanted to um have the camera pointed more at the box, but since I couldn't see, I that's why this is unusable. This, uh, Getting, getting these race cars is that this is going to be probably the last time I will order from diecastsports.com. It's going well, Drew Burger King Daddy. And it's not because these guys are terrible. Like, they're great. They got some uh, great deals online. What am I talking Here. about? I just want to make sure it's pointing down a little bit, hopefully. <laughs> See, I have no idea. Um, I don't even know if you guys are looking at the box. I'm looking at the box, but I don't know if this camera is pointing at it either. Yeah, it's pointing up. But... I probably shouldn't go so close, but anyway. By the way, just fair warning, I did not edit this at all. It is completely raw, so all that stuff you're hearing, I probably would have cut it out. So I'm just going to throw it out there right now. The reason why this is going to be the last time is because I feel like I got the best deals from this round, and because I am giving a free promotion to Diecast Sports, I feel like a lot of people are going to take up on the offer and buy pretty much the rest of the cars there. I have no idea if that happened or not, so I just want to mention that right now. I could be wrong, but you know what? For the time being, I'm, this is probably going to be the last time. The last time. There you go. Alright, so it is open, and here are the cards. So. Steve and Cindy. I think I said Linda before. Yeah. It is Steve oh, there you and go. Cindy that's... Clark. There you go. That's that's okay. That's great. I, I I thought it was more horrible than that, but that's that's great. Cool. So you guys at SNC Collectibles, thank you so much for the wonderful cars at such good prices. Hopefully your business keeps going, and hopefully plenty of you guys that are watching could have the opportunity and at least look at the website, which is right here, diecastsports.com. If you guys want to do that, you guys can definitely go ahead and check out the website. I I don't plan on getting any diecast anytime soon. So, hey, the gold mine is open for you guys. All right, so we got a lot of cards here, hopefully. That is the plan. So, first one here, we got this metal. Or, it's not metal, it's plastic. All right, we got a couple. But let's start with right here. Daffy. So here we go, number one. This is Jeff Green's number 30 Looney Tunes car when he drove in the Monte Carlo 400 rematch. Oh, I really like that uh, card. You see when he like flips back and forth, Daffy Duck moves. Oh, that's so cool. I'm definitely going to keep that card for sure. I, but... do, I do still have that card today. Fun fact. Um, and then Shazane Rain. Um, so again, I'm not going to get much die cast now, but I just go off of eBay now. Yeah, see, he's got Daffy Duck here on the side. Oh, there and you again, go. Hopefully, you guys see it. Probably if one of up higher here. Yeah, you should. Um, yeah, here's the back side. It is made by Action. And so, yeah, I'm going to put it to the side here. And what I'll do is I'll show them all off at the very end. Number two, another Looney Tunes car Yosemite Sam. And this is uh, Carrie Earnhardt's Bush mm -hmm. Series car in 2002. If I remember correctly, this I wish car I could only cost up. 50 cents at the store. I don't know if there's any more left, but this was a heck of a deal. 50 cents, wow. So Carrie Earnhardt and Zeus 70 Sam here on the front. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, but yeah, it is a beautiful car. And so a big goal with this trip was I wanted to buy as many of the Looney Tunes cars as possible. So not counting the cars I'm getting today. The only Looney Tunes cars I have 
R. Jeff Gordon's Bugs Bunny car. Yep. Robbie Gordon's Pepe Le Pew car. Yep. And then Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s uh, Monster car that he drove in the Bush series. Yep. That's right. So definitely a lot. <clears throat> All right. Number three. This is Michael Waltrip's Nilla Wafers car that he drove as a paint scheme in the, uh, what was it? It was at Charlotte. Mm -hmm. I don't remember if it was the All-Star race, but I know for sure he drove it in the Coke 600. I believe it was so the yeah, All-Star race. So yeah, and Nella had a little deal, and they kind of combined together. Have hey, Black Lives Matter. Thank you so much for having me on the action. Mm. Yeah, definitely shout out to Black Lives Matter, man. Thank you so much for all your support all these past couple of years, man. Greatly appreciate it. And I just want to let you guys know, no matter how many cars you get, the shipping on this 15 is bucks. 15 bucks, unless yep. Steve does find a better deal for you. Speaking of good deals, another Looney Tunes car. This is Speedy Gonzalez with Joe Nemechek on here. Joe All the way Nemechek. around, Joe Nemechek's not on the car. It's Speedy Gonzalez that's on the car, driven <coughs> by Joe Nemechek. I'm not another the best at talking, toy. guys. I was not expecting that uh, holographic car. That is really cool. And that is really the reason why I did not make this video, because of how high up the camera is. So here, I'm actually going to speed up a little bit here. Hold on, don't I show all the cars at the end? Yeah, so you got Ryan Newman's 2002 Mobile One rookie car, Kevin Hart's 2002 rookie car, and you can see, right, just how high up the camera is. Then Terry Labonte's 2002 car. Let's see here. Ah, uh, Kevin Hart's 2001 car. The words up here, it says, on February 25th, 2001, Kevin Harvick debuted the number 29 GM Goodrich Service Plus Chevy at North Carolina Speedway for the 400 mile NASCAR Winston Cup event. The white race car, which was created for the race in only four days, was specifically hmm. detailed with black 29 in, shoot, in Dictia? In dic what did I say? Was specifically designed with black. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's spelled like I-N-D-I-C-T-A. I, I want to say Indicia. Indicia? I don't want to say the other way of saying it. Oh. But anyway, this car <laughs> was made in 2004. <laughs> Because it says right here, 2004 NASCAR NASCAR Cup schedule, but it is too... Alright, I'm going to speed up here because I, I know we don't want to linger on this video for too long. But anyway, Stewart's Habitat for Humanity car from 1999. And then let's see what else we have here. And then Stewart's uh, Kids Workshop car is there as well. And then Team Caliber. Did I really take the car out right there and then? Oh no, that was for comparison's sake. Okay, never mind. New one sells in five car. That was a five or yeah. And then Johnson's Power of Pride car. Kenseth sells in three car. That was the Cup Championship car. I oh yeah, and then Kenseth sells in six car. Okay. Oh yeah, and then Hornets two thousand Bush car, which I have the one twenty four scale of. So let's see. Oh what the frick? Oh, <laughs> it's the cat. Her name is Sissy, by the way. Ah, her name is Sissy. So. Scott, you can go ahead and play with the cotton balls. Don't leave that, please. All right. So I believe that should be 18. One, two. Oh, yeah, and I also got Mark Martin's uh, 2013 um, Aaron's car. Three, four, five. Get that knife out of the way. Yeah, I don't want to poke anyone with that. Six, seven. Hold up. Who was that on the far far left? Let me double check that. Six, seven, uh, seven. That's a. Oh yeah, Jimmy Spencer's a twenty-three noble car. That's it. Seven, of eight, course. Carrying nine. Heart. Yep. Ten. Let's see. Eleven. Twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, That is eighteen. So here, I will get all these guys You've been around. Martin Clift, thank you so much. This is probably the biggest haul ever. That's like, funny. Honestly, I, I don't think I... Let's see, do I have anything, like a better shot of these cars? Holy crap. Okay. Oh, nice. So I think I took it off, did I? Whoa. Jeff Gordon, or Jeff Gordon. Ha, Jeff Green's Sylvester or Daffy Duck car. Next, you got Michael Waltrip's. Yeah. Napa. Okay. Yeah, I think we'll just stop Sites. there. Do you guys get your. All right, so anyway, that is how. Those are all of my uh, die casts there. So, the other 
one that I will show is, let's see, where is it? Unusable, let's find it here, here it is. Okay, so this was the only unboxing video that I tried to make on, um, blah, blah, when I like in 2017, 2018. And so like, it was one of those deals where like, at the time I was motivated, here I'll set this up. Okay, so I was like motivated to like get this video set up, but then work happened, like my job, and then I got burnt out real easily. So th this again, this is a raw clip, so I'll play most of it, but if there are times that like drags a bit, I will move it forward. So, all right, so cheers. Okay, so a little bit of context, by the way. So these are all my video games, including NASCAR Heat Evolution, right there, and then 124 Terra Bonnie, uh, a couple of books that I have, book, cool hoods, and yeah. So not okay. having terrible audio. Also, fun fact, here I'll probably show here. So lapel, right. there's my butt. Okay, so for all my Griff Talks, I use a lapel uh, microphone, but what I do, is with the lapel microphone, I connect it to the camera. So if you hear like a little whizzing noise, that's exactly what it is. All right. <clears throat> Three, two, one. Hey everybody, happy January, and it's time for a surprise diecast unboxing. I did not prepare for this video at all. <laughs> we're just gonna open a box and we're just gonna go for it. So, where is that box? Uh, Oh, oh, uh, where's that box? Um, God, uh, oh, 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 goodness. Um, let me see. I, uh, 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 um, uh, okay. Oh, uh, boy. Oh, uh, okay. Let me see here. Um, uh, uh, oh, that's not a box. Um, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> the ring he has all lost oh griff you're so dumb uh, uh, that's, oh, oh oh that's right. right i was gonna okay i was gonna do an edit right where i was gonna zoom in on me doing the ring and then i would like move up to my face where i'm like whoa and it's so so dumb uh, uh we're <sighs> box we're box come on thanks fish production so i feel so much better now <laughs> acting skills 100 percent Oh yeah, and then there's me raging like a look at look at the veins, look at the veins there. Like you, me and my big nose. You don't you don't want to mess with me? No, not at all. Oh bother! Oh, where is that box? Where is that box? And then, oh, man. and then the box is right there. And then I sit. Oh okay, I guess we don't have an unboxing. Oh well. There was a lot of editing that would have gone <laughs> involved there. And then look at the box. Oh, oh, sorry. I, uh. <laughs> it's so dumb. If you guys understood that reference, that was from an episode of SpongeBob where uh, Squidward was looking for his order. And then SpongeBob was like, Did you look under the tray? And then he did the thing. And I did the thing. And it's dumb. It's dumb. Yeah. And then I'm all quiet and I'm all. I don't, I don't even know what I'm doing. I mean, I'm going to be in a box, but I know exactly whatever. I'm gonna shut up now. <laughs> Enjoy the art of me opening up a box. This is a this is a performance art piece. Knife <laughs> cutting, ten out of ten. It's okay. <laughs> so yeah, quick short story behind this is on Christmas. Once Christmas is over, I decided to get a few more diecasts because I can. And yeah, I got some boxes, yo. Dull knife. It's not dull, dude. It's you. You need to. You need to get tougher, dude. All right. Hmm. So first of all, you're wondering, oh, who is this from? Well, this is the return of ah, uh, diecast sports. Yeah, this is FNC was... collectibles. And the first thing I get here is a uh, pen. Oh yeah. With the card of SNC Collectibles. Hopefully the mic sounds good. You see it right here, SNC Collectibles, Steve and Cindy Clark. 
Yeah. It's the same card from the previous video. You can find them on Facebook, SNC Collectibles. Their email, sncollectibles at gmail.com. I got four cards and I got a pen, too. I lost that pen. <laughs> I have no idea where that pen went, so. Huh. I guess I'll uh, show off this pen here. Yeah, it was a nice pen. Ah, there you go. So it's red, or it's kind of maroon. <laughs> Mahogany. Um, I think it's, yeah, SNC Collectibles, DieCastSports.com. That's the official website. www.diecastsports.com, by the way. Yeah. And their phone number is also on there, too. Okay, cool, cool. So, yeah, I got a pen. That, that's a first. I actually have never gotten that before. All right, let's see what I got today. All right, so first things first. Chris Busher's number 37, Bush Beans Chevy SS. Yep. Says it's a limited edition, but I don't know if it is or not. Hopefully you guys can see that. Bush Beans here. Hopefully I can get this out of the box in a little bit here, but I'll just go ahead and set it right there. Right there. Number two. Let's see here. I'll do a few later. Um, here we go. AJ Allmendinger, number 47, Stouffer, what do we got? We got Stouffer's, we got Kroger, we got Cheez-Its, we got AJ Allmendinger. We got a lot going on here. So, second car, and it's both part of the JDD Daughtery team. Mm -hmm. Number three, our 2019 monster, I mean, <clears throat> sorry. 2017 Xfinity Series Champion, William Byron. Hold up, did I really say 2019 Monster? Wow, poor prediction, Griff. And look at William being all fly and whatnot with his light blue to dark blue fade. That's Jordan Burns, no, I actually have a separate box that I'm gonna unbox later. With the red on there, beautiful car. Beautiful, beautiful, lit. Oh. Jeez, really Casey nice dad. Number four. Nice. Landon Castles, play it safe, Ford. All I have to say to that is nice. What? So, you know, it's a good car, play it safe. What? Car's gotta play what? it safe. Um, oh, wait. I was thinking Wasn't there a meme like a couple of years ago where Landon Castle, like that was his thing, where he said nice? Okay, that might be the reason the why. Love's car. But I wanted to be a little bit special. A little bit special. Special! So there you go. I got a total of seven, I believe. Don't quote me on that. Actually, do quote me on that. All right. Yeah, quote me on so, that, guys. Okay, so something a little special. All right. Can you guys tell me the year hey. that this car is? Hey. I'll give you five. Hey, 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 hey. I'll be right back. Right here, boys. Hold on, let's pull this up. Right here. Right here. Five seconds. One. Okay, time's up. So this is Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s Bush Series car from 2003. Three. Dale Jr. drove this car. Beautiful car. Oreo, Ritz, and he won in this car. Beautiful car. I only got it for three bucks. <laughs> I don't know if there's any more copies at SNC Collectibles. <laughs> if there is, I'd say you get good. Ah, that's funny. All right. So, oh, did you fall over? Eh. Trying to make you look good. Sick. Okay. Oh, uh, let's see here. So, two more. Yep. All right. Well, everyone has it, and I might as well get it myself. Dale Jr.'s final ride. Yep. The Exalta car that he drove at Homestead, his final car. Everyone has we it. We heard Landon Castle in this house. Did it as well in the 164 scale. Oh, that's a pretty car. I, I already did my crying. It's, it's, it's all good, guys. <laughs> so there you go. But, you know, before or, oh, how does it go? I don't know. But Words, am I right? To every end, there is a beginning. And that beginning is this. Hold up. If you can't tell, 
This is Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s 2000 Richmond Budweiser Chevrolet. This is the car that he drove in that race, and it does have the like the neon top. I'll I'll get them out of the box there we here go. so you guys can see. Out it. of the box. Um, out of the box. But yeah, so it has the Noble Five um, aspects as well as the fact that it actually has the Budweiser decals on there and not the cool. Dale Jr. diecast where it has Dale Jr. on top. Cool. So there you guys go. Seven diecasts. Hey, right Eric, there, welcome to the show. Lots of cotton ball. Oh, yeah, that's lots right. Lots for everybody. You get a cotton ball. You get a cotton ball. I'm aware. I'm going to clean that up later. All right. Ah, good times. All right. Yeah. So let's just. Take All right. So here, let's just take a look here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Here's a closer look at so each of them. There you go. Let's get a nice little focus on in here. Focus there on that go. Smithfield, David yeah, Land. Zoom in a little bit here. Get more of a better focus. There, there you go. go. Oh, look oh, at all these cars. So in total, with shipping, it costs about fifty-seven dollars. I, I mean, because I bought them, I yeah. highly recommend that you guys buy them all too. And here, I'm gonna just cut here for a second. I'm gonna take all of these out of the box so that we see the, all the die cast in their pure form. Okay, so I did take them all out of the box, but with the eight of uh, the 2003 and 2000 cars, I did put them back. So here, all right. won't we'll take too much time mm. here. So there's the 37, then there's the 47 in all of its glory. <laughs> Sick reference, bro. 2017 Talladega, am I right? Then there's Diana Castle's car. Then William Byron's car. Oh, yeah, and I had it compared to the... Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Uh, let's see, Junior's 2003 car. So, just, again, fair warning. I did, I did um, take the cars out of the box. But then after this video, I put them back in the box. And they've been in there ever since. But, guys... We're not done yet. Mm. Mm. Three, two, one. So that'll do it for this diecast unboxing. As you notice, I put the hat back on just because I feel like it. Okay. And I kind of made this video just as a little way to give you guys just something to watch. Okay, one little thing, just side note that I want to kind of point at. The three crowns right here, someone else, a uh, Jetman, mentioned, like, is this, like, the Swedish thing? So my college is called uh, Gustavus, and it's out in, again, St. Peter, Minnesota. Strong Swedish, like, background and heritage. And so their logo is the three crowns. So that's what this is all about. While I continue to work on One More Spark 1987. Haha, <laughs> that's so, horrible. that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I will see you next time and then i smile but da, 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 da. <laughs> did you do this mike 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 did you do this michael Wait, walsh how about you sally was it you sally I, I literally just opened the box. It's right here. Another okay. box. Okay. No, that's okay. Uh, um, um. That's right, boys. I got okay. another box. What the heck? Oh, where's my knife? I don't even know where the heck my knife is. All right, let's get. Let's just get to the what? opening here because I do want to. There we go. <laughs> do I need not. To watch out for that. Wait, did one of them fall over? Yeah, AJ did. Yep, AJ fell over. That's horrible. Okay. Oh, come on, Griff. Just open it, darn you. And... Okay. Oh yeah, I was going to do an edit where I was going to put the GoPro inside the box, 
but I don't have that footage, and I wish I did, because that would look so dumb. All right, I'll be right back. Let me grab. Hold on, what was I doing? Look at that butt. Yeah, because I was putting the GoPro in. That's right. Okay, that's right. 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 There you go. Uh, okay, I can answer that question. Jimmy Johnson also in Roblox. Griff, did you do you still use that room? I mean, it's my room to sleep in. <laughs> but um, no, like in terms of like diecast and NASCAR stuff, I took a majority of that out of my room. Let's do that. Actually, I have to do that. Boom. Hello. Right, was... Could you fucking stop it? I swore. I'm sorry. Thank you, Zach, for the uh, super chat. One more spark. 2020 Griff Dog edition. A lot happened there at one point. Thanks, Zach, for the super chat, man. I greatly appreciate you. Okay. Sorry for the language, by the way. I... Yeah. So silly. Do you guys know what this is? No, Griff. What is it? Do you that? know what this is? No, tell me. Hold on. Is this what I really think it is? No, what is it? Hold on. Yeah, I know, Jimmy Johnson. I apologize. This is like. Oh wow. Okay. All right. Let me let me open this. So okay, just fair warning right now. This car, this one twenty four scale, was actually my first like like I personally bought one twenty four scale diecast because that five that's behind there, I got that like from my folks like in the late nineties. Otherwise, it's been nothing but one sixty four diecast. So if you see me struggling, that's why. So this is like a genuine uh, reaction right here. Just be steady. Steady. Oh, mama. Oh, mama. Indeed. This right. is Bobby Hillens, number eight, Kleenex Cottonell Chevrolet. From 2000. Why such a specific car? I have been eyeballing this car for years. Yep, that is I true. Got, so I got this diecast from South Philly Diecast. Um, it was it like 40 bucks. Beautiful, I think it was. beautiful car. I cannot find this in 164 scale. Look at that pops up. That's so cool. Um, so I'm not a big fan of buying 124s, but. There you go. This is definitely an exception. Neato. All right. I'll bring the camera over and I'll show you kind of the more in-depth look at this bad boy. All right. And we'll go ahead and do that. There it is in all of its glory. Look at that. Oh, that's definitely so pretty. One of the most beautiful cars out there it's definitely on my i'd probably say my top 25 list for sure and it's worth every penny so it has like the dark blue top and look and then it has that like sprinkle look if you will here let me zoom in a little more focus here so you got that going on and then the white in the back with Connell scott what does that say viva i don't viva. know what that is but then the fun part it opens up <laughs> so you get to look on the inside here as well. See if I can. I can answer that. A dad's life asked, "What camera am I using?" Canon um, 60D. Actually, here when I do the uh, diecast unboxing in a minute here, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you the camera. Yeah, the lighting is not that good, but it opens up there. And then Jordan Burns. So I still have that car. Yeah. All right. Try to pop up the hood. Right here. Let me just make sure I see. 
Look at that. Right here. Don't you just look at that. Try to get a nice good look at that hood. Very glad I got this car. Okay. It's very, very good looking. Yes, it is very good. So, all right, is there anything else I need to say here? Uh, let's just wrap up some. Okay. Outro. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I will see you Blah. next time. And then play uh, Heavy by Huma Huma. Cool. And, and then <laughs> this is so dumb. And then this was going to be the uh, thumbnail. So just me making a bunch of dumb faces. And then boop. All right. All right. So let's go ahead and I'm going to switch things up here. I'm going to play the music, but here's how we're going to do this. All right. So as you guys know, I did get a couple of boxes right here. So we're doing a couple of live unboxings right now. Hopefully you guys can see this as I'm going to wear my hat because why the flip not? All right. And then actually just to answer that person's question. Okay. So this is the camera that I use. Canon 60D right here. So there's the lens right here. Lighting isn't necessarily the best, but <laughs> You guys know that by now. And then I turn this on. And then there's a little screen back here. Hopefully you guys can see me. <laughs> Ugly. But uh, yeah, so this is the camera that I use for my Griff Talks and a bunch of other stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead here. I'm gonna just do one brief thing. Deep and look under it. <laughs> so the box hits it. Or hold on. So it's like, did you look underneath the box or did you look underneath the tray? Okay. All right. So um, yeah, we'll do this one first. So this box right here. And guess what? I have a knife. Last time. All right. So let's do this then. Should I get some uh, ketchup for, you know, the blood? Um, let's see, here we go. I know, this is such uh, quality content. I think I said that every single unboxing video. It's like, oh, this is a good quality content. What's going on, right, Mitchell Collins? How are you? Ah. Let's see, is this at the, yep. That is the invoice. Ah, here we are. So, from all the bubble wrap and stuff like that, it is Elliot Sadler's 2004 124 scale diecast. So, like the Bobby Hillen diecast, this Elliot Sadler diecast is up there as one of my top 25 all time favorite paintings. And I'll even throw this out. If uh, Dale Jr. did not have the season that he did in 2004, Elliot Sadler might have been my favorite driver. And so as you guys know, I do have Sadler's 2003 paint scheme. But, all right, so here's the box. Let's flip this right set up. So here's the box. Then you have him. Then you have that stuff. And then you have the green M&M right here. Then you have action, and then you have that. All right, let's open this up. Then you have the box. It's what's in the box. There you go. So we open this up, open this up. And oh, pretty. Here it is. All right, so a little backstory behind, I guess, not this car specifically, but Elliot Sauer's 2004 car. Um, 
this is the first ever die cast I actually brought to school. And uh, yeah, in 2004, fifth grade. Um, I, uh, I think it was when Elliot Souther flipped at um, Talladega. I don't know, I thought it was so cool and I brought the 164 die cast uh, to school. And so throughout class and whatnot, I had the 164 die cast of this car on my desk. Oh, I love this game so much. <laughs> Griff, you take the car, I'll take the box. Eh, meh. So yeah, there you go. Elliot Sadler, I love that car so much. I don't know, I'm a sucker for any paint schemes where the main base is yellow, but then there are multiple colors on this car. So, let's see, put you there. <gasps> and so I have Sadler's 2003 car right here. And so this is also up there, and I would even say top 10. All-time favorite paint schemes. Ah, I have this 2003 Groovy car. Nice. All right, so um, Shazane, will I remain on social media as Griff Dog? We'll talk about that more later tonight. For the time being, no, but I am okay with coming back from time to time. Okay, so I have one more other box. The final diecast unboxing. Ooh, all right, where's my knife? Here we are. <laughs> they allowed you to put that ah uh, no I I wouldn't necessarily say they allowed me to uh, have it on there but I uh, I didn't care <laughs> so I did it anyway boy this one is sealed shut by the way if you guys were wondering uh, because of uh, everything that's gone on with the pandemic and whatnot um, I did the thing where the box was sanitized and left overnight so that no germs or viruses or anything like that could have been on here so don't worry about that i got a knife yes. but man this this is sealed like tight by the way if you're curious this is a fedex box so hey gotta support nascar somehow some way right ow all right, so this other box. So it's really funny how we almost come full circle. We have an elite diecast, but it means absolutely nothing because huh? who is it? Elite. It is an elite box. Yeah, you know what? Here, I'll take a second here. You guys want to take a, a guess or guesses on who? this is let's get a couple of uh guesses as to who is in what car is in this box it is a really really nice box though very pretty for sure huh alex works at fedex nice. griff do i play darts in the background on the wall i do every once in a while i actually got that gift back in uh I think like 99, and then we've kept it ever since. So. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, that's so pretty. All right, guys, it is Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s 2000 Cup Series rookie car in the elite scale. So let's pop up the hood here. We got the deck lid. Oh, really, does it not open? Oh, it does, nice. We got the deck lid open up right there. Let's see, can I pop up the hood here? I should. Don't want to abuse the car, but. Can mm, I not? Probably, but I'm not going to worry about it now. Anyway, finally got this car in the 124 scale, and I'm so happy that I do. Such a pretty red car. So, yeah. Those, so, yeah, those are the two cars that I got. And. You got the funny looking spoiler right there. So, spoiler alert. Pretty sure I can open up. There we go. There's your hood. Look at that hood. Ah, it's so nice. So nice. So nice. Cool. 
So yeah, there you go. So Elliot Sadler's 2004 124th skill diecast, and then Junior's 2000, specifically 2000, 124 scale. So there you go. Couple of diecast unboxings right there. Honestly, if I wasn't doing this YouTube thing, I probably would never have gotten those diecasts. So. Mm. <sighs> All right. What is next on the agenda? Are we jumping right into the Inner 2003 stuff first? Let's see. The Diecast Collection! Yes! Okay. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So, let's go ahead here and we are going to get started on the Diecast Collection. Oh yeah, it's just me, so you don't see a thing. Cool. Okay. So, let's go ahead here and get into this. Um, for this, I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to hide, let's see, myself. So all you see is the uh, die cast. And so what we're going to start with is the 124 scale die cast. Here, I'm going to do, actually here, I'm going to do one thing briefly. Okay. I want to do one thing here. All right, so now let's go ahead here. Let's throw this up and let's throw this back up. Okay, perfect. So, well, now, I mean, I haven't added Sadler's 04 and Junior's 2000 cars yet, but here is all of my 2000 cars. So I have 10 2000 Bush cars, and then I have Labonte's car, then I got 298 cars, then I have Rich Bickles, 345, 1999 car, and then I got six 2003 cup cars, Junior's 2008 ham car, and then a couple of 2018 cars, Haley Dean's car, and then um, Justin Haley's <laughs> race win car. So let's go ahead here and do one thing briefly. Okay, cool. So here's a more closer shot of, so Harvick, Hornaday, then there's Hillen again, Burton, and then Green. Then we got NRF 18. How's it going, bud? Then we got the 18 of Leffler. Then I got Irwin, McLaughlin, Tony Roper, and Blaze Alexander. Rest in peace to these four, not McLaughlin. Then we got Terrell Bonnie, which, let's see. Yeah, you got the yellow on top. So this does have a little bit of wear and tear, but it's not like the end of the world. Then I got Kenny Irwin, Dale Jarrett, Rich Bickle, then Jimmy Spencer. Then we got Dale Earnhardt Jr., Sadler, Mears, McMurray, and Nadu. Then I got Jr., then Chase Elliott. This was actually, I pre-ordered this car actually, fun fact. And then Ryan Blaney. Now this car is actually the uh, Gatorade Duel race, or not Gatorade. What duel is it now? Whatever, the 2018 Duel race. That's his race win car. And then Casey Kane, I actually got this die cast at Kansas in 2018. And then up here, Kyle Busch's 2018 Coke 600 race win car. The reason I got this car is because it was my first ever cup race, and I think it would be a nice uh, memorabilia. And then the famous or infamous uh, Haley Deegan custom car. And if there's time, I might go ahead and play the unboxing video for that car. Because I'm so thrilled that Danny B, I'm trying to remember everyone that was in it. Danny B, Caleb Hoffman, I know that Darian had a part of it, Jared. Oh wait, I have the list. Hold on, I'll be right back one second. Okay, here we go. So it was Danny B. Let's see. Yep, Jared Iceberg, Darian, Black Box Matter, Eric Estep, ACS Racing Network, William Croslin, Caleb Hoffman, and Napa Fan. So they all um, had some part in that. So Can Am, yeah, that's right. Okay. So anyway, those are my 124s. Okay, so guys, we are going to keep count. So you guys were wondering how many 164 scale die casts do I have? So what we're going to do is we're going to go by each year, with the exception of this one, and I have the number on the bottom, bottom here. So we're going to slowly but surely tally up. So <clears throat> this is the class of before 1994. And so, 
We have a total of 18. Let's just do some quick math. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And so I kind of separated them out into like different years. And so you have this first group here. Now, I wish I had a better picture of this, but this is the Dale Earnhardt uh, K2 car. And then you got the 11 of, um, oh, what's his name? Jack, Jack Ingram, thank you. Jack Ingram, then you got Neil Bonnet's 12 car. And then you got Richard Petty's 43 car, which actually came in a cereal box, but I think it still is legit. And then I got a couple of 1987 um, Dale Earnhardt Wrangler cars. The reason they look different was because um, Winter Circle did two uh, Lifetime Series cars for Dale Earnhardt. One of them was from like the late 90s, and then the other one was from like 2001, 2002, like just after when he passed away. Then, sorry for the horrible um, lighting. These are all 1990, 1991. So then you have the 18 of uh, Greg Trammell. You got the 63 of, um, what's his name? Not, not Tracy Leslie. No, Chuck Bound. Thank you. And then this is G.D. McDuffie's 70 car. Then you got um, Hutch Strickland's 92 car. And then Rusty Wallace's um, Pontiac from 1991. Then Jeff Burton was actually 91, I think it is. So, But other than that, these three are 93. And then uh, <laughs> Jordan Burns, Neil Griff, can I send your NASCAR your book? <laughs> sure. So you got Ricky Rudd's um, tied car. Mark Martin, this is the Southern 500 win car. And if I remember correctly, this was the last race before I was born. I believe I need to double check that, but I'm pretty sure that's right. And then this is Jeff Gordon's rookie 1993 car. And then this is Jeff Burns, I think this is 1991. And then these three are all from 1994, and that is Daryl Waltrip, Neil Bonnet, and Derek Cope. Hopefully you guys can see that all right. I apologize about the poor uh, lighting. All right, so we had 18 before. What we should do is I'm gonna put the 18 on here just to kind of remind myself, and then we can like add things up as we move along. So 1995, we have 13 cars here. The, what have we got? Eight on the bottom here are all from the Cup Series. And then you got the four Bush Series cars on top. And then you got a little Fantasy Promo car on the top right. So let's go ahead and go a little deeper into each of these. Now, if I remember correctly, uh, <clears throat> most of these, I think all but the 37 and the 55, I bought them all in one setting off of eBay. So that's why they all exist. So you got Jeff Burton's 8 Rebestas car, then you have Derek Cope's Made in Tail car, Lake Speed's 15 car, 37 is, I want to say John Andretti? I think it's John Andretti. Either Andretti or Mayfield. I need to double check. 75, I'm pretty sure was Todd Bodine. 81 is Kenny Wallace. The 90 was uh, Trickle. 94 is Bill Elliott. Then the 4 is uh, ba -ba -ba Jeff Purvis, 6 is Tommy Houston, 14 is Terry Labonte, 38 was Elton Sawyer, and then as I said, the 55 is the uh, FSU Seminoles, like, I wouldn't say promo car, but yeah, I just, I don't believe it was a real car, but you can double check on that. All right, so class of 96. Now this one's a little strange. So, okay, let's, I wanna double check here, and I wanna keep doing the math. So 18, plus 13 and then we go to 96 and then plus 5 so you got Dale Earnhardt's car and so do I zoom in at all on this I did okay cool so we got Dale Earnhardt's GM Goodwrench car hey NRF 18 so we got that and then we have 10 Musgrave 16 family prime star car which if you guys remember the 2019 um, Kansas race. I actually bought this car from a local uh, antique store. So we're at 37 right now. Okay, cool. Then we have um, Irvin's 28 car when he did his uh, throwback to uh, Davey Allison. Then I got Hutch Strickland's uh, 29 uh, Cartoon Network car. I think I believe it's Strickland. Either Strickland or uh, Presley, if I remember correctly. Then we got the 41 then of Ricky Craven which is funny. No, it's not the race car at Talladega when he wrecked, so don't worry about that. 
All right, 1997. So we're going to get a little bit bigger here. And so, ah, I okay, at some point in the future here, um, what I want to do is I want to try to figure out my original 16. Because I know Earnhardt was in it, and I know the 29 was in it. But I know there was, like, an original, like, uh, 16 that I had, like, since I was, like, four. But I don't remember which ones it was. So, let's go ahead here and just add 49 here. So let's move in deeper and let's see what we got. So we have a Coca-Cola promo car. Then we have Dale Earnhardt's plus Jim Gingrich plus car. And then we got Marlins Gold car, Tara Labonte, Mark Martin, Jeff Bodine, Ricky Rudd. And then up here we got Kenny Irwin. And then we have I believe that is Irvin, Ernie Irvin. Then you got Presley in the 29. Johnny Benson in the 30, Skinner in the 31, Derek Cope in the 36, and then you got Mayfield in the 37, yes. And then over here we got Bodine, Musgrave, Baba Lavani, Michael Waltrip, Gordon, and then Gordon's premier car, and you guys remember this, what these two were in the uh, Gordon 24. Grissom, Nemechek, uh, Bobby Hamilton, not John Andretti, or is it uh, John Andretti? No, 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 it was Bobby Hamilton. And then a couple of Kyle Petty's, and then we got Wally on the far right here. Oh, wow. Oh, that was the farthest right. Okay. Then you have the 75, which was Rick Mast, I believe. Kenny Wallace. And then you got Ricky Craven over here, and then Kenny Irwin Jr. Then on top, we got Dale Jarrett. And unfortunately, it has a little bit of damage there on top. So this is one of the older cars then uh yeah make sure you guys get your calculators out then bill elliott john andretti oh that's where andretti was okay and then kenny irwin and this is the only truck i had from 1997 kenny irwin's for bestest i don't think it's an f-150 although i need to double check that all right and then here's all the bush cars majority of these cars you saw in the uh, third stop motion so we got ricky craven bessie Jeff Burton, Parsons, Jimmy Foster, Michael Waltrip, and then Del Jr., Del Jr., Del Jr., Del Jarrett, Dennis Setzer, and actually a little bit of a typo, but Dennis Setzer was actually 96. Then you have Jeff Fuller, Kyle Petty, Joe Nemechek, and Glenn Allen Jr. All right, let's move on ahead. Bigger groove, 1998. We got 76 die casts, quite a few. So let's go ahead here and add 76 to the math. And let's figure out who we got. Double checkered with a calculator. Oh, double checked. Okay, cool. So we got three Dale Juniors. Okay, so the little story behind why I have three Dale Juniors is that um, just over time, either grandparents or parents or whatever, like they thought, oh, this is a cool looking car. Let's uh, get Griff these. And they did it like three times. So yeah, I have three Dale Jr. diecasts. Then I got the Wallace Elvis car. Uh, shout out to uh, Michael, my childhood friend from Colorado. He actually got me this diecast. Or he, he gave it to me as kind of a pardoning gift. If you are watching this man, hope you're doing well. And I miss you, bud. Then I have another Rusty car, Adventures of Rusty. Then I got Mayfield in the, uh, it's not a convertible, but it's like a 1950s race car. Then another Mayfield. And then we got Jerry Nadeau. And then we got a couple of Musgraves here. And then Daryl Waltrip in the 17. Moving on ahead. Um, excuse me. Another Wallace. Earnhardt's convertible. Not convertible. I keep using that word. The old race car. Then we have three of the Coca-Cola Dale Earnhardt cars that he drove in Japan. And my mom was actually super cool. And the, um, he, she actually tried turning one of the threes into an eight. Just as like a different car. And I think we did not have a Dale Jr. diecast at the time. So this was temporarily supposed to be a Dale Jr. So I, I appreciate um, her work in that. Anyway, so you have Bobby Labonte's Small Soldier's car. Waltrip, another Michael Waltrip. And this was the uh, Olympics car, I believe. I need to double check that. But Ward Burton. And then this is a convertible. Jeff Gordon's convertible car. Moving on here, we got Earnhardt's Bass Pro Shops car. Then we have Hamilton, Terrellabani, and then another Terrellabani without the hood. So, kind of a little naked there. 
then Mark Martin, and then an older Mark Martin, and this is another part of the destroyed crew, because a bunch of the um, blue is torn off, so <laughs> kids, cover your eyes. Then another Jeff Gordon there. Johnny Benson, the Trix car. Then you have another shiny Johnny Benson car. And then Kenny Irwin. And then this one's a little bit damaged. has a little bit of tear on the spoiler in the back. And then a couple of Todd Bodines here, here, and here. So I have the ent entire Tabasco clan. Then I have Irvin, so Wildberry car. Marlon Sabaco, Sabco car. And then Ricky Craven. Uh, let's see, and then we have Strickland Circuit City car, and this one is an older car. Or what I mean by older, I mean I've had it for longer. Rudd, and then Rudd, uh, what is that? Is that the Give Kids the World car? I think so. And then another Mayfield. Then moving up, another Craven. Then we have Musgrave, Jarrett, and the 90 of, oh, whoa, 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 is that the Trickle? I believe so. Then these two Bill Elliott cars were toys at McDonald's. And so we got able to, we were able to get two of them, and we've had them ever since. Um, then the promo car from the 50th anniversary, and then this was another special 50th anniversary car from uh, Bruce or Bruce Vanderwitz, I believe was his name. And then we this is these are the other trucks that I have that are old from back in the day. So you have Chase Sauter, Ron Hornaday, Jack Sprague, and Stacy Compton. Then you got David Green over here, Jeff Burton. Jeff Burton from uh, Japan, and then Bookshot Jones right there. All right, and then these are all the Bush cars from 1998. So this car, I will immediately throw out. I'm so happy that I found this car. I actually bought this car really recently, and it's a uh, Ron Barfield, I believe it is. That's in the two. Then you got Dale Jr., Jeff Purvis. Bill Parsons, still trying to get Patty Moise. I definitely want to get that car. Then you got Matt Kenseth. Then you got PJ. No, Tony Raines. Tony Raines was in the 19. Then Blaze Alexander. Car is still here. Mike Cope in the 30, also driven by Todd Bodine. Tim Fidoa. Then you got Mike McLaughlin. Then you got the 37 of Mark Green. Kevin LePage. And then the 50. Okay, so this is what I was talking about before. So Mark Green did drive the 50 in 1999. But not in 98. I believe it was Jimmy Kitchens? Is that who it is? I think so. And uh, Jimmy Johnson? Yes. The 59, that is the uh, Jimmy Johnson's first start car. I still want to get the uh, Robert Presley 59 that was driven, or that Racing Champions made. Still on the lookout for that. Elliot Sadler. This one's a little older because it's been out of the box for over 20 years. Then you got Glenn Allen Jr. again. And then you got Bookshot Jones again. All right. Oh yeah, and then I have this little doohickey, or this not doohickey, the the pit box thing. And so because the tires were off the car, we could not necessarily take this car off the pit stand. And so we've had this. And so I'm I'm counting it as a car because it is a car. All right. <clears throat> take a look here. 1999. Take a look at that. A hundred and ten diecasts. So, math guys. A hundred and ten. Just, I know this one blows my mind. I could not believe how many diecasts I got from 1999. So let's just dive on in. So we got a couple of Earnhardts here. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, I believe, is it 171? Okay, cool. It's a shame we didn't get a Dr. Referral back to Grubber Roker. Yeah, that'd be cool. So, a couple of Earnhardts. Then we got the Advantix car by Bobby Hamilton that he drove at the Daytona 500, as well as a, a, a gold version of that. Then Kodak Max. Now, this was also um, Racing Champion's 10th anniversary of making um, die casts. So that's why they had a little bit of a celebration going on. So then you have the Kodak Max car. Fair warning, this car does not have tires on, which kind of stinks. Then you got Terry Labonte here. Then you got Kevin LePage, Labonte's NASCAR Racers car. Still want to get Gordon and Kenny Wallace's NASCAR Racers cars. I do not have those. Uh, Stewart's How Dad for Humanity car. Then I have Elliot Sadler's, or 
Scott Johnson won the 21 car. A couple of Spencers here. Jeff Gordon Superman car. Moving on ahead. We'll go down here. We got Terry Labonte's um, Kellogg's car. All of these cars were from cereal boxes. Yeah. They, they had that thing where in all the cereal boxes. And it was one of those where, where you like back up the car and then it zips ahead. So you have each of those. And then the Kellogg's Sen Sentinels car. Then you got Wally Dallenbach here and here. Johnny Benson's Toy Story 2 car. Pop Secret cars. And actually both of these came out of Pop Secret boxes. And then Johnny Benson's regular Cheerios car. He is not a bust in my heart. <laughs> Mark Martins, a couple of Martins here. Michael Waltrip, two Jury Nadus, one older, one more recent. And then another Nadu here, and then Rudd. Benson, a couple of Copes, one older, one newer, and then a shiny Cope. Then two more State Fair Corn Dogs. This one's older, this one's more recent. And then a Rudy's Farm, and this one was really recent, and I'm very pleased to find this car. And then Jimmy Dean, a couple of Jimmy Deans. And then Kenny Schrader has the APR and then the green and the blue cars, and I got two of those. Rudd, a couple of Bodines, Mayfield, and so I'll just mention it right now. Um, quite a few of these, including I believe you, 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 and you, and one of you, um, was from those that one, uh, those ten packs that I got from oh, 2018, I think it was. I did take them out of the box this one time just because, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I wanted to light them all up. So they're all back in their boxes now. So we go a little bit higher up, we got Bill Elliott's shiny car, and then another Bill Elliott's shiny car, a couple of Jarrett's, Presley, a couple of Presley's here, and then we got Daryl Waltrip, 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 Waltrip. Jeff Bodine in the 60 right there, and then a couple of Kenny Wallaces, including a shiny Kenny. And then if we want to back up, then I got the um, Buzz Lightyear Toy Story 2 car. And ready. Um, did I? Yes, I did. Okay. Then you have Nemechek, a couple of the John Wayne Team Sab Go cars, then as well as his regular car, Irvin's um, M&M's car. And then this one has been unboxed for 20 plus years. And then there's that. Then there's Schrader, and then another Schrader. Moving on ahead, we got Bill Elliott's uh, Toy Story 2 car, little, little, and then this car was technically 1999, so this is weird because it did come in the 1999 boxes, but it was raced in 1998. So that's why I kind of did one each. Then you got a couple of Burtons here, Bookshot Jones, and then a couple of 10th anniversary cars, a couple of promo cars from the 99 Daytona 500. This 53 Planters car, I don't remember the like why this car was even made. Like it's not real, it's a total fantasy car. And then a 99 promo car. And then on the other side here, we got all the Bush cars from 99. LaJoy, Earnhardt Superman cars, and you got Purvis, Trickle, Phil Parsons, a couple of Schraders, Kenseth, and then you got McLaughlin. Is McLaughlin there? No. McLaughlin, Glenn Allen Jr., yes. A couple of Adam Petties, Mark Green, and then uh, that would be Mike Dillon in the 59. Then the 72 was, oh, I need to double check, Hermes Sadler, I think it was. Elton Sawyer, and then uh, Bookshot Jones slash Larry Pearson. Then you got Jason Jarrett in the 233 cars, followed by Jeff Green, Jeff Green, Jeff Green, Jeff Gordon, and then Matt Kenseth. And then this car was actually one of the last gifts that my grandma gave me before she passed away. Um, it was in that box, and so I took it out of the box. I am not unscrewing this car off of its stand. So, all right. Moving on to 2000. I'm going to speed up a little bit here because there's still a lot of stuff I want to get to. So here's the class of 2000. So let's go ahead and we're going to add 47 to this. So we got... <clears throat> Earnhardt's car, then the 2000 Daytona car, Cherry Swirls, a couple of Martins, then you got Mikey, which by the way, the sides here are blacked out because my brother decided to be really smart and sharpened it out. Then we got the uh, Dale Jr. diecast. Let's see, we got Compton. Oh, here, let's go back up. Gordon's 2000 car, Nadu, Rudd, 
Craven, Nemechek, and then Irwin, rest in peace. Then this Andretti card came out of a cereal box. Then you have Compton. Then the 14, which I believe at the time was Mike Bliss. Then you got Kyle Petty's, Kenny Wallace's. Then you got the 16 of LePage, Kenseth, Labonte, Stewart. A couple of Wallace's, Bodine, Presley, Blaney, and Jeff Burton. A couple of Woods. Then Elliot Sadler. And then Tony Stewart's Kids Against Humanity. Or, sorry, the Workshop Kids Workshop car. Then a couple of Bush cars, not as many from 2000, but you got Ron Hornaday, which was in that unboxing video, then followed by Jeff Burton, Casey Atwood, David Green, Fidoa, Kenny Irwin's Bush car, Tony Roper, which by the way, these, hold on, one, two, three, four, I have in the 124 scale. A couple of Kellers, a couple of Martins, and then Anthony Lazaro. You guys remember Anthony Lazaro? And then Bookshot Jones. And then these are the two um, cars that I did not, or I mean, at one time I did take around the box, but they are in their boxes now. And then there's a closer shot of Junior's car. And then there's a closer shot of Terry Labarney's car. All right, 2001. Let's keep pushing along here. Add 55, my dudes. So we got <clears throat> Rusty Wallace, Earnhardt's 2001 final car. Terry Labonte, this one was another cereal box car, I believe. And this was one of those where you do back it up. Martin, Elliot, and then a couple of Bensons. Ward again, Gordon, Nadu. This one's another pretty damaged car, and I apologize, but yeah, Jimmy Spencer. Harvick, and then again, this is the one that was driven all the time. And then, yeah. And then this one, then Joe Niemicek, and then Ken Schrader. Schrader's Snickers car without the hood. Schrader, Marlin, 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 Andretti, then Benson, Benson, Bodine, Mayfield, 14 at the time. I want to say it was Hornaday. Then you got Michael Waltrip here, then Matt Kenseth, Bob Labani, John Andretti up here, Pop Secret, as well as the Honey Lit Cheerios car. Kyle Petty, Kyle Petty, then Jimmy Johnson's first uh, career start car, which was an authentic, which actually, I think I pre-ordered this car. So yeah, that was actually from Lionel, straight from them. Then Hamilton, Jarrett, Sadler, Stewart, and actually these two, Stewart and Labonte, I got these two together. Uh, oh, did I mess up? Yeah, I did. Okay, this was a 2000 car, my mistake. Anyway, so Kyle Charity Red Car, Atwood Atwood. Okay, so these two I got together, and then Kenza and a Mikey. Get that eye on Mikey. Okay. Uh, then farther up, Stacy Compton. My brother decided to Sharpie out the front. I think this one was more because there was a big scratch on the front, and I think he was trying to cover it up in Sharpie. Then you got Dave Blaney, Andy Houston. You guys remember Andy Houston? Jeff Burton, Jason Leffler, and then Ryan Newman. So, yeah, I, and by the way, these three, I love those cars a lot. Then Bush Series, we got Harvick, LaJoy, Hamilton Jr. with the Marines car. Then, this is so dumb. So you got the Tony Raines Alka Setso car. Uh, my little brother's school, for whatever reason, had like an overload of these cars. And somehow I got three of them. So, there they are. Then you got Nemechek and then Jimmy Johnson. And then Robert Presley's car. This one, actually, I got when I went to Charlotte Speedway in 2018. And this was actually in the vlog. So, yeah. And it was signed by Robert Presley himself. All right. Class of 2002. We got another 43 here. So let's throw that in there. All right. So we got Park. A couple of Labonis, including the Looney Tunes car. Martin, Junior's All-Star car. Elliot's Muppet car. Followed by Benson, Newman. Then you got the 28 of Rudd. Back up. Jimmy Johnson, 92. Did I miss that? Oh, sorry about that. Okay. So, Martin, Jr., Newman, Rudd, Rudd's Muppet car, Harvick's 02 car, E.T., and then we got Jeff Green's AOL car, as well as his Looney Tunes car, as well as his Scooby-Doo car. Now, this one, the Scooby-Doo movie, you can say whatever you want about it. 
but um, <laughs> this uh, car is really nostalgic to me actually. I remember seeing it race in the all-star race and I, uh, I don't know, I really like the paint scheme of this car. Then Robbie Gordon in the 31, as well as Pepe Le Pew. Then you got Ken Schrader's O2 car. Then this is really interesting. So this was also in a, like a Cheerios box. Now this car in the middle raced for real, but then the original trilogy and then the first movie, I don't believe these cars were ever raced, but for whatever reason they made those cars and I thought it was super cool. Anyway, so Pop Secret car, then you got this uh, old school car, but it's the O2 Honey Nut Cheerios car. Brawny, but uh, driven by Bookshot Jones. Then you got Joe Nemechek, not Joe Nemechek. Was it Nemechek? Uh, I'm trying to remember. Nemechek or Nadu? One of the two. Gordon, 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 Gordon. And then Stewart's uh, Great Pumpkin car. Mayfield's Muppet car. And then Waltrip's O2 car. And then you got a couple of Johnsons here. The original car. And then the Power of Pride. And then Hamilton Schneider Electric. And then here are the Bush cars I have from 02. Junior's uh, car they driven at Charlotte, followed by Junior's car at uh, ba -ba -ba Richmond. And then you got Scott Riggs, Gary Earnhardt, Jack Sprague, Greg Biffle, and Michael Waltrip. Shazane, how do I st store my cars? I have two bigger um, cases that I have a couple of them stored. Otherwise, I have them in um, traveling cases. So that is where I put those. And then I do have a Tony Stewart IROC car, and I'm 90% sure this is 2002. And then Yoshi Fan, it was Dimachek. Okay, cool. But then Stewart's IROC car, and I'm pretty sure it is that. All right, thanks for stopping by, Jimmy Johnson 07. All right, class of 2003. So only 39 for this one. So let's go ahead and add 39 here. So we have the zero of Sprague, and then you got, let's jump in here. Oh, I did that first. Okay. So I have the Junior um, Daytona Bush car, and then again, it's still in the box. Okay. So I got Sprague. Uh, it was Steve Park, technically, at the time, followed by Wallace. The four, which would be blah, 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 Mike Skinner at the time. Labonis Power of Cheese. This was one of those cars, if you guys remember, where it's like in temperature, it changes color. And so, like, it was cold downstairs, so that's why it's darker. Then you got Finding Nemo right here. Then we got, hold on, is that the right? Yeah, it is. Wow, that's interesting. Okay, yeah. Junior, Elliot. Now, this car technically is 2002, but I did get it in 2003, so that's why I put it in 2003. But this car ran at Atlanta in 2002. Then you got Newman, Waltrip, Waltrip, Biffle. Then you got, at the time, Andretti. McMurray, Sadler, a couple of Cravens, Harvick, and then Gordon's Pepsi car. Then you got Ken's of DeWalt car, Labonte, Mayfield, Stuart Stewart, and then a couple of Woods. Then you got Richard Petty's um, Victory Lap car, as well as, oh, I believe it's Fittipaldi's Grand's car. Don't think there's a name on it, so I actually don't know. Then you got Kyle Petty, Johnson, and then this car I'm so happy existed. Um, Jason Keller's 81 car. This car does exist in the 124 scale. In the future, I do plan to get that car. But anyway, I'm so happy that this car exists. Followed by Dale Jarrett. Kurt Busch, Kurt Busch, Nadu. And then again, brother decided to sharpie it out because I don't know why. And then Harvick's payday car. And that, other than Junior's car, is the only Bush car from 03 that I have. Alright, so class of 04, not as big as the other ones. So let's go ahead here and add 19 to that. So there's only, so not that big. So we got Labonte's Got Milk Car, Martin's Batman Car, Martin's Oscar Mayer Car, Scott Riggs' the Harlem Globetrotters, then you got Kenseth, a couple of Stewart's, Shrek 2, and then the 25th car. And, okay, the rear axle was ripped off of this car. You don't see it in this view, but um, the entire back wheels are completely off on this car. So then you've got Goran over here. Then Sadler, which, hey, hey, I have the 124 scale of now. Mears, McMurray, and uh, Jeff Green 
that's right, in 2004, and both of these were also out of cereal boxes. Kurt Busch, and then this would be Joe Nemechek at the time. We have been in Kurt Busch's Super Mayan car. Uh, if I remember correctly, this car I got in Christmas of 2004. Random fun fact. Okay, so let's do Gordon, and then Gordon's uh, all-star car, and technically my brother got this car, but A, it's mine now. Vickers, Compton, and Johnny Sauter. Johnny Sauter, I actually got this die cast on my uh, North Carolina trip. All right, so now let's move on to 2005. So the class of 2005. Now this year is a very interesting year because it was actually the final year that both me and my brother collected diecasts. After that, it was just me. And you'll see a bit of a difference here as we move forward. So let's go ahead here and let's add 24 to that. So let's go ahead here, move on ahead. And so we got Mark Martin Jr. as well as Jr.'s all-star car. And so actually my uh, grandmother actually got me this car in 2005, Christmas of 2005. Then you got Casey Kane, Riggs' Herbie car. Then you got Newman, which by the way has another Sharpie. Biffle, and then the bottom line is right there, but we'll get to that in a minute. Gordon, Sadler, a couple of Terry Labonis, and then Johnson is right there. Now, this car I actually did get in 2005, but then this one was in during the, the North Carolina trip. Let's see here. So Newman, Biffle, Labonis, Mayfield, Stewart, Ken Schrader, and actually a majority of these cars, these were all in uh, Stop Motion 5. Johnson, Jarrett, and a couple of Kurt Bushes. And then moving up, a couple of Bush series cars. Harvick's Pelan Pelo Rico car. Carl Edwards. Casey Kane, which was part of that diecast unboxing. 81 of Junior. And then of the Talladega Knights cars, this is the only one I have. I don't have Ricky Bobby. I don't have uh, Jean. Uh, what the frick is his name? Jean. Nah, I'm going to get roasted in the comments, but. Yeah, um, the 55. I don't have any of those. So, let's jump on ahead here. Class of 2006. So, things are going to start changing a little bit here. And so, let's go ahead and add 14 to that list. So, this is going to be very interesting. These are my only my Bush cars. So, Biffle, Martin, and uh, David Green. Now, what's funny with these two is that they have the Nextel Cup logos on the two of them. But um, they are Bush cars for sure, like to the to infinity and beyond. Jean Girard, thank you. So then, um, so like Kenzo and Newman, I got those in the unboxing video. But like Truex, Martin, Kane, and Yaley, I got all of those in two thousand six. And then Stewart and Johnson and Edwards, I also got those in two thousand six. The twenty one and the twenty six. I bought those more recently, so that's why they are there. So, all right, give me one second here. All right, so 2007. Ferris, is this staying up after stream is done? Yes, it is, but what I hope to do is create highlight videos. And so like this diecast that I'm talking about will be its own separate video. Okay. So class of 2007, so let's go ahead here and add 20 onto that. Most if not all of these cars were part of the uh, stop motion 4, if I remember correctly. So you got Kurt and Kyle Busch, and by the way, with the exception of these two, these were all winter circle. These were not um, action. So Kurt Busch, Kyle Busch, Dale Jr., Casey Kane, Hamlin. Oh, and actually fun fact, let's back out for a second. Hamlin, McMurray, and Mears were my first cars that I ever purchased in um, 2007. I could have gotten Dave Blaney's 22 car, but if I remember correctly, I only could get three at the time, and so those were the three that I went with. Actually, now that I think about it, let's see if I can remember the order when I got each of these die casts. Because I remember I started with the 11, the 26, and the 25, as I mentioned before. Let's see, then I got one die cast separately. I'm trying to remember, Biffle, that's right. It was Biffle next. So I remember getting him separately at a Walmart in uh, <laughs> Bismarck, North Dakota. 
And then after that, I got four more, and those four being Kane, Sadler, Harvick, and Gilliland. And I got each of those at a Target in 2007. And they were all, again, Winter Circle. Uh, and then the order after that then gets a little fuzzy. I know I got Junior and Gordon at um, around my birthday. I remember that. And then um, I know I got Newman close to Christmas. And then I got Kurt Busch during Christmas. Uh, who am I missing? I got Martin in Christmas. I remember that. As well as Johnson's. I believe this is Martinsville race to win. And then as usual, these two I got um, as a in uh, cereal boxes. So yeah, here's a more up close look of each of those cars. And uh, these were all me. Like I, these are all the ones that I, I got. All right, class of 2008. So I have not really added much to this group of cars um, since I originally got them in 2008. And the reason why is because they're actually quite rare online as far as I'm concerned. So you got Truex. Oh, let's see if I can remember the order of these. Truex, Montoya, Junior, and Stewart. I got those first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just trying to remember the order again here. Um, I also know I got Bush, Junior, Junior. Mm, I think there was one more, maybe? I don't remember, but... Yeah, and then, of course, Sharpie Brigade is on the 31. And again, that was uh, my brother and uh, not myself. So, anyway, so Truex, Mears, Martin, Kane, Kenseth, Kyle Busch, Sadler, McMurray, Harvick, Burton, Montoya, Rudiman, Junior, Junior. Yeah, and as I said, like, none of this really changed because, like, you either saw these in the uh, Kringle uh, 500. So, there you go. All right, class of 2009. Only 11 in 2009. So I'll just go ahead and throw the 11 up here. Um, so these were all Winter Circle. And so what was really interesting about this, I think this was part of uh, Winter Circle's uh, demise. And I know there was some more, like I believe Boyer and Newman existed in Winter Circle, but I never found those uh, diecasts. So you got Martin, Kane, Hamlin, Tony Stewart, Kyle Busch. Let's zoom in here. Logano, Gordon, Johnson, Earnhardt Jr., Edwards, and then the 09 Daytona 500 promo car. So. Yeah, not a lot in this group. And this is actually going to be a little bit of a uh, common thing here for a little bit. So 2010, we don't have as much here with only eight. So let's just go ahead here. We're going to add another eight. To that group um and actually it's around this time when i actually kind of fell off on the nascar scene and i just was not as big of a nascar fan and so if i remember correctly the 99 maybe both of the 88s i just remembered that uh, my grandmother got me a bunch of these die casts not all but number number yeah quite a few of them from 2010 so you got Martin's car, which by the way, never technically raced because it had the spoiler. Then Stuart, Kyle Busch, and then Kyle Busch's Snickers car, Amp, National Guard, and then Carl Edwards's Affleck car. And then of course I got the first ever new Xfinity car race car of um, Dale Jr. Some point in the future, I would love to get this car in the 124 scale. Also, this was the last time Junior <clears throat> won, or I'm sorry, this is the last year Winter Circle was in existence. That's what I meant to say. So, class of 2011, this one is very interesting because this group was a lot smaller. Well, I shouldn't say a lot, but like, let's just go ahead and add the plus 10 here. So, Ambrose and Truex were both added quite later. And then uh, the 14 and the 11 were both um, Spin Master cars, the, uh, the old NASCAR Authentics. So let's go ahead and do this. Ambrose, Hamlin, Stewart, and then the two Kyle Bushes. We have a third Kyle Bush up here, the Interstate Batteries car. Harvick, Truex, and then the two Dales. 
So let's keep pushing along here. 2012, we got 11. And so actually, the fun fact about this, Harvick and Kyle Busch, yes, are the only action cars. All the others are uh, Spin Master cars. And I'm going to be honest, I am not a fan of the Spin Master cars. They look so janky. So here, let's make sure we add them here. Plus 11. There we go. So let's just go ahead and move forward here. Kane, Patrick, Hamlin, Boyer, and then Kyle Busch. Then Logano, Gordon, Harvick, Newman, Johnson, and then Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s Amp Energy car that I believe drove at Martinsville? I need to double check on that, but I'm pretty sure it was Martinsville. Alright, class of 2013 here. Shazane 2012 was my first year I bought diecasts. Interesting. Alright, so 2013. Let's go ahead here and add 9. So we got Brian Scott's car, which I bought during the North Carolina trip. Kozlowski, Biffle, Kyle Busch, and Kenziff. And then, uh, oh, it was Waltrip. Okay, I thought it was Mark Martin, but this is actually Michael, or Waltrip. A couple of June Bugs, and then Edwards. I know that I think Grandma got me these two, Edwards and Junior, for my birthday. And then she got me these five for Christmas. And then I got these two separately. Yes, it was Martinsville. Okay, cool. So there we go. So 2014, we get a little bit bigger here. So let's go ahead and we're gonna add 12 to this. So we got McMurray, Austin Dillon. Oh yeah, so in regards to uh, Spin Master Authentics, I need to double check, but I'm pretty sure Harvick, Dillon, McMurray, Bain, Logano, Larson, and Junior were all Spin Master um, Authentics. So yeah. McMurray, and then uh, Harvick, this car, oh, when did I get this car? When did I get this? Was it during the Dark Carolina trip? Maybe, I don't remember. Then Stewart, got him at Christmas. Junior, this was part of the Wave 88. Then, let's see, then we have all of those. And then Regan Smith's Nationwide car. This one is actually a underrated gem, in my opinion. Regan Smith, um, it's just, I don't know, I really like the blue on this car a lot. I do not have Chase Elliott's Xfinity slash Nationwide car, and I wish I did. All right, class of 2015, we have 11 cars here. So again, not a lot, but we'll get there. All right, so for this group, no Xfinity cars. And yeah, I do have two uh, Danica Patrick cars. I have two Danica Patrick cars because one of them I did buy and then I think someone got me another Patrick car for Christmas. Stenhouse and Stewart, I got those during the North Carolina trip. Mears, uh, another car my grandma did um, give me for Christmas, as well as Harvick. Bain I bought separately, Kurt Busch I bought separately, and then Kenza, Logano, and Edwards. They were all Christmas gifts, too. Three of those bound to... Was it 2015? Ah, shoot. Okay. Eh, not a big deal, but... Anyway, so these were the only 2015 cars. Alright, so you guys ready for 2016? Boom! We are getting a little bit bigger for 2016. So let's go ahead and let's add 37 to that so the reason why 2016 was bigger that was when lionel um created the authentics line and created more um cars and because of that i was a lot more open i was also done with college at the time so i decided to invest quote unquote more with uh, lionel racing so show you everything i got from 2016 <clears throat> we got mcmurray brad keselowski dylan and then this is Dylan's uh, throwback car. Harvick, small one car. Kane, Bain, and Enrique and Smith. Then we got Stenhouse, Kyle Busch's Gittles car. Kenziths, a couple of Kenziths. Blaney, Reagan, and I'm, if I remember correctly, this was the first ever 23 car, like number 23 car, before any Jimmy Spencer cars. So, fun fact, 
Elliot and then Newman, Rocket Man, who's right there. Patrick's Mobile One car, Stuart's Mobile One car, and then Stuart's car that he raced at Homestead. Then that. Then Larson's race win car at Michigan. Kurt Busch. And then just a little fun fact. If you see that it's gray here, those are authentics. And then the ones that are black inside, those are actually from Lionel. So anyway, Kurt Busch, Busher, James, Jeffrey Earnhardt, Newman, and then let's back up. Brian Scott, and I still absolutely love this car. Johnson, as well as Johnson's Superman car. I do not have Junior's Batman car. Truex, DiBenedetto, also known as the first ever 83 car that I ever got. Junior, Junior, and then Junior again. This was the throwback to Buddy Baker. McDowell, and then I got a second Austin Dillon car. And then, uh, let's see, do we, oh, hold on one second. And then the Xfinity cars of Bubba, Slurroback, Ryan Reed's actual car, which I got in 2018 at Iowa, and then Ryan Reed's um, throwback car. So, 2017 here. So, by the way, one little update. Um, when I'm done with the diecast and before we get into NR2003, I'm going to take a bit like a 15 minute break just to catch up on my voice. And I'm going to have a little bit of food. So, once we're done with the diecast here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to break for a little bit. So, anyway. Class of 2017, it's starting to get bigger. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add 68 to the mix. Yeah, we got a lot of cars here. Yeah, and this was all me. Like I, this is, I learned more about like Lionel and their pre-order stuff. And um, as I said, I definitely got a lot more uh, invested into this. So what do we got? We got McMurray, we got Brad K with this Miller Lite car, Fitzgerald Gliders kit car, an Auto Trader car, Austin Dillon with his Dow car, AAA and Throwback, and then I think we're going to do both, so Patrick's Nature's Bakery car, which is, uh, you know, the die cast that was never raced, Hamlin, Ty Dillon, Clint Boyer, Stenhouse, Stenhouse, Kyle Busch times two, then we got Kyle Busch's 2017 Patriot car, which I got at North Carolina, Caramel, Suarez, and then Matt Kenseth. Harvick Carvick, Casey Kane by a bunch. Then, oh, did I not? Let's see, Trevor Bain is there. Oh, that stinks. Okay, there's another Trevor Bain down there, but for whatever reason, I never got those. Oh, no, I did. Okay. So, Trevor Bain's throwback car. Thanks, Shazane. Greatly appreciate it, bud. So Trevor Bain, Trevor Bain, Logano, Logano, Kenseth, or Kenseth, yep. Then Logano, Logano, Greg Galding. Now this car is going to go down in infamy because, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, as the first ever pre-order that I ever got. Like I actually straight up pre-ordered this car and then I got it and I'm so happy. It is such an awesome looking car. Alan Day, Elliot, 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 Menard, Johnson, Albaninger, which you saw in the unboxing video. Amarola, Amarola, a couple of Larsons, which is weird because this Larson car never raced, but this car did. Menard, then we move over. Newman, 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 Landon Castle, Chris Buescher, uh, David Reagan, I believe, Kurt Busch, DiBenedetto, Truex's Weyer, Johnson Johnson. And then here are all the junior cars that I got from 2017, and I love it because you got red, yellow, green, blue, blue. Then you got Byron's car, and then you got Joey Logano's Xfinity car, Harvick, Custer, and then finally Dale Jr. And then a couple of cars that I got extras of, and these are actually for my grandmother, but I left them in the box. Kyle Busch's 2017 car, and then Junior's 2017 car. Alright, we are getting a little bit bigger here. Class of 2018, add another 90 to the mix. Yeah, so I think, yeah, I got, I went a little crazy here. So I'll just go ahead and do a kind of a quick glide over of all of the cars here. I think that Reagan Dirty was a 2018. Was it? No, it's not. Hold up. I need to double check this. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure it's 2017. Uh, I'll do research later. 
No, because I got two other Reagan cars that were from 2018. So, anyway, so a couple of Brad Kays, McMurray, McMurray, Dylan Dylan, Harvick, a couple of, quite a few Elliots, a couple of Amarolas, Hamlin, Ryan Blaney. I know I'm going through these fast and I wish I could spend a little bit of time, but I do want to get to the NR2003 stuff. So Blaney's, Boyer, um, Stenhouse, then we got Harvick's here, Bain, Kenseth, Kenseth, Kenseth. Bain, let's see, we got Patrick here, of course, gotta get Danica, Elliot, Elliot, Kyle Busch, and then all the Kyle Bushes, including the race win car. Oh, well, wait, was it a race win? No, it was just the Patriot car, that's right. So Stenhouse, Boyer, and then Blaney. Then you got Suarez, then Suarez is the Doggo car, Peak, and then Eric Jones on that other mold. Eric Jones, and then the Menard, Menard, Logano, Larson, Larson, the Chicago Land car, then the Halloween car that you drove at Kansas, and then the Vegas Strong car, as well as the DC Solar car. <coughs> then you got Bubba, um, and then Almendinger, and then Johnson, which you see over here, as well as Johnson's final ride car. Truex, 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 Bullman. Then you got Menard, Logano, Byron, 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 Newman, and then you got the Benedetto along with Busher. Then you got the Bowmans up here, Casey King, Casey King, Casey King, Larson, Bush, Bush, Reagan, Reagan, Busher, and then DeBetadetto. Then we got the 18 promo car from Kansas, and then you got Elliot Sadler, Hamlin. This is the generic Fitzgerald car. Like, it specifically like does not have a name with this one. Then Bill Elliott, Chris Busher, and then Time or not wow, not Chris Busher. Sindrick, Austin Sindrick, and then Time Majeski and then Junior, and then Harvick, and then I got the ARCA cars of Decker, as well as um, Melani Munter, or I think that's how you say her name. Then you got the trucks of Moffitt, then the 27 of Briscoe, Ben Rhodes, Matt Crafton, and then I got this Bowman car that's still in the box, as well as Blaney's race win from the Volvo. All right, two more years, but here we go. I have 102 diecasts from 2019. I am a mad man. So, I have a lot of diecasts. I I don't have a problem. I, I promise you that. I do not have a problem. Um, I won't go ahead and point at all the cars here, but I will just say that I cannot believe how many diecasts that I um, have gotten. I'm just uh, blown away at how many I have. And so again, you can just take a look here at all the die casts that I have collected over the years. I believe it's 2017, okay. So yeah, and then the trucks of Enfinger, Decker, Kyle Busch, Mike Snyder, and then Moffitt. I do hope to get a couple more 2019 soon, including Moffitt's uh, Veterans Day one, the one with my little brother on it. And then finally, to end this off, I got seven 2020 cars. So Harvick, Tyler Reddick, Hamlin, Kyle Busch, Logano, Harvick, and Hamlin. So let's go ahead here. Oh yeah, and then I got a few hoods here, but I wanna try to wrap this up here. So here's some of the hoods that I've collected from over the years. All right, um, and then I did a little video here. Let's uh, mute this. All right, so let's see here. Let's, I want to do, yeah. So guys, I have a lot of diecasts, 926. So go ahead on social media and you guys can say exactly how many diecasts I have. Oh yeah. <clears throat> When I gotta go find someone like you When there's no one else to say that it's true <laughs> So yeah, okay, so Jordan, 926 If you guys want to do the uh, math and just double check um, I added the pluses throughout this uh, chat So uh, let me know 
But uh, yeah, look at that. Look at all those cars. So yeah, I, there's definitely a lot more out there. But uh, yeah, let's see that, that. So yeah, this is five minutes long. So yeah, chat, I have a lot of die casts. Like a lot of cars. I do not have a problem whatsoever. Mm hmm. Oh, I'm just blown away. Because again, I've collected die cast since 1997. And so in my uh, display case. I got the oldest. Here, I'll go ahead and I'll throw myself out here. So you guys can see my pretty face. Yeah, there you are. There's me. So yeah, I uh, I have a lot of die cast guys. I have a lot of cars. So as this continues to show here. So here's the deal as I show this. So the plan is um, I'm going to take again like a 15 minute break. I'm going to have some food here, use the bathroom, catch up on my voice. And then when I get back here, what we're going to do is I'm going to watch up. We're going to watch a few of the Intertiles of Three Shorts. And then we're going to get into the uh, Dale Earnhardt series. And I want to talk more about that as well as one more spark. And then I'll show you a couple of things that could have been made. But uh, just because of burnout and all that fun stuff, I uh, didn't. So yeah, and so again, what I hope to do is I hope to clip this out. Yeah, you, know, you can go ahead and speed this up. I might go ahead and I might like have this as a separate video and publish it later. So, all right, so let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead, I'll go back to just me. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and take 15 here, eat some food here, use the bathroom, catch up on my breath. And then when we come back, we're going to be going for the rest of the night. So, <coughs> so thanks guys so much for sticking around. Go ahead, use the bathroom, check other streams, and, and tell others about this stream and just how long we're going to go on for. And um, yeah, we will, I suck at ending these, so let's make sure, hold on, get out. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and let's do that. All right, so is the music playing right now? Let's make sure the music's playing. Yes, okay, cool. Okay, so we will be right back, and we'll be back at about 6.15 Central, 7.15 Eastern.
All right, we are gonna come back live here. So make sure everybody comes back here. We're gonna get going and we're going to kick some booty. Let's go ahead and pause here. Let's go ahead and bring back my shiny face. All right, so we have been live for over three hours so far. And um, before we continue, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Drive Through because uh, even though my laugh is something, I wanted to uh, just so that we have a little bit of time here. I want to do this. So I don't know if uh, Drive Through is okay with this, but I'm gonna. I just want to again give them a little bit of a shout out here. So let's just go ahead here for one second. Let's go back to here. Toes, buddy. I love drive through. <laughs> look, look where my thumb is. <laughs> oh, I love you, drive through. And it's. Fight back, man. Fight back. Yeah, caution's out. Roll out yep. of the throttle, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> what? The? Dude, I can't. That's it. It's over. I'm. All right, I love you, drive through. I love you so much. Your laughter brings joy to the world, and I mean every word of that. All right, so let's see here. Let's see if we get most of our people back. Let's see here. Still watching if you need me to keep count of anything. You got me in this chat. Thanks, Jordan. Ah, oh, that's so funny. Well, yeah, Jordan Burns, I guess that's true too. All right, so. So go ahead and spread the word here. We're going to go deep into the NR2003 stuff now. And so what we're going to start with is actually my uh, first uh, um, NR2003 shorts, actually. And actually, I want to go all the way back. And let's see, is it here? I need to know one thing here. I'm going to go back to me for a sec, just so you guys don't see anything illegal. So let's see here. Um, is it in this one? Is my question. Let's go to my files, um, videos. See, I don't believe it's here. All right, that's fine. I'm just wondering if this version of Enter Thousand Three. Where's the compilation? Where's the compilation? This. Yeah, eh, it's not my favorite because I kind of mess with it a little bit. All right, I'm not gonna do it. So let's go ahead here and I'll bring back the screen. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we're just gonna jump right into the first one. I'm surprised I don't have any dislikes on this and don't, don't nobody go ahead and mess with this. It only has three comments. John Fitzpatrick, Hunt 2000, er, and then Middle Mastodon. That's dope. Okay, so quick question. Do I, hmm, I don't, I don't. I wonder if it's okay if I do music. Maybe if I do quiet. Maybe. I don't remember if this is bad or not. I mean, it doesn't have it, so I think I'm okay. But, all right, I'm just gonna let it ride. So, all right, so one thing that I wanna just note. So with these videos, you notice how there's gonna be a bit of like a, I think it's called ghosting, I think is the word you want. So, hey, Jim, JM, Perion, hope that everything is going well. So, let's, uh, so, okay, I wanna focus on this. So, you notice how it kinda like ghosts? So there's this thing on Sony Vegas Pro called uh, sample resampling, or smart resampling. I didn't know that, and you know, if you use Sony Vegas Pro, you wanna disable the resample, and that's why it does look ghosty. Also, this is kinda my first stab at uh, Photoshop. So that's why it looks the way it does. Yeah, and also the graphics look meh. Because if I want to do something, I want to make sure I do something good. All right. So you have the ghosty, ghosty woasties there. Face car pulls on in. Yeah, and so again, it's gonna be a little while before I actually get into, um, <clears throat> actual, like when I start doing actual broadcasting here. So yeah, start, they're racing, 
five laps to go. I did not know how to space my stuff accurately. But, no, I'm actually, I actually like doing that. So, down the back straightaway here, they are too wide. Yeah, again, I'm not a big fan of that ghosting. Oh yeah, I manually did that, shaking the camera. So down the front straightaway, four laps to go. And so yeah, again, cut me some slack, because this was six, almost six years ago. Hey Yoshi fan. Yeah, I the ghostiness, I, yeah, I, I do fix it later. But I just wanted to look back at this. Oh, look at Gordon, down to the inside here. Yeah, I made him really slip if I slick if I remember correctly. Oh, they contact a little bit. On board with Casey Kane and oh yeah, some madness happens here. Yep, they get into each other. That's <laughs> that's right. Oh, Harvick. Yeah, that's right. I remember now. So a huge wreck right there. Harvick is done in caps lock. Paul Menard is also done in caps lock. Hamlin and Logano make to the pits, but are done. <laughs> oh, I thought they crashed into each other again. That's funny. But we're still green, because you know me, I'm the king of still green when it's not caution. I'm gonna grab my energy drink here. The big one. So you got that's uh, Newman, I believe, we're on board with. Then there's Kyle Busch zooming in on the back of the cars. And then the turn number three here. Who's that smoking underneath? And that would be oh Hamlin. Two to go. That's right, Dale Jr. was out on that wreck. Final lap, presented by Nobody. And Newman down to the inside of Kyle Busch as they slick side, side by side. On board Kyle Busch, as they zoom in on Newman and Dylan. Down the back straightaway here, Newman, Dylan, Edwards, and Kyle Busch. Oh yeah, that's right, I still had issues trying to put the clips together. And then off of turn number four, here comes Carl Edwards. Does Edwards have anything for Austin Dillon? No, Austin Dillon wins at Charlotte. And then I did the TV set one. Austin Dillon, winner, dash at Charlotte. I wonder if I still have the graphic of that. Oh, I would be absolutely thrilled if that was the case. That'd be hilarious. And so I did me doing the donuts. Oh yeah, like a BA. And then there's the unofficial results. Eh, not the best at lining up. And then, yeah, then I moved the camera all jinkly. I remember that. I don't remember Junior being involved in that wreck. So yeah, my first ever short and uh, Austin Dillon wins the race. Go figure. Or in his case, a figure eight. Oh yeah, and then I added that filter effect. That's right, I remember that now. And then replay us of the big crash. And then I had credits on the bottom there. Hey, there you go, there's your credits. Dub zap by Gunnar Olsen. Okay, I think that is royalty free, so I think I'm okay. You, the viewers, thanks for it. So that's how I did the credits, okay, very good. Very, very good. Oh yeah, I was not the best at uh, framing the shot. Yeah, Sonic Rules, you're right. Austin would be the first uh, rookie to win the All-Star Race. And I'm bored with Hamlin. If I remember correctly, I did something a little creative with ending this video. I don't remember though how I did it. <laughs> That's Harvick. Uh, hey, how's it going? Oh yeah, there's that shot. 
I, it's E.V. Hi, I, it's E.V. And then there's the finish again of Austin Dillon. <laughs> what if the OG would if on this channel? Um, I don't think I'm going to look at that video. Um, if I have time, I'll definitely look at that. But I, my main focus is going to be the D uh, Dale Earnhardt video. But let's go ahead and I want to jump to this one. And this one, oh, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll do this one. All right. So the second short. Subway fire, Firecracker 250 at Daytona, right. powered by Coca-Cola. All right, so this one, what I did was I actually snagged audio from the uh, ESPN race, and I think I'm okay with doing Yeah. Then I got seven comments here. John A., Phantom Gamer, DJ Anything, Kyle Busch Fan, Awkward Jaguar, and Jaden Howard. Not bad. Not bad at all. Now to its final three right. laps. Don't forget NASCAR.com. That's right. Has, I added uh, that graphic. All your latest NASCAR information. Regan Smith, the leader, is still up on the banks. <laughs> that's right. Any problems on that restart, man? Oh. Get up to the fence there out of the way. Get lucky here, man. Yep, that's that right. We, we can get back on pit road. Try to add as much realism as possible there. to this. Get a, get a shot at it. Just do your best. Ah, uh, this is funny. Sounds like Junior's confidence is not real high on the fuel. Oh, this is all right. This close championship yeah. fight. You can lose oh. a whole lot of points here. That's why I think Chase Elliott, even oh, though he's, he had the problem that brought the caution down, he's in a pretty good position. Pace cars off. Yes, he did. Let's see how it plays out. There'll be two laps to go at Daytona. Yeah, not necessarily proud of this one, but it's fine. Oh, yeah, I tried. Kyle Larson, 42. Regan Smith, 7. Joey Logano. Man, Ryan I wish I could Reed have the on board sound effect right there. Yeah, Ron Reed's doing all he can to push Larson out front of this Joey group. Down low. Who's that with Scar? Oh, Brandon Gone. Got it. Not locked on. He was just bumping right there. Three wide lane headed by Johnny Sauter in the 80. Yeah. Oh, Scar up to the wall. Oh, Bain gets in Kyle Bush. Everybody gets through. Regan Smith Here they is come to the white Hey, that's flag. realistic. I appreciate that. Do they have enough fuel to get back? Final lap of Daytona is underway. Oh, boy. 42 is on your tight. Brian Scott is right there. Yeah, 22 is closer. <laughs> oh, man. This is funny. Joey Logano getting a run on Regan Smith. Here comes Casey Kane in the five. Ryan Sieg in that 39 car up through the That's middle. Funny. Jeremy Clements into the You're picture. Clear. All going on behind Regan Smith. Can he hang on? Will the fuel last to the finish line? Here they come to the checkers. And then I. <laughs> Okay, so if that sounded really weird, it's because I mixed the uh, audio. And so the beginning part, well, you heard this. Here they come to the checker. That was from the Daytona race. And then when it got quiet, that was when uh, Brennan Gaughan won at uh, Road America in 2014. And so as you know, I did this all in 2014, and so my uh, quality wasn't the best. And then I then faded back in the other, um, the Daytona audio. That's funny. Yeah, the 11 there, that was Sadler. Yeah, Brian Scott. Dang, fast work, you're so quiet. Watch there. this. Watch this. In February, Regan Smith won by 13 one thousandths of a second. Casey Kane just won by 20 thousandths of a second. I believe that's Ryan Sieg that's pushing him across the line there. What a great job he did. He yep. ran great I here in that game. I appreciate the replays. That, yep. That's my favorite the part Casey of was, the videos is doing the replays of the Rams. Because I can creative of the different good job. I mean, Here, shush. So what I love doing is, actually what I could do is I could play this and I could be quiet. Okay. So what I love is 
the replays. And so, like, I can go to, like, like Ryan Reed, and I can go to literally almost anywhere I want to and just trying to get those shots. Like, I I love that so much. Oh, yeah, that's right. If I remember correctly, I think I still had the free trial version of Fraps, or I can only record, like, 30 seconds at a time. That's right. So if you see the little cuts, that's that's why. That's funny. So then you have that. Yeah, that, yeah, exactly. Like right, right there. And then the wreck, which is right there. And then it takes out the whole field. And then Chase Elliott. That's funny. And then into the outside wall. And around he goes. Yeah, for sure. See if there's anything else. Nah, yeah, I don't think there's really anything else I need to say about this one, except Brendan Gone doing his donuts. Yeah, not really much I can say or do anything about that. And then it's quiet. Okay, got it. Alright, so the next short that I wanted to show, uh, let's see, the third one. This one does not get talked about a lot. And actually, this is probably my favorite um, short on a road course, I would say. Is that Cup or Xfinity? What, that last one? 2014 Nationwide. And then this is Cup Series at the Glen. So what I'm trying to... Oh, did I... Hold on one second. Engine fire by seven. Okay, 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 okay. That's right. This is okay, because I... Um, this is got or royalty free music. You know what? Just for giggles, because it's music, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll do a broadcast commentary on uh, this race. So yeah, it's two laps to go, and then uh, it was my first stab, I think, at um, road course ringers, if I remember correctly, because I had PJ here. I want to double check this. Did I? Ron Fellows was in the 81. Scott Pruitt in the 39. Let's see who else did I have. Um, PJ Jones, Larry Foyt. Oh, interesting. Okay, so not as many as I thought, which stinks. But all right, that's fine. All right, here we go. Pace car is in. Jeff Gordon, Ryan Newman, Kevin Harvick, Dale Jr. Here we go. Green flag is out. Two laps to go here at Watkins Glen. Into turn number one here, a hard right turner as Jeff Gordon is still underneath Newman. Harvick is all over the back of Ryan Newman. And into turn number one they go. Newman and Gordon are still side by side as they go down here and as they go into the S's. Will they stay side by side or will one of them pull out ahead? Oh, Harvick all over the back of Ryan Newman. And it looks like they stay afloat as Jeff Gordon gets into the lead now. So now it's Gordon, Newman, Harvick, one, two, three. As we go down this long straightaway, and oh, into the wall goes Ryan Newman. Newman and Harvick spin out. Stewart, Gordon, and Jr. make it through. Fellows gets lots of damage, and Pruitt gets in the wrong Fellows. And Jeff Burton go gets by. Bill Elliott, and here we go. Ward Burton, Ricky Craven, Michael Waltrip, Elliott up and over. The 33 spins out, and Mikey is involved too. What a travesty. So as they get through the inner loop here, let's go back to the leaders here. As you see Elliot upside down, Newman, lots of damage there. Lots of damage in there. Is that what you actually said during the video? No. So Jordan, I'm just, um, it's music. And so I just want to go ahead and give myself the commentary now. Anyway, so Gordon, Stewart, and Earnhardt Jr., one, two, three. As they're about to hit the final turn here, as we're going to have one lap to go. And this lap is sponsored by nobody, not even Credit One Bank. As Jeff Gordon leads, Tony Stewart second, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in third. Stewart looking to the inside of Gordon now. Dale Jr. is staying behind Gordon as Stewart dives in. So now moves Stewart into the lead, but Gordon is fighting back on the high side. As they go into the S's here, will Dale Jr. follow someone or will he make a path of his own? Into the S's, Junior is right there. As Stewart is right, and Junior has now decided to go with Stewart. And Junior looks like he's going to push Stewart into the lead, move Gordon back to third. As they race down the long straightaway here, Tony Stewart and Dale Junior is giving Stewart a bump of his life. 
And Gordon has not given up as Gordon is still on the back of Junior and Stewart. Down to the turn here as Junior is still all over the back of Tony Stewart as we run on board with Tony Stewart now. And down the, the straightaway here. And does Junior have anything for Stewart? On board with Jeff Gordon as they go down here into the turn. And as they slow up here, who's going to get the run? Jeff Gordon looks low. Dale Jr. also looks low as they're going to be three wide for the win. Down into the final turn. Stewart, Jr., Gordon are all right there. How did they not wreck? I do not know. And here they come to the line and Tony Stewart wins in a three wide finish. Unbelievable. See, and I was so proud of that short and the fact that they were able to finish three wide it's like okay i had to make a short of that kevin harvick finished ninth yeah that's that's wonderful i'm really happy i was able to make that short and then i did the little nbc thing there and then here's a couple of uh, replays of the wreck with harvick and newman I completely forgot I used the uh, NBC logo on the top left. That's funny. And then there's that shot. Okay, I thought the camera did move, but no. And then there's Ron Fellows right there. If you guys are curious, this is for the original cup car set, by the way. And then Pruitt gets in the Fellows. And then... Dale Elliott. Oh yeah, we follow Pruitt. That's right. I forgot about that. And then Keller, Elliott, Kenseth. Who was it that got into Elliott again? Oh yeah, Fittipaldi. That's right. This yeets him. Oh yeah, this shot. I love this shot. I think I zoomed out all the way, so that's why it looks like that um, wide-angle lens. And I'm born for Craven. Okay, so it shows the finish here in a minute. Boom. Oh, and, <laughs> and the Benson gets in the back of Fiddlepalty. That's funny. Ah, that's funny. I, I like this. I'm glad I did this. So Craven keeps going. And then here's the finish. So Stewart first, Junior second, Gordon third. And again, the fact that they did a three-wide finish like was so incredible. He has those cars as a die cast. I didn't add some in the game. I can't remember if you did or not. I had a few. I had a few of them. So the checker flag. Did I pause with the line? I did. There it is. That's funny. And then Stuart burned it down. Yep. So we start winner toss three serious at the Glen. Okay. Let's back out. All right. Let's uh, let's embarrass myself a little bit. So the fourth one. Okay. I need to double check, but I'm pretty sure this is the first one where I actually did, like, commentary. So, <laughs> this one's going to be a little, uh, yee. It's going to be a little embarrassing, but you know what? Hey, we're all in this together. So, let's do this. Welcome back to Road America, here in the heartland of Wisconsin. Okay, so if I remember correctly, in terms of audio, honestly, I think I want to look at some old nice car diecasts. If you were a Here Racing fan, like at the beginning of the stream, that's exactly what I did, was looked at all the um, diecasts that I have. So, okay, so the audio of this, um, I believe I just used my uh, computer, like, I, like the computer's mic. So if it sounds like awful, that's the reason why. And so again, this is the first time commentating. We just have three so, laps to go yeah. here. What was a pretty exciting race so far? As we complete 98 laps, yeah, turn myself up here. Stands for a set as your current leader. As you look at the rest of the field, that's probably a lot of drivers to look out for. As you get deeper in the back, Eric Arola, Clint Boyer, Kyle Busch. All dead potential winners. They're deep air in the back, but they do have a chance. Derek Cope out with an engine failure from earlier. 
Dave Blaney and Kurt Busch on lap 50 had a little crash, and then Mike Bliss just parked it behind the wall. <laughs> it's definitely going to be exciting with just two laps to go, as the cars are definitely spreading themselves out to get ready for what should be one heck of an exciting race. Okay, so one little thing I love just with all my heart is road course ringers. And if I continued one more spark, road course ringers would be a huge part of that. So I just wanted to mention that. And if I remember correctly, none of the cars that are um, in this, I painted. Other people did paint them. A couple of road course ringers that we wanted to throw out in point. Boris said in the zero car that is a one-off race. Robin Gordon is doing a few races, yeah, sorry, but mostly <laughs> importing the road course races. Well, as we see the pace car is pulling in, Jimmy Johnson here in second. Could he get the yeah, dive I just did, I in did the turn number uh, one? Boris said I was not as confident back in the day as I was now. For this restart, for it should be one heck of a finish. We only have two laps to go. And here we go. We're going to find out who's going to be the winner. And the green is in the air. Green flag is out. Boris said. Brings him down to turn number one. Oh boy, it should be. Okay, so just fair warning, my uh, dog is out in the backyard now. So if you hear barking, it's from here, like the live feed. It's not from this video. So just fair warning. The old Montoya down to the inside. Can Montoya do anything about it? Couple of cars in the wall up high. That was David Reagan and Harvey Labonte. And starts around. Tony Stewart has gone around, and Ryan like Newman has done so too. Matt Kenseth also around. Oh, in the wall! <laughs> in the Yeet. tires. That is Paul Menard and Brad Kislowski. <laughs> and Boris <laughs> said has gone around too. Him and Martin Truex Jr., Casey, Casey Kane, Kane, Kevin Harvick all spin around. Kyle Busch too. Oh boy. Oh boy. Caution not out as Johnson brings him down into the I don't remember what corner. sound pack I used this from. Jimmy Johnson and Juan Montoya side by side down to Kitty Corner. Who's going to get on top? Boy, Montoya slowed down a bit and Johnson's off. Jimmy Johnson off course, but he keeps going. Scott Pruitt also off as Montoya and Robbie Gordon are side by side for the lead. Well, just toy -toy That's straight away the they go, and it looks like Robbie should get the edge as Andy Lally tries to make the three wide, but that is not going to happen. Eat. Montoya on the wall hard. He gets into the tires. Johnson follows suit. James Hinchcliffe <laughs> also involved in the 72 car. <laughs> Boy, that's going to take them out of the race. No caution uh, yet. As Andy Lally goes to the to the inside. Gordon and Biffle off track. That is Robbie Gordon in the seven. Not Jeff Gordon. Andy Lally takes it around the carousel corner. That Andy carousel Lally corner. all the way around. Great Biffle follows suit. Andy Lally that. in the sand. Andy Lally gets off. Dale Jr. is off as well. <laughs> Robbie Gordon is now in second. He almost touches Greg Biffle as Jr. and Lally get at it in the back. Robbie leads him. Great Biffle second. Is that and the Rolex is in third. Oh, whoops. Jeff Gordon in 24. He is in third. As they come off, oh, we have more trouble. <laughs> Eric Carroll, Joey Logano, <laughs> Travis Quaffle, Dale Earnhardt Jr. All in the wall. All right. Carl Eric, oh my goodness. <laughs> they all spin around. Us. As Robbie Gordon leads them around the final corners as we have one lap. We're going to have one lap to go. Jeff Burton and Brennan got fourth and fifth. Could they do anything to take down the leaders? I don't think so. They are pretty far back pretty to do far anything back. about them. As we ride with Greg Duffel, you just see how close Gordon is. And just look at the car. Just Tokyo bounce, Draft. Just Draft. It's an excellent balancing Draft. act as Gordon tries to save that up the track. As they go up the hill, we have one lap of racing to go. Robbie Gordon has the lead. Robert's Can Greg Duffel do anything to stop him? I don't know guys, it is going to be really tough as Jeff Gordon rides in third. Down to the first corner, we can just see how the back just juts out it's on the corner. It just right. shows how loose the cars really are. Robbie Gordon leads, Greg Biffle second. It has been a good nine years since Robbie Gordon has won a Spring Cup race. Last time they won, Jordan, it was I'm looking the right Wednesday Cup series here. Is right back there. at Watkins Glen. Boy, he just has one lap to do it, as we are still green after all the wreckage. I guess that it's all clear, and it's all set to go. Yeah, but that's can no. Robbie, can a road course ringer win here in the Spring Cup Series? 
blood, Red Buffalo and Jeff Burnett are all over Robbie Norton's heel, but Robbie got That's a good fine. run off the border last time. Robbie Gordon is doing everything he can to give Dodge another win. As Biffle and Jeff Gordon are still on his heels, oh, Jeff Burnett and Brendan John have definitely fallen off pace with the leaders. Down to the corner. Oh, Jeff Gordon did have a run. Brendan John swerves off course, but then he's going down the carousel no. corner. Robbie Gordon, he gets a little high. He's in the sand. And Greg Duffel is going to pass by him as Robbie and Jeff Gordon, both of them, <laughs> in the sand. That's funny. Great Biffle keeps going. Scott Pruitt is going to take second yeah, place. Yeah, Scott Pruitt. Boy, Great Biffle has a huge lead. All he needs to do is just teeter around and he's going to be the winner of Road America. Pruitt in yeah. the wall. <laughs> oh, boy. Scott Pruitt and Robbie Gordon both smack the wall. All Biffle needs to do is he needs to get going. He needs he to get going. He just needs to go around the corner and just save it. <laughs> and, oh, no. Around goes Great Biffle. That's right. He needs to get going. Otherwise, they're going to pass him. Jeff Gordon, Jeff Burton, Casey Mears, Marcus Ambrose, oh, they're all yeah. going to pass him. And Gordon comes, he can pass him. No, he can't. <laughs> no, he steps out the corner, too. And Andy Lally. Andy Lally. He's going to come out on top. Sand. Brandon Gordon second. They're going to battle it out. It's going to win. Uh, can Brandon have anything for Andy Lally? I don't know. To the outside goes Brandon. Andy Lally sticks it to the low he's side. Exactly. Brandon has a run as they go up the hill one more time. Can Brendan God do anything about it? He has a run! Side nope. by side down the front straightaway. Will he have enough? No! Andy, Andy Lally, Lally is your winner here on Road America. Yeah, Andy Lally. Wow, what a finish. <laughs> Didn't Boy, Andy Lally, but Andy Andy Lally, Lally was, was, was going to be the winner so, yeah, here on Road Andy America. Lally, how about it? Boy, what an exciting finish that was. I cannot believe it. That's funny. Well, as we right. close off here... Well, you know what? I'm actually going to stop with this one just because the rest is just replays. And honestly, I kind of don't give a real rip about that. So I'm going to move on to the next stop mo or the stop motion short. Um, is it analyzing the big one? Oh, it is. Okay. Um, we can look at this for a few minutes. Oh, yeah. Got a long way to go and they're coming to the white flag. Yeah. Why don't I like that? Oh, here goes Kirk Bush around. Oh. Crash behind you. Crash, crash. Oh, upside Martin's down. Upside Mark, Mark, Mark. That was Mark such a is over on his roof. Back on his way into the wall. Casey Mears. Rudiman is there. Reagan is there. Robbie Gordon. Jeff Gordon. Yeah. Montoya driving through the grass. So the thing I love about the Analyzing the Big One series is I love, again, as I said, like replays. Like replays are so fun to uh, play with. And again, just getting creative with the different shots. Like for example, this one, I was inspired by uh, one of the replay shots from Ricky Craven's crash in 1996. And then I kind of focused in here on uh, Mark Martin as he flew into the air. And then I took out, not, yeah, I took out majority of the field. And then this was a 2011 car set. So, yeah, lots of cars involved here. Just trying to think if there's anything really noteworthy other than Gordon flipping like mad. Because the rest is music, right? Yeah, it's just music. So, yeah, I don't know. I really don't have anything much to say about this one. Because the one I want to dig into next is uh, this one, which got a lot of hate. Yeah, 15 likes with 7 dislikes. I wonder what crap I had. Where did you get find the car mod at? Who actually won it? What version did they That's really weird. I thought I got more crap for this. I'm trying to remember. Uh, I guess not. Anyway. So, okay. So for this one, oh, this was bad. And actually, this this video, it was this short actually, that uh, made me um, dig deeper into finding race car audio that is. Um, clear like without any um, broadcast or interference so welcome back to the 1981 daytona 500 yeah. as we have only five laps of racing so yeah i was really lazy with this one no i wouldn't say super lazy because like again i i changed the screen so that it is more uh like the square ratio and then i also did the old graphics but for the audio, what I did is I literally took a part of the 1981 Daytona 500 and 
I literally just, for the audio, just put it right underneath it. That's it. And I like, and then I did my commentary on top of it. So, oh yeah, it sounds awful, but that's why we're gonna play it. Terry Labonte, as you should see right there, Terry Labonte gets into Harry again. Harry again spins and he saves the car. Harry again in the uh, 33 car has saved it and he is going on. Could he do anything about it to get back into this race? Boy, anything can happen here as the, Bobby uh, Allison AI, is in the lead. Really Jody Ridley in the 90 car, <coughs> pushing Daryl Waltrip in the 11 car. Okay. Anything can happen as they come down toward the front start finish line with four laps of racing to go. Daryl Waltrip has the lead. Jody Ricky Ridley. Rudd is now pushing Jody Ridley to Jody the bottom. Jody Ridley is going to give a push to Daryl Waltrip in the 11 car. Bobby Allison tries to get to a little research. Terry Labonte in the 44. He I think I had to do a little research on uh, these car or on some of these drivers. Like for example, Jody Ridley in the 90. Because like I, again, I knew I know some NASCAR history, but it's more 90s versus 80s history. By the way, if you guys have any like questions or anything like that in the chat, I can definitely like squirt by and uh, answer some of your questions related to this stuff. So don't be afraid. Seventh Daytona 500 victory. Daryl Waltrip so far Tracking has the lead as he's zero. getting a whale of a push from Ricky Rudd as we now only have three laps of racing to go. Richard Perry to the inside of Terry Levine for third. Ricky Rudd is giving me a push oh, yeah, to the Waltrip. They get to the inside, Walter, no. and Walter loses it, and to the wall, Jody Ridley gets One, into him. The 71 car three, up and over, four. several cars up and over, and a devastating crash. Five, maybe. For the 71, up and over and Jeez. over. Huge crash, more cars pile into the field. <laughs> Boy, so lots of, they just keep piling uh, in. Ah, Perrin, hold him, I, I am 26. Several drivers are in it, see so important in the 24. I am 26 years old, so I am an old boy. Cars getting into it as we have five cars left racing so far. Petty, you're a bro. With Earnhardt, just three laps to go. Body. Richard Petty in the 43, buying for his record to seven Daytona 500. Bobby Allison, can Is he the, be the second the person why ever win the poll? The Is the audio the only reason why I think I got crap for this? Ah, uh, I think so. I, I could definitely see that because again, I got seven dislikes. Another reason too is I believe I published this on the Inner 2003 Reddit. So I did have a Reddit back in the day, but it's, um, I got rid of it pretty fast. So I think I shared it on there and a bunch of people saw it was like crap. So uh, let's see here. Do you remember what my first NASCAR diecast was? I actually don't. I want to say it was the Ricky Rudd 10 car from 97, but I don't know. Why fly this time? But, but guys, I am amazed. The caution has not been thrown from that huge crash. I guess they cleaned up the field and they are going for it. Flagman has the white in the air. White flag is out as five cars battle it out for the win. Bobby Allison to the yeah, outside. That is Terry Labonte on the inside in the 44 car. Can Terry Labonte win it here in the Stratograph Chevrolet? That is not a Chevy, my bad, folks. That is a Buick. Yeah, Buick. Down the back straightways, though, they come. Terry Labonte, Dale Earnhardt in the two. Could he get a run in the Wrangler Pontiac? Down the corner, all oh, Wrangler, oh my gosh, Earnhardt gets into <laughs> Terry Labonte, right. but he saves it. How did he save it? What a save, as all five cars are in a knot to the line. Can anybody get by it? Terry Labonte wins the 1981 Daytona 500. Yep, that's me, Griffin what no Pasha What a spirit. finish. Uh, Pam Bukowski, the worst the short to make. To be done. Let's see, is there anything else noteworthy? Oh yeah, that's right, I actually had the uh, graphic here. Yeah, that's right, I had the picture of Terry Levine. That's so cool. I'm actually glad I did that. Ah, uh, that's funny. Oh yeah, and then there was this at the end. Today was at Darlington last year. And so we are going to take a commercial break here. 
But let's oh, just yeah. I let never you know we're going to talk to the winner today, <laughs> as well as the crew chief and all the competitors involved in this final last five laps. Yeah, finish. <laughs> what the heck? Oh, what's this? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh my gosh. What is this? Coming to the line, Bobby Allison comes up on Terry Labonte and wrecks him. Well, folks, we're going to find out what happened here after so, these messages. Bro. And I think I just turned it off, right? Yeah, that's it. Okay, cool. So, um, Pam Bukowski, I think I can answer that. My worst short to make, and that's just of the shorts that I have made. And so, I, let's see, to make. Uh, let's see, what is one that I just absolutely hated? Um, not really a fan of this one, but let's see, I'm trying to think. What was a short that I just, I did not like? Um, let me think. Because again, you mentioned shorts. Um, I don't know, that's, that's a good question. I mean, not really one, I guess, came to mind. Um, hardest to make. Oh, okay, I think I know how to. Oh, got it, this one. Analyze the big one five because this was the first and only one that I um, did in uh, Windows 10 because you know how I switched to a new laptop and I thought I lost in 2003. Yeah, this was a pain because uh, CCM constantly crashed my uh, computer. So that that answers that question. So let's see, is there anything else up here I wanted to look at before moving on? Um, let's see. There was the Daytona one, but I, we can talk more in depth about that later when I get into the uh, stuff that I didn't show. Um, you know what? Let's do it. What if Jerry Nadeau stayed at Hendrick? I wasn't planning on doing this, but I think we could talk about this, and I could talk about other ideas that I had. So this is from August 27, 2015. Jerry Nadeau grabbed his second career win at California. Try to remember. So the audio that I record this from, okay, so it's from a GoPro. That's right. This is audio from a GoPro, and um, not the no, I did not have the lapel mic here. So, in 2001, after Jerry Nadeau's impressive win, he gained quite a bit of momentum moving forward, garnering six more top ten finishes in 2001. 2002 was contract year for Nadeau at Hendrick Motorsports. With his win last year. Nadu was committed to running well for yeah, Rick I wish Nadu would have stayed and around. it paid off. He won the Pontiac Excitement 400 at Richmond. With that, he was able to gain five. Okay, so what I did for these highlight videos, like I didn't run the full race. Like I hope you guys know that. Like I literally just ran like two laps, and whatever video or whatever um, was the finish, I five more top five that. finishes. So I'll just do that. Success. Nadu signed an extension with Hendrick that would last him through 2007. In 2003, he stays in the 25 UAW oh, yeah. Delphi like Chevrolet while Joe Nemechek jumps to MB2 Motorsports. That's interesting. Nadu gets to continue his success. <laughs> That's right. I actually went ahead and wiped uh, Nemechek's name off of here and I put Jerry Nadu's name on there. With another win at Infineon. In 2004, UAW Delphi stays on Nadu's ride. Meanwhile, Brian Vickers won. Back up. I need to double check. Did I have the next till? Yes, I did. Yeah, the next till logo was on there. W Delphi. That's right. I remember being so right. specific about that. Brian Vickers won the 2003 Bush Championship and is now ready for the next Tell Cup. Hendrick expands to a five-car team, bringing the number 55 back to the next Dell Cup series. You know, looking back on it now, I don't think this would have happened. I could have, if I would have redone this what if, I don't think um, Ryan Vickers would have moved over to Hendrick. I, I don't know, like, I don't think Hendrick had any filter teams back in the day, but um, definitely Vickers, I could see him being in a cup, but again, I don't think he would have been in that team. GMAC comes along as the full-time sponsor for Brian Vickers. Jerry Nadu wins for a second time at Atlanta. In 2005, Terry Labonte has finished his run in the Nextel Cup and is now doing part-time duty in both the Bush 
and Nextel Cup Series. Oh. His spot is taken by young rookie Kyle Busch. Okay. Other than that, Hendrick's fivesome remained the same. Five-some. Brian got his first career win at Michigan, while Nadu gained a win at Martinsville. Yeah, that's right. 2006 saw UAW Delphi switch mm. over to Brian Vickers. Team. If I would have had more time with this, I would have changed up the paint scheme more on this car. Because what I just took was the Kyle Busch car, ripped off the 5 and just put the 55 on there. I uh, wish I could have done the 5. Let's see. Have it have a download. It should. Um, Yoshi fan. I believe I put the links to everything. Let's see. Down here. Let's see. Hold on. Let me just double check. Did I not? All tracks and mods of car sets. Oh. Vickers first. If, if people want them. Oh, I did. Okay. Oh. Okay. Team. While Nadu gained the GMAC sponsorship, Michael Waltrip okay, was supposed to that. take over the 55, but Vickers is still there. So, Waltrip keeps the number 15, and Paul Menard does another full season in the Bush series. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, success came rare to Hendrick in 2006. The only successful drivers were Jerry Nadu, who had one win at California. I want to read this. Doritos and Mountain Dew. If I were to do this, what if? Vickers would get the five. Oh, I could see that. Terry Levine would retire a year early, so in 2005. Then Kyle Busch would jump to the cup in 2007, but Vickers went to Red Bull. So Kyle Busch would be in the Bush series then? Not much longer? Oh, well, I could see that. California and Jimmy Johnson, who had five wins and won the 2006 championship. 2007 sees Hendrick drop to a four-car team again. Brian Vickers leaves Hendrick to join the new Red, Red Bull, Bull Racing, Racing Toyota okay. team. Got it. Jerry Nadu keeps his ride in the 25. But GMAC. Casey Mears, who was supposed to drive the 25 car, yep, moves over to the right. 40 team for Chip Ganassi Racing as Juan Pablo Montoya makes his debut in so NASCAR. So Montoya still does it. Okay. David Stremme moves over to a part-time ride in the 33 Holiday Inn Chevrolet eh, for not Richard sure Childress about that. Racing. And so today, it is with great honor to introduce my new boss for 2008, <laughs> Mr. Rick Hendrick. Oh, okay. I remembered watching this live, and at the time, 2008, right? Hated Jeff Gordon, hated Jimmy Johnson, and so when he announced they were going to be teammates, uh, that kind of fumed me a little bit. I still ended up being a junior fan, but, ooh, definitely an uh, interesting time for sure. 2008 shows another change at Hendrick. Dale Jr. moves over from DEI to Hendrick Motorsports. He replaces Jerry Nadu as the fourth car in the organization. So where did Jerry go? After J.J. Yaley did not live up to Joe Gibbs' expectations, oh, Jerry Nadu moves over to a three-year deal with the new 18 M&M's Toyota. Oh, yeah, that's right. Kyle Busch stays at the five car. Oh, yeah, that's And right. Casey Mears remains in the 40 ride. Dario Franchitti decides to stay in IndyCar. See that? That makes you wonder. If Dario Franchitti never went to NASCAR, do you think he would still be in IndyCar today? I thought about that every once in a while. Things are not going well for Nadu at Joe oh, Gibbs Racing oh, yeah. in 2009, DNFing 10 times in the process. Kyle Busch remains in the five car and is dominant. Mark Martin was supposed to- Yeah, okay, one thing I wanted to briefly mention. Again, if, if I would have had more time with this what if, uh, that paint scheme would have changed. Instead of it being the car that Mark Martin drove, I think I don't think it would be the same car, but I, the paint scheme would have definitely been different with Kyle Busch in it. His dominance. Mark Martin was supposed to move over to the five ride, but since no rides were available at the time, Martin decided to call an early retirement. The slump Sad. continues on the 2010 <laughs> for <laughs> yeah, Jerry right, Nadu, while Kyle continued his dominance in the new, new GoDaddy Go number yeah, five see, Chevrolet. No. I think Kellogg's would have stayed, I think. I feel like that relationship would have been stronger, and um, yeah, it definitely would have been Kellogg still. Jerry constantly falls in the back of the pack. He even had this scary accident at Daytona. The dominance he had earlier in his career has dwindled. Jerry Nadu was kicked from the 18 car in 2011. Who replaces him? None other, None other than, than Kyle, Kyle Busch. Busch. I remember that, that leaves a spot open in the 5 car. That was taken by Casey Keene. 
that originally, Kane, Kane yep. was going to wait out a year and join Hendrick in 2012. Fortunately, the rider was available in 2000. See that? Okay, that was a good move. I'm glad I did that because I think that was just so weird in real life when Casey Kane went to Red Bull Racing for one year randomly. I, I like the idea of Kane jumping straight from uh, Everham to um, Hendrick. So I'm glad I made that move. 2011, and Kane moves over to the 5 Chevy for Hendrick Motorsports. Scott Speed stays over at Red Bull Racing for another year. And as for Nadu, he moves over to Front Row Motorsports. Nadu hopes a new ride can give him new confidence. And it didn't. <laughs> it did not. <laughs> Sad. Sad reacts only. As 2011 moves into 2012, Poor finishes are the name of the game for Nadu. For a while, he, David Reagan, and David Gilliland were teammates. Yeah. But as Nadu's poor runs continued, funding was not there to support a third car at Front Row Motorsports. Yeah. Nadu only ran half the season in 2012. So, I kind of got a little bit of flack. I wonder if uh, I mentioned any comments here. Oh, just other people with different what ifs, including Brock Beard. That's so cool. That Brock Beard um, was there. That's that's cool. Very creative. Oh, that's so cool. In this day in history, I got uh, ACS Network to subscribe to me. Awesome. Um. So, but the thing I got flack for is Jury Nadu's like downfall. I don't know. It was one of those deals I wanted to be realistic with because I don't think Nadu would have been like a huge like all star. But I also, like, I don't think he would have, like, sucked either. So, just wanted to mention Today, that. Nadu will be found running part-time driving the 74 car in the Nationwide Slash Xfinity Series. Will he ever come back? At the age of 45, he can make a potential return. But will it happen? Mm. Only time will tell. Only time will tell. Are you guys lagging at all, just out of curiosity, or is everything good on your guys' end? Because it looks like it's kind of lagging on my end. Uh, just let me know. But anyway, so, no, that was, your YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming, as such viewers will experience buffering. Ah, uh, dang it, that's what I was fearing. Okay. Uh, just let me know, and then we'll see how things go. So, um... <clears throat> Let's see here. Message from Griff Dog. I want to see this briefly. Hey guys, this is Griffin here, or call me Griff Dog on YouTube. So this um, is January first, two thousand sixteen. So this is let's see, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Yeah, so four years, four four years, four months later. I just want to take the opportunity to thank you guys so much for all the support. I just wanted to thank you personally because of all the support that you have given to my channel. It has absolutely skyrocketed, and I, I just can't thank you enough. Honestly, I am just so blessed beyond belief to have um, to have the numbers that I have. Like honestly, if you want to look back, like August of 2014, when this whole channel got rebooted, I was not expecting it to be where it is today. I just want to thank you for that like I just want to let you guys know that this channel of mine is not some side project that I do like this channel is definitely something I want to pursue farther it is something I want to definitely do as like a career I want to do something like this oh my gosh. Um, in the future for sure so, as you can tell, I'm definitely a big NASCAR fan, as you can tell in all my videos. <laughs> but, I want to expand on that. I want to do more than just NASCAR. And so, huh. I don't know where that's going to lead me, yeah. but I want to do more than just that. Pretty much what my main concept that I'm going for is the idea of motion. The reason why I would have uh. motion in my um, videos as a concept is because it just fascinates me. I love the idea of either taking something that's still and then making a move 
or something that moves very fast and then make it like really oh my slow. God, that's animation. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but in the um, the sports videos that I have posted on, um, that I haven't uploaded them, but you can check in one of my playlists. It's just called Griff Dog Productions. The sport videos that I have made absolutely fascinate me. Is that annotations? Yeah, okay. Me too. They absolutely fascinate me because the way how the player either jumps, runs, catches, volleys, anything like that, it's really interesting, you know? It's really just fascinating and eye appealing to me. And I want to capture that and I want to show the people how sports and really anything that involves movement can be caught in a whole new perspective. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to expand on that. And so, so far things have been going well and I want to thank you for that. Like 2015 has been so huge for me. Like it has, I've absolutely developed as a filmmaker. I have developed as an artist yep. and I'm not stopping anytime soon. Thanks, James. And so there I just want to thank all the people that have been behind my back as I have grown and become who I am. And I'm loving who I am so far. It's fantastic. And I, yeah, I greatly appreciate it. And you know what? If you don't support me, you might as well just shut off this video right now. Because <laughs> there's no point. If you're not going to support me, then why do you take this time to watch this video? You know? <sighs> no, it means a lot. It means a lot for sure. I, I greatly appreciate what you guys have all done. All, every comment, every like, every subscription does mean a lot to me. And of course, I'm always looking to improve my videos. Because I don't know if you've noticed, but I always like change the frame rate on my NASCAR videos. Sometimes they're 29 frames, sometimes lately if it's been 24, like in films. And before I've done 60 frames as well. I'm still experimenting like what makes the most realism for my videos. And I'm gonna keep working at that. I'm gonna try to figure out what works best. And if you guys have suggestions, please lay them on me. Because I'm definitely open to anything to help improve what I want to set out to do. And so the other thing too, a lot of people have been suggesting about different what if videos. I love the suggestions too. And the biggest one, and that's the next thing I want to talk about, the biggest suggestion that I've gotten is what if Dale Earnhardt was still alive? Oh, As you guys know, Dale Earnhardt was a legendary NASCAR driver, 76 wins, seven championships, but his life got caught got cut early in the 2001 Daytona 500. This video, I'm just gonna warn you, will be controversial because <laughs> it's the way how I perceive the future <laughs> would be if he was still alive. Now, of course, I'm gonna do research and I'm gonna, like, I, I've read reports on what would have happened if Dale Earnhardt, let's just say, retired versus died. And I'm gonna put that into my perspective. And so I'm going to put that into a seven part series, seven parts because that's how many championships he won. And I'm going to lay out what life would be like if Dale Earnhardt was still alive. Um, yeah. And so that's going to be my big project the next two months. And hopefully yeah, it could be project. all be out by, I would say, March or so. So if you look in the description below, you will see the next 14 or so videos that will be popped up by me. I'm not saying a schedule yet because I'm not sure how long this is going to take. Yeah. Because as you know, I'm still in college. I still have other um, priorities. My goal <laughs> is to do two times a week starting in January. Yep. But don't take my word for it. They will. They'll come when they'll come because I'm putting a lot of effort into this. Like I already know part one is done, and it's already it's at least 16 minutes long. So, we'll just see how it goes. So, yeah, I definitely plan to expand. And, again, I just want to thank you guys. Everyone. Everyone on YouTube. Everyone at school. Everyone that pretty much I know. Like, that has come to support me. Like, thank you guys. It means so much. Um, 
yeah, that's really all I have. Um, the 2016 is going to be a really big year, that's for sure. Yeah, it was. Thanks, guys, and be sure to look out for more videos. That's crazy. I I I was not planning on watching that video, but oh wow, times have really changed. That's for sure. All right, so you know what? We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna jump into the Dale Earnhardt series. So. If you guys want to go and reach out and retweet and whatever, um, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to go deep into this. I don't know if I'm going to watch all of the series, but I want to definitely try to watch as much of it as uh, possible. So, with that being said, let's jump into it. And Kenny Wallace blew it. That blows my mind. 60,000 views, 453 likes. That crazy. It is 2001, it is Daytona 500, and we still have 16 laps to go. So the GBS was a Griff Dog Broadcasting um, Services, I think it is? Yeah. Caution came out, and Kenny Wallace blew an engine in the 27 car. And so, instead of having any chance of a big crash, they decided yeah, to, or services. not they, Kenny Wallace didn't decide to blow a motor. But the caution is out, cars made their final pit stops, and so we're going to have a final 16 laps to decide who's going to win this race. And so you see the ticker, and, or the scoreboard I should say, and we are going to figure out who is going to win this race. The DEI trio of Michael Walter, Steve Park, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. are out front. Now I'm aware that my voice is really, really nasally. And I'm also aware that my voice is not made for commentary. But I'm here as a fan, as opposed to being a broadcaster. So I'm going to chime in here and there to just talk to you guys. So that you don't have to listen to the drone of the cars all the time. And so here we go. We're going to see who the winner is. Yeah, so I'll just chime in from time to time and just talk. If that's okay with you guys. I mean, I'm pretty sure you guys are fine with it. But yeah, here we go. We're going to see how this whole entire thing goes. Alright, so just so you know, the audio is from the 2001 Pepsi 400. And so I used the start of that. And then also, uh, hey Corvette Racing 48. And then, um, as well as a dad's life. Um, I used it in lap 3 of the Pepsi 400 2001. So that's what that is. I just can't, I just... So this is my second take making this video. <laughs> because I made several mistakes on my end because I'm such a great talker and I say that with quotation marks being all sarcastic and whatnot. So, yeah. Yeah. You can take that information and run with it if you want. Who cares, kid? <laughs> so a big thing I just want to mention here was like I I was not confident in myself as a uh, broadcaster, and that's why I did more of like a, what do you call it, like reactionary like commentary style with this. But if I would have known better, I definitely probably would have done a lot better if I would have um, been a broadcaster. So, oh, that's funny. 29th is the last car on the lead lap. Everybody else from Kyle Petty on down is one or more laps down or is out of the race. I bring this up because Mr. Matt Kenseth right there on the inside <laughs> is That's a lot down. So he can pass for to, to get now. to the front of the pack, but he will not be for the lead. So if a caution comes out right now, Matt Kenseth would get one or if not his only flat back. There's the man in black himself, Dale Earnhardt, there in the 3GM Goodrich Chevrolet. That's a really nice scheme he has. It's big. 
So I'll give you guys a little bit of a tidbit. I would say probably the hardest part of making all the videos, because I know I got the caption or the question earlier about um, what was the hardest stop or short to make. Um, besides that recent one, I think just, again, the hardest part of making these shorts is the audio and trying to connect the race car noises to the race cars. Because again, one, you got to find the audio where it is quiet, and then you got to make sure it like loops good enough so that like the audience doesn't really know much of a uh, difference. So like the captions, like that part's fine. And then on CCM, it's a little tedious, but I also enjoy it. It's just, again, the audio part is the part that really bogs it all down. If our knowledge serves me well, Matt Kenseth, Terry Labonte, and Kyle Petty, and Casey Atwood are all multiple laps down. So whenever you see them in the pack, that is not for position. Because you see Casey Atwood, he's six on the inside, there on the right side. Yeah, Casey Atwood is three laps down. So, no, he has no real influence on this race. Uh, I wish I could have done more but to show like what cars were lapped at. Although I love Wouldn't it be shot. interesting if Jeff Gordon won the Daytona 500 in this whole what if world? <laughs> that would be cool. Would it? Would it? Great? So random. That would be his fourth Daytona 500 I believe. Fourth rip. I know for sure he won in 97 and in 99. I think he won 95. If I'm wrong, you guys can bash me in the comments. That's fine. In my opinion, I think adding those captions in, I think, really bogged down this video. I mean, again, it is my most viewed video on here. But I should have been a lot more professional with this. Because again, like I was not expecting this to get so many views and all the recognition. Which, by the way, fun fact... This video is not monetized. In fact, the first monetized video I ever had was um, part six, rolling through the changes. So yeah, even though I got 59,000, like I didn't get any money out of this. It was all for the love of uh, NASCAR. So there you go, a little fun fact for you. One thing I've learned too, in NR 2003, just playing the game. The Super Speedways are really infamous for having totally random winners. Because one thing I've learned is like a circulation system, and it's like once a car gets out in front, they decide to move to the high side, which I don't understand. And because of that, it's just a conveyor belt of cars. It's just where the grip is, because the grip is on the inside, and you see Nadu, Marlin, Mayfield, Kenseth all move to the front. And so the guys on the high side move to the back, because that's not where the grip is. And because when you're on the high side, you have to drive farther. Oh, four wide. That doesn't really help. We get this wonderful four wide right here. Because <laughs> you see how high Bill Elliott is? You have to travel farther, but you're going the same speed, and that's why you fall back. And so you get Jury Nadu, which I already did a what it video for him. Yep. You know what? If Nadu wins this race, then that whole entire what it video I made of him would have to be redone. Because I never mentioned that Nadu won the 2001 Daytona 500. Well, I mean, I guess this could be like an alternate universe. <laughs> so, who knows? Who knows? So, just to give you guys a heads up, when it gets to five laps to go, I'm going to be totally quiet until the checkered flag, so that really? you guys can really sink in the last five laps. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Grant. And I just want to reassure you again, Matt Kenseth, not battling for a spot. Dale Earnhardt, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and Michael Walsh are all together in the back. Okay, just one little nugget that I don't think I mentioned at all. 
you see the coloring on the race i actually did play with the uh like color saturation a little bit and i tinted it a little bit red just to give it that sunset feel i don't think i did the best of jobs with that and i wish i would have reshot that but um yeah i wish i could have done more with the color correction but i mean it's not bad but i don't know i wish i could have done more with that Okay, so on one lap, I'm going to stop talking. So, just to give you guys a heads up about this whole series. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show one, like, highlights of one race huh? each year after highlights. this. So, like, 2002, I'll have a race at Dale Earnhardt that's, in, that's important to Dale Earnhardt's career. And not necessarily, like, he wins it, but just one that was a big, major part of his career. And so my goal during all of January is to show this the progression where he stands and where like other drivers stand as well. Yeah. And so Andy Houston can totally pull an upset right here and just and win the Toronto 500. Maybe he will. Maybe he won't. All right. I'm gonna be quiet now and I'll let you guys enjoy all right. the sights and sounds of the 2001 Daytona 500 Redux. Yeah, I definitely spent a lot of time with this um, the sound here. Like, I wanted to make sure I like had it spot on. So let's see, Nima check, use your leader, Mayfield second. Ah, uh, see, this stinks because I wish I had a little thing saying like which cars were like laps down or whatever. Ah, dang it, I needed that because like I know Nima checks out front, but I have no idea if he was the leader or not. So let's bring this down a little bit just because I want to maybe talk a little bit here. It just blows my mind just how many views this video had. It, like, I mean, of course, like, it's not like compared to the other YouTubers because they all have like hundreds of thousands, millions of views, whatever. But still, like, it just again blows my mind just the feedback I got from this. <laughs> David Land, this is incredible. See you guys, David Land knows who I am. Ah, oh, that's funny. Type of conspiracy theory. <laughs> I just wonder. Oh man, you need the order of cars that they were in. Yeah, I know. I dig this man. Sick. Nice job. That's hilarious. So I had Gordon as the leader? Oh, look at that. Three wide. Yeah. No, I think... I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but... I... Um... I wish I could have redone this series because honestly just with all the experience I have now I feel like I could do this series more justice but at the same time I'm also good with this because it's also a really good learning experience too so yeah Gordon okay so Gordon was actually the leader here and then Mikey Q Eric Keplinger two and three wide So Mikey, two laps to go. Um, so depending on time, I don't know if, again, I don't know if I'm going to watch all of this because I would probably say about 8.30 or so, I want to go ahead and move over to uh, one more spark because there's definitely a lot I want to talk about there. Hmm. Mikey, 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 Michael Waltrip. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Spencer, uh, Benson spinning Mayfield out. But since it was past the white flag, nothing doing. Last lap for Michael Waltrip. Does Casey Atwood have anything for Michael Waltrip? Here come the Labonte brothers, three and third and fourth, as they go down the back straight away. Atwood, Mayfield's car kept rolling. There is no caution. 
Got that Levi, you got Rudd, you got Bill Elliott. Can Casey have Monday 2500? As they come through turns three and four, and oh, trouble! Matt Kenseth in the wall, Dale Earnhardt gets a little bit of damage as they come to the line. Michael Waltrip will win the 2001 Daytona 500. Michael Waltrip wins the 2001 Daytona 500. Did I mention so what the go. song is? Michael Waltrip wins it either way. And Dale Earnhardt finishes all 200 laps and finishes 17th. Okay. So Michael Waltrip gets his first ever... Alright, I'll answer this question. So 2020 NASCAR Stop Motion Series asked... Can you maybe find someone who wants to finish this and do 2017 to today? Um, you guys are more than welcome to continue this, like, and it'll be like your thing. It won't, it wouldn't be like the official thing, but you guys are more than welcome to continue this in whatever way you wanted. So yeah, you so like again 2020. Okay, so if you had Aaron Charles three, yeah, go for it, man. Like if how 2016 ended, um, you guys are definitely more then welcome to do so. This makes a whole new timeline of events to happen. So, to finish up the rest of 2001, Kevin Harvick did not make his first start until the second half of the season. Yep, in the and 30 he car. drove the AOL number 30 car yep. for seven races. Yep. So, because of this, he was not a Rookie of the Year until 2002. I will explain this more in the upcoming parts. <laughs> Three was a Mountain this Dew. This turns into a. Three was a Mountain Dew. Uh, yeah, I could do that. Maybe make an animation of Benson and Mayfield fighting each other. Perfect. Let's see, is there anything else I need to do here? So, yeah, that is all for this part. Alright, let's just jump into the top 10 moments from 2001. Gonna do that. This is Griff Dog here, and here are the top 10, ten moments, moments from 2001. 2001. At the start of the Auto Club 500, Tony Stewart gunned to Dale Earnhardt. Dale Earnhardt rode the wall, and Tony Stewart eventually went upside down in his crash. Tony Stewart did go to the local <laughs> hospital, but he was able to continue on in the next race. Junior was on a hot streak in the middle of August, winning Corvette Racing. By the way, what happened to Steve Park after 2005? Yeah, Indiana. Let's see if I answered that because I don't remember that. Glen. Junior did pick up two more wins at Dover and Kansas. Controversy at Martinsville. In the most controversial race of the year, oh, yeah. a little caution came out and it set up a one-lap dash at Martinsville. But it started to rain. When Bobby Labonte took the green flag, it started to downpour on the track. Yeah, and I added the green screen. Rain. Immediately, the grip was washed away and car slid up to the high side. Several of the teams wanted the race to stop, but it was on the last lap and that's where I decided to let them race to the finish. Ricky Rudd, Bill Elliott, and numerous other drivers were absolutely furious at NASCAR for letting them finish. Bobby Labonte was declared the winner of that race. So that's one of those things that I don't think would happen in this universe because in actual Martinsville, like there wasn't any rain whatsoever. I kind of just threw that in just for giggles. So. <laughs> in a year of twists and turns, Dale Earnhardt was close to winning at Las Vegas. But on the final lap, Dale Earnhardt blows a tire and goes into the outside wall, losing his chance to win the race. Bobby Labonte, a big pack of cars, passed by on the back straightaway. Yeah, I don't think Steve Park um, had his injuries Bobby in this. Bobby was able to get a nice run through the corner and was able to get out of turn four with one of four wins that he would pick up in the season. Robert Presley's big break. Oh yeah, that's right. In the same race with a big crash, Robert Presley was able to end up winning at California. Pause. Okay, I need, I need, I need a uh, what do you call it? Um, did Presley actually make it through this 
right. Dale Earnhardt. Dale Earnhardt rode the wall, and Toy Story event. Okay, he did. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. I wanted to make sure there's consistency. He was able to end up winning at California. He was able to stretch the field and was able to win it out in his first career win at California. The bump and save? In this race, Bobby Labonte tried picking up another win, but Ken Schrader was not holding back. Oh yeah, that's right. In an incredible slide job, Ken Schrader slide goes job. to the corner, and he had one more challenge from Jerry Nadu, but was able to hold him off and would get his first win for M&M's in NASCAR. For M&M's? That's funny. Oh, that's right, I still did that. In the scariest crash of the year, Mike Skinner hits the wall and rides the catch bench, going up and over several, several times. Mike Skinner was <laughs> pretty badly injured after this wreck, and he had to be out for the rest of the season. Mike Skinner was able to come back in 2002, but his ride was lost to Robbie Gordon. Robbie drilled the 31 for the rest of the season and would end up switching over to his sponsor Singular in 2002. Yeah, so that's all the same. The day. In one of Dale Earnhardt's <laughs> most funny. favorite days, his driver, Michael Walter, drives to Victory Lane for the first time in his career driving one of Dale Earnhardt's cars. That's funny. I just literally used the footage from that. In a different style Talladega race, 42 cars ended up being on the lead lap and competed for the win. Everyone was going for it, so there was three and four wide. Watch as we find out who the real winner of this race is. Will the real winner please stand up? Terry Labonte down to the inside, and Terry Bonnie clears them all as they are three and four wide down the front straightaway. Hands up to the middle, Bobby Labonte down to the inside. They are three abreast, and it is Terry Labonte. One of the finishes in recent memory, Terry Labonte was able to be on his little brother by four one thousandths of a second. It looks bigger than that, but oh well. Jeff Gordon was able to beat out Dale Earnhardt for the championship. Earnhardt was trying to be the first driver to not have a win, but still win the championship. Finishing second six times in the season, but never a win. Gordon was able to take the victory in the season finale at New Hampshire, and was able to win his fourth championship. Here are the final point standings. Jeff Gordon won three races this year. Dale Earnhardt did not win, but had six second place finishes. Dale Earnhardt Jr. had five wins in the year. Bob Labonte had four. Tony Stewart won three races. Sterling Marlin, Ricky Rudd, and Ordale Jarrett had a win. Rusty Wallace had one, and Jeff Burton had one at Richmond. That is all for 2001. All right. As coming up next, we'll have the top ten. All right. So let's go ahead and let's jump into uh, 2002. Let's do that right now. Rockin' the Rock. So let's see here. This is Griff Dog here, and these are the I top 10 mistakes. moments from 2002. In the beginning of the Daytona 500, there was a massive, massive crash. Mark Martin blew out a tire and took out at least 25 cars in the field. Everyone was okay, but at least half the field had to go to the garage after the race. Ah, uh, you know... I wish I would have done an analyzing the big one of that wreck. I, I really enjoyed that wreck. This is our point of interest, as we are going to take a more close in-depth look at the ah, Subway 400 blurry. here at Rockingham. In this race, we're going to talk about all the changes that have happened since Dale Earnhardt is still alive, and we're going to take an in-depth analysis on how this race unfolds. To start off, we're going to take a look at the starting lineup for this year's Subway 400 at Rockingham. On the pole, you have Dale Earnhardt, who is donning the white... Okay, I, I want to talk about this for a second. 
Okay, um, well, so one little thing I want to do, just so we can kind of speed up here. I'm going to go 1.5 speed, so it's going to sound a little awkward, but anyway, the starting grid. So I love having race cars on the starting lineup. Like when you do the starting lineup graphic, I just, I love it. And I don't understand why they don't do it anymore. Uh, I wish I could have done more though, because all I have is because I went from yellow to green gradient, and then I had some black text. If I had more time and more focus, I probably would have done something a little more spicier, but... I worked with what I had, and fun fact, I actually had Subway for dinner tonight. Team this year alongside Dale Earnhardt Jr. In row two, you have Tony Stewart and Jimmy Johnson running Rookie of the Year this year. Row three has defending champion Jeff Gordon, and alongside him, Ricky Rudd. Bobby Labonte, after a strong year in 2001, is going to take on 2002, and alongside Matt Kenseth. Jeff Green moves over to the Winston Cup Series, driving to... So what did I say here? Jeff Green ran nine races in 2001. He can't be Rookie of the Year. Really? I did? Huh. Number 12, Mobile One Ford, and alongside him, Michael Waltrip. Jeremy Mayfield in the 19 moves over from the 12 to the 19 alongside... Hold up. I don't think I spelled that right, did I? <sighs> Give me one second. Jeremy. Ah ha ha, crap. Mark Martin, Terry Labonte, and alongside him, Jeff Burton. Kurt Busch and Robbie Gordon moving over to the 31 ride this year. Dave Laney moving to the 77, and Johnny Benson. So, okay, so I sped up, so just to let you know, I sped up the video just because I want to get through these a little quicker. If it does bother you guys, I can slow it down. Just let me know in the chat. Bobby Hamilton and Rusty Wallace in row 10. Ward Burton and alongside him, Jerry Nadu. Jimmy Spencer moves over to the 41 Target Dodge and alongside him, Ken Schrader. Kyle Petty alongside Sterling That's right, Kevin no, Harvick won the Bush Series Championship in 2001 and he's going to take his talents to the Winston Cup Series, driving the new number 30 AOL Chevrolet. Harvick had seven starts in 2001, but is making a full-time effort in 2002. Alongside him is Steve Grissom, Hutch Strickland in the 23 alongside Casey Atwood, John Andretti, and Mike Wallace driving the 33 car for Andy Petrie Racing. Ryan Newman moves up to the Winston Cup Series full-time this year, becoming another rookie. Of All right, I'll just mention it right now. I love 02, just that number font, 02 together. And so like in every single what if I will ever make, I will have, at least for one full season, Ryan Newman will drive a 02 car. So I just want to mention that right now. Of the year, and alongside him, Mike Skinner, Bill Elliott, alongside him, Ricky Craven, Elliott Sadler, and Steve Park next to each other. As we get through the rest of the field, Top O'Dine and Dale Jarrett, Stacey Compton, and Shauna Robinson, the only female driver in the field, and Ed Barrier rounds out the field. Glad you can join us as we begin race number two of the 2002 campaign. Dale Sr. and Dale Jr. lead them to the start, and we are underway here at Rockingham. Hey, Jimmy Johnson, welcome back. Three wide in the back as Jeff Green goes underneath Bobby Labonte and Ricky Rudd. Yeah, the this is the one. Hold on. I want to see if someone had that comment. What was it? 20 Daryl Walter. CJ Racing? Let's see. How was that the games? Would love this series just for this episode. These are so cool, man. Hey, Auto Racing 94. Yeah, love that random 20 during the ambiance of the Rocky Ham race. Yeah, that was that was just my, my bad at trying to cut the audio. And that's Daryl Waltrip during the uh, Crank It Up. It's the Dale and Dale show, as his father and son lead 1-2 across the first lap here at Rockingham. Yeah, Dale and Dale. Tony Stewart dives underneath Jr., and he'll take that for a second spot. Yeah. So one little thing that kind of bothers me is, like, I just literally slap the Crank It Up footage on the racing footage. And the thing that bothers me is that it does not sync. And I wish it did. And so I feel like you guys probably don't care much about it. But, I don't know, just looking back on it now, it kind of bothers me how, like, because the cars do the new new noise, and it just doesn't sync up. So, eh. First caution comes out as Stacy Compton gets turned by Dale Jarrett and comes to a stop on the back straightaway. Compton keeps going. Coming to the caution, though, Tony Stewart dives underneath Dale Earnhardt and will take the caution flag. First round of pit stops happen as Tony Stewart brings him down onto the pit road, and Jeremy Mayfield does not pit. He's the only one that does it, and he will lead him to the restart. Kind of random, but okay. Tony Stewart dives underneath Jeremy Mayfield, and he will retake the lead away. Johnny Benson goes a little high, and he hits the outside wall, but there is no caution. Dale Earnhardt retakes the lead away from Tony Stewart, yeah, and Jeff Green moves up into the third spot. Ryan Newman's day does not start off well, as he is back in the 35th position. Jeff Green gets by Tony Stewart for the second position. And Ricky Rudd and Dale Jr. have a battle inside a top five. Ricky Rudd falls back. Kevin Harvick makes his way up through the field as he passes Ricky Rudd and makes himself inside the top 10. 
Dale Earnhardt has a couple of tenths of a second lead over Jeff Green as cars begin to separate out. Really? Kevin Harvick makes his way up into the top five, passing Mark Martin for fourth, as well as Tony Stewart for third. Yeah. Jimmy Johnson? I just think it made sense as Johnson comes on pit road. I think it just made sense for Harvick to move into the 30 car. Because, I mean, I feel like I heard that that was going to happen in real life. But like, even so, like even like in all the different alternative like universes, unless if Harvick for whatever reason um, moved to a different team or something like that, I just felt like it made sense for him to be in the uh, 30 car. This is the first time he's been in the lead in the Winston Cup Series. Jeremy Mayfield is the first driver to come on pit road since he didn't pit during the first caution. Right. Mark Martin ends up taking the lead away from Dale Earnhardt. And soon pit stops began as everybody makes their way down pit road for the first time. In this race, tires are really critical. The second caution comes out as Jimmy Johnson gets in the back of Dale Earnhardt. <laughs> Dale Earnhardt tries to keep going, but he gets hit by Ricky Rudd and Rusty Wallace, as well as Elliot Sadler. Ricky, Ricky Rudd does go upside Wallace. down, but he does keep driving. That's right, I forgot about that. <laughs> because of the timing of the caution and everyone was making pit stops, several drivers are on the tail end of the lead lap. Mark Martin is your leader, but he is way back in the field. On the restart, Dave Blaney leads him, but he is the first guy on the tail end of the lead lap. Hmm. Mark Martin is in the lead, Kurt Busch is second, and Jeff Green is third. Okay, so just a little change of plan as the caution comes out here. I'm gonna go ahead and just do like the first five videos, and then like six and seven, um, if there's extra time, I'll go back to those. But I kind of want to jump to uh, one more spark here sooner rather than later. But we'll keep going with this. And if there are any other uh, factoids, oh yeah, I love that multi shot. Uh, but if there are any other like factoids, whatever, I can um, talk about that. I love this, by the way, where it shows like the two points of view. Oh yeah, and I love that. Okay, let's get the uh, audio back up. Caution number three comes out as Kirk Bush gets spun in the back straight. That car is a caution's brief caution. Right, here Robbie go. Gordon spins Casey Atwood down on the front straightaway and causes a major wreck. Watch here as we see the back of the wreck and the front of the wreck deploy, taking out at least 10 cars. On the restart, Kevin Harvick is in the lead. And I had the rookie bumpers. Harvick, Waltrip, and Ryan Newman are the top three. After a successful beginning of the race, Tony Stewart blows a motor and stalls hey, in front of, Snapchat. of all the cars. Or, not Snapchat, Benson sorry. The back Super Stewart, chat. Stewart... I've missed a lot of this and I feel terrible. Hope this makes up for it. Thanks, Kamikaze Games. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much for all your support. I have not shown your video yet. I will do so later tonight. Thanks, bud. Sterling Marlin, one of the drivers to look out for, is not having a good day, running back in the 33rd position. Caution comes out once more as Ken Schrader gets turned no, by John not Benson. Ken Schrader. His car stalls, and that brings out the caution. Pit stops once again as Ryan Newman brings him out, and Ryan Newman is your leader. Newman leads, Mark Martin is second, Jimmy Johnson third, Michael Walter fourth, and Kevin Harvick is in fifth. Mark Martin eventually gets around Ryan Newman for the lead. Sterling Marlin's day continues to not be so well. <laughs> he gets spun around at the taking out Stacey Compton and Rusty Wallace as well. Tires are the name of the game, as after another set of pit stops, Mark Martin leads the field down to the restart. Donnie. Caution will come out once more, as Terry LeBarney tries to get back going, yeah, but he gets taken out, and it turns into a six-car pile like in turn <laughs> three. I love how just slowly but surely get bigger. Tires are really worn at this Ryan point, Kelman. as another set of pit stops occur, That's and funny. Mark Martin retains his lead, and Michael... Hundred was hundred thousand dollars. If you could, I would love you forever, Ryan. If you could do that, but thank you for the thought anyway. Pit stops once more. On the restart this time, it's Jeff Gordon who makes his way up to the lead. Michael Walter is second, Mark Martin third, and John Andretti is now fourth. But we are not done with cautions yet. Cautions Steve Park and Jerry Nadeau crash on the fresh right away, but Steve Park gets popped by Johnny Benson, and Park goes up and over. Park's yep. car eventually does flip back upright and does continue to race. Yeah. Another set of pit stops. On the restart, Kurt Busch is in the lead and Kyle Petty is in second place. Jeff Green is holding on to the tail end of the lead lap. Yeah. No, this is pretty straightforward, honestly. <sighs> Jeff Gordon moves to second place, trying to take down Kurt Busch for the lead. Kevin Harvick is hanging out in ninth place and Mike Skinner 
making his first trip back into the Winston Cup Series first after the scary crash, is in 10th. Kurt Busch is hanging out on the lead, Jeff Gordon, and then the Elliots, Bill Elliott and Elliott Seiler are third and fourth. Jeff Green, meanwhile, is doing everything he can to garner as many points as possible. Kurt Busch lines up the track, gets into the wall, and loses the lead to Bill Elliott. <coughs> Elliott Seiler follows suit in second. Elliott Seiler then actually takes the lead away from Bill Elliott. Elliott Seiler! traffic. Jeff Gordon starts thus another round of green flag pit stops. Oh yeah, I, I like doing Kurt that. Kurt had problems coming into pit road with Bobby Hamilton. Kurt ends up losing a second because of this pit stop mishap. As you can tell here, new tires are absolutely better to have than worn tires. Yeah, Ryan, that's actually kind of something I wanted to bring up. So Ryan Kelman says, that's highly unrealistic that a car would continue on after flipping. Yeah, I mean, again, Dale Earnhardt did it in 97, but um, I don't know. It's just like the other thing with Fender 2003, like it can be realistic, but then you got crap like that with Dale Jr. And uh, I don't know. It's just one of those things where it's like I could try to be quote unquote realistic, but yeah, as he said, Fender 2003 logic, exactly. And I just wish that Fender 2003 did not have its own logic. Kyle Petty has been on the lookout of being an upset. He moves past Bill Elliott, and that is for the second position. Jeff Gordon and Bill Elliott eventually fall back, as they are now just outside the top 10. Yeah. Kyle Petty eventually gets by Mark Martin for the lead. This is with the help of lap traffic. Lap traffic. Bobby Hamilton and Jimmy Johnson both get by Mark Martin as well for a second and third, respectively. Bobby Hamilton gets by Kyle Petty on the inside for the lead later on. Yeah, Hamilton in the lead. That's awesome. Jimmy Johnson then passes Bobby Hamilton. This is all with the help of lap traffic. Kyle Petty retain or goes back and takes the lead back again from Jimmy Johnson. But this battle is not over. Jimmy Johnson comes back to take the lead back from Kyle Petty. Jimmy. And Dale Jr., he is actually back in third place. Yay, Dale. Caution comes out once more. <laughs> Dale Jr. and Jeff Gordon go around in the front straightaway, <laughs> but they both keep racing. On the final set of pit stops, Jimmy Johnson just ekes out Kyle Petty. Bobby Hamilton and Dale Jr. are third and fourth. On the restart, Jimmy Johnson clears lap traffic and is able to bounce ahead of Kyle Petty. Dale Jr. is still in third. Jimmy Johnson opens up a half a second lead over Kyle Petty, who has a second on the I'm going to go a little faster here. Kurt Busch gets by Dale Jr. for fifth. Dale Sr., meanwhile, has probably got the comeback driver of the race, moving himself all the way up to the sixth the position. Federation. I With just five laps to go, it comes down to Jimmy Johnson and Mark Martin. Martin has a better car as he gets up on Jimmy Johnson's rear. Mark yeah. Martin waits until the last lap to try making a run on Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy trying to get his first career win in only his ninth start. But Mark Martin gets the run down the back straightaway and is able to clear Johnson to turn number three. And that will give Mark Martin his first win of the season in the Subway 400 at Rockingham. <laughs> Here are the final results. Mark Martin. Dale Jr. ends up at fifth. Bobby Hamilton back to 18th. And as you see the rest of the field, it's rolling down. So that was number nine on the top ten moments of 2002. Three rookies won a race. The rookies did end up doing well. Each driver got one win in the season. Ryan Newman won at Kansas. Jimmy Johnson was able to win at Richmond. And Kevin Harvick won at California. These were their only wins. I just thought about that. Yeah, Newman, Johnson, and Harvick were all rookies in the same year. I just realized that. Huh. That, you know, now that I think about it, I feel like each of those, each of them would have been a lot more competitive. But also, Dylan Hart's still alive, so. Hmm. Wins of 2002. Dale Earnhardt's Dale DNFs. Earnhardt had a year to forget, having 12 DNFs in the season, and his best finish being a second. Dale Earnhardt tried all he can, but was able to not do so well. Earnhardt is looking for redemption in 2003. Jeff Gordon wins four in a row. After winning the championship in 2001, Jeff Gordon went on a hot streak in 2002, winning four races in a row, including Watkins Glen, Michigan, Bristol, and the Southern 500 at Darlington. Gordon was able to accumulate two more wins for a total of six in 2002. Kenny Wallace's fuel mileage. Yeah. In an incredible fuel race, Kenny Wallace was able to roll the dice just right, and he was able to run out of fuel just as he crossed the finish line. This would be Kenny Wallace's only win in 2002. Jeff the wildest Green. crash of the year happened at Michigan. Jeff Green and Dale Jr. rolled the wall at Michigan, and Jeff Green flipped many, many times. Fortunately, he was okay, and he was able to continue on next week. The close finish at Atlanta. Atlanta played host to the closest finish of the season. Jeff Green dies on a knee rub. And... Boom. But by two one thousandths of a second, Ricky Rudd was able to be in front of Jeff Green. This would end up being Jeff Green's best finish of the year. Wait, what? Didn't I say Jeff Green won earlier? Oh no, no I didn't. 
After the big crash taking out several drivers, Dale Jr. finally gets the win at Daytona. Of course, the first person in the medium in victory lane was, of course, Dale Earnhardt. This was probably the happiest day of Dale Earnhardt's life. Man, could you imagine that if Dale Jr. won the Daytona 500 if Dale Earnhardt was still alive? <sighs> that would have been really cool. And then Martin With finally wins the championship. In 2002, Mark Martin was able to eke out his first championship, beating out Tony Stewart at the final race at Homestead. Here are the final point standings as Mark Martin has five wins, Tony Stewart had three, Sterling Marlin was actually winless in 2002, but was able to do so well. Jeff Gordon had six wins, Kurt Busch had only one win at Bristol, Kevin Harvick had his one win at California, Ryan Newman has one win at Kansas, Dale Jr. had three wins, Daytona and the two races at Talladega, Ricky Rudd had two wins, Rusty Wallace meanwhile had one win, now was at Bristol. Dale Earnhardt had finished 13th in points and he was 896 points back. That is all for 2002. All right, let's jump right into the third one. This is Griff Dog, and here are the top 10 moments. What's the, the winner of the first one? Yeah, uh, Doritos and Mountain Dew. As I said, if I could have redone this series, I absolutely would have. It's from 2003. We start the first race of the season as Ward Burton goes for a wild ride down the back straightaway. Fortunately, he was okay, and he was able to move on into the next race. In the same race, Jeff Gordon was able to stay out front when the rain hit. Once the rain hit, NASCAR called it official, and Jeff Gordon wins Daytona 500. Crazy finish at Lowe's. A late race caution set up a green white checkered for the UAW Gene Quality 500 here at. Can you imagine if Dale Earnhardt actually drove that car? I really wish uh, he did, but you know. Lowe's. Watch as this race unfolds as Dale Earnhardt, Jeff Green, and Kenny Wallace battle it out for the win. says it's going by a little too fast all right i did pop it up to 1.75 so let's do this and then kenny wallace side by side to the line and kenny wallace wins will capture his third second place finish in 2003 Kenny Wallace was able to garner his second career win. Dale Griff, are you using the default car set but with more paint schemes for 2003? Yeah, I am using the default car set. At least I think Dale I am. loses it. I think it all depends on if it says Winston Cup or I don't remember. By half a car line. In one of the scariest rides in 2003, Bobby Labonte turns in front of the pack and goes for an absolutely crazy ride into the catch fence. Fortunately, none of the drivers were hurt. However, a piece of debris flew into the grandstands, injuring one fan. That fan did go into the hospital and was able to get treated and released. Okay, so this is the Our race. Our recent focus is on number six, as we are taking a closer look at... Mm, I don't think I'm going to go through much of this race, just because... Sharpie 500. I don't know, I just want to try to get through this. We're following this race because in the Food City 500 in 2003, there were a lot of problems that took place involving cautions, where to pit, and cars running into each other. Yeah. So for this race, NASCAR implemented new rules so that the race can go more smoothly. One of the biggest features is a guardrail wall in turns three and four. We will talk about the rest of the rules as... So yeah, the guardrail wall. <laughs> That's because this is on default on um, Bristol. This race progresses. Here is the starting lineup for this year's Sharpie 500 here at Bristol. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring this down to one because if there are like, changes, I do want to talk about that. Starting out front is Dale Earnhardt Jr. And alongside him is rookie contender Casey, Casey Mears. Mears. Kenny Wallace getting the full-time ride for Bill Davis Racing in the 23 Stacker 2 Dodge. And alongside him, Bobby Labonte. Tony Stewart. And alongside him, Kevin Harvick, who is running his second full-time season in the ALL 30. So Chad, quick question for you guys. So you guys know that like if like Harvick moved over to the 30 ride, do you think you would have been in the 30 ride for a long time? Or do you think you would have been in there for maybe like one or two years and then moved rides? Car. Greg Biffle, another rookie contender, and alongside him, Ricky Craven, Kurt Busch, and Ricky Rudd driving for Wood Brothers Racing, yep. Bill Elliott, and alongside him, Sterling Marlin, Scott Riggs, and alongside him is Todd. That's right. I was so sneaky because I had Scott Riggs in the six. If I would have done this as a premiere, I would have gotten a lot of crap from people to be like, wait, Scott Riggs, no, Mark Martin was in the six. And, uh, <laughs> uh. Bodine, 
Dave Blaney, and alongside him, Ken Schrader. Dale Earnhardt driving a special Oreo number Okay, this is one of those paint schemes where I wish I would have spent more time on. Because, I mean, I, I like the design, how it's mostly like um, his regular scheme, but I wish I would have done more of his, like, milk. Three car for Bristol, and alongside him, Johnny Benson. Robbie Gordon driving an inverse orange car this week, and alongside him, Michael Waltrip. Jamie McMurray, another Rookie of the Year contender, and alongside him. I love this car a lot. The only thing, though, is number slant. I wish it would have gone back side. Tim Wardberg, Jeff Gordon, and alongside him, Jeremy Mayfield, John right Andretti, and Elliot Sadler in row 13. Let's see. Okay, yeah, Elliot's car is the default car. Yeah. Points leader, Matt Kenseth, and alongside him, Terry Labonte. Jeff Burton and Jimmy Spencer in the Serious Dodge. Ryan Newman in the O2 car and Scott Wimmer driving a limited schedule for Bill Davis limited, Racing okay. in 2003. I wasn't sure if that car was limited or not, but okay, it was. Steve Park and alongside... Okay, let's talk about this for a second because I just remembered. So one of the things that I changed and ah, it's a little bit of a lazy move, but you see how I just extended the E out so it turns into a stripe? What I probably would have done at least is taken this stripe and moved it like across the center like so. Or I would have just changed up the paint scheme as a whole. I don't know because I think it was lazy and I wish I would have done more with that. Alongside him, Joe Nemechek, Jimmy Johnson, and alongside him, Kyle Petty, Jeff Green in his second season of the Mobile One Dodge, and alongside him, Larry Foyt, Rusty Wallace driving the Victory Lap car as this is the final year Winston Cup is sponsoring NASCAR. And alongside him, Jack Sprague. Brian Vickers in a limited schedule for Hendrick Motorsports. And alongside him, Dale Jarrett. And rounding out the field is Tony Raines. Tony Raines, the GOAT, Tony Raines. Shout out to, uh, I know the Kamikaze Games. I thought you did like, yeah, Tony Raines was like the 174 car or something like that. All right. Thanks for pulling in as we are about to go. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mute this and I'm actually going to play this out twice speed. Just because, like, again, so much happens in this race, and it's stuff I more or less don't care about, but if there's someone I want to talk about, I can go back and I can fix that. Take that back. I go with from 2002, 2013. Okay. So we got junior leads for a while, Kenny Wallace and Antonio Stewart, and you got three wide there, and I think I said Andretti was in the 43. <laughs> That's right. Hold on. Back up. I need to know. Was, um, let's see. I want to check something here. Was I in the 73 car, just out of curiosity? Good, and Rusty Wallace get at it three wide, but no caution. First caution comes out as Tony Raines goes way too high and gets yeah. into the outside wall and collects Brian Vickers. Tony Raines would eventually end up going to the garage. First round of pit stops begin. And okay, so yeah, I I drove Tony Raines' car, so that, that explains that. All right, let's keep going here. So the pit stops, pit stop. I wonder where Luigi is. Oh yeah! Stupid! Stupid, stupid, stupid. Let's let's look at the stupid. Hold on. Let's look at the stupid here. Play. Because Pit Road is so long here at Bristol, cars had to stop to let the pace car go on by. Yeah. Their pit stops took longer yep. than the pace car went around the track. Oh. Because of that, yep. NASCAR had to let the pace car and the other cars go, That's so forcing stupid. them a lap down. That's Dale so Earnhardt stupid. heard that his son, Dale Jr., got a lap down, and here's what he had to say. Pretty much saying that he is absolutely furious at NASCAR for forcing him a lap down. Yeah, stupid. And that's actually a big reason why I, like... I don't know, like, because, again, I love the idea of doing one more spark and doing it, like, full-time. But when you have stupid BS like that in Inner 2003, like, that, that, rrr, that grinds my gears. So, NASCAR yeah. is just abiding by the rules, saying that if they don't get their work done so in time, stupid. then they're going to fall a lap down. Because of this mishap, 13 cars fell a lap down, and Ward Burton ends up being on the tail end of the lead lap. Stupid. Kenny Wallace ends up being the leader Stupid. of this race. Stupid. On the Stupid. restart, Ward Stupid. Burton leads Stupid. him down, Stupid. but Kenny Wallace is your... Stupid. Wait, what the... Immediate start. Kurt Busch and Ricky Rudd crash on the back straightaway. That does bring out the caution. When Ricky Rudd gets going, though, Michael Waltrip gets in the <laughs> back of Ricky Rudd hard. Kind of like real life. Michael Walter was shaken up, but he was okay. 
Pit stops again as cars make their way down pit road. Except this time, NASCAR was a little more generous in letting cars go. The only problem on pit road? Casey Mears ends up expiring a motor and uh. he will not be able to finish the race. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry, Kamikaze Games. Uh. Right on his rear. I'm sorry. Dale Earnhardt goes underneath Dave Blaney for the fourth position. Dave Blaney ends up falling back outside the top ten. Alright. More problems for Dale Earnhardt Jr. as he has a flat right rear tire, forcing him to go more than five laps down early in the go. Five laps Caution down. Caution comes out again as Ooh. brothers Jeff Burton and Ward Burton crash into each other. Jeff Burton goes head on into the outside wall. But, you know, if that were real life, I think Jeff Byrne would have been at least injured. Just the way how he slammed the outside wall. Yeah, I'd, eh. On the restart, Scott Riggs did not hit, so he's put on the tail end of the lead lap. Kenny Wallace is still your leader. You know, I'm okay, I'm sorry. I, I, I gotta note this again. I am so, like, proud of myself for not, like, saying at the beginning why Scott Riggs was replacing Mark Martin. I totally, 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 totally would have, uh, I could have done it, but I wanted to be sneaky about that. He has a flat left rear tire. All Jeff right. Gordon dives underneath Kenny Wallace, and he will take the lead away. Rusty Wallace, Kenny's brother, follows suit in the second position. Dale Jarrett and Joe Nemechek are also in the top five. They would eventually get around Kenny Wallace as well. Bobby Labonte, one of the top drivers in 2003, is about to go a lap down to Jeff Gordon. Eventually, Jeff... Alright, I'm gonna speed up ahead a little bit. So yeah, you had Gordon there, Riggs, Benson, and then Wallace. Oh yeah, did a wreck happen? No, Wallace went to the lead, that's right. And then to the turn there. Oh, I love that. I love that. I loved doing that. Hold up. I wanted to... Okay, well, let's go normal speed for a second. A lot. No, I love that. Did I say anything here? And because Gordon went on the high side, one, he two, falls three, all the way back to the eighth position before falling back in line. I love that. That is, that is I think, technically animation. Because I took, like, the positions and I, like, followed the car. Oh, I love creative stuff like that. Okay. Caution comes out as John Dre gets tagged on the back straightaway, slams the inside wall, and he takes out five other cars, Tony including no. Jeremy Mayfield and Tony Stewart. Pit stops once more as Rusty Wallace leads him down this time, All right, and he will speed up win the race off of pit road. Rusty Wallace will lead the field on to restart. Dale Jarrett is second. I'll bring this down a little bit. <laughs> more problems for Dale. That stinks. A nice little love tap, that's right. That's right, the caution never came out because NR2003. This car said that everybody here in crash Jerry Mayfield, who made several pit stops, comes right up into the field and crashes the leaders. Several drivers have been taken pretty much out of the race. But here's the problem. The caution never came out. NASCAR said that everyone was able to go and all the debris was on the apron. So, they did not throw the caution. Kenny so Wallace was absolutely furious, saying this. NASCAR just says that they're abiding by the rules and they are going to keep racing. Battle for the lead takes place as Dale Jarrett gets by Rusty Wallace and he'll take over the lead. Ah. So more controversy comes up as Rusty <laughs> Wallace trying to pass by Dale more Jarrett controversy. ends up putting him into the outside wall, but no caution again. Dave Blaney, who hasn't been having the best of seasons, has been running well in 8th place so far. Will he stay there? We will find out. Yeah, that's true. A long Ooh. green flag run test taking place. Love this shot. I love this shot. I just want to mention I just want to show I love this shot. It's as cars have equally spread themselves out and they just wanted to get into a rhythm without any cautions whatsoever. How long will this last? We almost had a close call as Jamie McMurray Jamie was Murray, the no. of turn number four. McMurray does end up going into the garage safely, but he is out of the race as well. 
because of long green flag run, green flag pit stops begin as Dale Jarrett and many of the other leaders made their way down on the pit road. In the middle of pit stops, caution comes out again as Terry Labonte and Kevin Harvick make their way into the outside wall, collecting Greg Biffle as well. This jumbles up the field as several drivers are intermingled with lap down traffic. One yeah. of the rules implemented for this race is single file restarts all the time. And what NASCAR has implemented is that all the cars stay exactly where they would have been. I just want to mention 50 views. Thank you guys so much for coming by here. Greatly appreciate it. Rusty Wallace. Later on, Elliot Sadler passes Rusty Wallace for the third position. Wallace does not have the best of running cars at the moment. Another long green flag run equals another set of green flag pit stops. There was a moment on pit road where Jerry Meek was trying to make his way off the pit road, but right in the back, Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon did suffer some. Alright, let's keep this quiet for a little bit. Yeah, this video and this race kind of proves kind of just my my feelings for Inner 2003. Like sometimes it can do absolute wonders for you, but there are other times where it can be an absolute pain in the rear where you get these silly situations like this. Yeah, you got three wide there. I think it was Bill Elliott that was in the lead at the moment with Rusty Wallace. Yeah, and you had to double check. Oh yeah, the teammates of Green and Newman. You have Sadler there. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, it can definitely be a pain in the rear sometimes. All right, we're getting close to the end here. This race turns into the Elliott and Elliott show as Bill Elliott and Elliott Sauer battle it out in the final laps just between those two. Elliott Sadler gives a nice bump to Bill Elliott, but Bill Elliott does save it. Elliott Sadler has not won a race yet, and he would love to get his first one here at Bristol. There was a moment where we almost had a caution. Dale Jarrett turned Steve Harden into the outside wall, but that is not a caution. Nope. Here are the final three laps. You know what, I'll play and this off. Bill Elliott and Elliott Sadler are battling it out for the win. Elliott Sadler all over the back of Bill Elliott, down the front straightaway, two laps to go. Can Elliott Sadler move Bill Elliott out of the way? Down the back straight of eight, there you go. Elliot Sadler, he has the run. Elliot Sadler down underneath Bill Elliott for the lead. One lap to go. Elliot Sadler clears Bill Elliott. Ryan Newman is in the back. He is going to challenge for the win as he's going to try getting under Bill Elliott. Elliot Sadler dives underneath Steve Park down in turn number three. And Elliot Sadler is going to get his first career win here at Bristol. Yeah. Here are the final results from the 2003 right, shark. I'm gonna go down here. Okay. 2003 was a year for drivers to stand out and make a name for themselves. One of those is Ryan Newman. Ryan ended up having seven wins in 2003, including Kansas, Dover, Chicagoland, the second Pocono race, the second Michigan race, the second Richmond race, and Kansas. The Dover race I mentioned earlier was the first Dover race. Ryan Newman ended up winning the most races in 2003. Epic finish at Darlington. In another race <laughs> with a late restart, Kirk Busch and Ricky Craven had one of the battles to remember. On the final turn, Ricky Craven and Kurt Busch, pulling off a charge of lead lap cars, came down the front straightaway side by side. I'm so thrilled about that. How I was able to get that. It took 30 seconds to finally decide a winner, and that was. I think, I think that took about like half an hour to get that done. Winner is Kurt Busch, winning by four one thousandths of a second, being one of the closest in NASCAR history. Seven first time winners. This year saw a bunch of firsts, including seven first time winners. Those winners being Todd Bodine, who won at the first Pocono race, Robbie Gordon, Robbie. who won at Infineon, Greg Biffle, who won the night race at Daytona, Jamie McMurray, who won at California, Ricky Craven, who won the second Rockingham race, Elliot Sadler, who we mentioned, won at the night race at Bristol, and Jeff Green, who won okay. at Dover, the second Dover race.
So Matt Kenseth still wins the championship. In one of the more bizarre championships, Matt Kenseth only garnered one win at Las Vegas. That's still but real. He was able to consistently be in the top five and the top ten, and that is enough for Matt Kenseth to win his first championship. Here is the top ten. Yep. And then here's the list of all the winners in 2003. I don't think I did that in 2002. No, I did not. That is all for this list. Thank you guys so much for watching but all where's these. Number one? And be sure to tune in for the next part. The top 10 moments from 2004. This is Griff Dog signing off. And so long and thank you very much. Yep, and then <laughs> number one, Mark Martin's career ending crash. Ah, uh, that's funny. Not funny at all, I'm sorry. But I just I'm I can't believe I did that. Super quiet. And then it's the outside wall. Yeah. Career ending crash. Not death. Then the deuce coma. You know what I just realized? Hold on. Yeah, because it does a little fade there. It almost, I need to double check this. It almost looked like a Newman's wreck in 2020 to a little bit of an extent. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Just the way how he flipped and stuff like that. Yeah, huh. Yeah, I know. It was a little, again, controversial on me doing this, but my thinking behind this is, um, is it alchemy? Just the idea of equal exchange. I don't know. Just if, if, if Earnhardt being alive, I just did not feel comfortable with like everybody being alive or, you know, active. So it sucked that I had to choose Martin, but hey, it is what it is. All right. Part four. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to do the first five parts. And then after that, I'm actually going to switch it up here and do one more spark. What if racing Sarah McLaughlin's song needs to play? You know, what if you can play it in your uh, um, your house if you want to. All right, resurgence. This is Griff Dog here, and here are the top ten moments from 2004. Let's see, Corvette Racing 48. You said you had other drivers with the same fate as Mike Garvey dying or Martin. Who else did you have? Um. Like that I actually had in the Dale Earnhardt series, or if uh, like others I had in mind. In the fall race at Dover okay. International Speedway, Jimmy Johnson had one more lap and he wins the race. But unfortunately, he runs out of fuel. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Bobby Labonte pass by him, and Dale Jr. would eventually come around turn number four to win the fall race at Dover. Jimmy Johnson would wind up finishing 12th in this race. Finish it oh yeah. Some new rules were placed by NASCAR because of the very first race of the year, the Daytona 500. Oh yeah! This was nuts. A big crash unfolds as Ward Burton holds off a charging Sterling Marlin and Ward Burton wins the Daytona 500. Okay, so a couple of questions I want to answer in chat. So Corvette Racing, other drivers I had in mind. Two off the bat I was thinking of was Bobby Labonte. And then I was also thinking of uh, Jeff Burton because of that wreck at uh, Bristol. Those were two, but otherwise, um, yeah, otherwise I'm okay with what I had. And then why not continue? Because there are other things I want to look at, like one more spark. And then I also want to get into like Photoshop and the other um, Intertelligence 3 shorts that I uh, never made, which was a big reason why I did this stream anyway. But what happens behind has set up new rules for NASCAR. At this time, cars are still able to race to the finish, even though the caution came out. This changed. Yeah. Watch in the back as Bobby Labonte comes barreling in and he clobbers the back of Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson was shaken up, but he is okay. Because of this, 
they implemented that when the caution comes out, cars cannot race back to the finish line. Um, I would say two months. Kurt Busch had high expectations yeah, coming months. into 2004, but that was not to happen. Kurt Busch had an incredible 18 DNFs in 2004, barely making it into the top 20 in the final point standings. Fortunately, Kurt Busch was in the middle of a three-year contract, so he will be in the 97 car for at least one more season. On the other end of the spectrum, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is yeah. successful. So I mentioned it before, but again, I hate doing the E extended all the way out. It's lazy. And I wish I would have done more of the stripes and had it more like extended out or something like that. So, ah, hated that. And the second Talladega race. An unusual oh, yeah. crash happens here at Las Vegas. Jeff Green gets in between Michael Waltrip and Brian Vickers, and Jeff Green would goes up and over on the front stretch. Jeff Green would, would skid on his roof for many yards. Fortunately, the car stayed intact, and Jeff Green is okay. Oh, I hate this one. Okay, let's talk about this. So, big, big error, and I mentioned this in the comments, but that car right here, it has the number 02. Ryan Newman was the 02, and I should have uh, double-checked that. And that bothers me to this day, and meh. Dale Earnhardt, Jeff Gordon, and many, many other drivers were involved. Oh yeah, Scott Riggs. Many critics were skeptical when Scott- Okay, pause. So one other thing that I loved, and when I saw this in uh, Ricky Stenhouse's um, 2010 car, the Nationwide car, I love this font. And I love the idea of this font and being just six. Plus, I'm also a man who loves um, everyone to have their own identity. And so for the six to switch it up, that would be great. The one was supposed to be in the 59. Yeah, that's right. It should have been the 59 car, not the 02. Scott Riggs came to replace Mark Martin after his career-ending crash at Pocono. But in 2004, Scott Riggs silenced those critics. Scott Riggs ended up winning two races in 2004, those races being the first Dover race as well as Chicagoland. Nesquik came oh, over yeah. from the Bush series to sponsor Scott Riggs in 10 races. The same deal will take place in 2005. It'll be interesting to see if Scott Riggs gets any more wins. Do. Oh, I, oh boy. Don't worry, guys. Mike Garvey is still alive and, and probably one of the saddest life. stories of 2004. Mike Garvey lost all of his brakes during a qualifying session in turn number three at Martinsville. The problem with him was that he did not have the Hans device in his car and he careened into the turn three wall, dying on impact. Because of this, NASCAR has implemented all safety parts to be required on every single car, no matter what. Also, safer barriers are implemented everywhere because of this wreck. Yeah, but look, there's safer barriers right there. So, not a big fan of this, but a heck. We will miss you, Mike Garvey, but the show must go on. All right, let's move on. All right. Our race in focus is the race to get in the chase. There are still technically 13 drivers viable for the top 10 spots in the chase. Here are the top 10 spots. Dale Earnhardt is just out, but- uh, Ryan Kellum and Nesquik stay at the 10 car in the Bush series. Um, no. Nope, Nesquik went with Scott Riggs all the way in the Cup series. He needs a good run in order to get his spot in the chase. The problem? Dale Jarrett and Rusty Wallace look very good this weekend, and we'll see if Dale Earnhardt can finally get into the chase. Earnhardt has had a better car this season, but can he cap it off by making an entry into the chase for the cup? We will about to find out tonight. To start things right. off, here is the starting lineup for this year's 2004 Chevy Rock and Roll 400 here at Richmond International Raceway. 
Starting on the pole is Bobby Labonte, and alongside him, Rusty Wallace. Dale Earnhardt driving a special KISS paint scheme for yes. tonight with Kurt Busch, who is looking for some form of retribution tonight. Scott Riggs has the new number font to give Scott a brand new identity, and alongside him, Jimmy Johnson, Robbie Gordon, and Kevin Harvick also driving a special paint scheme to commemorate the Chevy Rock and Roll 400. Sterling Marlin and Greg Biffle, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and alongside him, Casey Kane, Dale Jarrett, and Jeff Gordon starting in 14. Michael Waltrip starting where his car number is, and Ken Schrader. Joe Nemechek moves over from Hendrick Motorsports over to the MB2 Motorsports number 10 Chevrolet, was and Tony one. Stewart okay. starting 18. Casey Mears and alongside Ryan Newman in the 02 Autel Dodge. Matt Kenseth yep. and Steve Park in another full time season for DEI. Kraft is the official sponsor for Steve Park. Jeremy Mayfield and Ricky Rudd. Jeff Burney, and alongside him, Jeff Green, who lost his ride in the 12 car and moves over to the open spot at Petty Enterprise. Hold on. Row 14 is rookie Scott Wimmer, and alongside him, Jamie McMurray. Another rookie, Brendan Gaughan, and Jerry Nadu, who signed a contract extension to drive the U.S. Army 01 Chevrolet. Ricky Craven and Elliot Sadler starting 32nd. Johnny Sauter in a fourth RCR car and Jimmy Spencer. Terry Labonte and alongside him Kyle Petty. Brian Vickers and Mike Wallace in the 09 car. Mike Bliss and another Joe Gibbs racing machine. Oh, yeah. And David Green moving over from the Bush series to do a one off here in the Cup series. Daytona 500 winner Ward Burton crashed in qualifying starting 41st and alongside him Kevin LePage. And rounding out the field is Ryan McGlenn in the Double Ryan Zero McGlenn. Chevrolet. Okay, so, I'm sorry, I don't remember, so did the 12 car just leave? Hmm, I don't know how I feel about Pace that. Pace car is about to make his way down pit road, as we are going to go right. 400 laps to determine the 10 cars that are going to be in the inaugural chase for the... Alright, I'm going to speed this up again. Uh, so down the front straightaway here, and then turn number one, we got Labonte, Wallace, Earnhardt, and Kurt Busch. Richmond is, is nicer. It's a nicer track compared to Bristol in regards to uh, NR2003 logic. And then the turn number one here. Oh, yeah. I was driving Ryan McGlynn's car. So sorry to all you Ryan McGlynn fans. He finished uh, 43rd in this race. Five hours in. Ugh. Nuts. <laughs> Ryan McGlynn should have been in the 12 car. Yeah, probably. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Okay, hold on. Let's do this. Rusty Wallace has a tire go down. He needs to go down pit road. Oh, Rusty and... Wallace does not make it on the pit road, <laughs> but Rusty Wallace eventually gets going and put, brings his car to the garage. Yep. No caution. No caution. Johnny Sauter has moved his way up into the top 10. There have been rumors and speculation of a possible fourth car coming into RCR in 2005. Richard Childress is looking at options, and Johnny Sauter is definitely one of those options. All right, Jimmy Johnson takes the here. lead away from Kurt Busch. Harvick is on the tail end of the lead lap. Jimmy Johnson has one of the more powerful cars in this race. Oh, man. Dale Earnhardt passes Jeff Gordon for the fourth position. Dale Earnhardt also has a powerful car. Earnhardt's run toward the front continues as he passes Michael Waltrip, his Mikey. car, for the third position. Elliot Sadler, one of the drivers that had extensive pit road work, finally falls a lap down to Jimmy Johnson. Sadler had a strong car staying up front, but he eventually falls to Jimmy Johnson. Meanwhile, Dale Earnhardt keeps moving into the front as he passes Kurt Busch for the second position. The second caution comes out as Dale Jr. cuts down a tire on Ken Schrader, and Schrader <laughs> cannot make it to pit road. Man. Speaking of pit road, it was open again, and Jimmy Johnson and leads him off. Logic. Mike Wallace had to go to the garage, and his engine expired. On the restart, Jimmy Johnson leads, followed by Dale Earnhardt, Kurt Busch, and Jeff Gordon, your top four. Three wide as Casey Mears tries passing the 37 of Kevin LePage, but he thinks of it. Side by side, down in turn number four, as one car slips off into the wall, and that is Jimmy Spencer. More cars spin on the front stretch, but they all keep going. It stops again yeah. as Jimmy Johnson leads him off pit road. Some cars did not pit. David Green was on the tail end of the lead lap, while Michael Waltrip and Joe Nemechek did not pit. They are first and second. Jimmy Johnson's third, Dale Earnhardt fourth, and Kurt Busch is fifth. 
Sky Rings takes a dive underneath Dale Earnhardt as they go three wide down the back straightaway. Will this work? Oh, yeah. It does not. And in the wall goes Sky <laughs> Rings. That'll be another caution. It does not. More car spin to try to avoid it. Casey Mears, Casey Kane, Jamie McMurray, and more. Pit stops again as Michael Waltrip leads the field down pit road, and he will lead them off. Ryan Newman makes his way up to the fourth position. Jimmy Johnson makes his way up to the front, passing Joe Nemechek for the second spot, and eventually passes Michael Waltrip for the lead. New leader, 48. New leader, 48. Here's the running order at the halfway point of the race. In a battle for fifth, Dale Earnhardt and Kurt Busch pass by each other at least three times to figure out who gets the spot. Eventually, Kurt Busch gets the spot and denies Earnhardt a spot in the top five. Meanwhile, Ryan Newman passes Michael Waltrip for the third position. Oh, this is the first time position. Newman is up in the top three. On the back straightaway, Johnny Stoddard clips Greg Biffle and spins him into the inside wall. This does not bring out a caution because Greg Biffle immediately got going. Because it's my world, right? Because because there's no caution because it's me that's doing this, right? Is However, Ricky Freeman spins David Green out into the outside wall, and that causes a caution. On pit road, Jimmy Johnson leads the field off. So on the restart, it's Johnson, Newman, Kurt Busch, Joe Nemechek, and Dale Earnhardt, your top five. Caution comes out on the back straightaway as Jeremy Mayfield gets in the Scott Riggs, taking out at least five cars. Tony Stewart gets the worst end of it, but he keeps going. Jimmy Johnson ended up having overheating problems. So under the caution, he went into pit road and stayed for an entire lap, pretty much taking him out of contention. Yeah. yeah, yeah. On the restart, it's Ryan Newman, Dale Earnhardt, Michael Waltrip, Joe Nemechek, and Kurt Busch, your top five. Matt Kenseth blows a motor in front of Jeff Gordon. This almost causes problems, but Jeff Gordon was able to get around Matt Kenseth as well as most of the field. I say most because Scott Wimmer gets into Dale Jarrett and Dale Jarrett gets into the outside wall. That causes another caution. No pit stops this time as Ryan Newman leads Dale Earnhardt into turn number one. Michael Walter, Jim Nemechek, and Kirk Bush are your top five. Oh, Kirk Bush gets into the outside wall and he gets popped by Tony Stewart. Yep. But the wreck is not over. Watch right. as Tony Stewart try. Uh, oh, is this the meme? Is this the meme? Is this the meme? Hold on. Please tell me this is the meme. He's making his way down pit road. <laughs> so this dumb. wreck is without a doubt one of the most unbelievable in history. <laughs> All I can say is Brendan God was hurt, but he did keep going after this race. <laughs> definitely, definitely a weird wreck. I'm not gonna lie, but so it was entertaining stupid. at least. Yeah, so of course of all the damage on turn four, oh, the red flag so came dumb. out and all the cars were parked on the back straightaway. Mm. Ryan Newman still leads and Dale Earnhardt is in second. That's Once so the red stupid. flag cleared, restart came out and Ryan Newman leads Dale Earnhardt, Michael Waltrip, and Joe Nemechek into turn number one. Dale Earnhardt finally gets his chance. Dale so Earnhardt goes underneath Ryan Newman and will take the lead for the first time here at Richmond. But for it was only for a short time, Ryan Newman came right back and takes the spot away from Dale Earnhardt. Yeah. Here's the running order with 100 laps to go. 100 laps to go. Dale Jarrett was one of the early cautions. However, the team kept working at the car over and over again, and now Dale Jarrett is in fifth spot. Caution comes out as Joe Nemechek spins Scott Riggs down the back straightaway. Scott Riggs is able to keep going. One more set of pit stops as Ryan Newman barely gets around Dale Earnhardt for the first spot. And so on the restart, Jimmy Johnson is on the tail end of the lead lap, but Ricky Rudd did not hit. So Ricky Rudd is your leader, Ryan Newman is second, Dale Earnhardt third, Joe Nemechek fourth, and Jerry Nadu is nope. in fifth. Ryan Newman eventually pulled out to a three second lead over Dale Earnhardt. Hey guys, so a little time out for a second here. Uh, I want to go back to myself for a second. Sorry to interrupt, but uh, we have a visitor. She's here. She decided to bother me at the worst time ever. So if I keep looking down and whatever, my cat is here. So, yep. I don't know why she's here. I don't know if wants food or something like that. But, uh, yeah, just uh, want to let you guys know. And it looked like Newman's going to pull away and win this one. As mentioned earlier, Jerry Nadu made his way up into the top five. He did lose a spot to Bobby Labonte, but he is holding steady in the sixth position. 
here are the final three laps here at Richmond. Oh, as yeah. Ryan Newman still has a three second lead, Ryan Newman will for sure be in the chase for the Cup on New Hampshire. It will be interesting to see how he will fare coming into the final ten races of the season. Newman has definitely had a hot streak for sure, but it will be interesting to see how it will end for sure. Oh, is Newman slowing? No, he's not. Yeah, he is. No. <laughs> Newman is down pit road. Ryan Newman is. I could not believe that. The fact that Newman actually did come down pit road with two laps to go. Because, again, it's one of those situations where it's like I wanted Earnhardt to win, but, like, the way how it was going is just, like, despite the crap of, like, Brendan Gaughan and Tony Stewart. Um, no, this is great, and I'm so glad that Earnhardt won in uh, this way. Tired down. Dale Earnhardt is making his way with one and a half laps to go. Can Dale Earnhardt make his way around? The white is in the air, and Dale Earnhardt has only one more lap to steal a win away at Richmond to capture his 77th career win. Dale Earnhardt passes Ryan Newman, and now Dale Earnhardt has only one lap. Kurt Busch comes back on the track to make some repairs, yep. and that's it. Dale and Earnhardt is going to make his way into the chase, and Dale Earnhardt is going to get his 77th career win here at Richmond. Wow! Wow! That is that is unbelievable. That Dale was unbelievable. Earnhardt has won here at Richmond. What a resurgence by that team! This is his first. Wow! I can't believe it. It's rigged because Earnhardt won. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's funny. All right. So you have that. And then the inaugural chase champion. Oh, wasn't it? Uh... Oh, here, hold on. I actually need to double check this. He ended up finishing six in the final point standings. In the final lap of the final race, Jerry Nadu was Jerry able Nadu. to get a win here at Homestead. Yeah. And who is your champion? Jeff Gordon in the 24. Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon was able to eke out ahead of Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the final point standings. Here is the final. So I don't know if I mentioned this like in real life or whatever, but so that crash, the helicopter crash, does happen in real life. Um, <clears throat> there might have been an alternative reality where that crash didn't happen, but as far as I'm concerned, um, that helicopter or the, the plane crash with the Hendrick team still happened. Point standings. And here are all the winners of 2004. Yeah. Alright, cool. Alright, so let's go ahead and here's the plan. Alright, so I want to get a, um, a your input in chat. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll do part five. Um, let me know in chat. Do you want me to keep going with What If Dale Earnhardt's Still Alive with the entire series, or do you want me to jump to uh, One More Spark? Whatever gets more votes, I will do after this. So please let me know. This is Griff Dog here, and these are the top 10 moments from 2005. 2005 is going to be the final season for three drivers. Those three drivers are Rusty Wallace, Ricky Rudd, and Dale Earnhardt. Earnhardt. Rusty Wallace is going to start up his own team. Ricky Rudd is going to go back to his home in North Carolina. And Dale Earnhardt is going to take over the role of his race team. We will miss these drivers, and thank you for an amazing career that all three of you have had. In the Aaron's 499 at Talladega, Brian Vickers goes up and over into the catch vents and onto the track. Let's see, entire series. So you guys want me to keep going? All right, we're gonna we're gonna be here for a while, but all right, you guys want me to keep going? All right, we're gonna keep going. Track. Vickers car was destroyed, and it took out at least 15 cars. Here is the <laughs> word from Jimmy McMurray's car. You can see the car go up and over and through the air. The wild rides continue at Indianapolis. Tony Stewart gets in a rusty walls, and he goes up and over many, many times down the back straightaway. He gets clobbered by Ken Schrader in the end. Tony Stewart is okay, but. You can't say the same thing with his car. I'll go back to normal. In an upset, Scott Pruitt driving another Chip Ganassi car drives by Tony Stewart on the final lap and he captures his first career win 
at Infineon. This would be his only win in 2005. All right, Doritos Mountain Dew brought something up interesting. So he said, Griff, you picked some great background music. First of all, I appreciate it. Second of all, this is all in um, the audio library. If you guys uh, want to figure out like exactly where to go to grab um, audio, here, I'll do this briefly. So if, to, for you guys to, excuse me, pick um, music, boom, find your YouTube studio, and then bottom left, audio library. And then all your music is here, and it's all royalty free. So if you guys are looking for music for your own stuff, this is how you do it. So just want to let you know that is how you do it. Let's exit this out. Okay. In the first night race at Phoenix, Joni Uchek, Casey Mears, Ryan Newman, and Kurt Busch had a close finish at the end of this race. Lap traffic got in the way of Joe Nemechek, and that let Casey Mears and Ryan Newman duke it up to the finish. And Casey Mears Casey wins. Casey Mears wins by half a car length over Ryan Newman. Stewart's been summer dominance. With the exception of Infineon and Indy, Tony Stewart won every race in the summer, including Michigan, New Hampshire, and the Pepsi 400 at Daytona. The race at Daytona was Tony Stewart's <laughs> first ever shot. win at the historic 2.5 mile super speedway. Ricky Rudd, no! Ricky Rudd's final year went off with a bang. In the first race at Gardensville, Ricky Rudd was able to coast to his final win of his career. Even though Ricky Rudd won this race, he would end up missing the chase and would finish 15th in points. Yep. <laughs> Dale Earnhardt wins the Daytona 5 All right, okay, hold up. Little thing, little thing, but I'm so happy. I love how, I love, I love how I start with just Dale Earnhardt wins, and then a second later, oh, okay. I'm sorry, That that is the type of crap that I love. So if there's anything you want to know about me, it's that. In an intense battle of the Daytona 500, Dale Earnhardt slips up the track and that lets room for Rusty Wallace to battle side by side all the way to the line. Come on, and Dale. Dale Earnhardt would win by just a nose. This is his second Daytona 500 victory and it comes in his farewell season. Like Ricky Rudd, Dale Earnhardt was able to win a race, but Dale Earnhardt also ends up missing the chase. Oh, sad. He ends up missing the chase by 80 points, and Dale Earnhardt would end up finishing 14th in standings at the end of the year. Oh, yeah, Kyle Busch. Okay, chat. Do you think this would have happened? Do you think Kyle Busch and Dale Earnhardt would have not liked each other? I know that Dale Earnhardt had a thing with Kurt Busch, but do you think he would have not liked Kyle Busch? One of the most heated rivalries happened in 2005 as between Dale Earnhardt and a young kid by the name of Kyle Busch. Kyle, Kyle Bush. tried making a name for himself, but Dale Earnhardt did not take any of that. And those two ended up having a heated battle where they took each other out in numerous races, even having a confrontation at Richmond. The last of it, though, happened at the Pepsi 400 at Daytona, where Dale Earnhardt spins out Kyle Busch, <laughs> causing a big crash. Yeah. Because of this, NASCAR had to settle down both Kyle Busch and Dale Earnhardt, and pretty much told them that if they wreck each other one more time, then further penalties will be established. Fortunately, no more of it happened, no more and shenanigans. things have been settled down. The rookies, the legends, and the championship. This race ended up being one of the largest races in recent memory in NASCAR. There are so many different storylines taking place, so let's just take a look at everything that's going down. First of all, we've talked about the legends already. Ricky Rudd, Dale Earnhardt, and Rusty Wallace are all finishing their rides in their careers. But 
that's not all. There are a few other drivers that are having their last, and we'll talk about that in the starting lineups. The second story is the rookies. We have four drivers all making either their first, second, third, fourth, or... So just fair warning, what I did for this race, it's kind of like uh, 1992 Atlanta on steroids. Because I had the legends, like multiple legends having their final races, multiple notable rookies, and then the championship. Fifth starts in 2005. We'll talk more individually on each of those drivers, and we will figure out who is making their first debut and who do we think is going to make a big impact in NASCAR in the future. Corvette version, oh, 60? The last and probably the biggest story is the championship. At this point, the chase is only in its second year, and so far it has been a success. Here is the top 10 so far. At this point, three drivers have a shot at the championship, and those three being Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Those three are the only ones mathematically eligible to win the championship. Tony Stewart has had a strong season so far, and it'll take a good mess up from him for something to happen. Will it happen? That and several other questions are going to get answered in the next 267 laps. Let's take a starting lineup here for the Ford 400, the final race of the 2005 Nexto Cup season. Starting on the pole is Ryan Newman in the 02 Altel Dodge. It is announced that after the 2005 season, Ryan Newman will switch numbers from 02 to 12 alongside... You know, if I were to redo this what if, Newman would have stayed in 02. I was a lazy butt, and it's like, no, I don't want to take that time to switch the number from 12 to 02, but I love the 02 font so much, and I wish I would have kept it. Him is title contender Tony Stewart. Row two is Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy had a strong run in 2005, and he's looking to bounce up on that and hopefully win a championship in 2006. Alongside him is Jeremy Mayfield. Mayfield had a solid season, but looks to improve in 2006 as well. Another title contender, Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon is looking for a fifth championship, and Michael Waltrip starts alongside him. Michael Waltrip, along with all the other DEI cars, are plastering the E on the side e. of their cars to commemorate Earnhardt's farewell season. Markiplier. Joe Nemechek in the Valvoline number 10 Chevrolet and Dale Earnhardt Jr., the third and final title contender, starts in eight. Jimmy McMurray in the Haviland Dodge, and alongside him, Elliot Sadler. Greg Biffle in the National Guard Ford, and Jury Nadu. Little thing, I'm happy that Jury Nadu is still in this. I think, was he? No, because he moved over to the 20, or he was in the 25. But no, I'm just happy that I still have Jury Nadu in this in the U.S. Army Chevrolet. Dale Earnhardt in a special paint scheme to commemorate his final race, and Dale Jarrett in the UPS Ford. Dale Jarrett is going to drive the UPS Ford for at least one more season, but it is not sure whether he will race in 2007 afterward. Kevin Harvick in the number 30 Reese's Chevrolet. Reese's comes over and becomes the full-time sponsor for Kevin Harvick, and Scott Riggs driving the next. Yeah, so in this universe, uh, AOL still. Uh, <laughs> the timeline of AOL is the same. Quick Ford. Nesquik becomes a sponsor for half of the races in 2005. Bobby Labonte in his final race for Joe Gibbs Racing, and Casey Mears in the Nicorette Dodge. Matt Kenseth in the DeWalt Ford, and Jeff Green in the Whole Green Dodge. Rookie of the Year winner Kyle Busch and Carl Edwards. Carl is in his fourth start and he will drive the 99 car next year replacing Jeff Burton. Steve Park in his final race for Dale Earnhardt and Brian Vickers in the Ditech.com Chevrolet. Question. I don't mind. Kurt Busch in the Sharpie Ford. This will be Kurt Busch's final race for Roush Racing. It is unsure though where he will go next year. And Jeff Burton, Jeff is also in his final ride, in his final season at Roush Racing. 
Jeff Byrne is signed to drive the three car next year, replacing Dale Earnhardt. Yep. The sponsor of that car is to be determined. Sterling Marlin in the Coors Light Dodge. Sterling Marlin is also going to be done in that car. David Stremme is going to replace him. Stremme! It is unsure where Marlin is going to go next year, but he is up for racing next year. And alongside him, Scott Wimmer. Wimmer is also not going to be in the 22 car next year. Rusty Wallace in his final ride here at Homestead, driving the last call Dodge. And Dave Blaney in the 31 Singular Chevrolet. Travis Quaffle in his rookie season, driving the... Didn't I get crap for how I spelled Travis Quaffle's name? I'm pretty sure I did. I need to double check. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Yeah, i Yeah. Kodak Dodge and Denny Hamlin. Yeah, I got crap for He's going to drive the 11 FedEx car next season. Jason Leffler drove the 11 car for the majority of races, but Denny is going to replace him in 2006. Ricky Rudd in okay. his fair... So Corfett Racing asks, is it true Jeff Burton was supposed to replace Dylan Hurt after he retired in real life? Yeah. I remember hearing correctly that no matter what, um, Burton was like the one to quote-unquote replace him in real life. So that's why I decided to run with that. Well, season in the 21 Mortarcraft Ford and Mike Bliss in the Best Buy Chevrolet. Kyle Petty in the Brawny Dodge and alongside him, Casey Kane. Martin Truex Jr. in the Bass Pro Shop Chevrolet. Martin is going to replace Steve Park in the One Car in 2006 and Ken Schrader in the Schwann's Dodge. Mike Skinner in the 23 car for <laughs> Bill Davis Racing and Reed Sorensen. Reed Sorensen is going to replace Casey Mears in the 41 car next season. Clint Boyer in the Sylvania 33 car for Richard Childress Racing. Clint Boyer is going to replace Dave Blaney in the 31 car next season. And Bill yep. Elliott in a third Ray Everham car. This is Bill Elliott's final race for Everham Motorsports. Bill is going to attempt some part-time races next season, but he's going to do it for a different team. That team is to be announced. And starting 43rd Spencer. is Jimmy Spencer and the Arnold Motorsports Dot. To all the Jimmy Spencer fans, so I was in Jimmy Spencer's car for this race, and I did him dirty, and I apologize for that. Dodge. Pace car is pulling in. We are going to have the final 267 laps of 2005. Who is going to be the winner tonight, and who is going to be the champion right, of 2005? Go here. We are about to find out. Ryan Newman leads him slow to the green flag. It is out, and we are racing here for the final time in 2005. Ooh, the audio doesn't sound good. Ryan Newman takes an early lead down the back straightaway. Two and three wide through turn three and four as Jimmy Johnson takes a look to the low side of Ryan Jimmy Newman and Johnson will clear him down the front straightaway to lead lap one. Tony Stewart goes way up on the track, but he gets it going down the back straightaway. Jeff Gordon is the lead car, but Tony Stewart still has the point lead. Dale Jr. goes underneath Tony Stewart, but a lot needs to happen in order for Dale Earnhardt Jr. to win the championship. Dale Jr. makes his way up to second position as Jimmy Johnson leads the pack. Jeff Gordon third, Dale Earnhardt Sr. in fourth. Kyle Busch has to make an unscheduled pit stop. He ends up having a flat left rear tire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no debris and the caution does not come out. However, the first caution does come out as Jimmy Spencer yeah. flies in the air and collects Mike Skinner. Sorry. Jimmy Spencer Sorry. would end up having steering issues, hit the inside wall, <laughs> and goes to the garage. First Sorry. round of pit stops happen and Jimmy Johnson leads him out. On the restart, it's Jimmy Johnson, Dale Earnhardt, Tony Stewart, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. your top four. Jimmy Johnson has to make an unexpected pit stop. He also has a yeah, left rear tire. Could this be a problem for all of Hendrick Motorsports? Yeah, Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch gets into Dale Earnhardt. Could this possibly be a reignition of their rivalry? Four wide through turn number two. Senior, junior, and teammates Kyle Busch and Jeff Gordon ride down the back straightaway. They keep going. Can you imagine that? Just imagine that. Four wide. Jeff Gordon, Kyle Busch, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Dale Earnhardt Sr. All together, all Chevys, all right there. Just imagine that. No caution. The top three points are one, two, three, as Dale Earnhardt Jr. looks underneath Tony Stewart, and Dale Jr. will take the lead. Something needs to happen to Tony Stewart, though, if Jr. has a chance. 
lap traffic as Dale Jr. gets in front of, or gets to Mike Skinner. This opens up the door for Tony Stewart, and Tony Stewart takes the lead away from Dale Earnhardt Jr. Ryan Newman looks underneath Jeff Gordon for a second. Oh, yeah. Turn number one. Elby gets in the wall. There we go. Trouble and that was okay. So that was all AI, which I think was so cool. Uh, here, let's back up for a second. Turn for a second. Turn number one. Yeah. Elby gets in the wall. There we go. Trouble and turn one. Ryan Newman spins out. He tries to keep going. And... Oh, and right Mike there. Bliss gets into him. Ken Schrader involved. Denny Hamlin, <laughs> Kyle Petty all wreck in turn number one. Ryan Newman is done for the day as well as Denny Hamlin. Pit stops and Tony Stewart leads him out. Jeff Gordon in second. And that is the case on the restart. Tony oh, I love this camera shot. By the way, thanks for the compliment, uh, Shock Factor 22. I greatly appreciate it. Stewart is the leader. Jeff Gordon second. Matt Kins at third. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in fourth. Elliot Sadler is in fifth. Matt Kins up ends up taking the lead. Dale Jr. is the highest point guy in third. This wouldn't be for long as Rusty Wallace in his final career race goes underneath Matt Kenza for the lead. Elliot Sadler gets into the wall. Tony Stewart and Kyle Busch react, and Kurt Busch gets into the inside wall. That'll Kurt, bring up no. the caution, and that'll be a damper for Kurt Busch in his foul race for Roush Racing. <laughs> Dale Jr. Thanks. has a successful pit stop, and he leads him out of pit road. And Dale Jr. will lead him to the restart. Matt Kenza in second, Jamie McMurray third, Rusty Wallace fourth, and right. Kevin Harvick fifth. I'm going to speed this up a little bit here. Mack ends up, ends up taking the lead away from Dale Jr. Jamie McMurray follows suit in second position. Tony Stewart ends up getting a good run through turn three and four, and that would be enough to pass Mack for the lead as well. There is definitely some good racing in this race. Green flag pit stops begin as Dale Jr. By the way, I just realized something here. It's about to turn. Let's do this for a second. I, I posted this on uh, Labor Day of uh, 2016, I just realized. Or not Labor Day, wow, um, Leap Day. Yeah, February 29th. So, hey. He decides to That's take an cool. early leap down pit road, and everybody follows suit. With still lots of racing to go, here's the running order in the Ford 400. Ford 400. Hmm, really? Really? In the Ford 400. Yeah, no, that was completely a typo. Like, I honestly thought that's how you spell his last name. I know, I got complete crap for that. Dale Jr. was able to get by Mackenzie for the first position. That wouldn't be for long. Clint Boyer falls a lap down, and that ends up having a big battle for the lead as Jimmy Johnson, Tony Stewart, Dale Jarrett, and Jeff Burton were able to pass Dale Jr. for spots. Yep. But Dale Jr. was able to fight back, and there was a close three-wide battle for the lead. Dale Jr. leads the cars down on pit road again for a second round of green flag pit stops. I just want to confirm that. Yes, Kurt did not have his uh, issues, and he did finish the entire season with uh, Roush in this universe. Pit road becomes a busy place. Lots of cars. Fortunately, no contact, and everything is clean so far. Battle for a spot as Matt Kenseth goes underneath Tony Stewart. Oh, yeah. Matt Kenseth gets into Tony Stewart right Hold up. Okay, so again, this was all AI. Like, I had nothing to do with this. Oh my god, no! Tony Stewart gets into the back stretch wall hard down the back straight away. This could damper his chances at the championship. Tony Stewart and Smoke, Jimmy Johnson involved, Matt Kenseth also involved. This is huge. Jimmy Johnson gets going, more cars are involved. Elliot Sadler involved, several cars. Is that, is that <laughs> Jeff Gordon involved? Is that Jeff Gordon involved? Uh, yes, that's him on the inside. <laughs> that is huge. That uh, is so huge. Both Jeff Gordon and okay. Tony Stewart take... I want to make it absolutely clear. I had nothing to do with that. Like, other than me being Jimmy Spencer at the beginning, I had nothing to do with that. The AI all totally did this himself, themselves. So, you cannot blame me for that. Taken out. This is a huge, huge opportunity for Dale Earnhardt Jr. to win. Will it be enough? Can Dale Jr. hold on? Because at this moment, Dale Jr. is the point leader. But can Dale Jr. hold on? Now this situation gets a little weird as this was in the middle of pit stops. Greg Biffle is the only car on the lead lap at the moment. The way how the pit stops worked Everybody else made their pit stop except for Biffle. Biffle made his. He's now at the tail end of the field. 
everyone else is on the tail end of the lead lap. Yeah, that was stupid. So Biffle can pass all the cars and make him fall a lap down. So right now, he is the leader, and right now, he is the only car, technically at the moment, on the lead lap. Unfortunately, his dream didn't become real as a caution happens on the back straightaway involving Carl Edwards, Scott Riggs, Joe Niemicek, Brian Vickers, and numerous others. Greg Biffle ends up making his pit stop, but he was able to pit Not with that. the rest of the field, so he does keep the lead. On the restart, it is Greg Biffle, Dale Jr., Rusty Wallace, Dale Jarrett in the top four. It didn't take long as Rusty Wallace was... I can answer that. Shock Factor 22 asks, I was curious about this um, because I, I bought a version of Air 2003. How, did I, how do you adjust the AI to race multiple lanes? That is more of a racetrack thing versus like fixing the AI. Because you can do so much in the um, like I and I, but the, whoever made this homestead, like the way how he created it, um, it's more, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but it's they more... It's more, like, it's more flexible to multi-groove racing, if that makes any sense. Dale Jr. underneath Rusty Wallace, and Dale Jr. is in third. Dale. If he keeps it, that is enough for Dale Jr. to win the championship in 2005. Lap down traffic to scuttle things up as Dale Jr. almost gets into Ken Schrader. Dale Jr. ends up staying in the lead. Dale Jr. gets by both of them, and Dale Jr. has a run in on turn number one. Well, that doesn't matter because the <laughs> caution comes out, and Dale, Dale no. Earnhardt Sr. gets in the wall. He loses it in turn three. Dale Earnhardt tries to keep going, but his own car gets into him, Martin Truex Jr. So no. just like Richard Petty, Earnhardt's final race ends up in a crash. He does drive it to the garage. He is okay, but it is definitely a somber way to end his career. Thank you, Dale Earnhardt, for everything that you've done, and we'll miss you. On the restart, it's the Dale and Dale show, except it's Dale Jarrett and Dale Jr. now. Dale Jr. did not get going though, and Rusty Wallace is able to get a run on Dale Jarrett. Dale Jarrett and Rusty Wallace. Down the back straightaway, Rusty Wallace is trying to get around Dale Jarrett. And we got lap traffic, that is Ken Schrader. Rusty Wallace looks to the inside of Jarrett, and Wallace uses lap traffic to his advantage. Rusty Wallace gets around Dale Jarrett. And that could settle it. In Rusty Wallace's final race of his career, can Rusty Wallace end up finishing it? One Rusty. lap to go. Can Dale Jr. mess up a run? Can Dale Jr. do anything? Because unless something happens to Jr., this is his championship. Down the back straightaway, Rusty Wallace, one last time, can go to victory lane. Dale Jr. does not have a run. Rusty Wallace, the 1989 champion, Rusty. is going to end on a high note. Rusty Wallace wins the 2005 4 400 here at Homestead. Rusty. What a finish. All right, I want to what a way song. to end the 2005 season. It is going to be a whole new chapter for sure. Now, congrats to Rusty Wallace, but the bigger picture. Little E. Dale Earnhardt Jr., two-time <laughs> Bush champion, is able to finally win his first Nexo Cup championship and Dale Earnhardt is able to see it happen. It is an amazing way to end. You cannot script this any better. It is the <laughs> perfect way to end. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I was like, can't wait. Yeah, because I did script that. Ah. The season. 2006 is gonna change for sure. New faces in new places. That'll get settled when the time comes. Here is the final point standings, and this is the top 10 if the chase. And here are the list of winners in 2005. Yep. So, an amazing season with an amazing conclusion. Dale Jr. claims his first ever next Dell Cup championship, and it will be interesting to see how far in his career could he go. Can he succeed? Can he be better than his father in number of wins and number of championships? So far, he has the way to go. And now that his dad is full-time owner next year, Dale Jr. can learn a lot from his father. So that is all for 2005, and that is all for Dale Earnhardt. So here's the plan for the next two videos. So because of all the changes that you've seen happen, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the timeline go all the way up to today, which is 2016. What I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna split it 
into two videos. First part will be from 2006 to 2010, which is the immediate future and how much that is affected. And then the second video will be 2011 to 2016. That'll be the extended future. Where does everyone go? How is it affected? Does Dale Jr. ever end up going to Henry Warner Sports? All those answers will be in the next couple of videos. Now I do apologize that the videos are not coming out as frequent as they were before. If you saw in part four, I am in school. I am a senior in college right now. I will get my degree in May and then in June, I yeah. am free and I, I plan to expand my channel. I plan to expand Grift Art Productions and I want to express what I think of NASCAR. And I want to use this channel to really, really make NASCAR a better place because- Hold up. I actually want to check this out. I can tell NASCAR is not what it used to be, and I get it. NASCAR will never be what it used to be, but mm. there are definitely some subtle changes that can happen so that NASCAR could be an awesome sport. And coming from me, who has watched it since yep. I was five, like, it can happen. Because I honestly believe that the competition can be better, and there's definitely a better way. Because in this day and age, people as a whole do not want to travel far for, like, a sporting event. It just costs too much, and it, people just can't afford it these days. So we gotta find ways so that NASCAR can be a possible, like, it'll be, it should be, it should be enjoyable. It shouldn't be complicated. It, it should be enjoyable. I won't get too specific now, but I am a full supporter of NASCAR, <laughs> and I can definitely see what they're trying to do, but I can also find ways to even make it that more successful. So thank you for watching all these parts, thank you for the subscriptions, thank you for just everything that you guys have done. I am truly blessed to have this channel, and I'm truly blessed to keep this going. I'm sorry that chanting our videos are not going to be as frequent now, but my goal is when I graduate in June, that should be fixed, and my goal is to at least have a video come out once a week, and I'll definitely do more what ifs, like what if Adam Petty never died? What if Kenny Irwin Jr. never died? There are other ones, like, what if some racetracks that fell, what if they didn't fall? Like, what if Memphis was still a racetrack? What if Pikes Peak still raced? Yeah, then there are several different ideas that I could roll with. And also, I still will do um, NASCAR shorts as well, just doing random moments like different mods, different car sets, different years, different tracks, different shorts. Like, there are so many different ideas that I can run with, and it's gonna be great. It's gonna be awesome, but it's not gonna happen immediately. So guys, thank you for all of the support. Thank you for the patience. Thank you for talking, and, thank, and just thank you for being there. Thank you. So until next time, this is Griftar Productions saying thank you, and I'll see you next time. All right. Alright, so we'll go to part six, but alright, let's go back to this camera here. So as I said, I still want to go until 12 central time and right now it's 9-11 my time. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take a 10 minute break. Here, let's go ahead and let's go to just me. So I'm going to take like a 10 minute break right now, just kind of get recharged, use the bathroom, clean up a little bit. And then um, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll finish the entire Dale Earnhardt series because the majority of you guys want me to do that. And then after that, ah, I think I'm gonna scrap one more spark. Like I'm not gonna rewatch the entire series just because that's gonna be way too long. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just jump into just all the stuff that I could have made, but didn't. So um, we'll go ahead and we'll do that. Uh, but again, I'll take a 10 minute break. So it's 9-11 right now. So I would say about 9.20, 9.25. So give me like 10, 15 minutes. And then we're gonna go deep into the night. So. If you guys need to use the bathroom, check other streams, check social media, you guys are more than welcome to do so. And we will be right back.
Alright, 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 alright. Let's jump right back into it. Alright, let's get my beautiful face back on. See if I can do that here. Let's get me on here. Okay. So, a couple little things here. First of all, Monster. Brought to you by Monster. Gotta get a little energy going here to keep this party going. Because I love you guys. You guys are awesome. You guys help me get to where I'm at now. And I want to give back as much as I can here with what little time I have left. So we're going to keep going here. Um, so we will keep going with the Dale Earnhardt series. And so we'll start with part six. But first, I do want to show you guys a couple of things here that I do have. So in the Photoshop area. And so again, this is kind of like a tease. So mm, cars, PSD files. So if you're curious about, um, let's see, right here. Here's all the, uh, let's see, paint scheme cars that I have. So like the 2005 cars, let's see here. Let's see. Yeah, like the Nesquik car. Let's get this fired up here. So yeah, here's the uh, the car in its original format. And so here I'll uh, turn off my camera here for a second. So here on the right is, uh, yeah, everything. The numbers, like, in raw. Like this is the raw, rawest of raw files for everything that I use to uh, set it all up. So, yeah, I just wanted to show that off. Uh, let's go to libraries here. Let's bring myself back up. Pictures. Oh, no, no, no. PC. Go into the hard drive here. Here, let's just, let's go to myself for a second just so that you guys don't see anything that I don't want you guys to see. So let's do this, 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 this. Oh, please load. There you go. Cool. And then, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. this, and this, and this. Okay, cool. So let's go back to here then. So, uh, oh yeah, that's right. I made the icebreaker car. That's right. Oh yeah. I like this car. I'm really happy I made this car. It's such a pretty car. So anyway, I'm not going to get too in depth into this now, but I am um, like after the Dale Hart series, I do want to get more in depth into this. And um, I definitely want to show you guys, well, not necessarily these, but like other stuff that I've made as well, including um, different cars that I did. Let's see, was this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, for example, like Norm Benning. Uh, let's see. Oh, here we go. Like Ruben Pardo, Juan Montoya. And we could talk about that later. But again, I just want to show you guys that later tonight. And, um, okay, enough beating around the bush here. Let's, where's the thingy? There you are. Awesome. So, yeah, so long story short, guys, I've been at this for a while. I've got, I got a lot of stuff, and um, I feel like I should show you guys. So, with that being said, let's roll through the changes. This is Griff Dog here, and I am here finally to present to you Dale Earnhardt Part 6. Woo! Now, I thought long about how I'm going to present this next part to you guys. Like, I thought a good while about this. So, this is what I am going to present to you. I am going to explain and present every major driver, team, and sponsor change that has happened from 2006 
through 2010. What I will also do is I'm going to show brief highlights yeah, of right. each of the Daytona 500s. I'm, I thought might as well. It's an important event. It's a big event. Might as well show you guys what happened in each of those races. However, I am going to make no mentions whatsoever mm. of who won so many races and who won the championship of each of the years. The reason why is because as my channel progresses, I'm going to be making little side races on when Dale Earnhardt was still alive. Yeah. And each of those will then build to show the full future for what I think would, would happen if Dale Earnhardt was still alive. So until then, here is what will happen in 2006. Music! Oh, I love these uh, little effects that I made. So to start things off, three things that you should know is, first of all, of course, Dale Earnhardt is retired. Dale Earnhardt is done with racing, and now he takes up full-time ownership duties at Dale Earnhardt Incorporated. He has four cars in his stable this year, and we will explain who each of those drivers are when we talk about the starting lineup. The second thing, it was mentioned briefly in the fifth part, but Jeff Burton replaces Dale Earnhardt in the number three car. Jeff Burton picks up a new sponsor, and we will talk about that as well in the starting lineup. The last thing of note is there are eight rookies in the Daytona 500. Eight. There are quite a few rookies that will compete throughout the season, but there is for sure eight of them in the Daytona 500. So that is all you need to know at the beginning. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the 2006 Daytona 500. On the pole is Ryan Newman in the Atel 12 Dodge. Ryan Newman switches. As I said before, I wish he would have stayed in 02. I, I mean, 12 is fine. And again, Ryan Blaney is in the 12, but I wish he would have stayed in the 02. Numbers from the 02 to 12 this year. And alongside him is Denny Hamlin in the FedEx Express. Matt 1854. I always wondered in 2006 why did you give Junior a new paint scheme? Well, it's because a uh, couple of reasons. One, just new identity just for the year. Because it's like how in Tony Stewart from 2004 to 2005 he got a new paint scheme. That's kind of my thinking. It's just to change up the identity on him. Chevrolet. Also, I wish I would have given him a purple car. I don't know. Him going black, like, I just, not a fan of that. All right. Penny is one of the eight Rookie of the Year contenders. Dale Jarrett is going to start in third, and alongside him is Matt Kenseth in the Walt Four. Michael Waltrip has a new sponsor this year. Crap. Crap. Moves over from the one car over to the 15 Chevrolet. Alongside him is another rookie Carl. contender, Carl Edwards. Remember, he did another year in the Bush Series in 2005 before making his full-time jump to the Cup Series. That's the reason why he drove the 60 car in 2005. Starting 7th is Scott Riggs in the Nesquik Ford. Nesquik is now the full-time sponsor for Scott Riggs. Mm -hmm. Pfizer and Viagra have left NASCAR. Alongside him is Elliott Sadler in the M&M's Ford. Brian Vickers will start 9th. Alongside him is Casey Kane. Starting 11th is Kevin Harvick Harvey. in the number 30 GM Goodrich Chevrolet. GM Goodrich moves over to Kevin Harvick after Dale Earnhardt. Alongside him is Ken Schrader, who moves Schrader. over to the 21 ride from the 49 car. Well, Debbie is a sponsor. Little Debbie. Here is the car we talked about earlier. Jeff Burton in the number three Reese's Peanut Butter Cup Chevrolet. Jeff Burton replaces Dale Earnhardt as the full-time driver, and he picks up Reese's as the full-time sponsor. To the outside is the self-owner driver, Robbie Gordon. Kyle Busch starts 15th, and alongside him is Tony Stewart. Let's see. Jamie McMurray moves over from the 42 Texaco ride to the yep. new number 26 Irwin Tools Ford. Then to the outside of him is Jimmy Johnson. Starting 19th is Travis Quaffle. Travis Quaffle moves over from the 77. Yes, I finally spelled his name right. Yeah. Another car to the number 32 tied Chevrolet. And alongside him is Tony Raines in the Hall of Fame Racing Chevrolet. David Stremme, another Rookie of the Year contender. And Casey Mears moves over from the 41 to the 42 ride for Chip Ganassi Racing. Jeremy Mayfield in the 19 Dodge and Joe Nemechek. That if I remember correctly, Caroline, I believe I, uh, or not, yeah, no, I'm sorry, Doritos Mountain Dew. Uh, the 14 car. 14, Babylon, Joe Nemechek in the 10 car moves over as the third team for Everham Motorsports. Kurt Busch starts 25th. Kurt Busch moves over and replaces the now retired Rusty Wallace in the Miller Lite Dodge. Alongside him is Jeff Gordon in the DuPont Chevrolet. Dale Hart Jr. with a new look starts 27th. And alongside him, J.J. Gailey, JJ. who is another Rookie of the Year contender. Bobby Labonte got kicked out of the 18 ride in favor of J.J. Gailey, and now <laughs> he drives the famous number 43 Cheerios Dodge. 
and Dave Blaney, who replaces Scott Wimmer in number 22, Caterpillar Dodge. Jerry Nadeau starts 31st Nadeau. in U.S. Army Chevrolet. Starting 32nd is Clint Boyer. Clint Boyer replaces Dave Blaney in the number 31 singular Chevrolet. Clint Boyer is also another Rookie of the Year contender. Starting 33rd is a fourth car for Dale Earnhardt Incorporated. So if I recall, um, I did not have Gin Racing in this universe, I believe. So that's why this 14 car existed. And the number 14 Napa Auto Parts Chevrolet is Sterling Marlin. Marlin moves out. Caroline, I'm going to be honest. So she, or Caroline asked, I'm just curious who DNQ'd this race. I honestly don't know. I don't remember who DNQ'd. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not too sure. Out of the Coors Light Dodge to move to this new ride. Kevin LePage is in a special one-off race as he drives for owner Jeff Steck. I do apologize if I said that incorrectly. Starting 35th is Greg Biffle. Right. And the outside Biffle? of him is Jeff Green. Jeff Green moves over from the 43 ride to drive the new number 66 Best Buy Chevrolet for Haas Racing. Brent Sherman, another rookie in the number 49 mm -hmm. car. Alongside him is Chad Chapin in number 34. Chad Chapin is the newest driver for Front Row Motorsports. Martin Truex Jr. is another rookie in the number one Bass Pro Shop Chevrolet. And Kyle Petty in the 45. Wells Fargo oh, is down to the You're right. I think Corvette mentioned it earlier that, um, yeah, Steve Park just left. And I didn't mention why. Eh, I guess he was just released from the ride. Yeah. I Sponsor for Kyle Petty in the 2006 season. As we get to the rear of the field, Bill Elliott starts 41st. Bill Elliott is driving a special one-off race for MB2 Motorsports. And Reed Sorensen is another Rookie of the Year contender. That should be eight rookies. And starting 43rd is Ward Burton, Ward. the 2004 Daytona 500 champion. Yeah. We start the race with Ryan Newman on pole, Denny Hamlin to the outside, Dale Jarrett, Matt Kenseth, and Michael Walter down into turn number one. This race had a lot of leaders, as Bobby Labonte takes the lead. Kyle Petty moves in and replaces Sterling Marlin as the leader down the back straightaway. Yeah. One of many, many different leaders in this race. First round of pit stops happen as numerous cars come down pit road, splitting off from the pack and doing their pit work. The first caution does not come out until lap 92. The first caution comes out for this Brent. one. Brent Sherman is slow through turn number three. Brent Sherman moves down to try getting onto the apron, no. but Chad Chaffin had nowhere to go, and they crash into turn number three. Brent Sherman was done for today. As cars are being slowed down, Kyle Busch slams into the back of another car, and he AI logic. Yeah, again, this bothers, and this is like a big reason why I don't like Enter 2003, because of stuff like this. He has lots of hood damage. Kyle Busch would keep going, but not his hood. On the restart, Robbie Gordon leads him down into turn number one. Robbie Gordon was one of numerous different leaders in this race. Robbie had a powerful car today. The last cycle of pit stops happen as numerous cars come down pit road and do their service. What speed do I have this at? Caution comes out again as okay. more debris is on the track as Dale Jarrett loses his hood somewhere uh -huh. down the back straightaway. There he is without a hood. On the restart it is rookie Martin Truex Jr. Could a rookie win the Daytona 500? Jeff Green could also pull an upset in the 66 car, moving to the inside of Ken Schrader for second. And just like that, he moves right into the lead, passing Martin Truex down the inside of turn number three. But can he lead all the way to the finish? Hmm. Ten laps to Jeremy go. Mayfield makes the bold move underneath Jeff Green on turn number one, as he has help from Brian Vickers and rookie Reed Sorensen through turn one and two. Vickers gives Mayfield the assistance he needed to take the lead away from Jeff Green. <clears throat> final lap. On the final lap, Brian Vickers tries put applying some pressure to Jeremy Mayfield, but it does not happen. Jeremy Mayfield will come off a of turn or four, and he would win here at the Daytona 500 I here in 2006. I forgot about that. Jeremy Mayfield will be the winner, Brian Vickers second, Jeff Green third, and then Reed Sorensen in fourth, and Martin Truex in fifth. I completely forgot that Mayfield won this race. Okay, and that's the reason why Mayfield stuck around a lot longer and uh, didn't have his ordeal in 2009. Completely forgot about that. Awesome. And then 2007. Here are three things to know about 2007. Toyota, Toyota makes their entrance into the NASCAR. All right, I'll ask you, chat. And Dale, if Dale Hart was still alive, do you think Toyota still would have been in NASCAR? Or do you think Dale Hart would have had such a big influence that... Um, Toyota would not have been in NASCAR. Next up, Cup Series with several different teams. 
One of those teams being Michael Waltrip. Michael Waltrip leaves DEI to form his own team, and he brings three cars with him. We will introduce each of those cars in the starting lineup. And there's been rumor and speculation that a brand new car body style is going to come to NASCAR. It's in talking stages right now, but we'll see if a new car will happen in the next year. Once the cars roll off, we will tell you the starting lineup here for the 2007 Daytona 500. Starting on the pole is Jeff Gordon, and to the outside of him is Clint Boyer in the 31 Singular Chevrolet. Starting third is Sterling Marlin in the 14 Napa Auto Parts Chevrolet, and Matt Kenseth in the DeWalt Tools Ford. Starting fifth is the 48 car of Jimmy Johnson, and JJ Gailey in the Interstate Battery Chevrolet. Starting seventh is Kyle Petty in the 45 car. And to the outside is the top Toyota, Dave Blaney in the 22 Caterpillar Toyota. Kevin Harvick will roll off ninth in the new Shell Pennzoil number 30. You know, this is, okay, a little bit of a unpopular opinion. I actually like the, uh, the, uh, the original Shell Pennzoil car because they got creative with the scallops. With this one, I just did the uh, box on the side and on the corner panel. And like, sure, it's different, but I actually now understand why they went with the paint scheme they did on Kevin Harvick's real life car. Chevrolet. And to the outside of him is Denny Hamlin in the FedEx Chevrolet. Carl Edwards will start in 11. And to the outside is Michael Waltrip in the Mikey. new number 55 Best Western like Aaron's car. Toyota. Michael is one of three cars he brings to Daytona and to start off the new 2007 season. David Stremme will roll off 13th and Casey Kane will start 14th. Ken Schrader returns to the 21 Little Debbie Ford in 15th and Ryan Newman will start in 16th. Juan Pablo Montoya Juan. moves over from Formula 1 to give his shot at NASCAR and to the outside of him is Dale Jr. starting 18th. Kurt Busch will start 19th, and David Rudeman, Rudeman, the second car for Michael Waltrip, will start 20th. David Rudeman is competing for Rookie of the Year. Casey Mears moves over from Chip Ganassi Racing to the fourth car at Hendrick Motorsports. Vickers moves over to a Toyota, while Casey Mears takes over and with new sponsorship from National Guard. Mm -hmm. And to the outside of him is Jeremy Mayfield in the 88. There were rumors of Ricky Rudd returning to NASCAR and driving the 88 car, but Jeremy Mayfield was out of a ride, oh, yeah, and they right. want to give him a shot in the new number 88 Snickers Ford. Ward Burton gets full-time sponsorship from State Water Heaters, as he will start 23rd, and Tony Raines will start 24th. Jeff Green, with an impressive run last year in the 2006 Daytona 500, will start, start 24th. Jeff Green, oh, with an okay. impressive run last year in the 2006 Daytona 500, will start 25th. And to the outside of him is Reed Sorensen in the Target Dodge. Jamie McMurray in the 26th new Crown Royal Ford. And Greg Biffle in the new AmeriQuest Ford. David Reagan, another rookie, is driving a second Bill Davis car in the new number 36 360 OTC okay. Toyota. To the outside of him is Martin Truex in the one Bass Pro Shop Chevrolet. Brian Vickers will start 31st. Brian is moving over to the new Red Bull Racing Toyota, and he does have a teammate AJ. in the form of AJ Allmendinger in the number 84 Red Bull Toyota. Unfortunately, he failed to qualify for this race. And David Gillen will start in 32nd. David is another Rookie of the Year contender. Joe Nemechek will start 33rd, and Paul Menard will start 34. Paul, Paul replaces Michael Waltrip in the number yeah. 15 ride. And this is another car where I actually preferred the original, which, uh, which had the black E on the side. I don't know, just not a big fan of the gray down the side. And Paul is another Rookie of the Year contender. Jeff Burton returns to the number three Reese's Chevrolet, will start 35th. And Jerry Nadu returns to the Jerry. old one US Army Chevrolet in 36th. Kyle Busch will be in 37th. And alongside him is Bob Labonte returns in the number 43 Cheerios Dodge. Elliot Sadler replaces Mayfield in the number 19 Dodge. And Scott Riggs in the number six Ford. Running out the rear is Dale Jarrett in the, 40, in the new 44 UPS Toyota, the third car for Michael Waltrip Racing, alongside Tony Stewart in the 20 Home Depot Chevrolet. Running out the rear is Kevin LePage Kevin. in the 49 <laughs> car. He replaces Brent Sherman. So in this universe, Brent Sherman came and went just like in uh, real life. At the start of this one, Jeff Gordon leads him down to turn number one with Clint Boyer, Sterling Marlin, and Matt Kenseth right behind him. Dale Jr. moves up to the high side, but no one wants to go with him. Very early, everyone is so close together as there is four wide <laughs> down to turn number four down the front straightaway. And everyone knows when there's four wide, not good stuff happens. David Gillen moves to the inside to avoid the trouble, but David Gillen almost loses it in the grass, but he saves it. Unfortunately, when he comes up the track, this happens. <laughs> Several cars get in the wall, no. including Michael Waltrip, Sterling Marlin, Jeff Gordon, the pull center involved, and Jeff Green all get involved. No. On the restart, it's Kevin Harvick in the lead with Kyle Busch behind him. 
Uh, Doritos and Mountain Dew, I could see that. Raven probably could have stayed in Roush, but I could also see like a new ride opening up and it's like, oh, David Reagan, let's put you in the 36 car. A small pack forms as defending the 2500 champion, Jeremy Mayfield leads him through the front straightaway. <clears throat> Gailey, no. Oh. First round of green flags plus pit stops happen as everyone comes down to get four tires and fresh fuel. Bunch of small packs happen as pit stops have spread out the field with Clint Boyer leading spread the pack. Out the field. Wait. Oh. The second caution doesn't come out until lap 105 of this race. Caution was for debris. Debris. On the restart, Kurt Busch is the leader, followed by David Sturmey, Brandon Vickers, David Reagan, and Casey Kane. <clears throat> Joe Nemechek is a lap down, but besides him, the top five were able to spread out and pull away from the rest of the field so that they could fight out for themselves. In the big second pack, the big crash happens off turn number four as Elliot Sauer gets in the wall. Clint Boyer tries going down pit road, but he gets involved in the crash and watch David Rudeman in the double zero. Up and over mm. he goes, barrel rolling several times, and Forgot he comes out on all fours. David Rudeman is okay after the crash. Pit stops happen as Kurt Busch leads him down. And Kurt Busch will lead him off pit road. Lap one, Several cars stayed off of pit road, including Denny Hamlin, Tony Stewart, and Clint Boyer, and Jeremy Mayfield. Everyone else pitted. Kurt Busch is pretty much the dominant car through the second half of the race, but his dominance gets abrupted by Scott Riggs in the six, and because of that, Casey Kane gets an opportunity ah, no. and dives to the inside of Kurt Busch and takes the lead away from Kurt Busch. David Stremme makes a dive to the inside of Casey Kane, and a couple Stremme. of Dodge cars battle it out for the lead. They did have a fierce side-by-side -side battle, but David Stremme will end up taking the lead. Final lap. There's a bit of fright as David Stremme gets caught up in lap traffic. David Reagan, Dave Blaney, Casey Kane, and Ryan Newman are all lead lap cars that could have passed David Stremme, but it won't be enough. David Stremme comes off of turn number four, and he will get his David first Stremme. career win at the Daytona 500. David Fr friendly reminder, David Stremme is the GOAT, and what if Dylan Hart was still alive? David Stremme, in his second Daytona 500 start, will get the win for Chip Ganassi Racing. This is one of the biggest upsets in NASCAR history. No, not history, because he's a GOAT. All right, 2008. Here are three things to know about 2008. First of all, this is the 50th Daytona 500. Lots of famous drivers, lots of famous people have made it out to this special outing. And so the question will be, who will win on this special day? The second thing, we have a brand new car in NASCAR. Uh, yeah. It has a wing, it has splitter, it has a bunch of different features on the car. And because of that, the third thing to keep in mind, Dale Earnhardt is not a fan of this car whatsoever. He has told many reporters that he is absolutely against this new car, and he absolutely dislikes the idea of cars having wings instead of spoilers. Yep. NASCAR decides to win ahead with it, and we're about to find out how this new car will have an impact on the competition in 2008. See, I can definitely see other people thinking that Earnhardt would be okay with this car for the sake of safety, but just visually, I'm just, I don't know, it's just the wing. The wing is an absolute turnoff for, at least for me. As the cars roll on by, we will tell you the date or the starting lineup for the 50th running of the Daytona 500. Starting on pole for the 50th running of the Daytona 500 is Denny Hamlin in a new FedEx Toyota. Joe Gibbs moves over from Chevy to Toyota. And the out okay, so dumb question. Are you guys getting like, when, when I play the, uh, my, the audio from this, is the audio going in like different parts of your ear holes just out of curiosity because i feel like it keeps jumping from like left to right so i don't know if it's just Menard with an excellent qualifying run sterling marlin will start third sterling marlin is calling this year his final year in sprint cup and to the outside of him is david strimmy in the 40 dodge i just want to make a side note that oh, what did that say? Cup. and to the outside of him is david strimmy in the 40 dodge hold up even though it says sterling marlin on top it is the nice I just want to make a side note that this year, um, it is not Nextel anymore, it is Sprint. The company has changed names, it is now the Sprint Cup Series instead of the Nextel Cup Series. Starting fifth is Kurt Busch in the number two of the white Dodge, and the outside of him is Robbie Gordon. Robbie switches from Ford to Dodge in 2008. Starting seventh is Jeremy Mayfield. Jeremy Mayfield is able to pick up sponsorship in the form of Kellogg's yeah, in 2008. Kellogg's. Kellogg's will be the full-time sponsor on the number 88 Robert Gates Racing Ford. And to the outside of him is Brian Vickers in the Red Bull Racing Toyota. Bob Labonte will start ninth in the Cheerios Dodge. 
and starting 10th is David Reagan in the State Water Heaters Chevrolet. David, who had an impressive run last year, is looking for redemption this year. Kyle Busch will start 11th. Kyle replaces JJ so Daly okay. in the number 18 car, bringing M&M's with as new sponsorship this year. And as I mentioned before, Joe Gibbs Racing has switched over to Toyota. To the outside of Kyle is Clint Boyer in the at and Chevrolet. Starting 13th is David Rudeman. Rudeman has Aaron's now as a full-time sponsor. Hmm. And AJ Allmaninger will start 14th. AJ. This is AJ's first attempt at the Daytona 500. Scott Riggs has new sponsorship in 2008. Triple A comes on and replaces Nesquik as the full-time sponsor. Nesquik is still a part-time sponsor Sponsor, but will not sponsor every race. And to the outside is Sam Hornish Jr. Sam Hornish follows Juan Montoya and AJ Allmendinger's route. He Did Robbie get busted for the illegal nose? No, not in this universe. Robbie's fine with that. I mean, like, he didn't he didn't do that, I would just say. He used to run Indy cars, but now he's doing full-time in the Spring Cup series driving for Roger Penske. Jeff Burton in the number three Reese's car will start 17th, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the number eight Budweiser Chevrolet will start 18th. Jimmy Johnson will start 19th, and Ryan Newman in the LTL Dodge will start 20th. Matt Kenseth will start 21st, and the outside of him is J.J. Gailey in the 96th. J.J. Gailey replaces Tony Raines. David Gilden will start 23rd. FreeCreditReport.com replaces M&M's as a primary sponsor, and Tony Stewart will start 24th in the Home Depot Toyota. Reed Sorensen will start 25th, and to the outside is Casey Kane. Casey Kane picks up sponsorship in the form of McDonald's for the full entire season. Michael Waltrip will start 27th in the Best Western Toyota, and Elliot Sattler will start 28th. Best Buy will serve as the full-time sponsor for Elliot Sattler. Kevin Harvick will drive the 30 Shell Pennzoil Chevrolet and will start 29th. And Casey Mears signs an extension with National Guard and Hendrick Motorsports in 2008 to so continue oh, yeah. driving the National Guard Chevrolet. Here's a new one. Jerry Nadu moves over from the old... Okay, so quick inspiration for this car. Jeff Green's 1999 Bush car. You know how it goes like color and then it has like the sprinkles and then it goes to white. I don't think it matches because amp is like, you know, liquid. But I just like the idea of doing the uh, like the, the dots or whatever on the side. I don't know why I'm pointing there. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I like the design, but I just don't think it matches with like the amp and Mountain Dew uh, company. One U.S. Army Chevrolet to drive the new Amp Energy Number no. Five Chevrolet. What happened was MPT Motorsports collapsed, and everything that was left of the team pretty much fell. And so, because of that, Jerry needed was out. Hold up, what what, what 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 was that? What was that? Me? The subliminal messaging. My what? What happened was MPT Motorsports collapsed, and everything that was left of the team pretty much fell. Hold up, I fixed the Mountain Dew logo on the sides to clear. Oh, cool, I did fix it, awesome. And so because of that, Jerry Nadu was out of a ride. And fortunately, since Kyle Busch moved over to Joe Gibbs Racing, there was a ride open. So Jerry Nadu applied for the ride and he got it. Amp Energy and Mountain Dew will serve as the full-time sponsor for Jerry Nadu in 2008. To the outside of him is Dave Blaney in the 22 Caterpillar Toyota. Patrick Carpentier will start Patrick. during the third. Patrick replaces Joe Patrick. Nemechek in the 10 Valvoline Dodge. It'll be interesting to see how he will fare in these stock cars. The outside of him is Martin Truex and the one Bass Pro Shop Chevrolet. Carl Edwards will start Carl. 35th. Alongside him is Greg Biffle. Biffle has new sponsorship from 3M. Dale yes. Jarrett is going to start 37th, and this is Dale Jarrett's final year in NASCAR before he calls retirement. Into the outside of him is Jeff Gordon, who starts 38th. Starting 39th is Jamie McMurray in the Crown Royal Ford. Murray. And Kyle Petty will start 40th. This is also going to be Kyle Petty's last season before he calls retirement. So, okay, one thing I also like, too, is giving people definitive ends. Because you saw how, like, Petty and Marlon, they, like I said, it's the final season. Again, I like that. I like giving them, like, definitive, like, instead of Kyle Petty kind of, like, running off into the sunset, I like that I decide, like, this will be his final year, and then he'll just full-on stop. Juan Pablo Montoya is going to start 41st. Alongside him is Mike Bliss in the 09. Mike Bliss is going to be one of many drivers driving that 09 Mikazuki Chevrolet. And rounding out the field is... Ha! Ah, what did I say? Mike Bliss is going to be one of many drivers driving that 09 Mikazuki Chevrolet. Even though it says still... <laughs> I did it twice! <laughs> ah, crap. And rounding out the field is Joe Nemechek in the Furniture Row Chevrolet. He moves over from the tanker, and we expect to see that team to try to run every single race. Right. The start is clean as Denny Hamlin leads Paul Menard into turn number one. Julian Marlon, David Strimi, and Kurt Busch follow in the top five. But as you can see, there's already three wide. The music. And three wide it shall be. As cars are all together in one pack, you can tell they're just they're just asking for trouble. 
But, 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 cars can't ask for trouble because they uh, don't have <laughs> feelings. Ah, I'm gonna get crap for that. On the ninth lap, trouble ensued. Four wide in turn number four brings Bobby Levine together with Clint Boyer and several cars going around, including Brian Vickers, Dale Hart Jr., David Gillen, Sam Hornish, Reed Sorensen, and more. And more. Early pit stops happen as lots of cars take advantage of fresh tires and fuel, and they all get out clean. On the restart, it is Kyle Busch in the new 18 M&M's Toyota with Kevin Harvick in second, Mike Bliss third, Tony Stewart fourth. Did I? Eh, I know I changed it a little bit, but I still don't like that. Fourth and Scott Riggs in fifth. The next caution does not come out until lap 115. The caution was for debris. Debris? Pit road was open again, and it was full of takers. First car out this time was Kurt Busch in the two car. Remember, Kurt had a dominant car last year. Can he capitalize in the Blue Deuce this year? The Blue Deuce. On the restart, he leads with Paul Menard in second, Jeff Burton in third, David Reagan is back in fourth, and Jimmy Johnson in fifth. Caution comes out again as the double of David Runeman oh, gets yeah. turned by Kyle Petty in turn number four, and his back of the car gets into the inside wall, and that takes himself out of competition. Dude. <sighs> On the restart, it's his teammates, Michael Waltrip and Dale Jarrett restarting 1-2. Carl Edwards and David Gilliland are on the inside from damage repairs. But it didn't take long as the Blue Deuce goes on the back straightaway to take the lead, but Jeremy Mayfield, the 2006 Mayfield. champion, was battling it out with them. Final green flag stops to happen as Kyle Busch and numerous other drivers take advantage of fresh tires and fuel once more. Caution comes out for debris once again. <laughs> on the restart, it is David uh, Reagan this time funny. in the 66, followed by the Blue Deuce of Kurt Busch and Casey Mears in third. Big trouble happens this time as Joe uh -oh. Newshack gets turned by Dale Jarrett and he takes out several cars. Sam Hornish gets in the air, Denny Hamlin flips, but then watching the back of the pack. What? Sterling Marlin gets turned and JJ Gailey goes upside down. Oh yeah. See, okay. Now, that's 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 one of those wrecks, you know, where it really teetered on the line of, you know, realism. Because like in real life, do you think like two, three, four cars would have flipped? If I would have been really picky, I probably would have restarted this race, but it's like, it's, it, 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 it eh, it's fine. It is what it is. And JJ Gailey goes upside down. <laughs> Remember when debris caution? After yes, a sense of cleanup, restart happens again as Tony Stewart is the leader. Tony Stewart has never won the Daytona 500 before. On the final lap, David but. Reagan could upset and win the Daytona 500. David Reagan. But problems ensued. Lap down traffic in the form of Casey Kane blocks David Reagan's no, path, and Casey that Kane. opens the door up for the three car of Jeff Burton. Jeff Burton dives to the inside, and Jeff Gordon eventually follows suit, and they would pass by, and they would battle for the win at the Daytona 500. David Reagan eventually falls almost outside the top 10, as a bunch of different cars move into the top 5. Jeff Gordon did have a chance to get by Jeff Burton, but it would not be enough as Jeff the Burton wins, wins the 50th running of the Daytona 500. The Jeff. three car returns again to victory lane at Daytona. Yeah, Jeff Burton. And Jeff Gordon follows behind in second. Jeff Burton did it. All right, tells it nine, guys. I love that. Here are three things to know about 2009. Shush, shush, shush. I love that transition. I love it. As I go down. Oh, that. I love that so much. I love the transition. I love that crap. Here are so three much. things to know about 2009. First of all, weather is a factor. There is a storm system moving in, and so there is a chance that this whole race may not be completed. So that is something to keep in mind. The second thing to keep in mind is Tony Stewart has a brand new team. Yep. Tony Stewart formed a partnership with Haas Automation, and now he runs a two car team with himself and another driver as a teammate. And then the final thing to keep in mind. Both Robert Gates Racing and Chip Ganassi Racing are both still a factor. In real life, both of those teams merged with other teams and they eventually dwindled away. I mean, Chip Ganassi didn't dwindle away. They are now the main team today with the 42 and the one car. However, DEI and Chip Ganassi are still two different teams. Okay. So that is something to keep in mind moving forward. Now, as we watch as the cars rumble down to do their pace lap, 
We'll take a look at the starting lineup for the 2009 Daytona 500. All right, what did I say? Starting on pole is something brand new. Oh, yeah. Kurt Busch replaces David Gilliland as the second car at Robert Yates Racing, and he picks up Home Depot as sponsorship in the new number 28 Home Depot Ford. And to the outside of him is Matt Kenseth in the DeWalt Tools Ford. Mm -hmm. Starting third is Elliot Sadler in the Stanley Tools Dodge. Stanley Tools replaces Best Buy as the primary sponsor on the 19 Dodge. And to the outside of him is Robbie Gordon in the Jim Bean car. John Andretti starts fifth. John. He had an impressive Gatorade dual finish, finishing second in his race. Martin Truex starts alongside him in six. Tony Stewart starts seventh. Hold up. In second in his race. Martin Truex starts alongside him in six. I fixed the fender logos on the front of the car. The cleaner car is in the downloads. Ah, that's funny. Tony Stewart starts seventh. Tony Stewart is in the new number 14 Office Depot Old Spice Chevrolet. Tony Stewart is now the boss man at Stewart the Haas Racing. Man. And as I mentioned before, Old Spice and Office Depot are the new primary sponsors on that car. Brian Vickers will start eighth alongside Tony Stewart. Starting ninth is Juan Pablo Montoya. Juan Montoya signs a contract That's extension right. with Chip Ganassi Racing. And Target is going to serve as primary sponsor on the number 42 Target Dodge. To the outside of him is AJ Allmendinger. AJ moves over to a Dodge in the Vaveline car with number 44 as a number as he is the second car for Richard Petty Motorsports, replacing Kyle Petty in the 45 car. Michael Waltrip will start 11th in the Toyota, and Jimmy McMurray will start 12th in the Crown Royal Ford. Jerry Nader returns Jerry. in the Energy Chevrolet, and David Stremme in the Ford. What? 12th in the Crown Royal Ford. Jerry Nader returns in the Amp Energy Chevrolet. I fixed the moon. <laughs> this is the last one too. Uh, I don't know why that's funny. And David Stremme in the 40 Fastenal Dodge. Starting 15th is- Stop, why? In the Amp Energy Chevrolet. And David Stremme in the 40 Fastenal Dodge. Even though it says Dario Franchitti on top, it is David Stremme's car. Come on, Griff, you're better than this, man. Starting 15th is Casey Mears as he returns to the National Guard Chevrolet, and Greg Biffle will start as car number is 16th. Kyle Busch will start 17th, and Jeff Burton returns to the Reese yeah. Chevrolet as the defending Daytona 500 champion in 18th. Reed Sorensen is going to start 19th. Reed Sorensen replaces Bob Labonte as the primary driver in the 43 Dodge. Reed Sorensen is also as a new sponsor with Charter. Okay, I'll, I'll briefly answer this. Burger Friends, why did I have Home Depot go to Yates? I just, um, because I wanted Interstate Batteries to stay as a full-time sponsor because I like green cars. Um, and so I had Interstate Batteries go to the 20. Home Depot needed a place to go. The 28 car I felt like was a good place to go. And Home Depot, and I just think that was a nice little relationship. Charter is the new primary sponsor for Reed Sorensen. Jeremy Mayfield returns to the 88 car Damn and will Jeremy. start 20th. Jimmy Johnson is going to start. Hold up. Back up, back up, back to Chief. 20th. <laughs> All right, what did I say here? So I was really smart. When I imported this car, I imported a Ford Fusion onto a Chevy Impala body. I, <laughs> I realized this mistake while editing this video. I made the fix to the real car, and the better car is available in the downloads below. Thank you for understanding, Smiley. Ah, that's funny. Jimmy Johnson is going to start 21st in the low Chevrolet. And starting 22nd is... <laughs> Dear 2016 Griff, stop being lazy, sign your fans. Yeah, thank you. There's a new rookie by the name of Brad Keselowski. Brad... Whoa, I really did it that early? Oh, I guess I did. Replaces Kurt Busch in the Blue Deuce this year. Blue Jeff Deuce. Gordon is going to start 23rd. And alongside him is Australia native Marcus Ambrose. Marcus is going to move over to for a that new early? team, JTG huh. Daughtery Racing with Little Debbie as sponsorship. Could Marcus make a statement in NASCAR? Casey Kane will start 25th in the McDonald's Dodge. Like so to the art side is Bobby Labonte in the 20 Interstate Batteries Toyota. Bobby moves back to Joe Gibbs Racing and with Interstate Batteries. He replaces Tony Stewart as he moves over. So a little trick, I don't know if you guys know this, but the period and comma keys on your uh, computer uh, goes like frame by frame. So if you want to do comma, it goes a frame back, but then period goes a frame forward. So if you guys want to try to find a little thing like that, that's your little uh, fun fact. Stuart Haas Racing. Starting 27th is JJ Gailey in the 96 car. Ask.com um, is the new sponsor on that machine. And Carl Edwards starts 28th. <sighs> what? Hold on. What is that? Even though it's... Oh, Griff, buddy. And Carl Edwards starts 28th. 
Aflac is the new sponsor on that car. Starting 29th is Denny Hamlin in the FedEx Toyota. And to the outside is Ryan Newman. Ryan Come Newman on. moves to the new Storehouse Racing team with a new number, 39, which is Ryan Newman's old number way back in the day. And a new sponsor with U.S. Army coming on board. David Gilliland starts 31st. David Gilliland replaces Ryan Newman in the okay. number 12 car. And to the outside is David... How many times? How many times? How many times? Even... Oh my god! Crap! Why? <laughs> and to the outside is David Reagan. David Reagan has been close two years in a row. Can he break the spell with a brand new team uh, of Tommy Baldwin Racing? Starting 33rd is Car 33, Eric Almarola. I like that Eric car. is another rookie this year with new sponsorship from Napa Auto Parts. To the I knew it. I knew there was another one. I fixed the Fender logos on the front of the car. Oh yeah, this sucker right here. That's not supposed to be real. Okay. To the outside is Scott Speed. Scott Speed replaces AJ Allmendinger in the second Red Bull machine with 82 as its number instead of 84. Clint Boyer is going to start 35th. Caterpillar is the new sponsor of that ride, as Bill Davis Racing shut down last year. And starting 36 is Paul Menard in the 15 Menards car. Paul Menard signs an extension with Dale Earnhardt Incorporated for a couple more seasons. Okay. Sam Morris Jr. What? <laughs> what the hell, Griff? Oh, geez, Louise. Hold on. I fixed the Founder logos. Sam Hornish Jr. will start 37th, and the outside of him is Scott Riggs in the UPS 4. Yes. UPS becomes a new sponsor after both AAA and Nesquip pull off of the 6 car. Dale Earnhardt Jr. starts back in the field in 39th in the Budweiser 8 Chevrolet, and Regan Smith is- Stop it. I'm sorry, I gotta look at this. Is it the same thing? And Regan Smith is going to start 40th. Regan Smith replaces Joe Nemechek in the Furniture Row Chevrolet. Regan Smith replaces Joe Nemechek. Nemechek is going to attempt races in his own team, which unfortunately did not qualify for this year's Daytona 500. And rounding out the field is David Rudeman in the double zero Aaron's Toyota. Kevin Harvick starting 42nd in the uh, 30 pencil. If I would have redone this car, I definitely would have added red scalps to the front of this car. Royal Chevrolet. And rounding out the field is Mike Bliss in the 71 car, joining a brand new team, TRG Motorsports. Kurt Busch leads Matt Kenseth, Elliot Sadler, Robbie Gordon, and John Jerry down to this cloudy race, the 2009 Daytona 500. Yep. Early in the going, cars were bunched up because they knew that time is going to be of the essence in this race. And because of close proximity, the first caution comes out and lots of cars were taken out, including Martin Truex, Michael Walter, John Andretti, Mike Bliss, and more. Everyone was okay after the crash. Hmm, that's good. Lap 17. On the restart is Brian Vickers out front, has lots of lead changes in this race. Caution comes out again for a huge crash involving Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Gordon, Ryan Newman, and Ooh, others. Ooh, that's right. Even though there are a lot of hard hits, everyone was okay after this. Oh uh, yeah, I forgot about that. Pit stops began as Tony Stewart brought him down the pit road. Tony Stewart has one of the stronger cars today. I think Stewart won this, didn't he? I don't remember. On the restart, Tony Stewart leads him down into turn number one. Matt Kenseth, Robbie Gordon, Casey Mears, and Juan Montoya are our top five. Lap Juan Montoya five. goes into the lead with a couple of Dodge teammates. Mm, I like that. The racing that is. But Tony Stewart fights back with Kyle Busch behind him. Carl Edwards comes into fray with help from Brad Keselowski yeah. as they go into the lead. Brad Keselowski, with the help of um, rookie competitor Eric Almarola, going to the lead. They knew that weather or rain can come in at any moment. I think I had it, didn't I? But Carl Edwards was not going to give up. Carl Edwards dives underneath Brad Keselowski, and they go side by side for several laps. I just wanted to comment. I really like the racing in this. Like the way I had it set up. Like, I don't know, just the way how they were spread out and whatnot. It's nice. It's not all like jam packed together. So around the 2.5 mile super speedway. But at the time, caution comes out for debris. Pit stops will go around and Brad Keselowski leads them out with Carl Edwards, Tony Stewart, and Eric Armarola at your top four. But on the restart, several drivers did not pit because they're trying to weigh out on for the rain to come. Reed Sorensen's your leader, Scott Speed, is in second. Hmm. Dale Earnhardt Jr. makes his Dale. way out to the front. Dale Jr. is doing everything he can to stay out front before the rains come. 
Unfortunately, that did not happen, and Tony Stewart was able to pass by. Okay. Dale Jr. for the lead, and Juan Montoya goes in the second. Casey Kane in third. That's right, I remember that now. But then the caution finally came out, and you know what it was for? What? It was for rain. Yeah. And it poured. With Tony Stewart out in front, they brought the cars down to favorite road. They couldn't do anything about it. They as in NASCAR. And Tony Stewart wins the 2009 Daytona 500 for his own team. That's right. All right, 2010 time. Hey, I think this is the first time I did uh, the my outro song, the Huma Huma song. Here are three things to know about 2010. There is concern about the old track surface at Daytona. There are rumors and speculation going around that the track will be repaved next year. It will be interesting to see how the pavement will be affected in this race because of how cracked it is. And spoiler alert, NASCAR finally listened to Dale Earnhardt and spoilers are back on the Get it? Get it? Spoiler alert? Because there's spoilers on the car? Uh. The car. Everything else is the same on the car, but there are no more wings on these cars. And the last big thing to note, Ray Everham's final season as an owner is this year. After that, his team, both the 9 and the 19 car, are going to come to a close. It'll be interesting to see where Casey Kane and Elliot Sadler will go next year. Mm -hmm. As you watch the cars roll off of pit road, we will take a look at the starting lineup here for the 2010 Daytona 500. Starting on the pole is Sam Hornish Jr. in the 77 Mobile One Dodge. To the outside of him is David Rudiman in the 00 Aaron's Toyota. Yep. Starting third is Brad Keselowski in the number two Miller Lite oh, no. Dodge. Yep. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew I was going to say that because, like, I was, I was saying that. I was eyeballing this, and I knew that Kurt Busch was on there. Okay, this is the last time I'm doing this. I'm sorry, guys. And to the outside of him is Kyle Busch in the M&M's Toyota. Starting fifth is Elliot Sadler in the number 19 Stanley Dodge. As I mentioned before, this is Ray Abraham's final season as an owner, and so Elliot Sadler and Stanley Tool's future is up in the air at yeah. this point. Starting six is David. So this was an interesting move that I decided. Like I, I like the 40 font, and I, I like I like that car as a whole, and the way how it kind of just fizzled out was kind of disappointing. And so I wanted to keep 40 at least for a little while longer. Streamy and the Lysol Dodge. Lysol is the new full-time sponsor for David Strimmy um, in the 40 Chip Ganassi car. Starting 7th is Kevin Harvick in the 30 Pennzoil Chevrolet. Yeah. And to the outside is Jury Nadu in the Amp Energy Mountain yeah. Dew Chevrolet. Carl Edwards starts 9th in the 99 Aft Black Ford. And starting 10th is Joey Logano in the 20... Really? Did I really do it that soon? Oh, I guess so. 22 Discount Tires Dodge. Joey becomes the second driver for Penske Racing as he replaces David Gilliland in the 12 car. Joey was initially going to run with Joe Gibbs Racing, but a conflict of interest occurred between Logano and Gibbs, so Logano left and he saw an opportunity at Penske. Interesting. So he took it, and now he's a rookie in the 22 car in 2010. Clint Boyer is going to start 11th in the 31 Caterpillar Chevrolet. And Casey Mears will yeah. start 12th in the National Guard 25 Chevrolet. Starting 13th is Kurt Busch in the Home Depot Ford for Robert Yates Racing. And Bob Labonte returns to the Interstate Batteries Toyota. Casey Kane is back in the McDonald's number 9 Dodge for one more year. His future is also up in the air. Alongside him is Dale Earnhardt Jr. Yeah. in the new number 8 Budweiser Chevrolet. Scott Riggs is going to Hold start on. 17th. I'm a little meh with this paint scheme. Like, I understand. Like, I wanted to have a little black on the car, but the swoops, I don't know. It's just one of those things where you think about, like, the company, and like, it makes you wonder if, like, the company actually would approve of the swoops. Him is Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the new number 8 Budweiser Chevrolet. Scott Riggs is going to start 17th in the number 6 UPS Ford. To the outside of Riggs, his teammate, Matt Kenza. Crown Royal serves as the new sponsor for Matt Kenseth in 2010, replacing DeWalt Tools. Jeff Gordon will start 19th in the DuPont Chevrolet, and to the outside of him is Jeff Burton in the Reese's Chevrolet. Starting 21st is the defending 2009 Daytona 500 champion, Tony Stewart. And to the outside of him is Juan Pablo Montoya in the Target Dodge for Chip Ganassi. Scott Speed will start 23rd in the 82 Red Bull Toyota, and Martin Truex is start 24th. Martin Truex is the new driver for Michael Waltrip Racing. Napa is the new sponsor for Martin Truex Jr. with 56 as Martin's I like that number. Car he a replaces lot. Michael Waltrip as Michael now becomes a full-time owner like Dale Earnhardt. Jay McMurray moves over from Roush to the number one Bass Pro Shop Chevrolet for Dale Earnhardt Incorporated. Yep. He replaces Martin Truex. And to the outside of him is Marcus Ambrose and the Low Debbie Toyota. Eric Almarola will start 27th. Mm -hmm. Cheerios is the new sponsor on that machine. And to the outside of him is unsponsored. I'm a little surprised at how I, uh, that I actually committed Almarola to the Cup Series so soon. You know, if I would have redone this series, um, Almarola probably should have done more in the, um, Xfinity Nationwide Series, and then maybe moved him up into the Cup a little later. 
On we're rolling, we'll start 27th. Cheerios is a new sponsor on that machine. And to the outside of him is unsponsored Mike Bliss. Mike is looking for potential sponsors, but nothing is set yet for that team. Bill Elliott will start 29th. Bill. Bill Elliott is running a part-time schedule for that machine. And to the outside of him is Greg Biffle in the 3M Ford. Reed Sorensen will start 31st in the Best Buy Dodge. Yep. And to the outside of him is David Gilliland in the Taco Bell <clears throat> Ford. David Gilliland moves over to Front Row Motorsports from Penske Racing. Robbie Gordon with the new sponsor of Monster Energy in that self-owner driver combo. And to the outside of him is Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy. Starting 35th is Ryan Newman in the U.S. Army Chevrolet. And to the outside of him is Denny Hamlin in the FedEx Toyota. Ryan Vickers in the Red Bull Toyota starts farther in the back. And alongside him Mayfield. is Jeremy Mayfield in the 88 Kellogg's Ford. And rounding out the field, we got AJ Allmendinger alongside Paul Menard in 40th. Max Pappas is starting 41st. Yep. Max Pappas moves over from the Rolex series, and he's a Rookie of the Year candidate. And alongside him is Regan Smith in the 78 Furniture Road car. And rounding out the field is the second front row motorsports car of Travis Quaffle. Hill. To start this one off, Sam Hornish leads David Newman, Brad Keselowski, Kyle Busch, and Elliot Sadler down into turn number one. Yep. It'll be interesting to see how bumpy the cars will react to the track. Yeah. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Jamie McMurray teammates bring the field down into turn number one. Ah, uh, so colorful. I love it. And Jamie McMurray passes by Dale Jr. for the lead. The DEI cars are really strong today. Mm hmm And they will not give it up. The one car that comes in to break it up is Scott Riggs in the 6 Ford. And that's what he did. He broke up that party as Scott Riggs goes in the lead. Strummy! And Daytona 500 winner David Strummy comes into play as well. Scott Riggs brings the field down the pit road for the first round of green flag pit stops. Multiple cars, including Jeremy Mayfield, got service around the, during this round of pit stops. So, one thing I keep seeing in the chat is DNQ. I think for this series, I did not really focus on DNQ, and that is one of the regrets I have with this series was I did not worry about the DNQ, so... Yeah, so unfortunately, because it's been four years later, I don't remember who DNQ'd, and I do apologize about that. So, Kevin Conway might have DNQ'd, but... I don't know. Because of this, the field spread out as Jamie McMurray and Dale Earnhardt Jr. lead the lead pack around the speedway. Yes. First caution comes out for Debris on lap 79. Remember when debris cautions were a thing? <laughs> on the restart, this is the first round of double file restarts as Clint Boyer and David oh, yeah, Newman lead him down into turn number one. And through the cycle, Kurt Busch. Goes yeah, over. that's right. Someone in the comments mentioned. Hold on. Hold on. And yeah, you got the Obamas in the pace car. Didn't someone in the comments mention that? Uh, let's see. I thought someone mentioned something about the Obamas. Yeah, you can see the Obamas face. Yep. <laughs> Through the cycle, Kurt Busch yeah, that's goes funny. as the leader, but Carl Edwards fights him back. First big crash happens right here as Greg Biffle, Scott Riggs, and numerous others get involved. Bill Elliott gets up in the air, but he's okay. But he does not flip. Another round of cycle of pit stops happens here. On the restart, it is Kurt Busch, Carl Edwards, Reed Sorensen are your top three. Then it's rookie Joey Logano, Jimmy Johnson, and Clint Boyer, your top six. Boyer. David Rudiman and David Stremme move out in front as they battle Stremme. side by side for the lead. Another round of green flag pit stops as half the field comes in at once as they are bunched together coming down pit road. Fortunately, no serious accidents happen on pit road and everyone has a pretty successful pit stop. Caution comes out again for debris on the back straightaway. <laughs> Duro's Mountain Dew asks, if this, is this series just a teaser for what if Dale Hart was still alive, the remake? No, it's not. I'm sorry to burst your bubble with that. On the restart is David Stremme, David Rudiman again. Another caution comes out as a semi-big crash happens on the back straightaway involving Robbie Gordon, Brett Keselowski, Casey Mears, and Juan Montoya. Yep. On the restart, David Stremme was able to pull out a big lead as Jeff Gordon moves into the picture to possibly steal a win away. But on the same lap, caution comes out again as Robbie Gordon moves too far high up and he takes himself and Montoya out of the race. No. Montoya ends up going into the garage after this crash. With six laps to go, Jeff Gordon does take the lead away, but he still has six laps to defend everyone else. 
with three laps to go. David Sherman gets a big run down to turn number three, and he tries to pass Jeff Gordon down to the inside. Oh, yeah, with Warrior happens. right behind him. That's that right. one goes a crash. In the turn number three, that is AJ Allmendinger around Elliott Sadler. Lots and lots of cars into the wall. Lots of cars That's spinning, right. lots of cars involved. One car up and over, and that is Jeremy Mayfield in the 88 no, Kellogg's not Mayfield. Ford. Lots of cars were taken out of this, and the red flag was pulled out because of this crash. And now we're going to go live these final two laps That's to right. decide who will win the 2010 Daytona 500. Here That's we go, ladies live. and gentlemen. We have two laps to decide the winner of the 2010 Daytona 500. Jeff Gordon is your leader, but can he pull it off and can he win another Daytona 500? Or will David Sherry pull a spoiler again and will he win the Daytona 500? Here we go. Flagman has a green in the air and we are racing two laps to go here at Daytona. Clint Boyer gets all over Jeff Gordon's bumper as Tony Stewart gets on the back of David Sherry's bumper. Clint Boyer looking to the inside of Jeff Gordon now. Jeff Gordon moving high. He touches David Shrimmy. They bump into turn number one as Clint Boyer dives underneath Jeff Gordon and down into turn number one. Three wide as Kurt Busch moves into the middle, the farther back in the field. Scott Riggs to the inside, Jerry to the outside of him. Three wide down into turn number two now. Carl Edwards moves to the inside. Can Carl Edwards give Jeff Gordon a big push? As they are three by three by three now down the back straightaway. Rudiment all over the back of Clint Boyer down into turn number three. David Strimmey tries clearing Jeff Gordon, but he can't do it as they are bumping down into turn number three, through three, into turn number four. Jerry Nadu giving Tony Stewart a well of a push. That should be an exchange into David Strimmey. I'm so Can happy Can he clear in front of Jeff Gordon? Yes, he does. As they are still three by three by three with one lap to go. David Rudiman down the inside now. David Rudiman gets a well of a push from, I believe that is Scott Riggs on the inside. As they are side by side as we're on board with David Strimmey, Strimmey is not giving up on that high side. That high side is strong as they are bumping and banging. If one car makes a false move, everyone is done. David Rudiman getting a well of a push from Scott Riggs, who is getting a push from Eric Almarola. Down the back straightaway, everyone is three wide, and there is no room to breathe whatsoever. David Stremme getting the run off the high side with help from Tony Stewart. Lots of bumping and banging down into turn number three and four. Oh, and there's a <laughs> run behind. Bunch of cars get involved as they are side by side right to the line. There's a hard crash behind and here they come checkered flag waving. It's going to be Stremmy. Stremmy. David Stremmy wins his second Daytona 500. What an amazing comeback on the outside by David Stremmy and the Lysol Dodge. We'll get the replays for you and we'll show you what happened behind the field. Tony Stewart in the catch fence. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Boy, good thing that car did not erupt in flames. That would have been huge. Tony Stewart barrel rolls a couple more times, but we have a lot of good drivers in that wreck. Kyle Busch involved, Kevin Harvick, look again. Tony Stewart rides the wall and rides and I'm really surprised that car did not like catch the catch fence and explode. Catch the catch fence. The car does a couple I more barrel rolls. Here you see Jeff Gordon involved, Scott Riggs was involved, I believe I saw Jerry Nadeau involved. Yep, there he is in the middle. Uh, the Bonnie wrecked. <laughs> Boy. Boy. That was a big, big crash. We did get word that Tony Stewart did climb out of the car under his own power. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but there goes one of our cameras. Okay, so a little behind-the-scenes thing. So what I did with that is um, I'm trying to remember. So when you when a car flips upside down in real life, right, or in the game, it does this little thing. If you pause when they're upside down in the onboard view, this the screen still goes. So what you do is you record that in fraps, and then you have like a minute of this footage and so then when I edit I went ahead and I edited it as if the camera was smashed so you can't say the same thing about that so here's a finish in slow motion oh yeah David Strimmy and that is Clint Boyer side by side that much NASCAR is telling us that David Strimmy won by four one thousandths of a second four one thousandths of a second right there what an, uh, what an awesome win by David Strimmy for Chip Ganassi and for Dodge as well. Definitely a good, good finish. Definitely not the wreck that we wanted, but... <sighs> oh well, at least the cars, at least all the drivers are okay. Not the cars. Look at this! So thank you guys for watching part 6. Thank you guys for watching all the whole entire series so far. And thank you so much for all the support. It means so much that my ideas are being listened no, I've to. No, i never. <laughs> so, unfortunately, part 7 is not going to come out for a while. I'm going to make a bunch of more shorter videos, a few more shorts and a few more ideas that have been cramming in my head. And I'm also planning to do the 2016 um, Sprint Summer Showdown. I want to return that back. So, guys, yeah. thank you so much again for all the support. <laughs>
Um, if there's anything wrong in this video, please don't be hesitant to shout it out at me. Like, push all caps locks and add like five, six, even 20 like exclamation marks so I can hear it. That totally makes sense. <laughs> so, as they show me those donuts here, yeah, thank you guys so much. Bit. And all I right. will see you guys next time. Okay, so uh, here's what I'm gonna do. We'll, we'll continue with the next video, but uh, I wanna show you guys something. We're gonna go into Air 2003 for a second, hopefully. Hopefully this works. All right, so I want to show you guys an alternative timeline. Well, not alternative, but like, so I don't know why I saved this, but um, I did. So I think the reason I saved this was because it was such a cool looking uh, rack. So hopefully the fraps are good on this or the frame rate. So let's see, let's do this. So okay, this is an alternative timeline. I think everyone was AI in this. Yeah, so Rudiment gets in the day of Sturmy. And then a huge wreck unfolds, and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna roll a one today 2500. So did Amarola win this? Oh! <laughs> Wait, did I finish this? Yeah, so Amarola would have won the Daytona 2500 if I would have kept that version. And so just so you guys know, I didn't do this like for all of them, but just for whatever reason, I saved this one. And I think I wanted to do an analyze the big one on this one later. Yeah, I'm sorry if it's laggy, but... Yeah, I remember this. So, um, but yeah, so sometime a little later here, I'll show you guys other failed things. So yeah, Fraps is crapping out. Yeah, and that's what it is for Inner 2003. So, all right, let's uh, jump back into this and let's go ahead and do part, part seven, part one. This is Rift Dog here. All right, one thing I keep seeing in the chat about the 2020 Summer Showdown, I don't, well, if they do it, um, I'm not gonna take part in it. Because again, I, and we'll talk about this more later tonight, but again, I'm kind of done doing the NASCAR stuff for now. Um, if the core guys wanna do like their version of Summer Showdown, they can go for it and I'll talk to them about that, but I'm not gonna have, or I'm gonna have little involvement with that. So I'll just mention that right now. And I welcome you to What If Dale Earnhardt Is Still Alive Part 7. So just like Part 6, I will talk about every driver, number, and sponsor change from 2011 to today. I will also talk about what happens in each Daytona 500 from 2011 until today. And just like the previous videos, I will still make no mention on who won the other races and the other championships if Dale Earnhardt is still alive. Alright, let's start with 2011. So three things to know. First of all, Daytona is repaved. Just like in real life in 2011, Daytona International Speedway had a repave, and so now the track is as smooth as silk. Two car tandems. Unfortunately, those are in this universe just like the real life one. <laughs> so that'll be something to watch out for. And lastly, right. Dale Earnhardt has a little bit of concern in the direction NASCAR is going. NASCAR is listening, but so far nothing has changed because of what Dale Earnhardt has said. So now with that being said, here's a look at the starting lineup for the 2011 Daytona 500. Yes, talk to me. Starting on pole is Carl Edwards in the 99 Halfback Ford. Alongside him is Kyle Busch in the M&M's Toyota. Starting third is Kurt Busch in yeah. the Home Depot Ford for Robert Yates Racing. Kurt Busch signed a three-year agreement to stay with Robert Yates Racing. To the outside of him is Jeff Borden in the DuPont Chevrolet. Jimmy Johnson will start fifth in the low Chevrolet. To the outside of him is Brad Kozlowski yeah. in the Miller Lite Dodge. Clint Boyer is in- I, I just realized, yeah, what I did was it's like the uh, Harry Potter films, because how they took like the seventh book or whatever and they turned it into two movies. That's kind of what I did with the seven part part of this series. The cat car, he'll start 7th, and Matt Kenseth will be the outside of him. Casey Mears returns to the 25 National Guard Chevrolet, and Kevin Harvick has a new sponsor this year. Budweiser moves over from Dale Earnhardt Jr. and will now be the sponsor for Kevin Harvick for the time being. Greg Biffle starts 11th, and Tony Stewart will start on the outside. Jeff Burton has a brand oh, new yeah. sponsor as well, and the number- 
This was a little homage to the uh, Dale and Hurt Japan car, if you guys were wondering. Number three car, Coca-Cola now becomes the official sponsor for Jeff Burton. Coca-Cola still has their little program with the other drivers, but their main affiliation goes with Jeff Burton. And alongside it is Casey Kane. As mentioned before, Everham Motorsports fell in 2010. Casey Kane needed a ride. So Casey Kane goes over to Hendrick Motorsports, replacing Jerry Nadu. GoDaddy.com is the new sponsor for Casey Kane. David Reagan drives a 36 Golden Corral Chevrolet, and Golden Corral is a new primary Golden sponsor. Corral. It is noted that David Reagan did fail to qualify in 2010, Daytona 500. Ryan Newman starts 16th, okay. 17th is Brian Vickers, and the outside of him is Jeremy Mayfield in the Kellogg's Ford for Robert Yates Racing. Dale Hart Jr. has a new sponsor in 2011, Bass Pro Shops. Move over, moves over to. Just to let you guys know, this paint scheme that I did here, um, it was, it was, um, yeah, Martin Truex's 2016 paint scheme later in the year. How you had the black and the camo on the side. Same exact thing. That ride, and will be the full-time sponsor for the entire year. So yes, I okay, Jordan Burns, will we have time for a Q&A? I hope so. So, okay, let me talk about that for a brief second. So we'll go ahead and we'll finish this Dale Earnhardt series, and then for a little while, I'll then jump into, like, the behind-the-scenes of Enterprise and 3 stuff. We'll do that for a while. And then at the very, very end, we'll do a Q&A, and then they're just talking about where we're going to go and stuff like that. I have him as Denny Hamlin in the 11 car. AJ Allmendinger moves over to the 43 Best Buy Dodge, replacing Reed Sorensen and Paul Menard in the 15 car at DEI. Brian Clausen is a Rookie of the Year contender. Brian Clausen, yeah, I I wish Brian Clausen could have done more in NASCAR, but here he replaces David Shremmy in the 40 Ganassi Dodge, and Jamie McMurray starts the outside of him in the one McDonald's. Chevrolet. You know, if I would have redone this scheme, I probably should have done black around there, and then yellow should have been there. Joey Logano has a new sponsor in 2011. Shell Penzo moves over from Kevin Harvick. And to the outside of him is Juan Pablo Montoya. David Shremmy has a brand new ride in 2011. Goat. He replaces Scott Riggs in the six car. And Valvoline returns to Roush as the full-time sponsor yeah. on the six ride. To the outside of him is Martin Truex Jr. Scott Speed signs a one-year extension with Red Bull Racing, driving the new number four Toyota. And Marcus Ambrose moves over oh, from yeah, the 47 car. ride to the new 44 Stanley Tools Dodge for Petty Motorsports. David Gilliland moves over to the 34 Taco Bell car, replacing Travis Waffle, and Regan Smith starts 32nd. Ava Labani is in the Interstate Batteries car, and Eric Thank Amarola you, is in the 33 car. David Rudiman starts 35th, and Landon Castle, running a part-time schedule for Phoenix Racing, plans to run six races this year. Bill Elliott continues to run part-time in the 21 Wood Brothers machine, and Max Pappas in the Geico 13 Toyota. Robbie Gordon continues to drive the number 7 car for himself, and Terry Labani will drive the 32 U.S. Chrome Ford. Into the rear now, Jury Nader Jury. left Hendrick Moore sports and is in a new ride for front row replacing david gilliland and to the outside of him is scott riggs who lost his ride at roush racing and now he's in the 47 ride replacing marcus sampros and rounding oh, out yeah. the field is joe nemechek in the 87 car for himself we have a clean so one thing i just realized is i don't know how long the stream can go for because i don't know if there's like a limit for like how many hours i can go for like i worried if i hit like eight hours there'll be some limit hopefully not eh, but we'll see start to the 2011 Daytona 500. Take it to lap five. Jeff Gordon gets a good push from Kurt Busch down turn number one. Oh yeah, the two car tandem. But Kurt Busch decided to die for himself and he, with the help of Jeff Gordon's teammate, Jimmy Johnson, will take the lead. Two car tandems are going to be the norm for this year's Daytona 500. On lap 23, Carl Edwards gets the help of Kevin Harvick and he gets pushed into the lead. First mm -hmm. caution on lap 29, Joe Nemechek gets loose in turn four, goes up the outside wall, and he will be the first car out of the race. Thank you. First round of pit stops as Tony Stewart will win the battle off pit road, Stewart. and he will start first for the first restart. Taking it to lap 36 on the restart, we have a four car tandem. Carl Edwards decides to get his nose out, but because all the other cars are together, that's not going to happen. Taking it to lap 58, Jimmy Johnson and Kyle Busch try to get together, but they did not connect okay. correctly, and Jimmy Johnson gets put into the outside wall. No caution comes out, and Jimmy Johnson is not out of the race by any means. Lap 65, Kyle Busch gets a push from Carl Evers, and Kyle Busch gets pushed out into the lead. Lap 67 has our second caution. Scott Speed and David Gilliland get together, and Gilliland spins toward the front straight away. Mm. That brings out our second caution. After pit stops, lap 72 was our restart, and Brad Keselowski gets a push from Carl Edwards, and we have a new leader, number two. The Blue Deuce. Third caution comes out as Greg Biffle, Joey Logano, Robbie Gordon get together, and Joey Logano gets to the outside wall. Okay, good. I'm glad Logano does suffer some it. damage, but he keeps going in the race. 
Lap 88, we got another restart, and Paul Menard takes the lead away from Clint Boyer in a 31 car. He gets assistance from Jeff Gordon. Oh, but yeah, the caution comes out as AJ Allmendinger spins down to the inside. AJ Allmendinger fortunately keeps going, but with a little damage to the back end of his car. Another restart, and Jimmy Johnson goes to the front with the help of Mac Henseth in the 17. I miss this. I'm sorry. Sorry to interrupt this, but I, I miss doing this. Like just like lining up all the camera shots and just having this time to really go in and focus. If there's any opportunity for me to do this, like as a living, without question, I would. But it is time consuming and sometimes a pain in the butt. But in the end, just quality is so, mm, so good. So, I just, yeah, like, again, all these CCM shots and just everything I have lined up, like, oh, I, I miss it. I miss it so much. Problems for the two-car, Brad Kozlowski. He drops a cylinder, driving down turn number one on lap 103, and that would put Kozlowski behind the wall. Another caution comes out as Casey Mears, Terry Labonte, and Jeff Burton spin down into turn number three. Fortunately, none of them get too much damage, although they are going to go to the back of the field. Lap 130, another so restart. Jimmy Johnson leads a Hendrick Trio down turn number one. Another caution, turn number two, as Jeremy Mayfield and Regan Smith get together. Mayfield, Smith, Montoya, Casey Mears, and Kenseth out of nowhere crashes into the rest of them. Both Casey Mears and Matt Kenseth end up going behind the wall because of this crash. <laughs> After the final pit stops on lap 168, Harl Everts gets a good shot into the lead, but Tony Stewart and Clint Boyer are right behind him. And we got more problems as Biffle. Frank Biffle and Casey King get together. But the caution comes out once again, and Greg Biffle, he does keep going, but the caution is out. Another restart, and Casey Kane goes into the lead with the help of both Carl Lewis and Tony Stewart. Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, and Dale Jr. are all right there to pounce. Hmm. Jr. and Kurt Busch get hooked up together, and they have a powerful run as they go underneath Tony Stewart. Oh, we got trouble! Carl <laughs> Lewis, Jimmy Johnson, Dale Earnhardt Jr. all spin down the back straight away. Caution comes out on lap 174. More problems behind as Juan Montoya and David Rudiman wreck down the back straight away. Fortunately, none of I really like that wreck. I don't know why, because again, it was all AI. It was all them. I had nothing to do with it, but yet they all got together and just, it felt so lifelike. These cars are out of the race either, but again, they are forced to the back of the field hey, William. because they have to change tires. We got a restart here on lap 179. Now this restart is very critical for one big reason. Why? Watch the front of the field here as they take the green flag. <laughs> That's right. Clint Boyer and Kyle Busch did not get connected correctly and Boyer spins Kyle Busch into turn one. The worst part, because Kyle Busch was so deep into the grass, the caution did not come Dude. out, so the cars kept driving down the back straightaway. Several of them were below the yellow line, including Clint Boyer, but Boyer lost a few spots down there, so no penalty for that team. Hmm. More problems down turn number three. Bob Labonte head on into the outside wall. Martin Truex gets some damage as well, but nobody spins. And so because That's of that, unreal. we still do not have a caution. That's unreal. Two car tandem up front as Eric Almarola grabs the lead late in the race. All right, I'll answer that question briefly. So Random Stuff Network asks, how did you get the AI to do two and four car tandems? Drafting distance at 1.0, either 1.0 or 1.1. But the issue if you do that, multiple wrecks. So there's a very fine line with doing that, but that's how you do it. Clint Boyer, Kevin Harvick, teammates Al Marola are right there with the 33 car. But another caution comes out. Robbie Gordon Johnson. gets tipped from Jimmy Johnson, but karma is a butthole as Robbie Gordon goes up and- <laughs> Karma is a butthole! Because I didn't want to say the other B word, right? <laughs> One more time. Caution comes out. Robbie Gordon gets tipped from Jimmy Johnson, but karma is a butthole as Robbie Gordon goes up and all four cars hit the outside wall, including so David Reagan and Terry Labonte. Jimmy Johnson would end up going behind the wall. So we end up having a green-white checkered finish. Eric Armorell is in the lead, Tony starts second. We will go live these last two laps and figure right. out the winner of this year's Daytona 500. Amarola first, team teammates, Clint Boyer third, and Kevin Harvick fifth. The green is in the air, two laps to go. Who is going to win it here at Daytona? 
Several cars go and touch below the yellow line, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. Still side by side. Gordon and Almendinger on the outside are going to get together, and now it looks like they're going to crash to Tony Stewart. Meanwhile, the RCR trio are right in front of each other going out turn number two. Yeah. Jeff Burton is not far behind either. Oh, we almost had a problem as Jeff Gordon and Almendinger get um, together. Down the back straightaway, Almarola goes high, Kevin Harvick goes high, the player says, oh, Junior all the way down to the grass. Does Whoa. Junior get up and will he collect a bunch of cars? Boy, lots of contact going on. Dale Jr. does save it. No caution, we stay green. Kurt Busch to the inside of Clint Boyer, down turn number four. And here we go. We are going to have one lap to go to decide the winner of the 2011 Daytona 500. Kurt, Kurt Busch. Busch is your leader. Does anybody have a chance to get by the 28 car? Denny Hamlin, Jeff Burton. Remember, he spun out earlier. He has a chance to come back. How about the 34 car, David Gillen? How about Dave Stremme, two-time champion of Daytona? And he has a shot to win it, but Kurt Busch has a very strong car here at the end. Can he get another win for Robert Gates Racing? Danny Hamlin and Casey Kane are going to get connected. They're third and fourth. But right now, Clint Boyer has no help. Kurt Busch has no help. They are Shimmy and Kevin Harvick are together as they are going to get together. But will they have enough time? Clint Boyer has a run, but it looks like Boyer is going to stay behind Kurt Busch. And Busch in a 28 car Ferrari Gates Racing will win the 2011 Daytona 500. The rest of that team, as here's the top five. Kurt Boyer finishes second. Jeff Burton ends up finishing third. David Stremme with an impressive run finishes fourth. And Kevin Harvick finishes fifth. Mm -hmm. So three RCR cars finish in top five at the 2011 Daytona 500. All right, 2012 time. Dead Reckoning by Ethan Mike Seven. So here are three things to know about the 2012 Daytona 500. First of all, just like in real life, the race has been moved to Monday night. Oh, hold on, rain. hold on, hold so on, hold on. Why this Obama. Obama, Obama sighting again. Races run under the lights at Daytona. The second one, there's been a little bit of a stall out in terms of rookies. There's not many new drivers making an appearance in the Cup Series. Something that NASCAR has been mentioned out to the public. It'll be interesting to see how us the people, as in drivers and teams and whatnot, respond to that. Finally, no more two-car tandem. Because of the finish of the 2011 Daytona 500, they saw how Kurt Busch was able to win without a partner. So they decided to go back to the old roots, no more two-car tandems, and we're gonna have good old 1v1 racing at <laughs> Daytona. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, here is a look at the starting lineup for the 2012 Daytona 500. Starting on pole is Greg Biffle in the 16 car. Alongside him for a second time in a row, Kyle Busch in the 18 oh. M&M's Toyota. Casey Mears has a new ride for 2012. He moves over from the 25 ride to the 13 Jermaine Racing Ford, replacing Max Pappas. The outside of him is Jeff Burton in the 3 Coca-Cola Chevrolet. I like that, that little starts fifth, black and Alongside side of him, car. Matt Kenseth, who has a new sponsor this year in the form of Best Buy. Dale Jr. will start seventh, and David Stremme with a good qualifying race will start 8th. Martin Jurex Jr. will start ninth, and Marcus Ambrose will start 10th in the 44 Dodge. Clint Boyer has a new ride in 2011. He has the new number 15 Fiber Energy Toyota driving for Michael Waltrip Racing. And to the outside is a new driver in a new ride. Stephen Light. Stephen Light, a veteran now of the Nationwide Series, moves up to the Cup Series in the new number 83 BK Racing Toyota. Stephen Light is also a Rookie of the Year candidate. Jeff Gordon has a new sponsor in 2012. Bar. ARP comes along, and Joey Logano continues to drive the 22 Shell Benz Oil Dodge. David Rudeman drives into the new number 90 Three BK Racing Toyota. He moves over from MWR, and Regan Smith continues to drive the 78 car. AJ Allmendinger. He moves over from the 43 car to the number 31 Caterpillar Chevrolet for Richard Childress That's Racing. To the outside, Eric Almarola. So literally, we have a driver swap. Almarola and Allmendinger swap rides this year as Almarola drives into <laughs> number 40. Okay. I like that animation I did in the bottom. Hola. So literally, we have a driver swap. Almarola and Almendinger swap rides. I like that. It's this year. As Amarola drives into number 43, Smithfield Foods Dodge. Kevin Harvick in the 30 car. And alongside him, Terry Labonte is now the Terry. driver of the 21 Motocraft Ford. Bill Elliott has officially retired. And now Terry Labonte will drive the 21 car part-time. Jamie McMurray drives the one car. McMurray. And Ryan Clausen drives the 40 car. GM and Kroger and Betty Crocker all serve as... For the majority, I like this scheme. The only thing that I would definitely fix is this blue swoop. Not too sure why I have that there, but... Maybe more brighter blue like that, but just a minor thing. Primary sponsors now for the 40 car for Chip Ganassi Racing. Bobby Labonte in the 20 right. Batteries Toyota starts 23rd, and Brad Keselowski will start 24th. Tony Stewart will start 25th, and alongside him, Jeremy Mayfield in the 88 car. No, I didn't spell Jeremy Mayfield's name right. Right. Casey Kane will drive the 5 GoDaddy.com Chevrolet. Farmers Insurance comes on as an associate sponsor as well, and the 20... I saw that. What did I say about Danica? Hold up. She stays in IndyCar. 
I guess. All right. And the 28th spot is Jerry Nadu. I love this. I love, like, combining universes because, again, in the Jerry Nadu what if, I had the same exact thing. And the 54 car for Front Row Motorsports. They hope that this car would be going full time, but we'll just see how he performs this year. David Gill and Lewis Arsenal. <laughs> They hope that this car would be going full time, but we'll just see how he performs this year. <laughs> Still no relation whatsoever. Are you kidding me? Ah, that's silly. David Gill moves over to the 38 car this year in 2012. And alongside him, Ryan Newman. David Reagan comes back to the 36 car with Ollie's as his sponsor. And Kurt Busch in the new 28 Home Depot Ford. Robbie Gordon in the 7 car. Robbie Gordon, this is his final year in NASCAR. After this, he's going to work on his trophy truck series. Danny yep. Allen starts farther back in the 34. James Busher, another rookie of the year. This was interesting. Yeah, this one I thought about for a little bit. And the 4 mm, font looks a little meh. But, uh... I'm, I'm good with this. Candidate. He replaces Paul Menard as the third DEI car. Xside Batteries comes along to sponsor the new number four Chevrolet at DEI. And how about Brian Vickers in a new 55 Aaron's Toyota? Brian Vickers moves over to Michael Waltrip Racing from the now debunked Red Bull Racing. Paul Menard moves over to Richard Childress Racing as a fourth team in the new 27 Menard Chevrolet. And Jimmy Johnson will start deep in the Jamar. field. Scott Riggs returns in the 47 car, will start 39. And one last rookie, Landon Castle. Landon Castle. Car. So, okay. I want to talk about this for a second. So, Landon Castle, mm. because you remember in 2007, Landon Castle drove that 24 National Guard car for a few races? I wanted Landon Castle to develop more at uh, Hendrick. And so, so like if I would have continued one more spark, I definitely would have had Landon Castle continue moving on in um, Hendrick. So, yeah, I just wanted to mention that, and I wish Landon Castle could have had more success, and I feel like he could have done some good over at Hendrick Motorsports. Landon replaces Casey Mears, and he is also a Rookie of the Year candidate. Rounding out the field, we got Juan Montoya in the 42 car, Joe Nemechek in the 87 car, and finally, Reed Sorensen in the 34 car. Reed returns to the Cup Series from Nationwide, Glory. replacing David Gilliland. Here is the first lap of the 2012 Daytona 500. Enjoy this first lap. Oh, really? And just as a little side note, you'll see on the grass, they have all the promo stuff for the Coke Zero 400. <laughs> I was not able to find a night version of the Daytona 500. So if you could, you know, try to imagine that's the Daytona 500, I would uh, greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much. Nice. Oh, I like that shading. Just like that, Greg Biffle leads lap one in the 2012 in total 500. Take it to lap nine. Terry Labonte gets into the outside wall, music, right? slowing up a few yeah. cars, but no caution comes out of it. Lap 13, Kurt Busch, the defending Daytona 500 champion, is deep in the pack, hopefully to avoid the big one. The big one. On lap 21, the Pied Piper, or in Rick Allen's case, the Peter hey, Brett. Piper of NASCAR. Oh, oh. Dale okay, one thing. Mmm. How's it going, everyone? It's your boy Griff Dog. See, Brett, I promised that I was gonna, I was gonna do it. It's your boy. There you go. There you go. Car Junior moves into the lead with a dominant car in this year's Daytona 500. Lap 29. Casey Kane and Matt Kenseth have a sharp battle for the lead. First caution comes out. Harvey gets the outside wall, and pole sitter Greg Biffle gets together with rookie James Busher. James And that'll be the first caution out on lap 32. Not much damage for either of them, so both of them will continue on. First round of pit stops on lap 35, and Brad Keselowski will win the race off pit road, and he will lead him to the restart. On the restart, 1-2 is 2-1. Keselowski <laughs> is first, and Jamie McMurray is second. Uh a couple more notable drivers in the back of the field. Along with Kurt Busch, Jimmy Johnson, and Jeff Gordon have found their way to the back of the field. Well, are they playing the safe game as well? Well, a little bit. Clint Boyer gets into the outside wall. Boyer. Now, at first, it's not that big of a deal. But a couple of laps later, Clint Boyer does cut down a tire and is forced to go to pit road. So this is another one of those cool things where, like, Boyer, um, sorry, words. This is really cool because, um, Boyer, like, 
But he went down on his own. This is all AI. Like, I didn't, like, set this up or anything like that. So I will give bonus points for uh, Boyer. However, and for Interfusses Ray as well. Dominic Carranza, yes. James and Chris Buescher are brothers. On lap 58, a rookie by the name of Landon Castle takes the lead for the first time ever at Daytona. Not for long, though, as Tony Stewart, the 2009 Daytona 500 champion. One second. Billy, do not eat the box. Okay. Hold on one second. Sorry to completely interrupt this and derail this for one second, but if I can do this for one second. Let's see here. There's my fat cat, Billy. So my I have two cats. One's named Billy, the other's named Sissy, and they are twins because they have the black dots on their heads, and they're both absolutely beautiful. So just wanted to share that with you all. Hope you enjoyed that. And <laughs> Now let's get back to... And goes underneath Landon Castle. On lap 65, Richard Childress is at it again. Kevin Harvick and AJ Allmendinger now are 1 2 going down the back straightaway. Matt Kenza, Paul Montoya, and several of the other drivers think to break up their Richard Childress combo. Oh, yeah, Biffle the next wreck. caution that comes out is a severe one. Oh, wreck. I love this Great wreck. Biffle in the back of the field gets loose off turn number two down the back straightaway. Oh, I love the airtime. I love, I love, I loved all of that. And he has a severe impact into the inside wall. You see all the air that he gets, and you even see the tire actually gets punctured through the fender of the right front of the car. It stops to occur, and so we do have a little bit of a mishap between Jeff Burton and Matt Kenza. And so because of that, Hendrick teammates Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Gordon end up restarting first and second. Yes. And so on the restart, Hendrick teammates are starting first and second, and then Roush teammates Kenza and Edwards are third and fourth. Taking the lap 80, Scott Riggs falls off. No, pace, not Riggs. And he could possibly lose a lap. It is noted that Kroger is a sponsor in the car. For this race specifically, they sponsored both him and Brian Fawcett. Classic. Taking the lap 112, green flag pit stops take place, and most of it is clean. So after the pit stops, Jeff Gordon remains the leader with teammate Landon Castle now in second. A couple of more cars are with him, including David Shremmy, two time Daytona 500 champion, Casey Mears, and Marcus Ambrose. That is your top five for the moment. Mm -hmm. However, caution comes out again. Hold on. The Bushers are cousins, not brothers. Are you sure? Oh, I guess so. Okay, my Four bad. debris. Another restart takes place as Jeff Gordon gets a good jump on the field. Low far farther ahead on lap 142, Robbie Gordon hits the outside wall in turn four. That slows up a few drivers, including Matt Kenseth. Everyone avoids him, and we do not have a caution. As we have a big battle for the lead between Casey Kane, Amarola, and Dale Hart Jr., but off the trial for Dale Earnhardt Jr. gets into the outside wall. That's why Ryan Newman, you see there, is beneath the double yellow line, was to avoid a possible accident. Fortunately, not one happened in this big pack. Shut up. Down the back boy. straightaway on lap 161. Reed Sorensen started uh, last, is all the way up in the lead. But Ryan like Newman it. thinks otherwise, as he and a couple other upsets, Terry Labonte and Joe Nemechek, are in the picture <laughs> as well. Lap 167, we see the final pit stops take place. Um... What I live in, Colorado. I love Colorado. I used to live there as a child, and I would definitely want to go there um, sometime soon. For the rest of the field. A few laps later, though, more debris is found on debris. the track, and the caution comes out once more. We start on lap 178 as Ryan Newman leads him down to turn number one with Terry Lavani and Joe Nemechek, second and third, respectively. Nemechek. Get into the end now. Lap 186, huge battle up front as now David Rudeman is a new upset, and he could potentially steal the win away. The 38 car is down to the inside as we go on board with him. He goes into the lead with help from Joey Logano in the 42 car behind. as we go down into turn number one. And we have trouble. Yeah. The big crash in turn number one. David Stremme is involved, as we got lots of others. Juan Montoya, Kevin Harvick is involved, Robbie Gordon is into it. But more happened here at the end here. Terry Labonte gets into it, and so he goes his chance for winning the Daytona 500. And Clint Boyer almost misses it, but gets to the outside wall, ending his chances to win the Daytona 500 for Michael Waltrip. <sighs> Another restart here, and at the time of caution, it is Denny Hamlin who ended up being out front with just eight laps to go. Did it down, around. 
into the late stages now. Denny Hamlin found his way Brian to the back of the field no. and he gets into Brian Lawson. Lawson gets turned around and that does not bring out the caution and it his chance to win the Daytona 500. Not Clawson, no. Here are the last two laps live as we've got Tony Stewart in the lead. Could he get a second Daytona 500 victory? Jamie McMurray is in second, Joe Dimchek in third. We have a huge upset potential possibility for that team. Brad Kozlowski in fourth, but right now it's all Tony Stewart. As us goes low, there goes McMurray low. Oh boy, Tony Stewart, I believe he thought Joe Nemechek was going to run. So Stewart was going to catch up to Nemechek, but now Stewart is going to be side by side with Jamie McMurray through turn number three and turn number four. Here comes Brad Kozlowski right on the bumper of McMurray. Kozlowski has a nose underneath, but I don't think he can get around. But Kozlowski does have one more lap to get Roger Penske his <coughs> first Daytona 500 victory. One car to the inside, Martin Truex. I think Joe Nemechek hit the wall. I think that's what happened. Well, anyway, Jamie McMurray is still up front. Kozlowski stays behind him. Tony Stewart trying to do everything he can to get back to the front. But throughout the entire race, that highlight has not been a good friend. I think cars are trying to partner up in two car tandems. But right now, McMurray and Kozlowski are not set up at all. How about David Reagan in the 36 and Alvarola in the 43? There you have a, a good run through turn three. Here comes Tony Stewart in the 14. Does he have any chance to get around Kozlowski or McMurray? Here they come down the front straight away, and I don't believe so. 1-2 is 1-2. McMurray will yeah. win his first Daytona 500. McMurray. Oh, Jamie, baby. The rest of that DEI team <laughs> as Jamie McMurray wins. Brad Kozlowski finishes second. Tony Stewart third. David Reagan finishes David fourth. Reagan. And Eric Almarola will finish fifth. You guys remember when Dave Blenny almost won the 2012 Daytona 500? That would have been amazing. <sighs> All right, 2013. Cut it by Silent Partner. This is the last year I'm going to show for part one of What If Dale Earnhardt Still Alive Part 7. Part two will show 2014 through today, and that will come out by the end of this year. So, three things to know about 2013. First of all, the Gen 6 car. That's right, even in this universe, the Gen 6 car is a thing. NASCAR decided, hey, the car tomorrow is big and bulky, let's bring it down a notch, but with all the downforce. So that's what we have today. The BRB second change, second. or the second thing to know, Dodge does stay in NASCAR. Dodge has enough support from enough teams to keep their manufacturer rolling for now. And finally, there is a possibility that the chase could change come next year. NASCAR wants to make it more exciting and wants to add more drama somehow it was getting a little to too the action. Cold that the will room. be for later on in the future though. But for right now, we have the 2013 Daytona 500, and here is a starring lineup for this year's field. All right. Starting on pole is Jimmy Johnson Jimmy. in the 48 low Chevrolet, and Clint Boyer will start on the outside of him. Starting third is AJ Allmendinger in the 31 car, and Matt Kenseth. Matt Kenseth moves over from yep. the Roush Racing 17 car to the number 20, now Dollar General, Toyota for Joe Gibbs Racing. Starting fifth is Kurt Busch. Something little for the uh, Robert Yates team this year. Texaco is coming back, and they are, as of right now, an associate sponsor for the team. Could there be more later on down the road? We will find out. Alongside Kurt Busch is Jeremy Mayfield in the 88 Kellogg's Ford. Dale Hart Jr. returns to the 8 Bass Pro Shop Chevrolet, and yep. Carl Edwards in the Fast and All Ford. Joey Logano in the number 22 Dodge yeah. Charger now. Yep. One of the best moves I made with this was Dodge staying with uh, Penske. Now, the paint scheme itself itself is a little meh. Like I wish this would have been filled up with red, but let's see. That's amazing. But anyway, I just wanted to wrap up and say like I wish I could have painted more with that. And alongside him is Kevin Harvick in a new 30 Budweiser Chevrolet. Jeff Gordon returns to the 24 AARP Chevrolet and Martin Truex in 56. Kyle Busch starts 13th and Casey Kane in the GoDaddy Chevrolet starts 14th. Greg Biffle and alongside him Jamie McMurray in the one car. Danny Hamlin and Jeff Burton in the three car. Ryan Newman has a new sponsor with Quicken Loans. Coming on to replace the U.S. Army and Brad Keselowski in the two car. Paul Menard in the 27 Menard Chevrolet and Juan Montoya in the 42 Dodge. As mentioned earlier in this year, Dodge is staying with NASCAR and Dodge is staying with the NASCAR. As I like well. the turn David Gilden in the 38 car will start 23rd, and his teammate David Reagan moves over from Tommy Baldwin Racing into the 34, right now unsponsored Ford. Hopefully, they'll find a sponsor for him soon. Casey Mears will start 25th in the 13 car, and Eric Amarola will start alongside him in 26. David Shremi and Marcus Ambrose starting 28th. Landon Castle in the National Guard Chevrolet. I like this car. I don't know, just the way how like the colors match up and then the number font. I don't know, I really like this car.
Okay. And James Busher returns for another year at DEI. A rookie of the year contender, Rick Stenhouse. Stenhouse Jr. replaces Matt Kenzo for the 17th best by Ford. And alongside him, another rookie from Roush Racing. This is Trevor Bain Trevor. in the number okay. 9 Zest Ford. Trevor Bain did a few years in a nationwide series. Now with a nationwide championship underneath his belt, he is ready to take on the big leagues in the Cup Series. Brian Clausen returns to the 40 car. And Stephen Light moves over from the 83 car to the 33 Joe Falk Racing Chevrolet. Dave Blaney returns to NASCAR <laughs> and the new number 7 Sandy Chevrolet. And alongside him, Tony Stewart with a new sponsor, Mobile One. Travis Quaffle moves over to BK Racing and the number 93 Burger King Toyota. And Regan Smith. Smith signs an extension to stay with Furniture Row Racing. As we look at the rest of the field, Brian Vicker starts 39th. Alongside him, Bobby Labonte, who was kicked out of his 20 ride. And so the 47 car was now without a driver. But Scott Riggs moves back to the Nationwide Series. And Bobby Labonte is back in the Kingsford Toyota. Going to the rear of the field now, Terry Labonte, 41st. Reed Sorensen in the number 36 Chevrolet, replacing David Reagan. And finally, David David Rudin in the 83 car. Here is the opening lap to the 2013 Daytona 500. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Piper, Dale Earnhardt Jr. takes the lead in front of the big field. Joey Logano is trying to get around Dale Earnhardt Jr., but Jr. has a strong car today. On lap 13, Brian Vickers ends up losing the pack, and he ends up falling two seconds a lap from the leaders. On lap 21, we have a big battle for the lead as Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, and how about David Gilliland to the inside of both of them to take uh -huh. the lead away. Impressive move there, and we stay green. On lap 31, as we mentioned before, Brian Vickers finally falls a lap down to the field. A short while later, on lap 42, green flag pit stops take place as the entire field comes down. On lap 51, the first caution comes out as apparently a fan threw a water cooler <laughs> onto the track. Security did find the fan and they did kick him out immediately, but his damage was already done and the first caution comes out. On the restart, it is Kyle Busch, oh, Kevin funny. Harvick, David Gilliland, and Jeremy Mayfield in fourth. I can't believe that, that happened. David Gilliland did continue to lead, but between 62 and 67, we had a different leader every single lap. Leaders including Regan Smith, Martin Truex, Joey Logano, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. all end up being out front. But once Dale Earnhardt Jr. got to the front, he stayed out front because his car was that powerful today. Bringing with him is rookie Trevor Bain in the number 9 car. On lap 68, Reed Sorensen ends up falling a lap down to the field. That does break up the big pack into smaller packs. On lap Sorry to interrupt. There's something that's on my mind, and I keep seeing the chat. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead, and we'll finish this Dale Earnhardt series. And then, like, the last parts, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do One More Spark. I'm sorry. Like, we'll we'll talk about parts of One More Spark because I want to show you guys, like, the behind-the-scenes stuff. Like, the Photoshop stuff and stuff like that. And so, for the last, I'm going to give it last two hours or so. That's exactly what we'll do. And in that time, you guys are more than welcome to ask questions. And I know that Jordan has some stuff that he wants to say. And that's what I want to do. Because, again, like, I, I don't want to do a 24-hour stream. Like, I do need to get to bed myself. I definitely want to keep going for a while, for sure. Like, I could probably shoot for, like, 10 hours or so. But I also do want to, like, get to you guys. It's kind of the biggest reason why I'm doing this stream in the first place. So, so, so and again, like, I wasn't planning on doing the entire What If Dylan Hurst Still Alive series, but you guys are definitely into it. So we'll go ahead and finish it. And then after that, we'll go ahead and do the behind-the-scenes stuff. So I'm sorry, no one more spark, but... There's a lot of behind the scenes stuff I really want to show you guys. Lap 74, here is the main lead pack, consisting of 12 cars. A while later, green flag pit stops happen again with Dale Hart Jr. leading him down. On lap 105, the top three was able to separate themselves from the rest of the field. 
but that was short-lived as on, on lap 118, David Rudeman, he thought he could clear Dave Laney, but he didn't, and he goes for a big slide down the grass, up the track, into the outside wall, spins back down, and just stops in front of the guardrail. <laughs> Good shot. Lap 121, pit stops again. What did I say? Yes, I gave myself a compliment. <laughs> Lap 121, pit stops again as Jimmy Johnson wins the battle off at Rose. So on the restart, it's Jimmy Johnson, Dale Jr., Tony Stewart, Landon Castle, and Jeff Burton, your top five. On lap 134, Regan Smith, with a bunch of power behind him, takes the lead away from the pack. A while later, James Busher, with the help of Joey Logano, takes the lead away. You know what? Doritos Mountain Dew, I like that idea. We can at least do the prologue. It's just, I don't want to go through the entire 2001 series. So yeah, we can definitely do the prologue for sure. And this is important because James Busher does lead the field to the last set of green flag pit stops. On lap 169, the big pack again drops to the smaller pack as James Busher does continue to lead the field. Landon Castle second, Jeremy Mayfield third. On lap 171, Jeff Burton ends up cutting a tire down, but the caution does not come out, so Burton does have to go down pit road. On 174, the caution comes out, and Dale Earnhardt Jr., with a powerful car, he ends up losing a tire. And But because of his cut tire, the debris that came off that tire, that did bring out the caution. Jeff Burton, fortunate enough, was the lucky dog of this caution. On lap 177, we got the final pit stops, and Jimmy Johnson wins the battle off pit road. On the restart, it's Jimmy Johnson, Dave Blaney, Terry Levani, Jeremy Mayfield, and Regan Smith, your top five. Mm. On lap 184, Landon Castle. One little thing. Hey, uh, Jordan, and I'm going to say to you specifically, I know there's stuff that you want to say. If you do need to, like, get to bed or whatever, just let me know in the chat, and then we can go ahead and give, like, a couple minutes to, for you to say what you um, need to say. Because, again, like, I'm not going to hold you up, and especially the rest of you guys, so I just want to mention that right now. Full storm to the front, and look at this monster pack. They mean business, as we have a major battle here later on. On lap 189, as we have a big battle for the lead, we have a crash farther in the back involving Sorensen, Ambrose, and Brad Keselowski, Boom. taking all three of them out of contention. On the restart, it is Kurt Busch, who was able to make it to the front of the pack, yeah, and Paul Menard, Menard third, right behind him. Okay. So with six coming to five laps to go, oh, we have yeah. a big pack and anybody can win it. Kurt Busch, who has already won the Daytona 500, could he win another one? Paul Menard looks to the inside and anything could happen. And we have a huge crash, severe incident coming out turn number one. One car flew into the air, into the cash fence, and that took out several cars. And the, the cash fence was all. damaged. Trevor Bain, heavy damage to his car. As a severe, severe crash, Dave Blaney was in it, Kevin Harvick, Tony Stewart, Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Gordon, Greg Biffle, Kyle Busch, so many drivers involved. Here are a couple of replays of this massive incident. So Truex's car just yanked left. Something must have happened inside, but mm. then, yeah. One of the things I wish is that I had turned on the roof flaps for Truex. The roof flaps just never took time to deploy. Look how high up the car is. Dang. And Truex just high into the cash fence. The cash fence did its job, but my word, lots of cars are involved. Tony Stewart is in it, as we mentioned already. Now, technically, the 56 never flipped. Another angle, Dale Jr., he did get oh, yeah. some damage, but he is still obviously on the track. Jeff Gordon, however, on the other hand, is destroyed. Alabani on the inside, Trevor Bain gets hit as well. So they are able to fix their cash fence as we go on board with Jeff Gordon in a severe impact. So several cars involved, at least 13 went behind the wall. And so just so you know, it did take about an hour or so to fix the cash fence. Longer and NASCAR than that. was thinking about just ending the race right there because there's only five, four laps to go. And they know it'll be a green by checkered when they restart. But NASCAR said, no, yeah, the fans, right. they paid for the entire thing. So we're going to give them the whole show. NASCAR decided, hey, let's do it. So they ended up temporarily repairing the cash fence. And so we end up having a green by checkered. Martin Truex is okay, but he was taken to a local Ooh. medical center, Halifax Hospital for further evaluations. All right, so now we're gonna take you to the Green White Checkered Live. So Kurt Busch is your leader. Paul Menard is second. We have, I believe about 26 cars on track. Who will take it all? Third place, Terry Labonte. Fourth place, Glenn Boyer. Fifth place, Brian Vickers, who was able to get back on the lead lap. Green flag, two laps to go. All right. Kurt Busch moves high. Remember, Busch knows how to win here at Daytona. 
Looking inside, that is Terry Levine at 21. Could he play upset, and can he give Wood Brothers the first Daytona 500 win in a long time? But Boyer follows suit in the third. Three wide as midfield down the middle. There goes Terry Bonnie all by himself to the low side. Anybody gonna go help? Matt Kenseth underneath Casey Kane. Can they do anything about it? Terry Labonte to the inside of Kurt Busch. Here we go. We gotta run to the inside. Matt Kenseth giving Casey Mears all the way around. Casey Mears giving Matt Kenseth a big shove as we are gonna have one lap to go. Wide flag and two and three wide Not for all the drivers. Oh, sorry. Three wide. Not presented by Credit One Bank. Clint Boyer and Kurt Busch. Casey Kane with Terry Labonte and Casey Mears with Matt Kenseth. Just shows that 27 cars, that's a lot of cars, but it's such a little space. Down turn number two. Matt Kenseth has the lead. Matt Kenseth with Casey Mears goes up to the high side to block. It is all there. Ricky Stenhouse, there he is in third. Denny Hamlin is in fourth. Denny Hamlin goes underneath Ricky Stenhouse. Kenseth and Mears end up blocking Hamlin. Can't Matt Kenseth win the Daytona 500 for Joe Gibbs? Coming off of turn number four, Stenhouse has a run. Kenseth goes up the block. That leaves a door open for Casey Mears. Does Mears have a run? Here they come to the line. Too close to call. It is way too close to call. And that's literally what NASCAR is saying. <laughs> now, the top five does say that. It does say Matt Kenseth was out front. But if you look at the timesheet, Matt Kenseth won by 0 0.000. Zero, zero, zero. Zero. That is right. Here it is on the screen, the official uh, Intertoss of Three <laughs> results sheet. All right, so here it is in slow-mo. Matt Kenseth and Casey Mears dead This was unbelievable. at the line. I think Kenseth went up to the high side because he thought Stenhouse got a run. Not the case. So right now, they are giving credit to Kenseth the winner because, as we see in the next shot, it shows that Kenseth's nose hit the yellow just before Casey Mears. However, if we look at the next shot, when they leave the checkered finish, Casey Mears' nose was just barely out in front. And so there you see how absolutely close this finish is. Here's the third shot, and we slow this all the way down, so we let you guys take a look at it. So Matt Kenseth and Casey Mears absolutely dead even at the line. No joke. And so Matt Kenseth, there you see, it looks like as they touch the yellow, Kenseth's nose covers it more. But as we move forward a little bit, Casey Mears' nose looks like it's the one that leaves the finish line. That is why it is dead even. So either way, those two are out front. They do give the winner to Matt Kenseth, but what do you guys think? Should Kenseth be the winner? Should Casey Mears be the winner? Or should we have our first ever co-champions of the Daytona 500? <laughs> that is all. We're going to wrap it up here for the first part of What If Dale Hart is Still Alive Part 7. The second part will take care of 2014 through 2016. Thank you guys for all the support. Love you guys so much. And so the last video of 2016 will be What If Dale Hart is Still Alive Part 7, the second part. Thanks again, guys. Thank you so much for the support. And I will see you next time. All right, so we'll do this, but give me like, all right, so we're going to do this, but give me like five minutes here and I am going to use the bathroom. So I'm going to use the bathroom and then once I get back, we're going to go all the way to the end. I lose some stuff here. Ah, oh, shoot. Ah, uh, crap. Did I mess up here? Shoot. Mm, all right. 
Oh, it shows me again. Okay. Um, am I? Give me one second here. It says I'm live here. Okay. So it says I'm there. Shoot. It says it's back. All right. Give me one second here. You say stream's fine. Unfortunately, I'm not able to connect to the chat, which stinks. See, so, yeah, because on here I'm able to see you guys. Ah, I can't do that, Alex. I was planning on doing this all in one swing. Ah, uh, shoot. Uh, let's see. Can I refresh the chat? Pop out chat. Hmm. Okay. How's everyone in the chat today? Let's see. Um, hmm. It says I'm unable to connect to the chat, which is a worry. So, well, when I pop it out, it's fine. So, all right. All right. Well, you know what? I mean, if, if things are fine, we'll uh, we'll keep going here for sure. It's just, I don't know. It, that, that's really weird. So, okay. Well, if you guys are still here and we are still, it's good to go. Um, all right. I guess we'll uh, keep going then. So here, let me just. I'm gonna have to make a couple little modifications here. So, Griff, you look very confused. No, it's just OBS is being a complete butt, so I'll just let it go here. All right, let's uh, let's just keep going here. Let's see here. This is Griff Dog here, and ladies and gentlemen, we have finally made it. Part eight or part seven point two of what if Dale Earnhardt is still alive is finally here. It has been a trip, but it's been a good one. And thank you guys so much for coming with. If you guys don't know the drill. Here's the deal. I will discuss right. and theorize every driver, number, and sponsor change that has happened from 2014 to 2016. Also, I will show the highlights from each Daytona 500 All from right. those respected years. I'll just do that and before time. we get started, I do have a quick announcement. In mid-December, I will make one more video. And in this video, I will summarize the entire Dale Earnhardt series. Mm -hmm. And I will respond to all of your questions and concerns from the previous comments. And not just video, this video, but in all previous videos beforehand. All right, well, the time is finally here, so let's get started with 2014. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right, here we go. So, three things to know from 2014. First of all, just like 2012, the race is postponed to nighttime due to rain. Only this time, it's still raced on Sunday instead of being postponed to Monday. There is another Earnhardt making his debut in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, and his name is Jeffrey Earnhardt. We will talk more about him in the starting lineup. And then finally, NASCAR made a big announcement, and it's called the Big Five. There are five new rules that oh, NASCAR yeah. is debuting, this and is it dumb. is as so. First of all, more downforce, so they're going to expand the splitter out, and they're going to make the spoiler much higher. So they'll be like Indy cars, only they'll still break into corners and intermediate tracks and road courses and short tracks. Another rule is they're going to have an automatic caution with 20 to go. With this caution, no blown tire. Okay, hold on. So question, and I think Dale Jr. talked about this. Wasn't there like um, a late model race at Martinsville where they do that, where they have like a competition caution with like 20 laps to go? I'm pretty sure that happened. Tires or mysterious debris cautions will come in and NASCAR throws this in to make more drama for the finish of every NASCAR race. There is a new chase format, and I'm not going to explain this one too much because it's the current one that we have right now. The, the rounds, format. and if you win, you're in. It's literally the same thing. Yeah, There's only death. one attempt at a green-white checkered finish, and that is for safety concerns. Finally, NASCAR has implemented a push-to-pass system, just like what they have in the IndyCar series. <laughs> and so, with the exception of Super Speedways, because the cars race so close anyway, Super Speedways are out of the mix here. However, on all other tracks, each car will have 20 push to pass attempts and they'll get a quick burst of speed so that they can possibly pass the car in front of them. So those are new rules, we'll see how that affects NASCAR. And now here is the starting lineup for the delayed 2014 Daytona 500. Starting on the pole is a shocker, K. 
Kevin Harvick moves over from Richard Childress Racing to Stuart Haas Racing. They now expand from a two-car to a three-car organization. To the outside is Joey Logano in the 22. Ryan Newman moves over from Stuart Haas and goes over to RCR. So a little bit of a switch off. Newman moves over to the ride that AJ Allmendinger was in in the 31 Caterpillar Chevrolet. To the outside of him is Jimmy Johnson in the 48 Lowe Chevrolet. Kyle Busch will start <laughs> fifth and Brad Kieslowski will start sixth in the Miller Lite Dodge. Jeff Gordon will start seventh and Matt Kenseth will start eighth. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the 8 Bass Pro Shop Chevrolet, and Brian Clawson in the 40 car for Chip Ganassi. Target will come over and sponsor ah, that I love car. car. Denny Hamlin will start 11th, and here's the man of interest. Oh, Jeffrey Earnhardt, okay. son of Kerry Earnhardt, has come over to Richard Childress Racing in a new number 81 Cessna Bell Helicopter Chevrolet. Carl Edwards will start 13th, and a rookie in 14th. Kyle Larson replaces... So, just gonna, whenever moving forward, we're gonna call him He Who Must Not Be Named is Juan Pablo Montoya, who goes back to the IndyCar Series, and he is also a Rookie of the Year <laughs> contender. Trevor Bain will start 15th, and Brian Vickers is in 16th. Jeff Burton has announced this year that this will be his final year in the Spring Cup Series before he calls retirement as he drives the new black Coca-Cola 3 Chevrolet, and Jeremy Mayfield returns to number 88 ride for Robert Yates Racing. Marcus Ambrose in the Stanley Tools 44 mm, Dodge, like and his teammate Eric Amarola <clears throat> will start 20th. Martin Truex Jr. jumps over from Michael Walter Racing to Furniture Row Racing 78 Chevrolet, and David Stremme returns Stremme, to the 6 Babylon Ford, Jamie McMurray in the 1 McDonald's Chevrolet, and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in the 17. Fifth Third Bank will sponsor that car, just for Daytona, and a few other races. Casey? Let me check, Dominic. I believe this is at 1.25. Yeah, I just want to move things a little bit faster. Mears will start 25th, and another rookie, Austin Dillon, in the 33 American Ethanol Cheerio Chevrolet. Casey Kane in the 5 <laughs> car, as Go Daddy is going to continue to sponsor that car for a couple more seasons. And Greg Biffle in the 16. Kurt Busch starts 29th, and alongside him, Clint Boyer in the 15. AJ Allmendinger moves over from RCR to JDD Daugherty Racing, and alongside him, Tony Stewart in the Mobile One Chevrolet. Landon Castle has a new sponsor, Mountain Dew, will come aboard. That's interesting. So yeah, like I pulled the Junior 2013 where I took the logo and I uh, expanded it on there. I don't mind it, but what I should do is I should have like faded out the side like a little bit more. Or the 25 Chevrolet, <clears throat> and David Gilliland takes over to 38 Ford. David Reagan returns to the 34 Ford, and Reed Sorensen in the 36 Golden Corral Chevrolet. Getting to the rear now, Michael Lynette in the Flying J pilot car for Tommy Baldwin Racing. He will also be a rookie of the year contender. And James Busher moves over to BK Racing. James. Ryan Truex, Martin Truex Jr.'s Hi, brother, is going to be in the former 39 team. He will also be a rookie of the year contender. And Jeff Green, Jeff Green, former Bush Series champion, has a new life here at BK Racing. It is a one year deal just to get some veteran experience for that team. Bobby Lebon Bonnie in the Bye. 13 replacing Martin Truex Jr. and Michael Waltrip Racing, and Jury Nadu in a part time deal for BK Racing. <clears throat> right now, the rear is Dave Blaney as Tommy Baldwin attempts a third full time team for Dave Blaney. As usual, here is a start and first lap to the 2014 Daytona 500. <laughs> said it before and I'm glad I have Dodge in this uh, series in this universe Jump to lap number six. We have tight racing from first all the way to 43rd. This high downforce package is really keeping all the cars close together. Hey, I predicted the 2020 to 2500. <laughs> On lap 15, Casey Mears gets in the back of Almirola wrong and almost spins him a turn two, causing an, almost causing a big crash. Because of this, Marcus Ambrose gets a <clears throat> strong run to the outside and will pass his teammate for the lead for the moment. Same story, new lap. Lap 18, Kurt Busch gets into Casey Kane wrong. Casey Kane goes into the grass, but he saves it, and they almost get it into a big crash. But because of this, look how absolutely jumbled up the field is. All 43 cars are together in one pack, and anything can happen here. You see it, and oh, we are trouble! Turn number <laughs> three, Casey Mears, Matt Kenseth, Jeff Byrne, and a load of other cars are involved. 
Anybody this left? is the big one Mayfield. here at Daytona. One car upside down. That is Jeremy Mayfield, former Daytona 500 winner. Upside down. Ricky Stanos is involved. Lots of cars out. Joey Logano, heavy damage. Ryan Newman, heavy damage. And you just hate to see this early in the going. Uh -huh. and uh -huh. I said the thing. You hate to see it. Uh, thanks, Ed Soundhead. Any race. Marcus Ambrose is lots of damage to his car. Trevor Bain, Michael Annette. Harvick, Edwards, Hartman Harvick, the pole sitter, heavy damage. He's taken out. So as we see some of the replays here, Casey Mears, he gets a tap from, I believe, McMurray, and that takes him to the outside wall. Taking out Ryan Newman, Tony Stewart, and Jeff Burton in that nice black paint scheme. Unfortunately, he will not win another Daytona 500. On board with Jeremy Mayfield as he goes upside down. Unfortunately, it just all clogs up, and I believe it was Kyle Larson who picked up Jeremy Mayfield and flipped him over. Kyle Larson ends up riding on top of Mayfield's car when he was upside down. One more slow motion look as Denny Hamlin was up behind Jeremy McMurray, but Hamlin goes down, and just like the previous moments where they bump him incorrectly, except this time, McMurray puts Kane into another car. Johnson clips mm. Logano, Logano spins in the middle of the pack. Who's that also flipped? Oh, and Junior. that ends up sending nice. at least 15 cars behind the wall. Del Jr. got some air as well, but he did not flip over. <sighs> so a massive, massive crash here, taking out lots of cars, and that is definitely going to change the complexity of red this race. Flag. They did red flag the race for 20 <clears throat> minutes to clean up all the debris, <laughs> but it was pretty quick as they go back right into the action. On lap 26, Denny Hamlin was your leader, McMurray second, Kurt Busch third, Martin Truex fourth, and Landon Castle runs fifth. At 30, Kirk Bush jumps in the lead with Brad Keselowski and Kyle Bush following suit on hey, the low Jeremy. side. On lap 39, the pace slows down, but Jeff Gordon picks it up as he goes into the lead. Green by pit stops begin on lap 42, <laughs> and Jeff Gordon nice. remains the leader. Both all sets of pit stops, that spreads 94. the field out. And so the top four spread apart in their own little group. More green flag pit stops, lap 85, as Jeff Gordon continues the lead, but he did have a poor pit stop this time, and he is relegated to outside the top 10. He battles in a second pack, along with Kurt Busch, Damage Jeremy, Denny Hamlin, and a couple other drivers. Jeremy McMurray, I believe, was like in sixth spot when that happened, and that is not good for that team for the moment. And we got problems. Turn number three, Reed Sorensen, Ryan Truex, and I believe that's Jeremy Nadeau also around in turn number three. Mm. It's quite a bit of damage there, but no one does go behind the wall. Quick on board shows that Jeremy Nadeau was running slow because he was involved in the big crash, and because of that, Sorensen and Ryan Truex had nowhere to go, and so they are relegated to the back of the field. Another set of pit stops, and Jamie McMurray leads him off hit road. David Sturmey will be second, Clint Boyer third, Clint Boyer's teammate Bobby Labonte four, Kurt Busch fifth. Danny Hamlin jumps to the high side as he is currently in six. Lap 120, Clint Boyer, with the help of his teammate Bobby Labonte, jumps right to the lead. Field begins to spread out a little bit as Martin Truex was able to get around Clint Boyer for the lead, and Reed Sorensen did stay on the lead lap the entire time, so he is running in third at the moment. <coughs> lap 142, speed switch up in the lead as Jeff Gordon and AJ Allmendinger make their way up to the front in that four car breakaway. Green flag pit stops happen again on lap 152 as Martin Truex leads him down on pit road this time. And when they came out back out, another four cars break their way for the lead. The 20 to go caution comes out on lap yeah, 180 stupid. and that was everyone together for hopefully a dramatic 15 lap dash to finish. Now in this final set of pit stops, notice that Martin Truex and Clint Boyer did not hit. Michael Lennon was a lap down, but Martin Truex and Clint Boyer did not hit, everybody else did, and it'll be interesting to see if that strategy pulls off. Lap 185 is the restart. Can Martin Truex and Clint Boyer hold off with the worn tires? Denny Hamlin third, Reed Sorensen fourth, Jeff Gordon in fifth. <laughs> Here are the final three laps of the 2014 Daytona 500. As we mentioned before, Denny Hamlin, he has fresh tires, but Martin Truex does not. As we're on board with Martin Truex here, there's still a big pack behind, so anybody can still win this that's in the pack, of course. But right now, the top four have pulled away because they are single file. Everybody else is two and three wide behind. Eric Almarola, he is the leader of the second pack right now, but David Gilliland does not want to line up, and he goes underneath Eric Almarola for the fifth position. Still single file up front. Can Martin Truex get his first ever Daytona 500 <laughs> to win? To an extent. Can McMurray possibly get his <laughs> second? Because remember, he won in 2012. How about the rookie, Ryan Truex, underneath Denny Hamlin? Two laps to go now. It's three cars on the inside, Hamlin on the high side, and because they are side by side, how about three wide as Jamie McMurray goes underneath Brian Truex? Because they are three wide, that is an invitation for all the cars in the back to come back up, and it'll be one pack once again. Martin Truex begins to pull away though by two, three car lengths, but as you know in restrictor plate racing, that is not a good thing. 
Here comes David Gilliland, Bob right underneath Vinny Hamlin. Hamlin moves low, all the way to the bottom now, as Martin Truax continues to pull away, but for how long? Here comes David Gilliland to the inside. David Gillen underneath McMurray and Ryan Truex. That goes up to the third spot. And how about David Shremme? Already a two-time winner of the Daytona 500. Could he get his third in a row? Coming out for turn number four. <laughs> Shremme now to the inside of David Gillen. Denny Hamlin goes to block Shremme. Martin Truex has one lap to go here in the 2014 Daytona 500. Oh, Shremme. Denny Hamlin, there we go. To the inside. How about David Shremme? Three wide. Denny Hamlin could not... Denny Hamlin could not block David Shremme quick enough. And now he has help from James Busher in the 23 car. Former teammate to James Busher is Jamie McMurray in the one car. Not anymore. Here comes McMurray to the inside of Busher. David Strimmy is sticking to the high side. He believes Busher is the more powerful car. <coughs> Look, can McMurray get a push from Jeff Gordon, who is now behind Jamie McMurray. Through turn three, going through turn two. Out to hit turn four. Bobby Labonte is back. Here he is in fifth. Can he be of any help at all? But it looks to be all David Strummy right now. Strummy. Coming off of turn number four. And it looks like David Strummy will be a three-time winner of the Daytona 500. Strummy. Congrats to David Strummy and that entire team as he wins the Daytona 500. Jamie it, McMurray, 2012 winner, finishes second. Here Jeff mixing? Gordon comes close in third. Bobby Labonte finishes fourth. And Brad Keselowski ends up finishing fifth in the 2014 Daytona 500. Alright, 2015. Oh, yeah, this controversy. Yep. Controversy. Here are three things you need to know for 2015. First of all, a brand new team has come along for the ride H. Scott Motorsports. They originally planned to go in 2014, but they wanted to build their resources better, and now here they are with a two-car team come 2015. The second big news is that Jeff Gordon is going to retire after 2016. In real life, he was retired after 2015, but Gordon has signed a two-year extension while they develop their next driver, Chase Elliott, for another two years. And finally, let's talk about the strike. So you remember- So, chat, is this, uh, Sorry. Let's talk about this. Do you think a strike could happen in the future? Or is it already happening with Junior, Kenz, if Gordon Stewart all leaving? For the five rules that NASCAR implemented in 2014, that was the last straw for Dale Earnhardt. He cannot <laughs> take all of these dramatic changes that NASCAR is pulling in. And so because of that, Dale Earnhardt is boycotting NASCAR. And not just himself his team, and he inspired eight other teams to do the same, including Jack Roush, Roger Penske, and Richard Petty. So what is happening now is that these teams are boycotting NASCAR and are waiting until Brian France or NASCAR makes some big significant change ah, for them to make funny. it reasonable. These teams put together a little coalition and they demand that racing be put back in the driver's hands. They don't want NASCAR to script this up and be like this huge dramatic event that happens every single oh. week. They want the drama to happen on the track. That's funny, because that's almost kind of what's happening now. Don't you think? Not have it be pre-scripted. Now, because of this, this caused a little divide in half. Because while those nine teams are against what NASCAR is doing, Rick Hendrick, Robert Gates, and Tony Stewart still support NASCAR. They believe this is a positive step in the right direction to get that youth movement going on. Despite having this divide, NASCAR is going to continue on to the 2015 season, despite having one of the lowest counts in recent memory for cars on the racetrack. That'd be so these teams Alex. are holding out until NASCAR retracts its recent rule changes or does something to compensate for these, what they believe is to be unnecessary changes to quote unquote, make NASCAR better. All right, so with that being all said, let's take a look at the lineup for the 2015 Daytona 500. Starting on pole once again is the four of Kevin Harvick, and alongside with is Jimmy Johnson in the 48 Lowe's Chevrolet. Landon Castle will start third in the Mountain Dew 25 Chevrolet, and Kurt Busch will start fourth. Ryan Truex will start in the fifth position, and Jeff Gordon in sixth, <coughs> and as mentioned before, he will retire after 2016. Martin Truex Jr. will start seventh, alongside him is Casey Kane. This will be GoDaddy's final year as a sponsor. Carl Edwards has switched rides in 2015. So a little fun fact. So you see the black lines here? What I literally took was the Stanley logo and just stretched it, and then I placed it throughout the entire side of the car. Carl Edwards decided to leave Roush because he knew that Roush Racing was in support of boycotting the series, but Carl wanted to race. So we jump on board with a new H. Scott Motorsports, and it will drive the new number 52 Stanley Tools Dodge. And along we're not going to say it, not going to say it, not going to say it. Start in the 11th spot, go. alongside him, Jeremy <coughs> Mayfield. And it could be because of this 
boycotting, striking deal, but Jeremy Mayfield has announced that this will be his final year in the Spring Cup Series before he decides to retire. Alex Bowman will move over to the 7 car Bowman. in 2015, and alongside him, Tony Stewart in the 14 car. Tony Stewart almost went with on the strike, but he decided to stay in it because simply there's less competition for him and that team to take on. Justin Allgaier will start 15th. He is a Rookie of the Year contender. And today, outside of him, Steven, Steven Light. Steven replaces Brian Clausen in the 40 car, who decided to go back to dirt racing, where he gets more enjoyment. Matt DiBenedetto moves over to the 83 car, replacing Jeff Green. He is also a Rookie of the Year contender. And AJ Allmendinger returns to the 47 ride. Josh Wise with Premium Motorsports will make their debut at the Daytona 500. And JJ Gailey moves over to the 23 car for 2015. Jeb Burton, son of Ward Burton, moves over Ward. to BK Racing as well in a new 26 Toyota. He is a Rookie of the Year contender as well. Michael Annette moves over to the new 46 Flying J Pilots Chevrolet. This car is fueled by Johnny Davis, the same team that has the 0, 01, and 4 cars in the Xfinity series. Michael McDowell makes his debut with a 95 car at Daytona, and Reed Sorensen Reed. with a new team, RAB Racing. They make their team debut at Daytona. And rounding out the rear in this very small field, Bobby Labonte moves to the 32 car for Go Fast Racing, and finally, Ron Hornaday in the 30 car with another new team, the Motorsports Group. Here is the start and the first lap to the 2015 Daytona 500. <laughs> Jumping up to lap 8 right now, new teams experience what it's like to be in the front of the field, including Premium Motorsports, Go Fast Racing, RIP Racing. Ryan Truex takes the lead on lap 15, and he looks to have a strong car in this year's race. On lap 30, Jimmy Johnson returns to the front of the field. Green flag pit stops begin on lap number 40, and everybody makes their trip down pit road. Because of pit stops on lap 45, the field begins to break apart. And because there's not as many cars on the track, this could be a long green flag run. Hmm. Kevin Harvey takes... You know what I could see? If I want to really enhance this uh, boycott, like this, this situation because of the cars spreading out, I totally could see them throwing like a competition caution and realize, oh man, we got to batch these uh, cars up together. So kind of just a random little thought. So to lead on lap 51, as we still have that little nine car pack. <clears throat> Harvick has one of the stronger cars in today's race. On lap 54, the first car falls a lap down, that is Casey Mears in the 13. He Sorry, lost Kamikaze. all draft, and now he is going to fall one lap down. Lap 82, we see more pit stops going to take place, as Kevin Harvick, Michael McDowell, and Reed Sorensen all make their way down pit road. On lap 89, Josh Wise, who is one of the bigger surprises in this year's race, as he keeps and maintains, or he takes and maintains the lead so far. Our first problem happens on lap 96, as Stephen Light cuts down a tire, but there is no signs of debris on the track, and thus no caution comes out. Lots more green flag racing as they keep going around <laughs> the circle after I like circle this. after circle, and still no caution. Another set of green flag pit stops, and this time Casey Kane has found his way to the front. Casey Mears is still one lap down, as AJ Allmendinger now is in second, and Tony Stewart in third. <clears throat> green flag pit stops happen again, as cars are absolutely spread out this time. It does not go all the way, because NASCAR has that mandated 20 to go caution, which happens to be our first caution of the race. On lap 183, the final pit stops take place, and AJ Allmendinger is able to get off pit road first, and he will restart in the lead. Yeah, that's what I was going for. On 185, Brad. Allmendinger is the leader, Michael McDowell second, Josh Wise third, and we have a bunch of hungry cars right behind. Hmm. 
As NASCAR wanted it, we got close racing for the win here on lap 192. Ryan Truex giving Michael McDowell a huge shove to the lead. Jeff Gordon trying to hold on, but that run is way too strong as they go into the lead. One, two, and L into the wall. Jeff Gordon into the wall. Allmendinger is involved as we have the big one here in turn number two. Lots of cars involved. Jimmy Johnson, Casey Kane, Tony Stewart, Kirk Busch, heavy front and damage to his car. And a big mess happens in turn number two. Oh, all this drama has taken place. <laughs> Uh, Warren is going to go behind the wall. Josh Wise and AJ Allmendinger, plenty of damage. Here are some replays. Allmendinger gets in the back of Josh Wise. Casey Kane, lots of front end damage to his car. So he stored a little bit of damage. It'll be interesting to see how this will affect the rest of the race. Because there's already not many cars in, only 26. And so this is going to take out like 8 or so. So it's almost like the Bud Shootout or Sprint Unlimited. Yeah. Johnson, Matt Benedetto. Jimmy Johnson does keep going. He only just spins, so not much damage on his car. On lap 196, we do have our restart. Mike McDowell is still your leader. Ryan Truex in second. But anything can still happen here these final four laps. Here are the final two laps to the 2015 Daytona 500. As Michael Lynette with that brand right. new team goes, and Jimmy Johnson, very strong car. Casey Mears, he is back on the lead lap. He did get the lucky dog. And now Mears has a shot at the win. Here comes Jeremy Mayfield. This is his final year in the Sprint Cup Series before calling it quits. Could he win the Daytona 500 for, in his final year? Ryan Truex right behind Mayfield as Michael McDowell under team 41 of Ryan Truex. Could McDowell pull up a huge upset for him and that team? Jeremy Mayfield, he breaks away from Ryan Truex as he's going to go down now and block Michael McDowell. A couple of Stewart Haas cars to the inside. Kevin Harvick and Tony Stewart giving McDowell a good shove through turn number four as we are going to have one lap to go to determine the winner of this year's Daytona 500. McDowell goes high, Mayfield goes low, Harvick down through the middle, Tony Stewart down low. Jeb Burton in the 26 following Tony Stewart oh. now. Through turn number one, Jeremy Mayfield, he goes low and he does. He blocks Tony Stewart for the moment. Stewart and Mayfield are second and first respectively. Kyle Larson going through the middle, could Larson do anything about it? Tony Stewart goes high, Jeb Burton stays low. Can Mayfield go down to block Jeb? Come on, Mayfield. Jeremy Mayfield has only half a lap, and he will win the 2015 Daytona 500. The Stewart Haas cars are together again. Can they make a push to the front? As they as second place now is three wide, and that is exactly what Jeremy Mayfield wants to see. Here they come after turn number four. Martin Truex does get around for the second position. Bobby Labonte <clears> tries <throat> to get third, and it won't be enough. Jeremy Mayfield will come off the front straightaway and will win the 2015 Daytona 500. Woo, Mayfield! So in Mayfield's final Yay, season, Jeremy Mayfield. Mayfield wins. Martin Truex Jr. finishes second. Bobby Labonte third. Matt DiBenedetto fourth. And Josh Wise finishes fifth. So for this year, I'm going to do something special. This year, I will talk about all the winners and, for the most part, what happened this year. Because I believe what happened in this year is so crucial to the story arc of my theory of if or what if Dale Earnhardt is still alive. This is interesting. So to start things off, attendance has dropped dramatically. So many of those key hierarchy teams have left, and because of that, there's no interest in the sport. The only people that are there are the ones in the campgrounds, just because at the beginning of the year, they bought those reserve spots, so they might as well take it. Pretty but unfortunately, cheap. we've had races, all the races have been at minimum 24 cars, and the highest driver entry count was 30, and that was for the Brickyard 400. But because of this, we have this unbelievably down turnout, and, and as you would guess it, Brian France starts to worry and panic. Because Brian was very convinced that, they, that this is the right way to go. Brian believes that there needs to be that drama, that intense action. And he believes that since the drivers are not putting that on, NASCAR as a whole needs to push that in themselves. But that is just a huge turn away for the fans. And so, because of this, NASCAR has absolutely had a very not so good situation. But the good news is there are some upsides to this. And the big thing is we had quite a few first time winners. A couple examples, Matt Benedetto won the first New Hampshire race in the 83 car and that is the first win for BK Racing. Ryan Truex got his first career win at the Spring Richmond race for the Haas 41 team. Michael McDowell, the Arizona native driver, got his first career win at Phoenix in the fall. And Kyle Larson got his first of ah, two wins in 2015 at the day Bristol race. Here's your full list of winners from 2015. Ah, that's funny. That's funny. That's hilarious, actually. And as you would guess, as you saw who the winner at home said was, Jimmy Johnson won the 2015 Spring Cup Series Championship <laughs> in one of the least viewed years 
in recent memory of NASCAR. All right, let's get to 2016. Let's let's get a little happier, shall we? I like that. I like happier. Awakening by Silent Partner. Well, here it is, ladies and gentlemen. We are here for 2016. Here are three things to know. First of all, I am happy to say the strike is over. After 10 separate meetings between NASCAR officials and the group of drivers and teams that came together in the boycott, and they have finally settled it out. So most of the teams are back, and we are back to 43 car fields once again. But it did come at a bit of a price. We'll talk a little more during the starting lineup, but the yeah. big thing to note is that three teams have officially ceased operations. Those teams are Front Row Motorsports, Michael Walter Racing, and are, Dale Earnhardt sure. Incorporated. <laughs> All of Front Row Motorsports parts and pieces went over to Roush Racing. Michael Walter Racing's pieces and parts went over to BK Racing. And finally, DEI simply merged with Richard Childress Racing. It is still Richard Childress Racing, but that team is now back to a four car operation. And as for Dale Earnhardt himself, well, he is now helping out his grandnephew, Jeffrey Earnhardt. Again, we'll talk more about that in the starting lineup. And finally, it is the final year for Sprint as a title sponsor. We are yet to know who is going to sponsor the Premier Series after Sprint, but we will find that out later in 2016. So with the talks, there are some noticeable changes that are coming to this season of NASCAR. First of all, there is going to be a shift to less downforce. We still have the Gen 6 cars, but we will have a shrink and spoiler, and we will have a shrink and splitter as well. NASCAR will continue to go through that process, but they want to be cautious with it so that they don't have any dramatic shifts in racing. NASCAR has eliminated the automatic cautions, so you will not see any of those weird random blown tires or weird mysterious debris or any of that automatic cautions with 20 to go stuff. You won't see any of that. Next one, and this is a big one, there is no more chase. The champion is now officially decided without a chase. So now instead of having 10 races Thanks, matter, Chad. all 36 races matter. So now, whoever wins the 2500 here will have a good start to this 36 race long chase. Two more left, and this uh, next one's a big one. The race will finish under green regardless, meaning we will not, NASCAR will not have any control. The only way they'll control is if there is a severe enough crash on the final lap, then what will happen is they will throw the caution flag in that lap, and they'll just redo it into another green-white checker. So we will have a good hey, finish. Hey, Denny, no welcome what. back, buddy. And then finally, they got rid of the silly push to pass. <laughs> I'm not going to explain this one much. It's just a silly rule, and they got rid of it. So with that being said, let's take a look at the starting lineup for the 2016 Daytona 500. All right. Starting on pole is a new car. That like is Clint that Boyer in the new number one five-hour energy Chevrolet for Stuart Haas Racing. Clint Boyer, as you know, left Mike Walter Racing because it closed, and now that team is a four-car operation. To the outside of him is Denny Hamlin in the 11 car. Kyle Busch will start third in the 18 M&M's car. Brad Kieslowski is going to start fourth, and we have the debut of the new Dodge Dart this year. Joey Logano will start fifth. Starting sixth is Kevin Harvick, with Jimmy Johnson's coming on as an extended sponsor this year. Martin Truex Jr. is going to switch over to Toyota this year, and alongside with is Daniel Suarez. Really? Daniel I from Mexico moves over to the fourth Joe Gibbs Racing Machine. He really? is a Rookie of the Year contender. Starting ninth is David Strummy, the new sponsor for Boost coming along. And tenth is Jeffrey Earnhardt in the three. There's Jeffrey, Jeffrey Earnhardt replaces Jeff Burton in the number three ride, and Monster Energy moves over from the 41 car to the number three this year. Jamie McMurray moves over to the second Rubber Gates Racing Ford, mm -hmm. replacing Jeremy Mayfield. McMurray brings McDonald's with as the primary sponsor, and his teammate Kurt Busch will start in 12th. Carl Edwards will start 13th in the 52 Stanley Dodge for H. Scott Motorsports. Casey Kane will start 14th. Farmers Insurance is the new official sponsor for Casey Kane and the 5 ride. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. will start 15th. Fast and All will be the sponsor on that ride. Matt Kenseth will start 16th. And Austin Dillon will start 17th. Dow will be the main sponsor for that ride. 2015 champion Jimmy Johnson will start 18th. Kyle Larson will start in 19th. Ryan Newman will start Oops, in the 20th sorry. position. Casey Mears will start 21st. And Ryan Blaney, <coughs> Blaney. Your contender, will move draft to the 21 car for Wood Brothers Racing in 2016. Alex Bowman will start 21st. He replaces Stephen Light and Tax Slayer will sponsor showman. on that machine. Tony Stewart will start 24th. And Stewart will sign a three year extension with the team, so he will be there through 2018. Jeff Gordon has one more year in the Puff Series, yeah. and then he's going to retire. Chase Elliott, as mentioned before, will replace him. Trevor Bain in the Advocare 9 car will start 26. <laughs> Landon Castle on the 25 Mountain Dew Chevrolet will start 27th. And a new sponsor for Dale Earnhardt Jr. As Junior moves over from RCR from an out-debunked DEI, Nationwide Insurance is going to be the primary sponsor on that machine. Greg Biffle will be in his final year in Spring Cup as well. Biffle does not like to be in this recent drama that NASCAR is in, and so after this year, Biffle is also pulling out of the Spring Cup series. AJ Allmendinger will start 30th. Justin Allgaier is going to come back for another year at H. Scott Motorsports. Eric Arnrola in the 43 Dodge Dart will start 32nd, and Ryan Truex returns to the 41 Haas Innovation Chevrolet. David Reagan 
Kane moves over to BK Racing in the 23 Dr. Pepper Toyota. And Brian Scott signs a one-year deal with Richard Petty Motorsports. I like that car. Green Smith in the 7 car replaces Alex Bowman. And Michael Annette returns in the 46 Pilot Chevrolet. Getting to the rear of the field now, Michael McDowell is going to start 38th. Dakota Armstrong in the 53 Winfield Dodge. He is a Rookie of the Year contender and will be a third H. Scott team for 2016. Cole Thanks, Sean. I greatly appreciate it. And just quick shout out to all you guys for being here for so long. I I greatly appreciate it. Lit is going to start 40th in the 98 car. Matt DiBenedetto is going to start 41st. Cosmo Motors comes on and will be the full-time sponsor on that ride in 2016. Finally in the rear, Bobby Labani is also in his final year in the Sprint Cup Series. Josh Wise comes back in the unsponsored machine, and he is seeking sponsors to run the rest of the 2016 season. For the final time, here is the first lap of the Daytona 5. Final time. Agree next is combat. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> music. Jump to lap six and we got great racing all the way around. It is so great to see 43 cars again together in one pack. On lap 19, Bobby Labonte falls off pace and he could potentially fall a lap down in a matter of laps. On lap 21, Thanks, Dale Jr. Harrison and Tony nine. Stewart fall to the back of the pack, probably to avoid the big one. Hey, thank you, iRacing fan number nine. Thank you so much for sticking around, man. Really appreciate it, yeah. On lap 26, Austin Dillon is your leader, and he has one of the strongest cars here on track. Brad Keselowski follows suit in the second position. It looks like Austin Dillon was about to lap Bobby Labonte, but on lap 42, green flag pit stops begin. There's a little bit of jumble up in the back of the field, but fortunately nobody gets any damage, and we stay green. However, the next lap, Jimmy Johnson actually loses a tire and he ends up crashing in turn three, taking out Tony Stewart. Mm. Jimmy Johnson does go behind the wall. Is that a caution? Yeah, it was. On okay. the restart, Austin Dillon is your leader, Alex Bowman second, Ricky Stenhouse third, Jeff Gordon fourth, and Brad Keselowski is in fifth. Kevin Harvick ends up being your leader on lap 55, and David Stremme ends up going to the second position. Goats. A couple surprises coming to the front of the field. Cole Witt and Michael Annette make their way up into the top five. Could they play potential upsets in today's race? On the same lap at the back of the pack, Josh Wise puts down a tire and he Josh ends up spinning in turn no. two, bringing out the second caution of the day. More pit stops take <laughs> place and Kevin Harvick leads them off pit road. Thanks, Jackson. On the restart, it is Kevin Harvick, your leader, and Kyle Busch ends up being in the second position. On lap 105, another surprise. AJ Allmendinger moves to the front of the field. Kyle Busch stays in second. Michael McDowell goes up into the third position. Allmendinger does keep the lead as Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlet low. And we got more problems. Eric Arola slams into the inside wall a ton. Someone said that Rick looked Amarola like a is done for the day as the third caution comes out. Heavy, heavy crash down the back straightaway. And as you see the replay there, our Eric Amarola gets a lot of air as soon as he hits the inside wall. But fortunately, he is okay, and he does walk away from the scene of the accident. Not too sure how the wreck unfolded, but it might have been another down tire. Because uh, nobody was near him. Wreck was also close, but I don't think he contacted Eric Morola at all. But as mentioned before, Eric Morola is okay. More pit stops on lap 121, and AJ keeps the lead the entire time. So on the restart, AJ Allmendinger is in your leader. Denny Hamlin is second, Kyle Busch third, and how about Jeffrey Earnhardt in the three car is in fourth. Good racing here on lap 131 as Kyle Busch goes out into the lead. Allmendinger begins to fall back as Jeffrey Earnhardt and Jeff Borden are about to battle it out. J 
Chef. A new car has fallen off the pack, and that is Landon Castle. Landon. He loses the draft, and hopefully Apache comes in in time so that he does not lose a lap. On lap 143, Jeff Gordon finally leads. It will be his final Daytona 500. Jeff Earnhardt follows soon behind, and Jeff Gordon has officially said he will not run any more Daytona 500s. Hmm. Green flag pits have safe place here on lap 163 as McDowell and a few other cars come on in to make their service. On lap 172, after pit stops, Jeffrey Earnhardt does end up going to the lead and Landon Castle falls a lap down. But then a caution comes out with on lap 173 as Daniel Suarez is slow in turn 3. There were reports that he did lose a cylinder, but he falls several laps down, but he does not fall out of the race. Oh, yeah. Final pit stops happen on lap sense. 175, and Jeffrey Earnhardt and his pit crew get the job done, and he gets to restart out front. And he gets to jump in front of the pack as Kyle Busch and Kurt Busch are second and third, and Michael McDowell is up there in the top five as well. Getting to the end now, the Bush brothers are 1-2. Kurt Busch oh, is your yeah. leader, Kyle right. Busch in second, Jeffrey Earnhardt in third, and Michael McDowell comes in front of the field. Michael McDowell almost blows over, and that takes out a ton of cars. Yeah. Jeff Gordon is involved. Don't know Ryan how I feel Blaney about is involved. That. Matt Kenseth, heavy, heavy damage to his car. What happened to Michael McDowell? His car just yeet, just yacht to the right yeet, in front yacht. of the pack. <laughs> and McDowell almost yeet, slipped over. Fortunately, he did not. Ah, that's Here funny. are some replays. Boy, lots of air for that car. Kislowski, also lots of air. Great Buffalo ZZ spinning down to the inside. Anybody flipping this wreck? Lots of cars get into it. Daniel Suarez no, involved again. That's surprising. Dakota Armstrong spins out on board with Brad Kislowski. Well, you don't really see what happened to McDowell. I'm pretty sure it was another tire issue for that car. Not that But anyway, goes. you hate to see this happen. <laughs> Brad Keselowski does keep going. Casey Kane involved. Uh, Murray gets in the back funny. of Keselowski. Blue Jimmy 48 so again, fan. Damage you made it. For Thank several you, buddy. Cars. We do get a restart on lap 187, and the Bush brothers are 1-2. Huh. And so here are the final two laps to end the 2016 Daytona 500 as Clint Boyer is your leader, and how about a couple of Earnhardts? Jeffrey Earnhardt and Dale Earnhardt Jr. are second and third. Can they get around the one of Clint Boyer? Remember, number one, that used to be a DEI spawn number. And so here they come through turn one, two. Top three cars have now spread out from the rest of the pack. Michael Annette is in fourth spot. Could he upset here? But right now, Dale Earnhardt Jr. all over the back of Jeffrey Earnhardt Jr. I wonder if he's gonna make a move himself. Or is he just going to push Jeffrey Earnhardt possibly? But guys, Clint Boyer has had a strong car all race long. Dale Jr. boy, he is just swerving around trying to find any room whatsoever. But here they come to the line. Last lap here at Daytona. Clint Boyer is still your leader. And look who's in fourth. Former DEI teammate no Martin Truex Jr. He's made it to the fourth position. Earnhardt second and third. Can Dale Jr. get up to the bumper of Jeffrey Earnhardt? Does Jeffrey Earnhardt have enough skill to possibly get around Clint Boyer? Down turn number two, top six cars a single file. Landon Castle, he moves to the inside. Remember, Landon Castle is still a lap down, so he's not part. Here we go, to the inside. Jeffrey Earnhardt and Dale Earnhardt Jr. follow suit. Coming through turn number three, Jeffrey Earnhardt. Could he get his first ever win at the Daytona 500? Dale Earnhardt Jr. is pushing Jeffrey Earnhardt to the line. Can Dale Earnhardt Jr. make a run around Jeffrey Earnhardt, or will he? Here they come to the line. Dale Jr., I think he's blocking for Jeffrey Earnhardt as he does so. And to the line, Jeffrey Earnhardt wins his first ever Daytona 500. Unbelievable. So RCR finishes 1-2 in the 2016 Daytona 500. And Jeffrey Earnhardt gets his first career win at the Daytona 500. Something that his great uncle took 20 years to do, Jeffrey Earnhardt does on a second try. Oh, that so here are your top five for this year's Daytona yeah, that's 500. Right. It's grandfather. Jeffrey Earnhardt yeah. wins. Dale Earnhardt Jr. finishes second. <coughs> Martin Truex third. Clint Boyer finishes fourth. And Ryan Blaney finishes fifth. Quiet. So there you have it. Something that I have started in January has finally put a close here in December. Mm -hmm. It has taken so long to finally get this done because of college, because of other projects, because of work, because I'm an adult now, and it's time for me to do adult things. But over the months when I've been doing this project, I've grown a love and an interest in doing these theories. What if Dale Earnhardt was still alive? Would Dale Earnhardt himself be more successful? Would he have had 100 wins? Would he have passed David Pearson? Would he have more championships? Who knows? 
Would DEI still be around? There are still so many questions that could be answered. What I showed to you guys was what I believe would happen in the most realistic way possible. And so now it's finally come down to the end here. So a couple more things before I sign off here. First of all, I will make one more video and I'm just going to sit down and talk to you guys about this whole series. I will look through the comments on this video and all other previous videos of the Dale Earnhardt Saga and I will answer or delve further into your guys' discussions. And guys, one last thing, I am super excited for 2017. There are lots of new things coming out and I can't wait to share it with you guys. Mm. So thank you guys again so much for the support over this year as my channel has expanded. Every like, every subscription means so much. And I, I'm, I'm speechless, guys. I thank you guys so much. So yeah, I'm going to sign off here. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I will see you next time. Oh yeah. I completely forgot about that. Honestly, just watching that last part really uh, just hit me hard. Because not just with this series, but just... Just everything I've done. Just everything I've done here with with YouTube. And just, like, again, like, 30-plus thousand views. And, like, getting still 50-plus concurrent viewers. Like, I don't know. Like, it just... It completely... Still. It's still. It... Here. I want to go just full screen for a minute here. Um, 
I want to just talk straight up to you guys. Um, it just it just blows my mind. Just everything that I've that I, that I've done here, and it's just it's just no, it 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 still hasn't hit me. Like I, I don't consider myself like one of the big like YouTubers. Like I don't. Just again with everything that like Black Flags Matter and Jerry and all of them that get kicking butt with like the thousands of subscribers. Um, it just doesn't. It doesn't. It just doesn't feel right. You got like 414 likes on one video, 34,000 views. Like, it's David Land, Nixon. Oh, God, it just, it just, I, I, I. This sucks because it's like I feel like I could have done more. And I know there was a lot more because I mentioned like the what if Adam Petty was still alive. Like, okay. I had cards here of different what ifs. Let me just let me just briefly read several of these to you. So like one of them was called Joe Gibbs Jr. Dale Jr. drove for Joe Gibbs instead of Hendrick Morris Sports. How about Gordon McClure? Robbie Gordon is dominant, has lifetime contract with Morgan McClure Racing. <sighs> Brett Moon, you make quality, not quantity. Dude, you have a tightly knit group you just love. You. Love you guys too, man. The Great Risk, Bobby Allison and Mark Martin drove for Rush Racing in 1991. Go-kart list, what if Joey Logano never got a go-kart as a kid? M and Dale, Dale Earnhardt has the M&M sponsorship if he was still alive. Um, Orlando, let's see. <sighs> This is exactly why I wanted to do this stream. It is because I wanted to show everything that I made. I love you guys. You guys are so freaking incredible. I know I was going to do one more spark, but I want I want to show you guys. I want to show you guys everything that I could have shown. Um so you have the Dale Earnhardt stuff here. All the files are there. Um, okay, with one more spark, I, I need to show you guys this. Um, God, I'm, I'm shaking right now. Um, okay, I can't do it here. Um, okay, I'm still in the me mode, but that's fine. Just give me, give me one second here. My files. Photoshop. Um, Oh no no no! I can do it here. That's right. File open. Um. Back out. Back out. This is gonna break me. Um. So one more spark. Yeah. Here. I'll. I'll go back. All right. So, um, I'm really going to leave this, aren't I? Okay, all this graphics. This was the last stuff I worked on were um, 1987 Walmart Spark. I had all the final results for um, each of the stuff. And I went like all out with like the graphics here. Um, and like I again, I was full on like legit with this, and like I had it all set up. Um, I even had the freaking uh, starting lineups, I had the point standings for everything, and I freaking blew it. And yeah, Davy Allison won a day one hundred man. Where's the rows? I want to show the starting lineups. So you had, yeah, Eddie Bershwell, Buddy Baker, like, I had it set. I had it set, and I was going to create some awesome stuff, guys, and I love you guys. My first uh, car set. I want to show you guys that. My 
my first car set. A lot of that I made all the way back in 2012. Hopefully it shows here. No, of course not. Give me one second. Um, over here. Okay. So, let's go to... Let's see, which car set was it? Fall 2012. Was it Heyday? Yeah, here it is. So, these cars here are the first ever paint like car set I ever made. So you have Jeff Burton the one, Kozlowski, Austin Dillon, the seller, Ray J Productions, Super Chat. I know it's not much, but happy YouTube. <laughs> Thanks, Ray J. Easy Kane. Ricky Stenhouse of a Kellogg's Rice Krispies car. It's nothing much, but god damn, I just loved doing this. We got Aunt Kenza driving along. Oh my god. Logano, Truex, Kurt Busch. Here, I'll turn my camera off for a second. Uh, Hornish, Richardson. I don't know, I might release this sometime later. It included Milk of Duno right there. Frick. Did I really do both? Oh, Mayfield was part of the Dale Earnhardt series. Out. Is that it? No, because he had Edwards. It's over, isn't it? It's done. It's done. It's over. I plan to. I'm gonna I'm gonna release several of these cars here. Let's see what else. Um, what else can I show you guys? Um, back out here. Um, oh yeah, the college series. I hinted at this. So, hopefully you guys can see this. Um, here, I'll pull myself back up here. Um, not just me. Um, where is it? Okay. So, yeah. Virginia, Cincinnati. This is one of those projects where it's like, I started making up, but I just never fell through with it. So, yeah, Iowa State, Georgia Tech. Oregon. Oh, I love this car. I was going to put in the details um, later, but yeah, like the number font and then the logos and everything. And you can even tell like by the date that like, again, I've been doing this, this, this stuff for a long time. Okay. Um, let's go by name here. Bookshot Jones, that's a whole thing. Custer, Delma Cowart, Kurt Bush. I've been doing this for a long time, guys. And it just feels so weird. It feels so weird to be done with this. Kyle Bush, Refner, Baker, let's see, Dylan Kwasneski, if you guys remember him, the eight car. Herman Caroga and the 12 Xfinity special car. Musgrave. That was that's from 2012, like one of the first cards I ever made. I'm shaking right now, guys, because this is like unreal. Busher, Marks. Wow. And then here's the other uh, Dale Earnhardt cars. Let's see here. Yeah, okay. Can you show the Indiana car? Sure, I can do that. Let's see, where was the Indiana car? Um, I 
Oh my god. Dude, you have done so much to get me into NASCAR. You put so much effort in. I can't thank you enough, but here's a little piece of my... Where's the Indiana car? Come on, where's the Indiana car? 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 Ah, here we are. Yeah, it's not much. I was going to put the Indiana logos on um, later, so I apologize for that. Florida State car right here. All right. Um, all right. Uh, one more Tennessee, and then I want to show I want to show the uh, Phoenix vlog because I know a couple of people were requested for that. Uh, do I have Tennessee? Where's 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 Tennessee? I don't even know if I made a Tennessee car. No, I did not. Okay. All right, I'm gonna here. Let's go back to me for a sec. Let's go ahead, and I want to let's let's. So no, not necessarily vlog, but like what I have is um clips. All right, so this is what I have here. Let's folders. Here we are. Give me that. All right, I'll show you guys, and this might break me, but I don't care. All right, so let's do this. Um, open with zip extractor? What the fuck does that mean? I don't know. Let's... All right, let's go back. All right, so this was the plane ride as we were flying in from South Dakota to um, Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix is a beautiful place. Warm, for sure. Um, <laughs> I went to a Walmart and then I got the Noah Gregson um, car. So there was that. Then, uh, yeah, so this was the inside of Moffitt's uh, hauler. And so, like, you have the Chevy there and then you have all the shelving and stuff like that there. Give me one second here. I want to pull up. All right. Let's see, there's there's the truck. So so beautiful. There's the front. Let's see, there's the rear, the truck. There's the side of it. This is about to go out for uh, qualifying. So it's the video. That's a picture. Cool Victor. Yeah, Jerry Baxter right there. Cool dude. All right. Please don't buffer on me. <laughs> All right, that's cool. All right, let's get some loud noises. All right. Zach M, was there ever a truck? It's in production right now, and the hope is in the next month or so it'll finally be released. So to make it clear, I never made like a full-fledged like vlog of this race just because of Tate. But, um, I definitely did get the clips here. There's his name. There's Tate's name right there in all of its glory. There's another view of the truck. Then there's a view of on pit road. And there's Moffat right there on the right. 
And I believe that's Austin Wayne's self, right? Can I highlight? Ha, ah, that's cool. Oh, oh, sorry. Um, uh, right here. Okay. Um, there's the score tower in which Friesen was on the pole. All right, and then this was the uh, conference room where they had the uh, pre-race, uh, how do you call it, meeting. And so, of course, we were in it in the back, but we were there. Um, on the far right, <coughs> you had uh, Mike Helton right there. And then over on the left, you had the front, or a uh, not front row. What's their what? What's their name? Thor Sport. That's it. So you had Crafton, Ben Rhodes, Johnny Sauter. We're all hanging out in the far left corner. I thought that was super cool. There's another shot of the overall crowd. Then there's Alex Bowman. I was able to walk through the garage. Um, I don't believe he himself was there, but of course that's his car and his crew. And then there was a suite where I got to hunt, hang out in for a little bit. Don't think I got any video of it. No, just pictures. A couple of pictures here from the suite. And then there's a spare engine for uh, Moffat. Bear Bond. And then there's part of the shop there. Oh, yeah, and then the beautiful sunset. I love that so much. Beautiful sunset. Then there is for pre race ceremonies. He was really awesome. Uh, let's see. Panorama of everything going on, I believe. Let's see. That's Moffat's girlfriend. And then she, I think, was the social media person for uh, the team I was with, GMS Racing. Um, then there's Moffat's truck. And then there's that. After this, I'm going to do the Q&A, by the way. Then you have, this is, so this was where I sat for the race. It was right on top of Moffitt's pit box. Then there's me taking a nice selfie. There's Jerry Baxter down there, the crew. Then there's the other end. pit box let's see there's that oh yeah Derek Krause was going behind the wall more pit crew stuff my feet it's, oh yes the pit stop this was really cool. more I think 
<laughs> Bob, Bob, Bob Pockris right there. Uh, that's funny. And then, uh, yeah, and then that was the sunrise the next morning, and we flew off to um, back home. And that was it. I think I got a couple of die casts here, if I recall. Oh, this was the flight off. Yeah, and then these were the diecasts I got from uh, from the from from Phoenix and then Gregson, and I think that's it, right? All right, let's uh, let's end this. Let's do a little Q and A here. So, guys, let's let's talk. I want to give you guys as clear of answers as possible, and you know what? I'm open to anything. Anything and everything. So, let's see, kind of, I kind of want to play some music here, just so we have a little bit of uh, ambiance, if you will. Let's see here. Um, let's get some music rolling here. Mm hmm. I like that. Give me one second here. Yeah, fire up your questions. All right, and then let's jump to here. Let's bring this down just so you guys can hear me. And then um, I want your guys' full undivided attention. All right. Let's talk. So. All right. So let's see where I want to start here. Um, let's see here. 2020 NASCAR. Here. Headphones off. Okay. So 20. Uh, no, I want it on. 2020 NASCAR Stunt Motion Series. Griffin, is this the end forever? Um, there we go. Is this the end forever? I don't know. I don't know. It's just I want to try some new things. If an opportunity does come back for me to try NASCAR again, then possibly. But I don't know. Like At least for a few months, for sure. What was your all-time favorite paint scheme you painted from Shazang Rain 2448? Um, this answer is definitely going to change, but ever painted? Uh, I don't know. There are so many. Quite a few from the Dale Earnhardt series. I, I'd probably say Strummy's car. The the one, the 2011 Valvoline car. I really liked that one. Well, yeah, download links for all the cars you made. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I, oof, I I might need to make a separate video or something like that for that. Um, yeah, and I could just rip loose with that. 
Doritos or Mountain Dew? Will I continue my yearly predictions? I don't know. And again, it all depends on where I'm at in life. If, like, I have an opportunity in 2021 to do my predictions, then maybe. But, again, I just don't know. Um, the Mad Deku Boy, what is your greatest achievement on YouTube? Honestly, just making content for you guys. Because, alright, I'm gonna let you guys in a little, um... Oh, hold on. Thank you for reminding me. I need to do one thing. Hold on. I gotta do one thing. I gotta do one thing. This. So Kamikaze made a little video for me, and I have not seen it yet, so we're gonna do it right now. smile I like the smile I completely forgot about that but yeah thank you Kamikaze games I don't know if you're still watching but you're 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 the best <sighs> all right let's let's keep going here <sighs> all right so here let's uh make sure I format this all right so let's go back to frick I don't know what I'm doing all right so greatest achievement on YouTube just being able to do this content for you guys oh yeah yeah, yeah. okay um, I want to show you guys I normally I wouldn't show you this in-depth stuff but here I'll go back to it in a second but um okay so, just for one second here. So you notice monetization, ineligible because of, you know, copyright claims and all that fun stuff. But uh, I wanted to just show the first video I ever monetized. Because I just, I, I, just, I just want to prove to you guys how much I actually care about the content and not about the money. Keep going, keep going, keep going here. So, just off the bat, I never monetized this video, the Dale Earnhardt series. Never monetized it. And if I wanted to, I could. But I didn't. Not you, not you. It was this, hold on. It was, yeah, this video was the first video I ever monetized. So yeah, like this, this, all that. Never monetized it. So the fact that I was able to get even half of the notoriety I got now is just incredible. So thanks for the question, Mad Deku Boy. Blake Walker, what type of animation are you really wanting to get into? 2D. 2D traditional classic hand-drawn animation. Not a big fan of the 3D computer stuff. I might learn it sometime, but I really love the 2D like cartoon animated stuff. Will your channel go away or will everything be gone? That is from Sean Ard. Um, at this stage of the game, no. Uh, this channel will still be here. And I, one thing I hope to do is like if there are big news of like different like videos or movie projects that unfortunately aren't NASCAR, I will post on here. But in, again, again, in regards to NASCAR stuff, I don't, I don't know. Um, say, Pam, how do you enter an SR race without having a... If you do the race weekend mode and you just jump into the race in full screen, then you don't have to drive it. You just watch the race. Matt1854, I've been tearing up. Me too, buddy. Can you tell me? You know what? I would love to. Jackson Intel, can you tell me about Tate? Phenomenal guy. Uh, just an absolute one-of-a-kind 
guy. Here. Yeah, the, you guys are seeing my Facebook here. Don't send me a friend request though, just because I don't think I'll accept it, but... <sighs> he was a one of a hell kind of guy, that's for sure. And of course, I will miss him. And, and actually, his birthday is in about a month from now. <coughs> so, fun fact. Uh, let's see here. Do I have any more pictures? Yeah. There he is as a little kid. <sighs> he was a weightlifter, too. Like, he actually did uh, powerlifting. Actually... That's right, I gave Tate the GoPro stuff. <sighs> yeah, so yeah, that's uh, that's Tate. All right, so what else is here? Um, Zach and M, of your inner tells of these shorts, which one was my absolute favorite to make? To make... Probably, actually, the 2018 um, March Madness video, if I could find that. Um, yeah, 2008 March Madness here. Let's go to here. You guys are incredible. So, yeah, the 2018 March Madness video. I won't play it, but... Um, yeah, this video. I actually had such a blast making this video. Um, I'm going to stay on here for as long as possible. All right, let's see. Uh, so much crap. Okay. Um, let's see. Favorite thing about your Fuzzle 3? You want to make... Do you want me to make an iRacing car of your channel? I would love to. It would be an honor. iRacing fan number 9. Mr. Ocean Season 3, will you still be around on Instagram? Not for the first few months, but every once in a while, I will. Greatest moment in, my greatest moment in NASCAR? Probably when Dale Jr. won the Daytona 500 in 2014. Ecstatic about that. Huge hand on the screen whatsoever, and what do you do all this remains? Thank you so much, 2020 NASCAR Stop Motion Cup Series. I appreciate that. Shazam Rain 2448. Thanks for everything you've given us, Griff, and the summer showdown to just your predictions. You've been inspired in all of us. You're the reason I began painting for Intertoes 3. Just thanks, Griff. Ray Ray Cruz, what will you miss most about YouTube? The community. Just all the people, just how nice you guys all are. And I mean, again, like just the fun little shenanigans that you all, all have. Just. Yeah. Jordan Burns, Griff, I don't know where to start, and I'm really not wanting to see you go, and I really hope you find what you're looking for, and I'm a supporter for you, and I'm very happy to see your content. Are you keeping your social media channels, including Discord? Corvette Racing, I'm going to make some modifications to the Discord, but for right now, the Discord will stay. Brandon Crasta, Griff, I'm graduating high school this year. I'm a little scared. I feel like I connect to you as I'm going on a new adventure. Do you have any advice for me going into the unknown of adulthood? Just go for it. Even if it seems like everyone is against you, especially now with me doing getting away from NASCAR, because I feel like I have a huge opportunity here, and I feel like I could do some stuff here with NASCAR, but... I'm just just not feeling it. And even though a lot of people want me to continue making stuff, like, just, you're, you're going to get to a point where you're going to get a lot of mixed decisions, especially, like, when you're 18, when you're technically an adult. There's going to be a lot of, what's the word, not arguments, but, like, pushback. And so you got to really, like, go into your heart, and you got to really decide, like, what do you want to do with your life? And you might, it's okay to take advice from other people, but in the end, it's you that makes the final decision. 
Dominic Carranza, okay, I want to say this. I actually about finished a 32 Blues Clues car up for OMS, OFFC. The file corrupted, so I didn't get to send it. How you managed to get all the car as I was files for OMS? And I'll talk to you a little later about that. Jordan Burns, okay, I hate doing that. Griff, I'll be here for you, man, and I really care for your channel and your future. I want you to do well, and I want to communicate with you and talk about things when you're feeling down. Thanks, bud. Appreciate it. Man, Decker Blue, thank you, Griff. Alex Alonso, hey Griff, you want us to carry on your legacy of go for it. And honestly, and this is something I do want to touch on briefly, I racing kind of has taken it to the next level for me. Because you see Dale Jr. racing again, and I saw like Winvow doing his like Rolex race at like Charlotte. So honestly, like the opportunities are boundless for you guys. Like, I don't know, the way I see it, like I planted the seed. And you guys just have fun with the, uh, the 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 fruits of the labor. So, yeah, that's the thing. That's really a big reason why I've decided to move on is because you guys can get creative too, and there's almost like almost no room for me. Blake Walker, am I creating a new channel for your art content? Yeah. So Griffin Spear. Yeah, so G-R-I-F-F-I-N-S-P-I-E-R, that is where I'm actually putting my animation progress. And I have that for Twitter and Instagram. For YouTube, I do have a second channel, but I think I might just commit to Griff Dog for now. <sighs> Ray Ray Craze, watching my, wow, you've been around that long, huh? Uh, I guess I was expecting you. I'm sorry for you. Christopher Hernandez, Stream NASCAR Heat 4. I en I did enjoy that, but I'm not like a dedicated NASCAR Heat 4 fan. And so, unfortunately, that's just not for me. Yeah, Eric, am I still streaming? Was there a rain delay? No, I've, uh, Eric, I've been streaming for what? Now, like 10 hours or so? So, yeah, no, I've been going the entire time, man. Uh, NASCAR Diecast, can you add me as a driver in NASCAR 3004? Yes, I would be honored if I was a driver in your game. Uh, Doritos of Mountain Dew, will I still be on the weekly podcast on Wednesday? Yes, that will be the last appearance for me. So if you guys check out Black Lives Matter podcast, and Winval will be on there, Real Radman will be on there, and I believe Adam Stern will also be on there too. So yes. You, uh, I will be on there, and that will happen on Wednesday night. Jordan Burns, Griff, thanks for your big fun and entertaining self, and I appreciate you, and I'm going to miss you, and I really miss playing NASCAR Heat with you, and I had a blast hanging with you, and don't give up. <sighs> thanks, man. Matt1854, what, what was your inspiration for your What If series? Also know that you inspired so much. It's been something that's been on my mind for a long time just even before doing the youtube stuff like i what i love doing is taking realistic things and um like like are taking you know adding logic to something that's illogical like the dale and hart series like taking something that will never happen and trying to make some sense out of that and i feel like with my animated series and shows that i plan to start that's what I want to do, is taking someone that is so out there and trying to give as much logic and backbone behind it as possible. <clears throat> I'm going to lose my breath, but I don't care. This is it. Blue Jimmy 48 fan. Been watching you since the days when I used to play Inner and 3 all the time and downloading mods. I hope you achieve what you truly want to achieve, and I thank you for being such a great friend to me. Absolutely, bud, and same to you, man. You've been kicking butt, and I hope you keep going, man. Keep up the incredible work. Jose and Rain, thank you so much. Wish you the best for the future. <clears throat> Zach M, I was planning to make a What If series on my channel if I would buy Stay at Joe Gibbs, but I didn't because I didn't think I'd ever match what you created if I move on with it. Any advice? Don't get burned out. I'm feeling a crank in the back of my neck, but um, just take it one step at a time. Um, <clears throat> and try your best not to burn yourself and just take little steps at a time. Eric Keplinger, I really love your content, Griff. Your videos are incredibly amazing. 
I would say more, but I'm tired. It's 1.30 Eastern. I know, it's late. I hope you understand. If you ever need anything, tell me. You're amazing. Thanks, Eric. Praise be to Mikey. Sean Ard, future is bright for you. Take the opportunity and run and make your choices be your yellow brick road. Plan on it. Shane Greenaway, been watching since 2016. Thanks for the memories. Absolutely. 2020 stop motion series. I am seriously thinking about finishing the Dale Senior What If Sid so you gave permission. If I get to other house ready, which I'm going to try, go for it, man. Go for it and try. Because I'm curious, like what like the fan theories are, <laughs> if you will, of that. Brandon, I can't thank you enough for all the greatest memories. You made us happy and made all of us proud seeing you learning animation. Owen, oh, thanks for the advice. I'll continue. Absolutely. Auto Racing, Louise, I can remember my time in college playing your videos during deadlines for the paper I used to write and so on and so forth. Your videos hold up really well. Definitely a game changer. <sighs> Jackson Lowry, don't have a lot of prayers to say. I don't know really what to say, but thank you. Thank you, Jackson, just for the support. Christopher Hernandez, Good job on all the work. I'm proud of you, even though there was ups and downs. You will always have the close one chapter of your life. Open the next, and I hope the next chapter is successful. Auto racing. I'm still grateful to be part of the summer showdown project and have a conversation at Phoenix last November. Yeah, man, I appreciate that. Jordan Burns, last message is just hang in there and we'll always remember your channel. We'll miss 10 winners and other stuff. And make thanks for making it the best when I needed it. Bye, Griff. Thanks, Jordan. Greatly appreciate you. Tropical Cyclone 100, I really love your content, and I wish you good luck in your future endeavors. Thank you. Alex Lorazzo, who knows, there could be a cinematic universe, hopeful more spark, that deals with not just NASCAR, but also indie cars, F1, sports cars, all the cool stuff. <sighs> Alright, we're at the very bottom here. So no matter what life throws at you, man, don't let it bring you down. It might not have known your family, you or Tate, but I'm sure those are... Yeah. But with that being said, Riff, thank you for the years of content. I like everyone else talking on this chat tonight. Enjoy your work. Diecast, NASCAR Diecast, Griff, I have been watching you since 2015. You have been a great friend. Hope you have the best stuff on YouTube. And shake and bake. Shake and bake. The Mad Deku Boy, although I watched your content since 2015, it's been one hell of a ride. You've been and it will be the end of an era NASCAR community, but you've always been another for your channel. Heart. World NASCAR Champions. Hey, bud. Thank you for the memories, Griff. You helped me become a better YouTuber. I wish you the best in your future. Uh, Sonic Rolls, Alex. I'm happy you're doing what is best for you, and thank you for everything. You're a great influencer, inspiration, and a great friend, too. I'm looking forward to seeing what you do. Thanks, Alex. Matthias357. I don't really have much to say. Just thanks for all the content you've made throughout the years. Absolutely, man. Jackson, tell. Don't be sad. It's over. Yeah. I want to do that. Okay. Like what Bob Jenkins once said, without you, there wouldn't have been no magic. Best of luck to what you can train out to greener pastures. Go to the future, Griff. I'll be there for you. And be careful with that. <laughs> be careful with the knife. <laughs> Thank you. We love you, Griff. Don't forget that. I've been watching since 2015 Summer Showdown. And you inspired me to come up with my own entry list of potential. Yes. Get crazy. Get crazy. Get wild. If there's any big overall advice... Do, do not, do not close yourself in your like imaginary boxes. Get out there, get messy, like what Miss Frizzle says, and just forget what other people said. Because again, like I was, I wouldn't say a loser, but like I, I wasn't one of the popular kids in like middle school, you know. And NASCAR was one of those things that not a lot of people liked. So for you, this this community to come together here, if all for the love of NASCAR, is just, it's just, it's just, it's just incredible, guys. <sighs> yeah, um, this this Steven Universe background. Um, if you guys remember the end of Steven Universe Future, spoilers, but Steven leaves home and moves on to a new part of his life, and that's exactly what I'm doing. So, um, any more, any more, um, you know what? All right. There is one thing. There's one thing I want to do. There's one thing. So I want to just sing a little bit here. Uh, you know what? Yeah. A little time. 
<sighs> I want to see if. Hold on. I want to see if. Um. Let's see. Is there? I'm just trying to think. Give me one second here. Hold on. Nope. Stop. Is the lyrics down here? Okay, never mind. But I don't know. It's just this song really means like a lot to me. So let me just, uh, I'm going to bring up the lyrics. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I know, lyrics mean a lot here. So, <clears throat> so here, I want to, I want to play the song here. I want to play the song. 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 Hold on. Being human. Okay. Um, let's see. This is it. All right. So let's go ahead. I'm going to bring this down just because copyright infringement. I also don't care. So. Just a little time Just a little something else instead Just a little time just a little something up ahead I'm dreaming of Being 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 human Just a little time just a little something that I need Just a little time Just a little ceiling painting Speed I'm dreaming of Going 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 somewhere else being, 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 being human. All right, I just want to look at you guys just one more time. I just want to look at you guys. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's done. Here, move my get out of the way. Just it's over. Okay. Okay. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to do this but I also know in order for me to move on in life I also need to do this <sighs> alright a little last vent if you will I really am going to miss this sometimes the work was definitely hard sometimes I did lows a lot like my sanity my grandma my brother and quite a few other things but you guys mean so much to me I just, I, again, the numbers, like, it just absolutely blows my freaking mind just how far I've come. And again, like, I, 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 uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I just, talking, it's not my forte. It's not something that I, like, do. I'm just this awkward little quiet kid that is freaking, uh, that just makes videos and again like again over 4,000 subscribers again I'm not like legendary status like kamikaze games and whatever but through the hell I've been through or all the shit that I've been through you guys like it's been I can't believe it I just I just I can't believe it yeah do you think I might have blown it 
possibly. But you know what? I don't know. I'm the biggest reason. The biggest reason why I ended or I'm I'm ending this is because I need that finality. I needed that end. I needed that to close one book and so I can open up. Because for the last, and I would even say few months, there was like this thing where in the back of my mind, it's like, I don't know if I'm going to continue NASCAR or do animation. And I like, I went insane. Like I was ripping my hair out and I was like, I had no idea what I was going to do. <laughs> I had absolutely no idea. <sighs> because I want to be there for you guys. And again, like, I've grown, like, such a base. And I didn't want to let you guys down. I'm such a people pleaser, like, to an extent. that Like, I, I'm, like, breaking my back. Like, even if now, with this 10, 11-hour stream, been just bending over for you guys because I love you guys. It's really over. It's really over. It's really over. It just it just doesn't feel like it. everything I've made 21,000 for our unboxing video 10,000 like it just it just it just does not feel real at all it doesn't feel real like at all like even even in some of these smaller videos it's still got over like 400 views film for sure. Okay, I need to get off. I can't, I can't take this anymore. 2020 NASCAR Stone Show Cup Series, Sonic Rules, Matt1854, NASCAR Diecast, 
Shazane Rain, Sean Ard, Zach Ram. All right. All right. I'm done. Actually, let's let's get to 1 a.m. here and then. Here, quick question. How long have I been streaming for? Yeah, we'll go 10 hours. 90 likes on this stream alone. 40. How the hell? Forget it. Hell. How the hell do I have 44 concurrent viewers still? That that blows my mind. You guys are un freaking real. You guys are so unreal. There's so much more I wanted to show you guys, but at the same time, I'm also satisfied with what I have. Yeah, we'll hit the 10 hours here, and then we will get off here. So, just thank you, 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 thank you. So, all right. So, last things I will mention. So, again, um, the stream will stay because of the way it uh, shifted. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do the highlight clips or not. I don't know if I'm going to, I, I mean, I know I want to release this stuff. It's just timing because of work and everything. I don't know. I'm going to definitely keep the stuff for sure. And hopefully at some point in the future, I plan to release the stuff. Um, but again, the podcast on Wednesday will be for sure the last time I will be on. And so, um, yeah. So again, the beginning for at least a few months, I will for sure be off. And then my hope is to periodically um, come back. It's it'll be like a like 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 college, like graduating school. Like it's not going to be like full time, but I hope that I come back every so often for sure. And but otherwise, um, so if you go to I'll just say at Griffin Spear on Twitter and IG. That is where you will see me on um, on that um, social media. Like these we learn to live again. It's times like these we give and give again. It's times like these where you learn to love again. It's times like these time and time again. No, Ray Ray Cruz, not like Mark Martin. It's like Rusty Wallace. Where like he is retired, but he is like 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 an announcer analysis, if you will. So, all right, it's hit ten hours. All right, so I'll stick around the Griff Dog stuff for a couple of days, um, just to kind of like wrap up party stuff like that. But um, I think I'm gonna end this stream. So, one last thing, and actually, I kind of can't believe I forgot to do this sooner. Um, yeah, screw it. I'll do it. Um, let's do this. Uh, give me one second here. Um, this will be the last thing, and then I'm going to stop the stream. All right, give me one second. Um, uh, invite people. Um, let's see if I know how to freaking make this work. Okay. I do have the Discord. So, you got that. Save. Alright. I think this is it. I think I'm going to stop the stream here. So, again, you guys are the best. 
fun incarnation. Thank you for everything you've done for the community. Keep up the good work, everybody. Keep kicking, kicking ass here for NASCAR. We're going to continue to make NASCAR an absolutely unbelievable sport. You guys, you guys know what to do. No love your cars. What incarnation of your memes. Um, Black Lives Matter, Jarrett, Danny, Eric, you guys are all kicking ass, and I love you guys for it. So, let's, uh, I want to do, hold on. Oh, for the love of God, please, 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 please tell me I have the music. Because we gotta end. We gotta end with the music. We gotta end with the music. We have to end with the music. Let's see. I think, hold on. No, that's not it. All right, give me one second. All right, we're gonna stay on for a couple minutes because we gotta end with the music. Oh, yeah, of course it's gonna yell at me. Give me one second here. Um, What's this? Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's do this. Um, we need the music. 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 All right, please tell me I have the music. We take it away. Oh, we don't stop the music. DJ, let it play. Alright. Um uh, Oh, is it wait, is that it? Hold up. Oh no, because it's closed. Alright, give me one minute here. Please tell me I have the audio. My files, all my files. Let's see. Mm. Nope, not there either. Shoot. gotta end with the music guys it's just ain't a griff dog video without the music right come on plug it in 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 yes there it is Hold on. I want to make sure the audio levels are just right. There. There. There we go.